again today are the very talented Allison and Seppi. How are you? Hi, good morning. Good morning, Ryan. Great to be back. Good morning. Welcome. Yeah, well, yesterday, NAB and AWS celebrated sustainability champions in six categories during its annual Excellence in Sustainability Awards ceremony. These award winners were recognized for outstanding innovations in media technology that promote sustainability and foster economic and social development. Additionally, NAB Show and AWS selected the Sustainable Energy, or sorry, the Sustainable Entertainment Society as the recipient of proceeds from the Excellence in Sustainability Awards program. Congratulations to all of the winners and to the Sustainable Entertainment Society. Um, I, I was honored to be able to hand out those awards yesterday, and I'm really excited about the opportunity to champion sustainability in media and entertainment. Too often it seems to be forgotten in the pursuit of business revenue. That's so outstanding. And you know, we're seeing as technology progresses, it does so more with sustainability in mind as well. And that's so positive to see. That's right. That's right. Excellent. Very exciting. All right. Coming up next, we're going to be talking with Gen AI with two, of re two resident experts. Stay tuned. When the world of business is constantly changing, you need to stay ahead. So what about AI to generate new possibilities? AWS has the broadest and deepest AI and machine learning services to help you create and collaborate faster than ever. With the power of generative AI, imagine how AWS can transform your business. Creative teams are generating more 2D and 3D visuals for film, television, and industrial design. To meet the growing rendering demand, teams build render farms, composed of hundreds or even thousands of compute instances to process the visuals for each project. But on-premises render farms can take months to set up, are costly to manage, and often run out of capacity, limiting the number of projects teams can take on at once. AWS Deadline Cloud is a fully managed service that makes it easier for you to build a cloud-based render farm in minutes. It can process the most demanding rendering jobs by dynamically scaling up to thousands of compute instances when needed, and then back down when you're done. Using the flexible capacity of the cloud and pay-as-you-go pricing, you can run multiple jobs in parallel, finish projects faster, and pay only for the resources you use. AWS Deadline Cloud's built-in cost management tools for managers and producers also help you explore usage, track budgets, and manage resources across each project. Set up fast and scale your rendering pipeline even faster with AWS Deadline Cloud. Welcome back to NAB Show Live. This is Good Morning NAB. Matt, Richard, thank you so much for joining us. We're here to talk about generative AI and its impact on the streaming and live media industries. But first, please introduce yourselves and let us know what you do at AWS and NVIDIA. Matt, let's start with you. Sure, thank you so much for having me. Really appreciate it. My name is Matt Woods and I lead our AI product strategy at AWS. And Richard Harris, I'm our Vice President of Developer Relations and the GM for our media and entertainment business. Excellent, welcome. Great, so AWS and NVIDIA seem like a strong combination for generative AI. How have AWS and NVIDIA partnered on AI and ML today? You want to go for it, Richard? Well, um, you know, AWS was the first to adopt the uh, Grace Hopper architecture 
and they have done amazing things with it. You know, overall, there's over 2 million GPUs in AWS Cloud, wow. which you can think of as 3,000 supercomputers. And bringing that availability to customers worldwide, I think, is one of the best advantages that we have working together. Yeah, I think we, we've had a very, very long-running partnership. Uh, it's been uh, incredibly fruitful. Uh, I actually checked my email before this uh, before this conference, and my first meeting with it, with NVIDIA was 13 years ago. Wow. And we've, we've been working together over that time you know, very, Amazing. very deeply, and we've been the first cloud provider to bring you know every generation of GPUs from NVIDIA to customers. Uh, we were the first to bring their latest generation to general availability for customers, and uh, NVIDIA themselves run their research supercomputer on AWS. AWS to do all of their AI modeling and Earth simulation and so on and so forth. So it's a, it's been a, a great partnership. Outstanding. Now at GTC, AWS announced that it's going to be making the new Blackwell platform available to customers. Um, what do you think the impact of this is going to be in the world of broadcast? I, I think it's going to be transformative. You know, I think generative AI is probably the single largest shift in technology and how we're going to interact with data and information and each other. And um, I, you know, I don't think anywhere is going to be more uh, find more use for that technology than in broadcast because that's all about connecting us together and information. So it's going to be it's going to be an incredibly exciting time to marry the sorts of things that we can do with different modalities of models and different complexities of models with the GPU platform from Blackwell uh, on AWS. So let's talk about some unexpected places that media conglomerates. Uh, can use Gen AI uh, today? Richard? Oh, all, so many different places. I mean, from the uh, more obvious things in, in content creation and helping the creators be more productive and be able to do more shots and, and more iterations of things using generative AI, whether it's background plates and things like that in mm -hmm. virtual production, but all the way to other things like inside their business, they can use it to help optimize the production schedules and understand how to deploy things out to the field in a more economical way. So it's really helping in the efficiency and the effectiveness of what they do every day. L literally, you're predicting your, your upcoming production and, and how you can make it better. Absolutely, you know, based on the, the data that you own, the proprietary data that stations and publishers own that they can then use to infer new information for them. Exciting. And so what kind of opportunities is this going to create for the industry right now to be able to do this? Well, I, I think uh, it, it's not just going to create, it's already happening. Right. I mean, we, we talk to customers like the PGA Tour, the NFL, the NHL, Bundesliga, yeah, every sports league, if you just take that microcosm, is using this technology to better manage their media, to better build, to build better fan engagement mechanisms like next-gen stats, to uh, improve the very health and safety of the game in the case of the NFL. So there's, there's such a broad utility for this technology uh, that's happening today on AWS. Absolutely. And now let's turn our focus to the future. What do you think is going to be possible for media companies as they continue to adopt these technologies in the years to come? Richard? Well, clearly these media companies own a lot of their content from past decades and being able to use that and train on that for possible use cases or, like I said, content creation for future is incredible. Or just being able to help them be more productive across so they can get more productions done. That's one of the, the key things for it is it enables better optimization across the board and more doc, uh, democratization across the globe. Yeah, every, every company, every customer is going to want to be able to use their data alongside these generative AI models, either to train them or improve them or tune them in some way. And in order to be able to do that, they need to have the confidence in the security and the privacy of their core IP. And so through our partnership, we've been able to actually drive that encryption down directly onto the chip so that nobody can see the neural network weights. Nobody can see the training data. It's all really encrypted. It's all really safe. And as a result, more and more companies are going to have more confidence to bring more of their critical core IP to be able to do all the wonderful things that they can do with generative AI. But that's a critical part of, of getting started. And nowhere is that more evident with the Blackwell architecture, which actually mm -hmm. encrypt, encrypts during the training process. So you are really secure across the band now. So you're literally building this, you're, you're creating this uh, 
it, as it, basically it's learning upon itself constantly. It's mm -hmm. just amazing that what it does. It's yeah. in, yeah. in a secure way. Right, without other people getting that information. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I, you know, a lot of customers have unfortunately found that you know, when they got started with maybe some you know, public services, they actually saw their data exfiltrate. It started, uh -huh. the model started to learn against <laughs> that data. They saw their own confidential information coming back to them. <laughs> not ideal. Uh, it, that is not how we do things. It's not, you know, the, not the essence of yeah. our partnership with, with NVIDIA. It's kind of cool. It's kind of like you've got a, a child, right? And the child is, is continuing to grow and then just gets smarter and smarter. <laughs> totally. See, here's go. It is, it is a net new asset for your business. You're Amazing. not contributing to somebody else's success. You are able to store and capture the momentum through your own data Absolutely. into an asset for yourself. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Well, Richard, Karis, Matt, Wood, thank you so much for joining us today. Great to be here. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Coming up next, the PGA Tour joins us. To stay ahead, you need to expand your business by forecasting delivery routes with real-time data. With the most experience in the cloud, imagine how AWS can transform your business. To reach today's audiences, broadcasters must leverage versatile, scalable technology solutions to deliver to the array of channels spread across a three-dimensional media ecosystem. This begins by fully embracing a software-defined media supply chain from the camera to the control room, right to the end user, fully glass to glass. Enabled by MediaMonk's software-defined production is a groundbreaking broadcast media pipeline that does just that. Picture a world where you can talk to your audience in the form of dynamic personas in real time and then integrate those insights directly into your broadcast. Our technology enables the delivery of personalized content to an increasingly granular audience. The latest addition to our software-defined production offering uses generative AI and transforms consumer insights into broadcast highlights and then serves them up directly to fans. At MediaMonks, we specialize in tailoring solutions that accelerate your time to market, reduce your costs, improve your sustainability, and cater to a wide spectrum of the media and entertainment industry. We achieve all of this by employing cutting-edge technology to transform how we engage with our audiences and give people the content they want to watch where they want to watch it. Visit MediaMonk's software-defined production page and connect with us today.
Okay. Okay. Oh. It's watering. Cool. Head. Nice seeing you. Hello and welcome to NEB Show Live. I'm Ryan Salazar. Welcome back, everyone. Joining us now on Good Morning NEB is Aaron Eisenberg. How are you doing, Aaron? Hi, thanks for having me. Doing really well. Happy to be here. All right, how should M&E brands be thinking about AI and their marketing strategy? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think there are three main areas we want to look at it when it comes to marketing strategy uh, for streaming brands. The first is going to be efficiency. Uh, the second is going to be creativity. Uh, and then we have performance as well. Um, when we think about efficiency in the space, the streaming market, the competition, um, is becoming very competitive. So it's important to find efficiencies, um, find those ways to make your existing strategies more efficient. And when you do that, you open up your creative teams to have more time to be creative, to be strategic. Um, lastly, then performance. If you're able to deliver really strong results, uh, you're going to be more impactful on your revenue. You're going to be more impactful in retention as well. Great. So how are you seeing companies tackle these three things? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I think when it comes to efficiency, uh, we're looking at using AI to give you a sense of what users are going to do to sort of predict the future, if you will. Um, it allows you to have a sense of who is going to churn before they churn and allow you to reach out to them. Uh, it gives you an opportunity to identify what channel users are most likely to engage on so you're not spending money on paid channels like email or SMS uh, when someone is more likely to convert off of a mobile push or something like that. And then it also tells you what time of day something is someone is more likely to convert. So you know the right time to be sending a message to a user uh, to deliver desired results. Next, when we're talking about creativity, uh, if you're, again, opening up resources, opening up time for your creative teams uh, through these different efficiencies, uh, they can be more creative in their outreach and their strategy. They can also leverage generative AI tools uh, like copywriting tools, uh, you know, develop images, video clips, things like that, which also save them time at the end of the day. Uh, and lastly, when we're looking at performance, because again, competition is so strong in the space, you want those touch points, those interactions to have more meaning. And the way to do that is to be more personalized in your outreach. Um, so AI allows you to create multi-pronged uh, campaigns that uh, send users down personalized flows. So personalized interaction that is more likely to get them to a desired result, sending personalized recommendations about content to watch, things like that. Um, that kind of all wraps up into performance as well. Aaron, as companies are looking to create their own AI capabilities, mm -hmm. what sorts of things do they need to think about relative to making those as meaningful as possible? Yeah, I think there's two things when it comes to that. Um, activating data and then um, thinking about your broader tech stack integration. Uh, AI is great, it gives you a lot of data and I think the thing you need to keep in mind is how are you actioning on that data? What are you doing once you have it? How are you using it to engage in real time? And then also how are you sending that data out into your broader uh, te tech ecosystem to make sure that it doesn't sit siloed and inactionable? Um, I, I think how brands need to think about how they can move past the because you watched X show, you should watch Y show kind of conversation and focus now more on real-time engagement, real-time touch points. People expect things to be more real-time and personalized. Um, I mean, if we look at like the NCAA women's uh, basketball, that was a, a huge cultural moment. Lots of people engaged and all of that interaction needed to be real-time. Uh, sports live streaming is going to be really important this mm. year for the streaming space. Uh, so brands just need to make sure that they're taking all of this AI analytics and using it in real time because if you you know send a sport score update after the game is over, you've really missed that moment. You've missed that opportunity to to build brand equity. Um, so you know leverage leverage the analytics, make sure things are real time, and also you know try to to generate clips try to generate engaging moments uh, for people to interact with with the streaming brand. Well, wow, standing great, very good, thank you.
All right, I think we're good here. So coming up next on Soho, Soho Net joins us. Stick around, we'll be right back. You need to stay ahead in business. Use machine learning to predict which your customers will like. With the most experience in the cloud, imagine how AWS can transform your business. For over a century, local broadcasting has evolved with the needs of the community. We move past the stigmas of opinion journalism and bring the most relevant news on air, online, and on the go. You have trusted us with your news, sports, weather, and entertainment. Trust us to keep moving with you. Text TB to 52886 and tell Congress local broadcasting is here to stay. In a world where space cowgirls rule the lunar frontier, one group of fearless women blaze a cosmic trail in the moon dust like no other. Armed with laser lassos, bionic unicorns, and a passion for bedazzling the unknown, they patrol the ranges of Mare Tranquility, tra Tranquility, whatever, the moon, in search of adventure and cosmic justice. And just maybe a little more zero gravity hairspray. Ride the cosmic waves of style with zero gravity hairspray. But when a bothersome bunch of lunar looters threatens to topple the tranquility of the final frontier, Sheriff Starburst must gather her galactic gals for the moon ride of their lives. You're just another shooting star about to fizzle out, Deputy Dazzler. Fizzle out? Honey, I'm like a comet. Once I cross you, you'll be starstruck for ages. From the creators of The Little Green Sheriff and Galactic Gideon comes an epic tale of courage, grit, and a whole lot of cosmic cowgirl sass. Strap on your space spurs, yoke up your unicorns, and prepare for the ultimate lunar showdown. Because when the cowgirls on the moon are in town, the universe had better watch out. Cowgirls on the moon. Yeehaw to the stars and beyond. Welcome back to Good Morning NAB. Joining us now is Dennis Rose, the CRO of SohoNet. How you doing, Dennis? I'm doing great. What's, what, what could be better than being back at NAB? It's like yeah. a big family reunion. We're, uh, we were just talking about how, how we've been enjoying the show so far. Uh, tell us a little bit about SohoNet and what you guys do. Certainly. Well, so SohoNet will celebrate its 30th anniversary next year. Wow. Based in London, wow. but with global presence around the world, we are a managed services company to film and TV. We do the, the deliver the world's largest private network to move data around from film sets to post partners. And then on top of it, we run lots of great applications for editors, directors, and cinematographers and others. Very cool. Outstanding. And now, we heard that recently you launched Clearview Flex on AWS. Can you tell us a bit about that? We did. And for you know, for years, since 2015, we've been uh, servicing the market with Clearview Flex. It's a real-time collaboration system. So when two people can't be in the same place, uh, great stories, storytellers still need to collaborate and make creative decisions. Clearview Flex is one of the leading platforms in the market for that, but it's always been based on hardware boxes. And uh, like everybody uh, in our install base, we are helping them to move their workflows to the cloud. So now we've introduced a version that is software only and runs on AWS, which is really what the market wants. Well, let's talk about that. So what made you decide that AWS is the place that you want to launch Clearview Flex? AWS is the leading public cloud uh, platform for the film and TV industry. Simple. Okay, and how has customer reaction been? It's been positive. You know, we've been delivering AWS solutions because all of our applications, Clearview Flex and File Runner and uh, Clearview Rush now, um, those all run in AWS. It's secure, it's scalable, it's safe. Our customers come to expect that. And it was a natural uh, extension to bring our hardware platforms into the AWS environment. And on top of it, AWS is a great partner. 
great. We love it. Excellent. You know, it's amazing how AWS has revolutionized uh, the media and entertainment industry, every industry, really. Um, just exciting. So how did you get in this business in the first place, and how many NEBs have you gone to? I'm just curious. Oh, goodness. Well, so I, I've been outside the U.S. for 26 years total, so I went to a lot of shows in Asia when I lived there for 15 years and Latin America for seven years. So this is probably only my eighth or ninth uh, NAB. Um, like a lot of people, some sometimes it was luck. Uh, I happened to be working for an OTT uh, provider. I got recruited by Deluxe uh, and uh, uh, met uh, Chuck Parker, our CEO at, uh, at that company. And seven years later, here I am at, uh, at NAB once again with SohoNet. And I think the most important thing is we've got lots of great relationships and that's what NAB is about. It's about meeting your customers and, and of course meeting new faces too. That's Absolutely. right. Excellent. Well, Dennis, thank you so much for being with us today and talking about SohoNet and, uh, and what you guys do and ClearNet Flex. It's uh, quite exciting stuff. Wishing you an awesome 2024 NAB show. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to be here. All right. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Good morning, NAB. It's Infinitive reporting to you live. We are excited to be with our partner, AWS, and to share with you our innovative solutions. Infinitive will help you drive revenue and increase efficiencies, leveraging our AI solutions. Example use cases are generative AI for advertising and converged TV and ad sales delivery. Infinitive and AWS are in the West Hall, booth 1701. So we would love to share our innovative solutions with you. When the world of business is constantly changing, you need to stay ahead. So what about AI to generate new possibilities? Machine learning to predict what customers will like. Or expand your business by forecasting delivery routes with real-time data. With the most experience in the cloud, imagine how AWS can transform your business.
Welcome back to the 2024 NAB Show. Good morning, NAB. Hi there. We want to welcome our guests. We have Mark Aldrich, CEO of Think Analytics, and Christopher Bell, who is the global strategy leader for direct-to-consumer at AWS. Thank you. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you, Allison. Happy to have you. So, Mark, let me start with you. How are you seeing the fast channel ecosystem evolving? Well, there's been an incredible proliferation of fast channels over the last 12 to 18 months. It's one of the fastest growing segments in our industry. And we see that continuing. However, there's too many, there's almost too many choices at this point. So there's uh, a proliferation of channels and uh, customers are looking at trying to find uh, information and content. And we think that personalization needs to come over the top of that to make that a little bit better experience for the consumers. Excellent. So what can consumers forward look forward to, to experiencing? Uh, well, I mean, I, I think what they're going to see is they're going to see uh, companies like ours, for example, Think Analytics, um, where our history in content metadata and uh, discovery and personalization is a key part of what we see happening in terms of this marketplace to be able to make it a little bit more of an appealing experience and frankly, a more profitable experience for the content providers. Okay, and you've got the Think Fast solution in the marketplace. Correct. What problem is that solving for your content owners? So th there's a lot of manual work that goes into setting up fast channels. And so uh, typically somebody looks at, uh, let's say a thousand hours of content person or people, and they decide, okay, what fits together and how many channels should we do and how should we schedule it? What we're doing with Think, Think Fast is applying Gen AI, Gen AI to that so that we do an intelligent scheduling. So we take a look at all that content and then we basically give a schedule for our customers. So it takes a lot of manual uh, labor out of the uh, process and sure. actually gives a better product on the other side based on putting those things together. Okay. So what's next for Think Analytics? Well, I mean, we've had so much interest in Think Fast. We launched it two weeks ago and we've had so many conversations with companies like uh, Amagi, uh, Frequency, and others because they're interested because they're launching these fast channels, but to be able to help do intelli intelligent scheduling, something that's really, really appealing. On our other side, we have uh, uh, chat um, discovery, chatbot discovery, and you'll see us use, uh, showing that at the show today where we can use that in terms of outbound marketing as well. So our customers, uh, the subscribers can ask, what content should I work, watch next? chatbot rep replies this these things will be interesting to you and these are the reasons why they'd be interesting to you that's something that we've launched uh, last year at IBC and we're showing it here at the show as well another example of how we're using AI and gen AI to give more personalization to content that exists okay Christopher let's pull you into the conversation sure. so obviously think analytics is a partner of AWS right. how are you thinking about the role that personalization should play for platform operators well I think it's it's a critical opportunity for growth, right? It's a, a creating new experiences that are unique to each user that uh, takes away a little bit of the decision fatigue that goes with uh, video on demand experiences. So it creates something that is familiar and welcome and uh, just increases the watch minutes for the platform. So it's a, it's a, it's a great uh, transition uh, that we're seeing now more and more personalization and it's critical for just people having a satisfying experience. There's another side of this. So uh, as we look at the streaming landscape, how do streamers make money? They make money off subscription and holding on to subscribers, but they also make money based on advertising. So right. the information that we have around personalization based on our history of uh, metadata extraction and our metadata factory, we have the ability to give back personalized audience segments to the content providers, so the streamers and content providers. Yeah. So that's another opportunity to enrich or enhance the monetization opportunity that they have. Okay, I can't let you guys go You guys go without asking. What are your thoughts around how Gen AI may inform personalization going forward? Well, I'll let you go first, Chris. Well, you know, it's, uh, it's a critical uh, tool that is enabling whole new experiences. So it's uh, the personalization of the experience, it's the personalization of the content, and uh, the models are getting so sophisticated uh, that very quickly you can get something that really satisfies what you're looking for uh, on any platform. It's it's very exciting time. I think that's right. I mean, it really does take away that, that content search fatigue and the understanding and the ability to know what you like, 
and how you like that information is translated not only in what the content that you watch, but if you think about ad impressions and that side of the equation, ad impressions are actually going down with, with the proliferation of streaming. So what impressions you make with a customer and how you personalize that in an ad segment, in this ad segment is very important. Because if you think about it, a good ad is like content. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so people, I think the number was 67% of people are okay having ads as long as they're associated with something that they're interested in or a, a, a tied to the content that they're watching. But it's so I, much more targeted in that case, obviously. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Sure. I know as a consumer, I appreciate ads that appeal to me. Right. So thank you, yep. gentlemen. We appreciate having you today. Our thank pleasure. You so much. So just thank one you. last question. So, yeah. you know, coming to NAB show, it's the greatest show on earth, literally in our industry, in the world. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to you guys to be here? I mean, it's, uh, it's always very exciting. We get a great uh, chance to work with our partners to engage with customers and, and really see what's uh, what what they need and how we're delivering it for them. Right. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, I feel the same way. I think NAB is a great place for the industry to get together, recalibrate where we are, what the trends are. Um, you know, the Devoncroft Summit that we had the first day for NAB, I think was really interesting because of the panel discussions that were had and the continued conversation about where we need to focus from a tech perspective and from a consumer perspective is, uh, it's, it doesn't get better than this. Yeah, and Devoncroft's a great, a great event that they have. All right, well, thank you so much, guys. Thank we'll you. be back on NAB Show Live in just a few minutes. You're a storyteller, negotiator, artist, innovator. Whatever your passion, whatever your skills, behind the scenes or in front, you belong here. A career in broadcast media. Local radio and TV stations in every town and city need someone like you. So do what you love and bring your talent to life. Make a difference in your community. Your passion, your skills, your career. You belong here. So this is our production volume. This is where we use a mix of light sources through our LED dome along with an augmented reality point cloud. This was supposed to be a making of type of thing. A behind the scenes documentary of an animated film we were producing. We did not know that this was going to happen. The decision has already been made. But she has done nothing wrong. What's going on? This is my story, so this is how we're going to shoot it. The threat to national security? I mean, this is ridiculous. Please. The pain I feel in my heart, well, that's real. I'm so sorry, Rose. Come in and talk.
Hello and welcome to the 2024 NEB Show. I'm Ryan Salazar, and we've got our, our, our co-host here, Seppi. We have Ali Amoli, a senior industry ex specialist and leads uh, at AWS Cloud Newsroom Initiative. How are you doing, sir? Wonderful, thank you. And then Scott McHugh, he's a senior solutions architect and tech lead for the Cloud Newsroom Initiative. Uh, Ali and Scott have been working with customers and partners worldwide to transform broadcast and newsroom operations. I, I have a news rundown system at our production facility in Fort Lauderdale and worked in news a little bit. Super exciting stuff, and what you're doing is just revolutionizing the industry. That's right, Ali, we're seeing so many customers adopting cloud workflows. Um, what's driving this, and what are the benefits that they're seeing? Seppi, we've been working with customers worldwide, and a lot of the newsroom customers face challenges. They're trying to engage more diverse audiences across a variety of different platforms. They're working to um, you know, deal with all sorts of threats, whether that's physical threats and losing facilities because of natural disasters or threats of what might be happening, um, you know, geopolitically. They want to be able to sh make sure that they can send information and give critical information and content to their viewers when they need to, especially in times of disaster. They also want to make sure they're engaging and informing their public. And that's across a variety of different platforms, not just linear, but also digital, social, mobile. They have to do all of this while facing economic pressures. They have distributed workforces. There's a lot of efficiencies that they're looking to gain, and the cloud can help with that. You know, when you think about a traditional news environment or a production environment, in the old days, you'd have to figure out, what's my busiest news day going to be? And you'd have to plan for that with hardware. And if you overestimated, then you had a lot of resources sitting there underutilized and you've wasted money. If you underestimated on a busy news day, which these days we have a lot more busy news days, you would have to figure out which stories are you going to cover. Right. By moving to the cloud, you can leverage things like the elasticity of the infrastructure. You don't have to plan ahead of in time. If it's a busy news day, the systems can scale up. When it's slow, you can scale down. You're able to right size your systems. You're also able to leverage a lot of those distributed workflows. You can have a distributed workforce, putting content in from multiple locations, getting that distributed across multiple platforms in very efficient ways. And then you can use tools of choice as well. And, and this is something that we've seen from a lot of our customers. As they're working with different groups, they want to make sure that those groups can be using the tools that they want to in the workflows that they want to, while having efficiency in terms of sharing content and creating content and leveraging new tools and being agile, whether that's things like machine learning or Gen AI, they want to be able to experiment and create compelling content and continue to create compelling content in efficient ways. And so Scott, let's just talk about what you guys are showing off at the show. Uh, speaking of tools of choice, like what's what's the preferred, what, what, what do people really want to see? Absolutely, so the when we come to tools of choice on cloud workflows, what we're finding is that it is just the, the the expected or you know usual suspects are able to play in this space. So we have customers coming to our booth and pointing at our, our uh, fishbowl that we've built, our control room, and saying, why'd you build an on-prem newsroom here? We say, no, 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 this is a cloud newsroom. This is just control surfaces. We have built something that is indistinguishable from an on-prem newsroom. And that's because we're using the regular expected, you know, people are seeing the ROS overdrive user interface, the ENPS user interface in front of them. So tools of choice from, you know, AP, ENPS, which is, you know, a regular newsroom well, workflow that you find everywhere, ROS overdrive for doing all of your, um, you know, newsroom automation systems, ROS Graphite CPC, the cloud production center, which is their vision switcher product. Uh, we are also using Mamir, which is media asset management systems. It's tied into Adobe Premiere Pro. So we're using all of that to to do a full-blown newsroom fast turnaround edit workflow. So we're using you know, Amazon FSX storage systems, which are high performance uh, managed Windows server storage that we are able to utilize to do our recording systems as well. So we're also- So you're literally integrating yeah. everything yeah. as literally. a full solution. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's fantastic. So Amazon is doing, uh, putting a lot of efforts with our live partner accelerator program for live cloud production. So we, um, twice a year, we bring our partners together and try to get them all to, you know, play nice together in a way. But the, the idea is to make sure that when we go out and do shows like this and we put these uh, pieces together, that we have an expectation that they'll come together and work well. And so when you come down to tools of choice, 
we can give the surety that when you want to pick the brand name that you want to pick, that they will integrate with, with the rest of those systems. Wonderful. Now, we've talked about uh, infrastructure flexibility that you're gaining through those cloud workflows and a robust partner ecosystem by the sounds of it. What are you guys really excited to see at NAB and what are your customers excited to see? I think one of the things we've noticed and we're really excited about is just the acceleration of, of our partners and ISVs who are really embracing cloud native technologies, leveraging all of the capabilities that the cloud offers and our customers seeing those benefits. So as you move the content to the cloud, all of a sudden you could start leveraging ML for automatic metadata uh, creation. You could start leveraging things like Gen AI to help with that. You know, when you think about the deluge of content that's coming into newsrooms and all of the video, the data, the text that they have to deal with, being able to leverage things like summarization and semantic search to really get you know, the key elements and create compelling stories with that, that's going to be a huge driver and that's what we're seeing a lot of excitement about. Absolutely, yeah, generative AI, you know, we, we, we couldn't have a conversation at NAB this year without talking about generative AI and the assistive technologies that they're getting. And so we're seeing newsrooms especially try to devise assistive workflows. How do I find content? How do I get, you know, aggregation so I can spend more time creating news rather than, you know, running around doing workflow, workflow centric problems. So, you know, semantic search is absolutely one of those. Like archive search, remember that time when this happened and, oh, someone fell off over and you know being able to surface that content in a real and sort of natural semantic way rather than um, having to you know remember what year and date it actually happened so yeah those those assistive workflows are really emerging transformative yeah. too yeah so all right so being a facility owner I have a pretty large facility for a little guy I've got 16,000 square foot studio back in Fort Lauderdale uh, we have a data center we have switchers we have you know the whole it's a basically a TV station we have five control rooms so being here with you guys at the show and experiencing the control room that we're working with right now, blown away, absolutely blown away, really amazing. You know, you see the control surfaces and you, th and you get the warm and fuzzies because you see the equipment and you think, oh yeah, there's a server in the back room. It's just not the case. Uh, it's really innovative. So we're already thinking about making that switch. So, uh, so thank you for doing what you guys do and doing the partnership that you guys have done with us, AWS. I think it's really awesome. But just wanted to say thanks. Yeah, thanks for being with us today. Uh, Scott and Allie, uh, we appreciate it. Coming up next on Good Morning NAB, we'll be joined by SohoNet to talk about Clearview Flex. I think we've oh, done you know what? that we one already. already. Did that. I apologize. It's That's a surprise what's coming up next, <laughs> folks. We'll figure exactly. it out and we'll bring it to you. April Fools. <laughs> All right, we'll be back in a few minutes. Thanks a lot. When the world of business is constantly changing, you need to stay ahead. So what about AI to generate new possibilities? AWS has the broadest and deepest AI and machine learning services to help you create and collaborate faster than ever. With the power of generative AI, Imagine how AWS can transform your business. Creative teams are generating more 2D and 3D visuals for film, television, and industrial design. To meet the growing rendering demand, teams build render farms, composed of hundreds or even thousands of compute instances to process the visuals for each project. But on-premises render farms can take months to set up, are costly to manage, and often run out of capacity, limiting the number of projects teams can take on at once. AWS Deadline Cloud is a fully managed service that makes it easier for you to build a cloud-based render farm in minutes. It can process the most demanding rendering jobs by dynamically scaling up to thousands of compute instances when needed, and then back down when you're done. Using the flexible capacity of the cloud and pay-as-you-go pricing, you can run multiple jobs in parallel, finish projects faster, and pay only for the resources you use. 
AWS Deadline Cloud's built-in cost management tools for managers and producers also help you explore usage, track budgets, and manage resources across each project. Set up fast and scale your rendering pipeline even faster with AWS Deadline Cloud. Welcome back to NAB Show Live. Uh, we've had some great discussions today. We have, yes. Yeah, we really have. I would say it's interesting to me as we've talked with Braze about their marketing technology and I think about Think Analytics that we spoke with about their personalization. Uh, one of the things that, in NVIDIA, of mm -hmm. course, a theme that runs through this, of course, is Gen AI. This is yeah. the show of Gen AI. Oh, Absolutely. for sure. Absolutely, yeah. and like what it lets, uh, not just content creators, but also what it lets people who are responsible for business operations do as well. Mm -hmm. Some of the capabilities that it delivers to them in terms of optimizing and strategizing um, around all their operations. I think that's been incredible to hear about. Yeah, and I, I see it from a different perspective because I'm a facility owner. So I, I, we were just chatting with the guys about, you know, how do I get my inputs into the cloud right. if they're on SDI? Can I get NDI feeds into the cloud? It's really exciting to see that you don't have to have a data center sitting in your facility now. You just, you, right. but cloud, you can still run your control The cloud is the great rooms. enabler, yeah, just right? Amazing. Everything yeah. is possible in the cloud. If it weren't for the cloud, we wouldn't have Gen AI, right? And exactly do all those things in the cloud that used to be on-prem. So that's pretty exciting. I love hearing that, of course, yeah. coming Absolutely. from AWS. All yes. right, well, I guess we're going to wrap it up for now. Uh, we're going to hit the floor in a little bit here. Thank you so much for, for being with us again this morning, and uh, we'll chat soon. Back to NAB Show Live, uh, a break, and we'll be back. To stay ahead, you need to expand your business by forecasting delivery routes with real-time data. With the most experience in the cloud, imagine how AWS can transform your business. To reach today's audiences, broadcasters must leverage versatile, scalable technology solutions to deliver to the array of channels spread across a three-dimensional media ecosystem. This begins by fully embracing a software-defined media supply chain, from the camera to the control room, right to the end user, fully glass to glass. Enabled by MediaMonk's software-defined production is a groundbreaking broadcast media pipeline that does just that. Picture a world where you can talk to your audience in the form of dynamic personas in real time and then integrate those insights directly into your broadcast. Our technology enables the delivery of personalized content to an increasingly granular audience. The latest addition to our software-defined production offering uses generative AI and transforms consumer insights into broadcast highlights and then serves them up directly to fans. At MediaMonks, we specialize in tailoring solutions that accelerate your time to market, reduce your costs, improve your sustainability, and cater to a wide spectrum of the media and entertainment industry. We achieve all of this by employing cutting-edge technology to transform how we engage with our audiences and give people the content they want to watch where they want to watch it. Visit MediaMonk's software-defined production page and connect with us today. When the world of business is constantly changing, you need to stay ahead. So what about AI to generate new possibilities? AWS has the broadest and deepest AI and machine learning services to help you create and collaborate faster than ever. With the power of generative AI, imagine how AWS can transform your business.
Creative teams are generating more 2D and 3D visuals for film, television, and industrial design. To meet the growing rendering demand, teams build render farms, composed of hundreds or even thousands of compute instances to process the visuals for each project. But on-premises render farms can take months to set up, are costly to manage, and often run out of capacity, limiting the number of projects teams can take on at once. AWS Deadline Cloud is a fully managed service that makes it easier for you to build a cloud-based render farm in minutes. It can process the most demanding rendering jobs by dynamically scaling up to thousands of compute instances when needed, and then back down when you're done. Using the flexible capacity of the cloud and pay-as-you-go pricing, you can run multiple jobs in parallel, finish projects faster, and pay only for the resources you use. AWS Deadline Cloud's built-in cost management tools for managers and producers also help you explore usage, track budgets, and manage resources across each project. Set up fast and scale your rendering pipeline even faster with AWS Deadline Cloud. You're a storyteller, negotiator, artist, innovator. Whatever your passion, whatever your skills, behind the scenes or in front, you belong here. A career in broadcast media. Local radio and TV stations in every town and city need someone like you. So do what you love and bring your talent to life. Make a difference in your community. Your passion, your skills, your career. You belong here. So this is our production volume. This is where we use a mix of light sources through our LED dome along with an augmented reality point cloud. This was supposed to be a making of type of thing. A behind the scenes documentary of an animated film we were producing. We did not know that this was going to happen. The decision has already been made. But she hasn't done anything wrong. What's going on? This is my story, so this is how we're going to shoot it. The threat to national security? I mean, this is ridiculous. Please. The pain I feel in my heart. Well, that's real. I'm so sorry, Rose. Come in and talk. Good morning, NAB. It's Infinitive reporting to you live. We are excited to be with our partner, AWS, and to share with you our innovative solutions. Infinitive will help you drive revenue and increase efficiencies, leveraging our AI solutions. Example use cases are generative AI for advertising and converged TV and ad sales delivery. Infinitive and AWS are in the West Hall, booth 1701. So we would love to share our innovative solutions with you.
When the world of business is constantly changing, you need to stay ahead. So what about AI to generate new possibilities? Machine learning to predict what customers will like. Or expand your business by forecasting delivery routes with real-time data. With the most experience in the cloud, imagine how AWS can transform your business. If you listen to Unity, I'm going to hear people. When the world of business is constantly changing, you need to stay ahead. So what about AI to generate new possibilities? AWS has the broadest and deepest AI and machine learning services to help you create and collaborate faster than ever. With the power of generative AI, imagine how AWS can transform your business. Creative teams are generating more 2D and 3D visuals for film, television, and industrial design. To meet the growing rendering demand, teams build render farms, composed of hundreds or even thousands of compute instances to process the visuals for each project. But on-premises render farms can take months to set up, are costly to manage, and often run out of capacity, limiting the number of projects teams can take on at once. AWS Deadline Cloud is a fully managed service that makes it easier for you to build a cloud-based render farm in minutes. It can process the most demanding rendering jobs by dynamically scaling up to thousands of compute instances when needed, and then back down when you're done. Using the flexible capacity of the cloud and pay-as-you-go pricing, you can run multiple jobs in parallel, finish projects faster, and pay only for the resources you use. AWS Deadline Cloud's built-in cost management tools for managers and producers also help you explore usage, track budgets, and manage resources across each project. Set up fast and scale your rendering pipeline even faster with AWS Deadline Cloud. To stay ahead, you need to expand your business by forecasting delivery routes with real-time data. With the most experience in the cloud, imagine how AWS can transform your business. To reach today's audiences, broadcasters must leverage versatile, scalable technology solutions to deliver to the array of channels spread across a three-dimensional media ecosystem. This begins by fully embracing a software-defined media supply chain from the camera to the control room, right to the end user, fully glass to glass. Enabled by MediaMonk's software-defined production is a groundbreaking broadcast media pipeline that does just that. Picture a world where you can talk to your audience in the form of dynamic personas in real time and then integrate those insights directly into your broadcast. Our technology enables the delivery of personalized content to an increasingly granular audience. The latest addition to our software-defined production offering uses generative AI and transforms consumer insights into broadcast highlights and then serves them up directly to fans. At MediaMonks, we specialize in tailoring solutions that accelerate your time to market, reduce your costs, improve your sustainability, and cater to a wide spectrum of the media and entertainment industry. We achieve all of this by employing cutting edge technology to transform how we engage with our audiences and give people the content they want to watch where they want to watch it. Visit MediaMonk's software defined production page and connect with us today.
You're a storyteller, negotiator, artist, innovator. Whatever your passion, whatever your skills, behind the scenes or in front, you belong here. A career in broadcast media. Local radio and TV stations in every town and city need someone like you. So do what you love and bring your talent to life. Make a difference in your community. Your passion, your skills, your career. You belong here. So this is our production volume. This is where we use a mix of light sources through our LED dome along with an augmented reality point cloud. This was supposed to be a making of type of thing. A behind the scenes documentary of an animated film we were producing. We did not know that this was going to happen. The decision has already been made. But she has done nothing wrong. What's going on? This is my story, so this is how we're going to shoot it. A threat to national security? I mean, this is ridiculous. Please. The pain I feel in my heart, well, that's real. I'm so sorry, Rose. Can I come in and talk? Good morning, NAB. It's Infinitive reporting to you live. We are excited to be with our partner, AWS, and to share with you our innovative solutions. Infinitive will help you drive revenue and increase efficiencies, leveraging our AI solutions. Example use cases are generative AI for advertising and converged TV and ad sales delivery. Infinitive and AWS are in the West Hall, booth 1701. So we would love to share our innovative solutions with you. When the world of business is constantly changing, you need to stay ahead. So what about AI to generate new possibilities? Machine learning to predict what customers will like. Or expand your business by forecasting delivery routes with real-time data. With the most experience in the cloud, imagine how AWS can transform your business. 
When the world of business is constantly changing, you need to stay ahead. So what about AI to generate new possibilities? AWS has the broadest and deepest AI and machine learning services to help you create and collaborate faster than ever. With the power of generative AI, imagine how AWS can transform your business. Creative teams are generating more 2D and 3D visuals for film, television, and industrial design. To meet the growing rendering demand, teams build render farms, composed of hundreds or even thousands of compute instances to process the visuals for each project. But on-premises render farms can take months to set up, are costly to manage, and often run out of capacity, limiting the number of projects teams can take on at once. AWS Deadline Cloud is a fully managed service that makes it easier for you to build a cloud-based render farm in minutes. It can process the most demanding rendering jobs by dynamically scaling up to thousands of compute instances when needed, and then back down when you're done. Using the flexible capacity of the cloud and pay-as-you-go pricing, you can run multiple jobs in parallel, finish projects faster, and pay only for the resources you use. AWS Deadline Cloud's built-in cost management tools for managers and producers also help you explore usage, track budgets, and manage resources across each project. Set up fast and scale your rendering pipeline even faster with AWS Deadline Cloud. You need to stay ahead in business. Use machine learning to predict what your customers will like. With the most experience in the cloud, imagine how AWS can transform your business. For over a century, 
local broadcasting has evolved with the needs of the community. We move past the stigmas of opinion journalism and bring the most relevant news on air, online, and on the go. You have trusted us with your news, sports, weather, and entertainment. Trust us to keep moving with you. Text TB to 52886 and tell Congress local broadcasting is here to stay. In a world where space cowgirls rule the lunar frontier, one group of fearless women blaze a cosmic trail in the moon dust like no other. Armed with laser lassos, bionic unicorns, and a passion for bedazzling the unknown, they patrol the ranges of Mare Tranquility, tran Tranquil whatever, the moon, in search of adventure and cosmic justice. And just maybe a little more zero gravity hairspray. Ride the cosmic waves of style with zero gravity hairspray. But when a bothersome bunch of lunar looters threatens to topple the tranquility of the final frontier, Sheriff Starburst must gather her galactic gals for the moon ride of their lives. You're just another shooting star about to fizzle out, Deputy Dazzler. Fizzle out? Honey, I'm like a comet. Once I cross you, you'll be starstruck for ages. From the creators of The Little Green Sheriff and Galactic Gideon comes an epic tale of courage, grit, and a whole lot of cosmic cowgirl sass. Strap on your space spurs, yoke up your unicorns, and prepare for the ultimate lunar showdown. Because when the cowgirls on the moon are in town, the universe had better watch out. Cowgirls on the moon. Yeehaw to the stars and beyond. To stay ahead, you need to expand your business by forecasting delivery routes with real-time data. With the most experience in the cloud, imagine how AWS can transform your business. To reach today's audiences, broadcasters must leverage versatile, scalable technology solutions to deliver to the array of channels spread across a three-dimensional media ecosystem. This begins by fully embracing a software-defined media supply chain, from the camera to the control room, right to the end user, fully glass to glass. Enabled by MediaMonk's software-defined production is a groundbreaking broadcast media pipeline that does just that. Picture a world where you can talk to your audience in the form of dynamic personas in real time and then integrate those insights directly into your broadcast. Our technology enables the delivery of personalized content to an increasingly granular audience. The latest addition to our software-defined production offering uses generative AI and transforms consumer insights into broadcast highlights and then serves them up directly to fans. At MediaMonks, we specialize in tailoring solutions that accelerate your time to market, reduce your costs, improve your sustainability, and cater to a wide spectrum of the media and entertainment industry. We achieve all of this by employing cutting edge technology to transform how we engage with our audiences and give people the content they want to watch where they want to watch it. Visit MediaMonk's software defined production page and connect with us today. You need to stay ahead in business. Use machine learning to predict what your customers will like. With the most experience in the cloud, imagine how AWS can transform your business. For over a century, local broadcasting has evolved with the needs of the community. We move past the stigmas of opinion journalism and bring the most relevant news on air, online, and on the go. 
You have trusted us with your news, sports, weather, and entertainment. Trust us to keep moving with you. Text TB to 52886 and tell Congress local broadcasting is here to stay. In a world where space cowgirls rule the lunar frontier, one group of fearless women blaze a cosmic trail in the moon dust like no other. Armed with laser lassos, bionic unicorns, and a passion for bedazzling the unknown, they patrol the ranges of Mare Tranquility, Tran Tranquility, whatever, the moon, in search of adventure and cosmic justice. And just maybe a little more zero gravity hairspray. Ride the cosmic waves of style with zero gravity hairspray. But when a bothersome bunch of lunar looters threatens to topple the tranquility of the final frontier, Sheriff Starburst must gather her galactic gals for the moon ride of their lives. You're just another shooting star about to fizzle out, Deputy Dazzler. Fizzle out? Honey, I'm like a comet. Once I cross you, you'll be starstruck for ages. From the creators of the Little Green Sheriff and Galactic Gideon comes an epic tale of courage, grit, and a whole lot of cosmic cowgirl sass. Strap on your space spurs, yoke up your unicorns, and prepare for the ultimate lunar showdown. Because when the cowgirls on the moon are in town, the universe had better watch out. Cowgirls on the moon, yeehaw to the stars and beyond. Good morning, NAB. It's Infinitive reporting to you live. We are excited to be with our partner, AWS, and to share with you our innovative solutions. Infinitive will help you drive revenue and increase efficiencies, leveraging our AI solutions. Example use cases are generative AI for advertising and converged TV and ad sales delivery. Infinitive and AWS are in the West Hall, booth 1701. So we would love to share our innovative solutions with you. When the world of business is constantly changing, you need to stay ahead. So what about AI to generate new possibilities? Machine learning to predict what customers will like. Or expand your business by forecasting delivery routes with real-time data. With the most experience in the cloud, imagine how AWS can transform your business. You're a storyteller, negotiator, artist, innovator. Whatever your passion, whatever your skills, behind the scenes or in front, you belong here. A career in broadcast media. Local radio and TV stations in every town and city need someone like you. So do what you love and bring your talent to life. Make a difference in your community. Your passion, your skills, your career. You belong here.
right, here we go. So this is our production volume. This is where we use a mix of light sources through our LED dome along with an augmented reality point cloud. This was supposed to be a making of type of thing. A behind the scenes documentary of an animated film we were producing. We did not know that this was going to happen. The decision has already been made. But she hasn't done anything wrong. What's going on? This is my story, so this is how we're going to shoot it. The threat to national security? I mean, this is ridiculous. Please. The pain I feel in my heart. Well, that's real. I'm so sorry, Rose. Can I come in and talk? Okay, great. I'm gonna hey, DJ, do they right have now. the tele sensor? Let's just do it. All right. For fun. All right. Wait, a real one? Um, uh, I don't think they're really recording. Okay, go record. <laughs> okay, well, then they're not All right. hearing me. Here, we'll record from my phone. I think that might be Aaron Rose. Hey, Aaron, see. Can you Will you me? shoot this while I do it? Sure, of course. Why not? We might as well. Hi, whatever talent's on the other camera, can you hear me? All right, we're coming at you live from the Verizon booth here at NAB Show 2024. Oh, this is Lori H. Schwartz, your tech cat. And I'm here with the fabulous Kryn from Disguise. Kryn, what are you so excited about at today's show? I think what I love the best about NAB really is just all the people. To stay ahead, you need to expand your business by forecasting delivery routes with real-time data. With the most experience in the cloud, imagine how AWS can transform your business. To reach today's audiences, broadcasters must leverage versatile, scalable technology solutions to deliver to the array of channels spread across a three-dimensional media ecosystem. This begins by fully embracing a software-defined media supply chain, from the camera to the control room, right to the end user, fully glass to glass. Enabled by MediaMonk's software-defined production is a groundbreaking broadcast media pipeline that does just that. Picture a world where you can talk to your audience in the form of dynamic personas in real time and then integrate those insights directly into your broadcast. Our technology enables the delivery of personalized content to an increasingly granular audience. The latest addition to our software-defined production offering uses generative AI and transforms consumer insights into broadcast highlights and then serves them up directly to fans. At MediaMonks, we specialize in tailoring solutions that accelerate your time to market, reduce your costs, improve your sustainability, and cater to a wide spectrum of the media and entertainment industry. We achieve all of this by employing cutting-edge technology to transform how we engage with our audiences and give people the content they want to watch where they want to watch it. Visit MediaMonks' software-defined production page and connect with us today. You need to stay ahead in business. Use machine learning to predict what your customers will like. With the most experience in the cloud, imagine how AWS can transform your business. For over a century, local broadcasting has evolved with the needs of the community. We move past the stigmas of opinion journalism and bring the most relevant news on air, online, and on the go. You have trusted us with your news, sports, weather, and entertainment. Trust us to keep moving with you. Text TB to 52886 and tell Congress local broadcasting is here to stay. In a world where space cowgirls rule the lunar frontier, one group of fearless women blaze a cosmic trail in the moon dust like no other. 
armed with laser lassos, bionic unicorns, and a passion for bedazzling the unknown. They patrol the ranges of Mare Tranquility, tra Tranquility, whatever, the moon, in search of adventure and cosmic justice. And just maybe a little more zero gravity hairspray. Ride the cosmic waves of style with zero gravity hairspray. But when a bothersome bunch of lunar looters threatens to topple the tranquility of the final frontier, Sheriff Starburst must gather her galactic gals for the moon ride of their lives. You're just another shooting star about to fizzle out, Deputy Dazzler. Fizzle out? Honey, I'm like a comet. Once I cross you, you'll be starstruck for ages. From the creators of the Little Green Sheriff and Galactic Gideon comes an epic tale of courage, grit, and a whole lot of cosmic cowgirl sass. Strap on your space spurs, yoke up your unicorns, and prepare for the ultimate lunar showdown. Because when the cowgirls on the moon are in town, the universe had better watch out. Cowgirls on the moon. Yeehaw to the stars and beyond. You're a storyteller, negotiator, artist, innovator. Whatever your passion, whatever your skills, behind the scenes or in front, you belong here. A career in broadcast media. Local radio and TV stations in every town and city need someone like you. So do what you love and bring your talent to life. Make a difference in your community. Your passion, your skills, your career. You belong here. So this is our production volume. This is where we use a mix of light sources through our LED dome along with an augmented reality point cloud. This was supposed to be a making of type of thing. A behind the scenes documentary of an animated film we were producing. We did not know that this was going to happen. The decision has already been made. But she hasn't done anything wrong. What's going on? This is my story, so this is how we're going to shoot it. The threat to national security? I mean, this is ridiculous. Please. The pain I feel in my heart. Well, that's real. I'm so sorry, Rose. Can I come in and talk? Uh, freaking plan that out because it will not happen yeah. and you will get lost. So that's my plan. I have like 10 places. I'm like, oh, that looks cool. This looks cool. Yeah. One of them is scenery. Yes. Um, and then you, you just mark it down, put it in the map, and then you just do your route. Yeah, and then plug scenery a little bit more. Like, is there anything else happening? At your booth that folks need to make sure that they get on their map and their calendar? Yeah, so right now, actually with Scenery, everyone who stops by our booth, we're giving away like one free month of our pro plan with that. Unlimited projects, you get upgraded storage space, so we give you like 100 gigabytes of like cloud storage. And then also you get to use our AI editor completely for free. So if you have like a podcast, you get a long form YouTube videos, you upload that footage. 
footage, you take the one hour long footage, and we can cut it down immediately to like 30 seconds for you to upload to social media. So, well, speaking of which, I think we're going to do something really special with this interview, right? It, yes, exactly. Oh. Well, speaking of cutting things to social media, part of what we're doing here, I'm going to put this interview into edit, our editor, and we're going to cut this, and I'll say, give me every moment that Derek was hilarious and made Nikki laugh. And <laughs> It'll just give me two hours of footage back because, yes. you know, that happens so many times. And the AI is that good as well? It's that, it's that good. It really is. Yeah. So stop by the booth. Uh, you can get the one month free, um, and we'll love to say hi. Yep. And make sure if you want to see what Derek is doing on Scenery, check out our Instagram. Plug your Instagram really quick. You can follow me at D-E-R-E-K-X-I-A-O underscore. Amazing. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, okay. enjoy the rest of the bye show. Bye. bye. This is Ed Evenson. Operations Manager at Rural Radio, Channel 147 on Sirius XM. You're watching the NAB Show, live, produced by Broadcast Beat. Hey, I'm Haley Arantia from ABC's The Goldbergs, and I'm super excited to get ready for my tour this spring. Thanks so much for watching NAB Show Live, produced by Broadcast Beat. Howdy, I'm Jack Harris, a quasi-journalist with News Radio 970 WFLA, Tampa Bay. You're watching NAB Show Live. Hi everyone, this is Christy Krueger from WPLG-TV. And I'm Janice Fernandez. Greetings from sunny South Florida. You are watching NAB Show Live. Produced by Broadcast Beat. Have a great day. Hi, I'm Cindy Edwards. And I'm Jerry Penacoli. We're coming to you from WFLA in Tampa, Florida. Where we host the syndicated show Daytime. You're watching NAB Show Live. Produced by Broadcast Beat. Have a great time and what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. I'm Kid Kelly, and you're watching NAB Show Live, produced by Broadcast Beat. Hey, it's Kirk Harnack with the Telos Alliance and weekend meteorologist at WSMV-TV Nashville. You're watching NAB Show Live, produced by Broadcast Beat. Hi, everyone. This is Christy Krueger, anchor and health reporter right here at WPLG-TV in South Florida, and you're watching the NAB Show Live. <laughs> NAB represents America's premier local radio and television broadcasters. So we needed a studio here at NAB that could meet those state-of-the-art expectations. We're really excited here at NAB to give everyone the opportunity to produce content in an actual broadcast studio. We're using the exact same technology and production workflows that television stations across the country use. I've been a television producer for a long time and worked in some pretty cool studios, but the first time I came here and saw this 31 foot video wall, I immediately went into brainstorm mode, just thinking of all of the different things that you could do with it. The possibilities are endless. You could do news, you could do reality shows, you could do lifestyle shows, you could do political messages, you could do commercials. And this is a perfect place for associations in Washington, D.C. to produce content, including live webcasts. Really anything that you could think of can be produced here because of the versatility of the wall. The NAB studio was built for professional broadcast content and it was also designed as a place where our partners can demonstrate the latest lighting, camera, and audio and video display technology to the broadcast industry. That means if you produce your show or content at our NAB studio, you'll always be using the most cutting edge gear. The other great thing about having a studio at the NAB headquarters are the main different amenities that we have here. We have an underground parking garage, we have meeting rooms and a conference center, plus the building is located in one of the most vibrant areas of Washington, D.C. You've got hotels, dining, and the Washington National Stadium just steps away. We're excited to give people the opportunity to produce content in a cutting-edge broadcast studio. Producers from inside and outside the industry will appreciate how creative you can be with the latest technologies. Welcome back to the 2024 NAB Show live stream. I'm Paul with the Stream Geeks, and I'm joined with Andy from AMD, who's going to tell us a little bit about what they're doing in the live streaming and video production industry. So thanks so much for having me, Paul. Today, we're showing off uh, AMD technologies for the data center as well as for workstations. So one of the products we're showing off is a product that we call the MA35D. This is our Emmy-winning technology for video transcode. We're also showing off our Threadripper Pro processors, as well as our Radeon Pro graphics processors for workstations. Uh, we're featuring solutions here from some of our key partners, like Dell, HP, Lenovo, Supermicro, and others. 
It's such a cool, you, which one do you want to start with? Because you've got so, such a great... Hello and welcome to Broadcast Beat Studios. I'm Ryan Salazar, the founder, here to give you a special behind the scenes tour of our facility. Let's go. Welcome to Control Room A. Of course, we have everything you'd expect in a master control room. Audio console, the ability to shade cameras, video switcher, teleprompter, even live audience messaging with the public. Of course, multi-viewers and everything else that you would expect for the ability to see all the different feeds that are going through the facility. This is our production hallway. Of course, we have a conference room so you can meet with your clients. And on the left of me. And then here is Control Room B on my right. And yet another control room over here. This room is our live shot room. So in our live shot room, we have the ability to go live on any of the television networks worldwide. We work with Fox News, uh, CNN, ABC News, uh, TBN, all sorts of uh, networks all over the world, even Al Jazeera, uh, for the ability to get their guests live on national and international television. We also have a second location in downtown Fort Lauderdale, and that's what it specializes in. So now we're going to go back down our production hallway just a little bit more. Of course, we've got a nice little kitchen and then our data center. Our data center is the, really the heart of the facility because it allows us the ability to connect with facilities all over the world and, and be able to do all sorts of special things. The facility is built like a television station. So we've got news rundown systems and graphic servers and ISO recorders and uh, even the ability to transmit over Live View and LTN or IP, even additional satellite. So this is our data center. We've got a second row behind this rack and then now we're gonna take you into hair and makeup. So in hair and makeup, of course, when you're doing a large production, you need the ability to handle multiple talent, organize wardrobe, we even have a wardrobe department upstairs, and have four or five makeup artists simultaneously for a film or whatever you're doing. This is our green room, and in our green room, of course, is where people chill out and get ready to go on the air. So now we're gonna go back into the second part of our facility, and that is down at the other end by Studio D. We've got laundry, by the way. <laughs> so we've got over 5,000 live and on-demand fitness classes. So we've got laundry machines, we've got a shower, we've got a whole bunch of restrooms. So the ability to do something massive and at scale that way. Uh, this is our blue room, an even larger green room. Just we call it the blue room because it's a nether. This is Ryan Sals, our NAB show, Lex Krakowski. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be at NAB show. It's like, like I said in every interview, it's like a, it's a family reunion, you know? Absolutely. It's so good to see so many known, uh, familiar faces and, and be in this crowd. It's, it's absolutely ex exhilarating. Yep. So tell us about uh, Deep Dub and what you guys do. Absolutely. So Deep Dub is the most accredited AI dubbing company today. We've dubbed thousands of hours of content for multiple partners and customers that are actually, a lot of them are here, around here. Uh, we use generative AI and different technologies to actually expand and enable new opportunities for our customers to reach new uh, global audiences. Okay, so excuse the ignorance, but dubbing, you're, you're translating different languages? Yes, we actually, we take a, think of a TV show, we take it in English, let's say, and then we are able to, using advanced technologies, we're able to take it into different languages and make it accessible for people in Latin, Latin America, in Europe, etc. Wow, that's, that's, that's pretty exciting stuff. So uh, what's the customer persona that Deep Dub AI is looking to help? Uh, uh, it's the, the supply chain managers, the localization people, the operation teams. Uh, in today's economy where the studios are downsizing, mm -hmm. There is a, 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 a dire need for expanding and enabling technologies that actually help them you know, scale up without increasing the size of the team. Got it. Okay. So do you have any news announcements to share, like anything special that's happening with you guys right now? Yeah. Well, first of all, we are super excited to be hosted here and be featured by the AWS m and &E team um, um, here at, the, at, the, at their booth. Um, we are showcasing our platform there and people can come in and have an interactive demo 
of you know using their voices and and, and literally kind of like uh, I would say even mini produce a trailer within a few minutes in multiple languages. Uh, other than that, I'm participating here also in a panel uh, about generative AI for unscripted, um, and you know, uh, very very excited for, of the partnership and uh, uh, you know we have with the AWS team. Yeah, you know, it's really crazy what AI is doing to, to everything, right? <laughs> Absolutely, I think we're just at the beginning, and uh, it's a very very exciting time to be at. Right, it's just you know getting to a comfortability with everything, and it's quite exciting uh, how it's evolving all the industries and helping us do things more efficiently. You know, um, so how can NAB attendees learn more about Deep Dub? Uh, first and foremost, if you're still here, come to the AWS booth, have a hands-on interactive uh, you know experience and, and uh, demo of the platform. Other than that, always feel free to reach out to me and anyone from the Deep Dub team. You can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, or the website, deepdub.ai. Got it, all right. Well, we're going to toss this to Aaron Rose in just a second here, but again, Oz Krakowski, Chief Business Development Officer at DeepDub, wishing you an awesome 2024 NAB shows. Great chatting. Oh, my all right, off to you, Aaron Rose. I hope you're doing well. Been a, it's been a year. We're back. Hi there. We are so excited to be here. I'm Aaron Rose Widener, and I am here with Lori Schwartz. Hi, everybody. It's so nice to see awesome. you. So it's much. great to be here at NAB Show 2024. Woo! <laughs> another NAB. Another NAB and another great year of a lot of new technologies and a lot, a lot of converging things at the same time. It's yeah. really exciting. And so, Lori, you have, uh, you're doing a lot here. Yes. You always do a lot here. Yes. yes. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, us, yeah, uh, absolutely. So under our banner Story Tech, I'm running a show floor tour program. Um, which is a product that we've developed over time at a lot of different trade shows. And at NAB, we're specifically doing it so that people can go on a tour that's specific to their workflow or their community. So we actually have a machine learning and AI tour. We have a new workflows tour, which is focusing on virtual production. Um, we have an overview show for folks that have never been to NAB before, and we have a data tour as well. And it's all broken out so that if you're needing like an omakashi, like a quick hits, you know, chef's taste of what's on the floor, a two hour walk around with a professional to sort of explain what's on the floor. And then we hope everyone goes back and checks into what they want. But it's all there to contextualize the show because there is a lot going on and not everybody has hours and hours to figure out exactly where they need to go. Yeah. Is that so true? Now, I know you don't have favorites, yeah. so we're not going to, there are no favorites here, but are there some highlights um, or some booths that you're seeing that are doing things that are innovative that you're really enjoying when you're hitting these booth tours? Well, of course, I love the Verizon booth. <laughs> Thank you for that, Lori. I actually do like the story that you're telling about what's happening at live events and in venue because I think that's really exciting, both as someone who is a big sports fan. I grew up with the New York Islanders, and I'm very excited that NHL is here. Um, and talking about what's happening to power in venue to not only make the experience for the sports franchise better, but also for the consumer. So that's yeah. really exciting to me. I think AWS, Roe, and a bunch of other booths have really exciting showcases of what's happening in screen control. So the whole nature of the workflow of how movies are being made in virtual production, how LED walls are being controlled, what's happening with Unreal Engine, and just the very nature of post-production moving to the front of the pipeline. All of that is actually live being demonstrated at a lot of those booths. So that's, I think that's really exciting. And then in South Hall this year is a new creator lab that really centers on the creator economy. And that's huge and growing. And I don't think people realize the millions of dollars being spent in the creator economy. Um, and the other really interesting sort of sub-trend that's happening and that's being spoken about a lot of the panels is that because of the strikes, because of COVID, and just because of the nature of the industry, a lot of um, independent filmmakers are now throwing off their own shingle. Yeah. And so this concept that W-2s are going to be going away and you have all these um, independent professionals who are making their way in the business doing what they do best, but doing it outside of a big studio system. And so these are all trends that are all coalescing around the show. Yeah, oh my gosh, I think you hit everything. Uh, 
and there's so much like we could do a section on each of yeah, those yeah, segments yeah. that yeah, you yeah, talked yeah. about because I think it's so true even like with the LED wall workflow and move, moving that post production to the front of that production yeah. workflow we've been seeing that for so long now yes, yeah. and now we're actually seeing that in action and starting to be streamlined and smarter and all of that it's and so really, it's so interesting too because even in the virtual production workflow there are new changes happening daily so we've all heard so much about AI yep. and what we're trying to do here on the show floor is move away from the boogeyman of those two letters <laughs> and actually talk about cases and so Gen AI has come up a lot predictive analysis has come up with machine learning and so if you go to certain booths you're gonna actually hear what the real story is about how they're leveraging AI but in virtual production right now Gen AI is becoming a way to build the background, to build a story world. Yeah. And so now filmmakers and creatives can actually create worlds that they never could do before on a budget. Yeah. And so the, the whole world of storytelling, I think, is really opening up. Yeah, I agree with you. And I think it's also really interesting what you hit on, even with like independent film, right? And how I think these filmmakers are with these tools. Yes. Right, they're able to create these worlds that they weren't before, and so it's just so exciting, yeah. and it's going to open up that kind of new idea of filmmaking, new stories, um, where it's it's we get back to storytelling, we get back to we, the we actual totally script. And and just to once again tie it back to what you guys are doing, it's that 5G connection that's going to really matter because if someone's in Kansas and yeah. they're uploading files to the cloud on a live shoot that connection is going to be more important than ever. And that workflow, the way that content is going to move around up to the cloud, back down to whoever's editing, and the ability for all the different parties in the workflow to be able to view the content in real time, that's a really important story too. So all of this stuff, it's harder and harder to separate out the trends mm -hmm. um, because they all coalesce into workflow. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is so great. Oh my gosh, Lori, what a great way to kick I'm us so, off. I'm so happy to be here. This is like <laughs> This is the happening booth, ladies and gentlemen, here at NAB Show 2024. You got to be here, Las Vegas, baby. <laughs> All right, and so we're going to go to a quick break, and we'll be back with someone else. Hi, everyone. I'm meteorologist Craig Adams from CBS 6 WRGB TV in Albany, New York, the world's very first television station. You're watching NAB Show Live. Well, I'm back in Cine Central, Central Hall. I'm in the presence of reality TV show star royalty. Derek Shaw, how are you? you? I'm doing great, Nikki. Thank you for having me. <laughs> now tell me, why are you here at NAV Show? Uh, I'm here with actually my company, Scenery. Uh, it's a new video editor. They do AI to cut down videos to short clips, and it's fully collaborative. So, you know, most times you have to, like, edit a video and export it. This one, edit a video, share a link and it goes wherever you need it to. I love it. So you're heading up growth at Scenery, correct? I am. I am. They just brought me on to lead on growth. Um, we'll see how long that goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully it keeps growing. But speaking of which, coming from a reality show, okay. being the winner of Amazing Race, Thank what you. was it, season 35? Season 34, actually. Season 34. <laughs> I'll win 35, too. Yes, so, bring them know, back. Awesome. We yeah, both could be true. Yeah. But I'm just talking in a sense where, in a way, when you're a public figure now, okay. right? You, yeah, like a super big You kind of start becoming like an influencer, and then you kind of mm. start needing to make content all of a sudden. It's, so it's can you tough. tell me that? You know, I just like, I can't even walk outside my house without someone recognizing me, <laughs> wanting my autograph. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, you know, I, I used to work in tech, um, and I was like a software engineer, and I do this reality show. And it completely changed the direction of my life. I quit my job, I became a content creator. So I was a content creator for two years, editing videos, shooting, traveling, you know, you know the lifestyle. I think. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it was great. Uh, and I feel like now I'm in AB and I'm seeing so many new things. I'm like, wow, I wish I had that two years ago. Absolutely. So yeah. coming to a show like this, you're seeing all the tech, all the technology, the software, the hardware. What are you most excited to see here? Um, definitely some of the software. Look, I'll say my background, I'm not really like a videographer, so it's kind of shooting on like my iPhone, I have like a little Sony camera. Don't, but, don't say little, okay? Because at the yeah, end of the day... it's an iPhone 14, put some respect, put okay? Some respect yeah, this, on is a, the... this is a good iPhone. <laughs> but, you know, like there's some really cool, I mean, if you just look behind us, like, yeah. look at these amazing cameras. 
Pros, and I just would not know at all how to operate that. So I'm here, like the software is really awesome. Like there's so many things I can just speed up your flow and like you can get from raw footage all the way to an edit in like 30 seconds. And that's what I, that's what I love. Yeah, and from a first time attendee at NAV show, what was your first thought walking into the show floor doors today? I was exhausted. I think I walked in, I immediately started gasping for air. I was like, I want water, I want food. This place is huge. Like, what, how many people, like, how many exhibits? Usually between 60 to 100,000 people come to this show. That's, so, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I think I just wanted to share, I hope, I hope that I don't put you on blast here, but I was just visiting Derek at the scenery booth back at uh, West. West Hall. Hall. Yeah. We did an impromptu interview at the AWS a news desk. Thank you very much. Yes. And he was like, oh, I thought it was going to be easy because right after our interview here, we're just going to go right there. I'm like, it's no. Not. We, we yeah. shared a moment in the Vegas um, loop, right? We should tell, like, we had to take a Tesla. We had to go underground. Like, it was, it's a process. Like, that's how big this place is. Wow. Yeah. Well, okay, so what is your plan afterwards? How are you navigating NABO? And what do you want to, I guess, see Look, the most outside? Here, this is my NAB show. show. Welcome back to NAB Show Live. I'm your host, Nikki Sun. It is a beautiful Monday, and we're here at the brand new Creator Lab in South Hall. And speaking of creators, I'm here with a great friend of mine, Mari Takahashi, a.k.a. Atom Mari. How are you? I'm doing so well. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being my first interview after a wild opening NAB Show party last night. You're here early, and I appreciate you for that. You're here, too. I appreciate <laughs> it. We are here with full of energy and excitement for the rest of the week. Yeah, so you've been a veteran to NAV show. You're both on the creator side and also on the professional filmmaking side as a host, as an actor. What has been the biggest difference for you juggling all these tools? I think if anything, it is learning respect for both sides and uh, learning what what I whatever I can and just being a sponge and, and learning everything on traditional side and the digital media side and I think the marriage of that at NAB has been so exciting because there's a lot we can wor work on and learn from each other. Amazing. Now, as a creator and as a filmmaker, coming to NAB show, what is your game plan? Like how do you identify, like do you, when you're in the creator zone, do you say you're a creator then when you go to like the exhibitors with the filmmakers, I'm a filmmaker, or how, how does that work for you in terms of identity? I think, you know, that's, oh, I love how you bring in identity <laughs> because I think it is a little bit of that. Um, it, it's, it's juggling my imposter syndrome mm -hmm. while also just being here to learn. And I think that's my approach. I, I approach it as I know some stuff. I know I don't know everything. And I'd love to be able to learn from other people and just be uh, kind of a blank slate in that sense. I have what, 14 years of digital media experience under my belt. I come from theater and I'm, I'm in acting now. And uh, th there's still so much room to learn. Absolutely. And what are you most excited about to see at any week show? I would say, you know, I have to say it's people. <laughs> I just, I just want to learn people's stories and why they're here, what brings them here every year, why they create and why they make art. Yeah, and so can you tell us some of the projects that you've been working on and maybe some of the exhibitors that are here that have maybe partnered with you on things or have been a part of your projects? Let's see, I just wrapped a short this this past weekend. Um, I know that Red has always been kind of a... Um, a partner in, in filmmaking and that's from me not being on the DP or directing side that's just me being in front of the camera um, but yeah there's there's been a lot of folks and and now I'm blanking because I'm like oh no I gotta say that but but I think uh, yeah I would say partners across the board for me personally from the gaming side to the filmmaking side yeah Amazing. Well, last thing before I let you go on this bright and early day is um, what are you going to afterwards? Like where, where can we follow you on the show floor next as the place to be? I'm spending a lot of time on the creator side and then the uh, film and TV side as well. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Mari. Make sure you follow her at Atomic Mari. Catch us on NAVshow.com. And I'm here to toss it to Aaron Rose. Hi there, 
are. Thanks, Nikki. Um, I am here with Corinne, and Corinne, it's so nice to have you here. Thank you, Erin Rose. So good to be here. <laughs> I'm so excited for Navy this year. It's awesome. And Corinne, can you tell us a little bit about what you do and who you work with? Yeah, yeah so I work for a company called Disguise, and we power LED stages around the world. We do a lot of um, work with broadcast and film and TV. So on the broadcast side, we're actually working with WWE right now, powering their new stage. We're also working with Sports Center, powering their stage in Bristol. Um, so right now, we're here showcasing all the different stories we're doing. Um, we have 24 speaker sessions across the four days. Are so you make serious? Sure find yeah, 24? 24, and I'm managing all of them. So oh come gosh. find me if you want to know where we're at. <laughs> wow. And I think one thing that you mentioned that I thought was very cool is I was asking Corinne if she had a booth here, and she said no, but... <laughs> we do not have a booth. We have seven booths that we're powering. So instead of doing our own disguise booth this year, what we're doing is we're partnering with companies like Row, b and Kino Flow, and we're using our technology on their set. And something that's really cool is that I've seen a lot of partnerships come together for NAB and trade shows in general, and it's really awesome to see how these companies are now making a system, right? So it's like you go to different stages, and it's not just a company that's representing it. It's usually eight or nine companies that are all working together to make the camera work, the tracking, the LED volume, um, and then you have all these great speakers coming together to talk. So it's really a great collaboration that's happening here on the show floor. Yeah, that's so great. And what, you know, earlier, just like a few minutes ago, I was talking to Lori, and you you saw some of that. But, um, you know, we were talking about LED workflows and how they've kind of started evolving more, and they're, they're starting to also solidify a little bit more, right, than like when LED walls first came out a few years ago. Exactly. And so I would love your thoughts on that because that's what you do, and that's what the space that you work in. Yeah, I think right now the whole thing is about being thought leaders in the market, right? So. Although VP is about five years old now, we're still trying to build a network of people who are going to talk about it and share the news. So right now we're doing a lot of VP guidelines, um, a lot of just connecting with different companies and um, guilds like the Producers Guild and um, directors, just making sure people know how to use VP. Because VP is just so important in terms of having different tools to use on set, right? We're not here to replace any workflows. We're here to give you additional tools um, to use in your set. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's so true. And again, it kind of opens things up for filmmakers, right? Exactly. That they're able to look at, how could I create something a little differently? Um, I think one thing that you guys did over at Disguise that I thought was so cool was that short film that you created last year um, that you and Addie were involved in. And do you want to talk a little bit about that? And sure. Okay. Yeah, so we created a short film called um, Space Writer. And the whole point of this film was to show that you can film an indie short in in five days, really. It was only five days on set. We had eight-hour days, so um, it really wasn't a long time to get it done, and it made a 13-minute short. We have submitted it to film festivals, and we've actually won quite a few at this point, so it just shows that VP does work. You know, you create really good quality in a short amount of time compared to going on set and taking, you know, go, uh, taking the time to to build on set. So, yeah, it's been working really well. Yeah. And and what was the, do you have, um, can you speak to just like what the pre-production looked like for creating that film too? Because I think, again, we're thinking about, we're talking about how does that workflow that was normally in post now going into pre, you know? Right, exactly. So we're seeing a big shift from post to pre, just like Aaron Rose said. So right now what we're doing is we're making the, the environments beforehand. So it takes a lot of time with the director figuring out like what they want, what their vision is, their creative process, and then using the VX, VFX team instead of after the show, but before it. So then uh, making all the assets usually takes, you know, months to maybe sometimes even years, depending on the project. Um, and then that's all done in the heavy load in the beginning. So at the end, it's just leaving it to like last minute VFX work versus um, in, we focus more on in-camera VFX right now with VP. That's so cool. Well, thank you so much, Corinne. Thank you for coming to talk with us yeah. and talking about virtual production. I mean, I think it's still a hot topic, and I think especially with AI and Gen AI, we're really looking at that as how is that going to evolve and how is that going to help filmmakers. So I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And have a great NAB, everybody. Great. Thank you so much. And Ryan, I'm tossing back to you. Hope you're over there. <laughs> Thanks so much, Aaron Rose. It's uh, it's great to be with you guys today, and 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 all the hearing all the interviews that everyone's doing. We are in West Hall with a guy with, that has a very special company, Nomad Media. Adam Miller, how you doing, sir? I'm fantastic today. How are you, Ryan? Doing great. So tell us about Nomad, what you what you do, and how you got started. So I'm a big fan of Alphabet Soup. So we're an OTT ma'am, meaning that we're an over the top media asset management solution for your media. Our customers are going to be customers that have a tremendous amount of content, petabytes of content, and they have no idea what's going on inside the media catalog. So we're going to use AI, we're going to use the technology stacks of lots of vendors, bring it all together, and create a Rolodex over the customer's media, 
And now they've got the ability to search, discover, share, collaborate, and really bring it to life. Got it. All right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share an example because we had a conversation, and then it really helps people put it into perspective, I think. So I used to work for Omnicom Media, a large ad agency conglomerate, owns a bunch of agencies. And in Fort Lauderdale, we were at a, a production facility, uh, a post-production facility. Back, at, back in the day, we had Final Cut Server, and we had about a quarter of a million assets that we loaded in. And, uh, but the problem was is that the, the human being had to put those tags into the system and say, this is a red Nissan Altima, this is a gray Nissan Rogue, it's a 2017 model, blah, 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 you know, all that stuff. So you're telling me that you can literally put the footage in and it does what? It just magically works. So the key is, I, we like to say those pesky humans, yep. those humans get in the way, to your point, they're not going to tag it right, they're not going to do it when they need to, it's not going to be a very effective solution. So that's where AI actually is beneficial. The, the uh, buzz term of today, generative AI that the whole world's using, we treat that a little bit like Fight Club, mm -hmm. where the more, first rule of generative AI, you don't talk about generative AI. Instead, it's just happening magically behind the scenes. Right. It's a huge part of our technology, but yep. in reality, that's what's doing all that tagging and all that analysis. Yeah, the, the problem that we had is that we loaded in a quarter of a million assets, but nobody was doing their job properly and tagging it. So you had terabytes of data that was wasting space and wasting money and time. Well, that's exactly it. Why have all this content and it's not going to come to use? Right. So the AI, it's, it's frankly, I'm astounded every time we use it. Mm -hmm. It can come back and it can say that's the red Nissan Altima that's in a shot that's being on a desert scene with a blue moon behind it. And that AI will bring it to you instantly. You don't have to do anything other than just simply turn it on. One of our features that we're displaying here at Nomad, we're very excited by, is a new big blue button. That's it. That's the whole feature. You push the blue button, and now you've got all the AI comes to life behind the scenes. Amazing, and I think, I think of some film facilities, and they literally have a, an I.O. station, they call it, and they have an I.O. person that then loads all that stuff in and has to tag it. But right. this changes everything. Well, it does, but more importantly, you can actually tie it into that, st the humans are still valuable. I don't want to make it seem like the AI does No, everything. well, I get it, but, I, but it, I think it helps the humans do their job and do it faster, get access to the footage faster, and more efficiently. Well, that's exactly right. In fact, let the and humans... find the right footage. Well, yeah. and let the humans do the thing they're good at. Right. The AI is going to do an amazing job, but if that piece of content is tied to a specific project, to a specific shoot, maybe it's out there in a specific area of the world, maybe the human knows that, and other the AI can't ever figure that out, sure. so we marry it together. Right. So we actually allow the human to still do some of that management, but we don't focus exclusively on AI. The second piece that's important, too, is that there's a lot of AI out there today. Everybody's talking about it. There's a million different models. So what we've done is we take the individual models that are the most relevant for our types of content, and we run the right ones at the right times. So the humans don't have to figure that technology piece out either. It's so crazy, right? <laughs> it's so exciting, you know, because, I mean, the, the thought of just loading the footage in and going and having your lunch and coming back, and when you come back, you can actually create a production without having to search through dozens or hundreds of hours of footage, you know? Well, that actually leads to the second half of it, which is that now the AI can not only help you search, but it also can help you do the things like highlights. There could be an hour of video, mm -hmm. and we'll actually analyze that hour, come up with the top three highlights and the most exciting elements. We have a really great demonstration that we do with the Terminator, and it finds some of those really cool scenes in it, and it knows that that's the most exciting part in the video. It highlights those, creates a 10-second clip for you, even puts a caption underneath that says these, the villain is doing this, that, or the other, and the AI <laughs> figures it all out, and it's now completely at, at your disposal. You can now use it, you can share it, social media, it's amazing. So how the heck does it know? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's a living thing. We can't know, we can't know what it's thinking inside its head, if right? I knew, if I knew that, I'd probably be in a whole different business. <laughs> exactly. So, all right, so do you have any news or announcements to share with us? You know, I'd say that probably the biggest ones are around that generative AI, but Fight Club, we don't talk about generative AI, we talk about the blue button and being able to bring that to customers' use very easily. What's most important about it is that as a business user, I don't want to know about all the techie stuff. I just want to type in that simple thing and say, this is what I'm looking for. So for us, it's the, the more we get this, the more features we release, the simpler they become and the more easy they are to use. That's going to be one of the biggest things we've released today. Wow, that, that's uh, super exciting. Um, how can NEB's learn, NEB attendees learn more about your uh, company? So we're also very excited. We've got a new booth this year. We're here in the West Hall, W uh, West Hall 1359. Okay. So love to be able to come by. We've got seven different demo stations set up, and we're doing live demonstrations on the fly with, in fact, you'd give us your search term, and we're finding it in the media. Very cool, very cool. Well, thank you so much.
Adam Miller of Nomad Media, uh, coming from a sunny place, Southern, Southern California, Fort Lauderdale here. It's awesome. Uh, we're going to toss it off to Nikki. Awesome, thank you so much, Ryan. We're back, let me take you back to South Hall Creator Lab. I'm here with my great friend, Brad, who flew in all the way from Hawaii last night. How are you? I'm doing all right, thanks for having me. Are you on any jet lag or? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a little tired, but I'm, I'm doing okay. Well, you know, you're a DP, you're a director, you're a veteran at NAB Show. What brings you back to NAB Show every year? Oh man, it's, it's been a minute uh, because I had a kid during the pandemic and that kept me at home a little bit. But it's great to be back in Vegas, looking at some lenses, cameras, talking to people, just meeting a lot of a lot of creators out here. That's amazing. I know that one pandemic and when you had a kid, that was the one year you didn't come to NAB show, yes. right? Yeah. How was that feeling? Did you feel it FOMO? I mean, I, I definitely missed all of the, the faces and all the cool tech, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's great to be back. Yeah, so can you tell me like what companies or brands or exhibitors are you excited to see most to help you with your workflow? Um, some of the things that I'm really looking for are data management software. So things that are going to help us with our workflow, things that are going to help us with just knowing what footage is where, and then just some of the storage systems that are, are from there. Very cool. And I see you brought a friend along. Is that the Komodo X? Komodo X with a little bit of a vintage Nikon 28 on there. It's a stormtrooper. It is a stormtrooper. Kind of a happy marriage between these two brands loving it yeah I hear you also have a Nikon too we also have the Nikon ZF thanks to my buddy uh, Tony at Pro Camera Hawaii for that mm -hmm. No, because I mean we know the acquisition that just happened yes. but it's cool to see that you as a director and DP still operate and use both absolutely <laughs> absolutely it's a happy family it's a happy family all right so veteran I always ask this to my veterans mm -hmm. any advice to first timers like what is your game plan to tackle the show floor you got to know the show floor. So you, you map it all out. So I have a notes app for all the booths that I want to hit, all of their, their numbers, their, their rooms, their halls, because then I can just kind of map them all out. Uh, if you don't know that, you're just kind of going back and forth through the maze of different stuff. Uh, but having, having that and then having a good pair of walking slash running shoes will keep you on your feet all day. Yeah, so I know that we're at the Creator Lab. It's mm -hmm. brand new, yes. right? We're talking about tools for creators on the go. Are you finding yourself too, I know that you're a DPM filmmaker, but are you finding yourself more needing to create on the go? Absolutely. I mean, I think that's the beautiful thing about like a Komodo X where you can have cinema quality stuff in a backpack. Didn't do that before. Um, and, and being able to do this on the fly, I feel like there's a lot of transition between people who have been in the industry for decades, trying to learn this new way of capturing stuff for yourself, helping your brand, your story to, to get shared out with the rest of the world and tools that you can see at NAB are perfect places to, to find this marriage between content creator and industry professional. Oh, I love that so much. And my last thing is, do you have a shout out for the people that you just see constantly at the show? I know you missed out that mm. one year. So is yep. there anything you'd like to say to those folks? Um, I mean, the industry is changing so rapidly. There's so many new tools and technologies that help our our industry grow, um, but it also helps a lot of these new independent filmmakers, creators do amazing things. Um, so the, I, I love what, what all of the guys are doing at, at Red and Icon for sure, but the, the small rig, the, you know, the SWIT, the, all of these independent companies that are building amazing tools, shout out to all of them for helping us do our jobs better. Amazing. And where can folks find and see your work? Uh, at Brad Watanabe is my personal Instagram. At BRAD Studio is our, our company Instagram. BRADstudio.com is where you find all of our work. Amazing. Well, thank you so much. Thank you from, for joining us all the way from Hawaii. Yeah, Safe absolutely. travels back. And we're taking it back to Aaron Rose. Thank you. Thanks so much, Nikki. I am here today with Eunice Park. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Aaron Rose, for <laughs> hosting this and having me on. And could you tell us a little bit, Eunice, of who you work with? Yes, um, I work with a company called Zixi. It is um, leaders in moving broadcast quality live video over any different type of network. And uh, we do a lot with this Verizon partnership. So we'll I'm sure we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a sec. Okay, um, I did not tell her to say that, but yeah. Um, uh, but There's a free Verizon promo right there. Where's Josh, where's Tim? Um, can you talk a little bit about what you're finding at NAB that you're excited about? 
Um, so it, it I think just, the, yeah, <laughs> we were just talking anything. about anything. Um, no, I think what is very exciting is being able to interact with so many customers kind of back to back to back. Usually, you know, you go for me with the team, we'll go to London and do the meetings with the yeah. London customer or customers out in London, or, you know, we go to specific customers on the West Coast or in New York, you, you see your customers, but here it's kind of a, an aggregate of customers back to back to back and giving them a showcase of all things new um, yeah. that happens to time with the release at NAB or IBC. And then also yeah. getting to see different partnerships and talk about some of the stuff that we've been working towards from a milestone and a deliverable angle. So. There's a lot of changes in the industry right now, as you know, as we know. As we all know. Um, so that's been really um, helpful for us to just kind of hear reality-wise what is going, what the impact is um, on the buy side, then also on the sell side, and even from a vendor partnership level. So um, yeah, just really excited to be around the energy of everything here, at, you know, and the stuff that we're selling to, the people we're selling to, our customers. So I think those are the main things that I'm excited about. But I love that you said that about the customers being global and being able to see customers all in one place, because I think that's so true is that normally we do, we go to these meetings and we just have like a stream of meetings. But I think that one of the things that I find so magical about NAB is it always feels like a reunion to me of like <laughs> seeing everybody yes. from every part of your life, right? Yes. That you have known for yeah, 10, 15, 20 industry, years, yeah, you know, sure. where it's yeah. like, we're, we're just all getting to say hi and like I'll be standing yes. here and I'll see 10 people walk around exactly. and you're just like, oh, good. It's exactly. nice to see you. What are you up to? So, exactly. so I thank you for bringing that up because I do think that's one of the things that's so magical about NAB. Absolutely. Yeah. We call it the community college within our world, right? <laughs> yeah. We amazing. kind of all know each other from different classes back in the day. Yeah. yeah. It's so true. It's so true. And so how are you, I mean, I think one of the things, obviously, AI is a buzzword this year, but I also think that IP is a buzzword in terms of how people are broadcasting. And so how are you finding that working with Zixig? Yeah, I mean, I think we talk about ourselves as pioneers of moving live video content over IP, uh, namely public internet or, con or networks that are very difficult to move yeah. content over. Um, and you're right, I, we've been talking about this migration or this path to cutting over to internet or co cutting over to IP and I do see that as a reality. We see this in workflows where they're trying to do satellite rationalization. So you got yeah. satellite as the old tech, everybody's trying to cloudify, yeah. they're trying to virtualize, uh, they're trying to really move things over to IP and it's not just the onesie twosie point to point. We're talking multi-point to multi-point yeah. workflows and doing that at scale. Um, I do think 5G is a mechanism, is a, is a network mechanism that uh, customers are trying to really utilize yeah. to push live content from a distribution angle. So, and that's some of the cool stuff that we are doing. Again, pre yeah. no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but it is something that is a yeah, reality that, that we're seeing. And you guys yeah. are rolling things out. Uh, you guys are rolling 5G uh, mechs out more and more. So I think that type of enablement allows, uh, that type of connectivity does allow um, something like a Zixi software to enable to be enabled to allow customers who are wanting, you know, high QoS yeah. uh, live video feeds into those, you know, over those networks. So, yeah, that is a reality. We also see a lot of direct to consumers who are moving. Uh, I mean, well, you know, they've already been in the cloud. So those type of use cases are only being magnified and only growing Market and scaling out. out. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Those are kind of just the highlights of what I'm hearing from customers in terms of where and how IP is being really prolific in terms of becoming the central way of moving content. Yeah, that's so great. That's so great. Well, thank you so much, Eunice. Yeah, it was so, so much, fun so talking to you. <laughs> yes. Thank you. And um, Ryan, I'm going to toss it back to you. And uh, thank you so much, Eunice, for being here. All right. Thanks so much, Aaron Rose. All right, it's great to have you, sir, from Grabio. Let's uh, maybe, maybe just mention your name, your title, and what you do. Sure, hi, I'm, I'm Gareth Capon. I'm the CEO of Grabio. So I run, uh, I run our business, a cloud production business for, for video covering both live production in, in the browser, but also clipping, editing, and AI-based sports automation. Yeah, so we, we've had conversations before, and it's really exciting to see how your technology has grown over the years, and that you can edit in the cloud or in the browser. That's right. I mean, we Started as a, a live clipping social social video business, so distributing short form content on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Right. But over the last sort of four or five years, we've built out a whole load of AI based assisted highlights and automation and editing tools, but also a full um, a full size TV gallery in the cloud in the browser. So multi camera sports production um, in in a fully distributed basis. So people all over the world. So what got you in? A, was there something you were doing? Were you in production and one day you thought, oh my gosh, it would be great? You know, like an aha moment that you had. 
I, I think that particularly the developments in, in live really came from the, the work that we did in the social video space. So yeah. social grew from short form to, to, you know, to live production, you know, alternative broadcasts. And that from there, we, we started to build the tools that look like a more of a traditional OB truck or, or TV gallery. Mm -hmm. And as we saw the, you know, the transition to people looking for more flexible and, and scalable cost effective solutions in live, we just continued to add. Obviously, the, the, uh, the ch changes that were driven through the, through the pandemic obviously try, did accelerate some of that, that demand. But actually, the big shift was moving from doing, uh, doing distribution on, on social media platforms to now doing TV, TV uh, production. Got it. So. Uh... Pardon my ignorance. So, so do does somebody load in their footage, and then is it is it temporarily the managers the assets are managed in the system, or how does that work? It's it's really based around live. So all of the feeds are generally coming into our system live. So whether that's that's cameras from a you know from a from a sports event um, or, or music or a news broadcaster out in the field. But then within within our system, you've got two. You can do two things. You can either create a live show, as you would do in a traditional TV gallery, or you can record those feeds in the cloud on AWS and start to create short form clips, highlights, and, and even AI based um, components. Of those segments, which then can be distributed to all of your on demand platforms. So we okay. cover we cover both sides of that in Gravio. Got it. All right. So now I have a question. I'm sure you got an answer for it. Um, hopefully you do. So so think about like. A basketball game. Actually, we have a client that we're working with at our studio. I can't really talk about who they are NDA, because of an NDA, but it's a really awesome client. So we're recording live television, and something happens, and you need to chop up a promo while the show is happening, but you want to continue recording and start editing. Can you do that? Absolutely. Yeah, so you can. we record everything in the cloud, and any number of users can access those same feed or feeds, whether that's ISOs coming from the court or whether it's the, you know, the, the program feed that will be going out to broadcasters. And people can start to create you know, clips, edits, and even log that content in real time, um, as well as taking clips from the content, putting into an edit, an edit um, within our own system, or taking those, uh, taking those segments out to, uh, to a third-party editing tool. But you could work on a file while it's being recorded. Exactly, and that's really what our focus is. It's around live and real-time distribution. So you can turn stuff around within seconds of it as yeah. it coming in live. That's fantastic, because you figure there's a basketball game going on, and you want to start making a promo for the end of the hour, and you've only got 20 minutes left, but you can't stop recording. And in a traditional setting, you have to stop recording before you start messing with the file or you're going to destroy the file almost, right? So. Exactly. And now, because of the demand for what's happening on the court, people want those 30 seconds after they've happened, not, not three hours or three days. So actually, a lot of our customers are turning that stuff around and distributing it in real time, seconds after it's happened on the court. Wow, that's amazing. All right, uh, anything else you'd like to share with us? I think that the... Look, AI is the big, um, the big discussion at, at NAB and really right across the industry this year. And I, I think that we, we, look at, we look at AI with a, with a much more of a human focus. So the, the tools that we've built this year are bringing sort of editorial workflow and acceleration to, to the systems rather than entirely relying on the AI. And I think that, that human-centered approach is pretty important. Yeah, and I, I agree with you. I'm noticing almost everybody I'm chatting with today especially all AI kind of stuff. It's just amazing, um, just wild. All right, Gareth, uh, I really appreciate you talking about Grabio with us. I'm sure I'll see you at another show coming up. Wishing you a great 2024 NAB show. Great, thanks so much. All right, we're going to send this off to a package, and we'll be back in just a little bit. So, sir, this is Ed Evenson, Operations Manager at Rural Radio Channel 147 on Sirius XM. You're watching the NAB Show live, produced by Broadcast Beat. Hey, I'm Haley Arantia from ABC's The Goldbergs, and I'm super excited to get ready for my tour this spring. Thanks so much for watching NAB Show Live, produced by Broadcast Beat. Howdy, I'm Jack Harris, a quasi-journalist with News Radio 970 WFLA, Tampa Bay. You're watching NAB Show Live. Hi everyone, this is Christy Krueger from WPLG-TV. And I'm Janice Fernandez. Greetings from sunny South Florida. You are watching NAB Show Live. Produced by Broadcast Beat. Have a great day. Hi, I'm Cindy Edwards. And I'm Jerry Penacoli. We're coming to you from WFLA in Tampa, Florida. Where we host the syndicated show Daytime. You're watching NAB Show Live. Produced by Broadcast Beat. Have a great time and what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. I'm Kid Kelly and you're watching NAB Show Live, produced by Broadcast Beat. Hey, it's Kirk Harnack with the Telos Alliance and weekend meteorologist at WSMV-TV Nashville. You're watching NAB Show Live, produced by Broadcast Beat. Hi, everyone. This is Christy Krueger, anchor and health reporter right here at WPLG-TV in South Florida. And you're watching the NAB Show Live.
NAB represents America's premier local radio and television broadcasters. So we needed a studio here at NAB that could meet those state-of-the-art expectations. We're really excited here at NAB to give everyone the opportunity to produce content in an actual broadcast studio. We're using the exact same technology and production workflows that television stations across the country use. I've been a television producer for a long time and worked in some pretty cool studios. But the first time I came here and saw this 31-foot video wall, I immediately went into brainstorm mode, just thinking of all of the different things that you could do with it. The possibilities are endless. You could do news, you could do reality shows, you could do lifestyle shows, you could do political messages, you could do commercials. And this is a perfect place for associations in Washington, D.C. to produce content, including live webcasts. Really anything that you could think of can be produced here because of the versatility of the wall. The NEB studio was built for professional broadcast content and it was also designed as a place where our partners can demonstrate the latest lighting, camera, and audio and video display technology to the broadcast industry. That means if you produce your show or content at our NEB studio, you'll always be using the most cutting edge gear. The other great thing about having a studio at the NEB headquarters are the many different amenities that we have here. We have an underground parking garage, we have meeting rooms and a conference center. Plus, the building is located in one of the most vibrant areas of Washington, D.C. You've got hotels, dining, and the Washington National Stadium just steps away. We're excited to give people the opportunity to produce content in a cutting-edge broadcast studio. Producers from inside and outside the industry will appreciate how creative you can be with the latest technologies. Welcome back to the 2024 NAB Show live stream. I'm Paul with the Stream Geeks, and I'm joined with Andy from AMD, who's going to tell us a little bit about what they're doing in the live streaming and video production industry. So thanks so much for having me, Paul. Today, we're showing off uh, AMD technologies for the data center as well as for workstations. So one of the products we're showing off is a product that we call the MA35D. This is our Emmy-winning technology for video transcode. We're also showing off our Threadripper Pro processors, as well as our Radeon Pro graphics processors for workstations. Uh, we're featuring solutions here from some of our key partners, like Dell, HP, Lenovo, Supermicro, and others. It's such a cool, you, which one do you want to start with? Because you've got so, such a great display here. So one of the things that I think is going to be compelling to start with is right behind us. Uh, this is a, a technology called View One from our partner at View. And so this is a turnkey virtual production solution. So it uses uh, hardware from our partner Puget Systems. And then again, our partner View uh, takes that Puget Systems hardware and creates the virtual production in a box solution behind us that you see. Very cool. Um, what, what's next? I mean, that, that is a really cool solution. Yeah, so as we walk around the booth and look at some of the technologies around here, uh, you can see the solutions that we've got from Supermicro with our partner Stratus Core. Uh, so they're showing uh, a solution from uh, Devant for, um, uh, for uh, AI uh, workflows with... Um, uh, like I said, taking a, a, a picture and, and putting it in, in different uh, backgrounds with stable diffusion. Uh, we're also showing our latest uh, mobile workstation solutions. So you see mobile workstations here from our partners HP and Lenovo with uh, an external GPU enclosure. So again, if you want to have uh, the performance uh, of a desktop workstation and the portability of a mobile workstation, you can put uh, into this docking station and get the full capabilities uh, of a desktop workstation uh, running from a, a mobile workstation. And then on this side of the booth, this is where we've got solutions from uh, Dell, HP, and Lenovo. Uh, so these are their latest workstations using AMD Threadripper Pro processors. Uh, again, we're showing... And we are back, and I am so excited to be here right now with Amy Bloom from Practical Magic. Thank you so much for being here, Amy. Of course. I'm really excited to be here. Okay, so Amy, you have to tell me, what is your favorite thing right now for, from NAB? Uh, it's all AI. 100% okay. AI. Just excited to see what people have come up with, what new crazy things people are doing with it. I'm just, I'm pumped. Okay, so... 
in your business, you create and produce and make films, and that is your business. Yep. Can you talk a little bit about that? And also, can you just talk a little bit about what you're seeing, uh, how your workflows are being influenced by AI? Okay. So um, I run Practical Magic. We are one part traditional media services company. We do TV, films, documentaries, all the things you expect a production company to make. And we're also... Um, like a high-tech production technology services company. So we do all the crazy things that nobody else can do. We had a um, studio network executive joke that when they called 911, we answered. <laughs> so uh, we've got you know one of the West Coast's largest bullet time rigs. We've got LED volumes. We make special effects for different TV shows, all that. Um, and we're really, uh, we're at the front lines of uh, chaos. <laughs> I, I would say that the entertainment industry is in a bit of uh, chaos. Yeah. Yeah, everyone's struggling. Um, if you're working at a studio, you're worried about getting laid off. If you're independent, you can't get anything greenland. I mean, it's a struggle, but we're looking forward to the excitement that AI can provide and, you know... I think it'll be the next three to five years is going to be really exciting. Well, I think that, you know, I was talking earlier, Lori and I were talking earlier about just where AI is going to influence filmmaking in general. And I think the thing that's really interesting about your business and where you're at is that you've just had such a scope of work, it's just such a, a great amount of work in every every kind of space, right? Like you've done documentaries, you've done yeah. work with LED walls, you've done all of this. And I think as we keep going forward, we're going to see kind of this coming back to storytelling and coming back to like, what does the story, how does the story actually resonate? And I would imagine that you're going to be ready for that, ready to take that on because of your experience and what you've been doing. Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, AI is going to allow us to have even bigger stories than we had before because we were limited by location. Yeah. Now you can be anywhere. Yeah. You can do anything. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's really exciting. Yeah. 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 And have you had a chance to walk around the floor yet? Not yet. Okay. I got here at like 10, 10 p.m. last night. I had to throw my son's sixth birthday party yesterday. So <laughs> let's focus on that. And now I'm here. I'm ready to go. This is my first stop. Yeah. And now I'm heading off to see what's here. So do you have anything specifically that you're interested in seeing on the show floor? Or just Let's see. I'm excited. Well, I'm here a lot for the networking, so okay. I'm going to go see my friends at Microsoft and yeah. you know, Intel and Dell yeah, and yeah. all that and see what they're doing and then um, probably pop into some of the, the um, conversations and panels and yeah. see what we got. Good. Yeah. Okay. That's so great. All right. Well, thank you so much, Amy. It was so nice to see you. Um, and so, Nikki, throwing it back to you. And thank you so much. Yeah, Thanks for course. being here. It's so no. fun to talk. <laughs> Thank you so much, Aaron Rose. It's really cool because right now at the Puget Systems booth, I can literally see you on the screen in the back here. But, you know, welcome back to the South Hall. We're down in Puget Systems with the content creator. Jonathan, how are you? Good, good. Thank you again for having me down. Definitely appreciate this opportunity. Thank you. And absolutely, when I was reached out to, like, do an interview with you, I followed you on Instagram. I yes. think you follow me back. What did absolutely. we discover? We know the same people. Shout out the Far East Movement. She actually worked with them back in the day as myself on an international secret agents tour. I did all the graphics for them, did like a G6 VFX. So yeah, no shout way. out to Kev, yeah, Vermin, all those guys. That song blew up. And you know, yeah, doing yeah. VFX, you need powerful editing, computer, PC. So what do you use? Funny you should ask. We use <laughs> We have the new Puget workstation back here, as you can see behind me. I actually have my newest project that I'm working on with Method Man of the Wu-Tang Clan, running live on this system, and everything runs buttery smooth. Amazing. Well, can you tell us a little bit more about this project and how you use this desktop and the mobile workstation, which just came out, by the way? How do you utilize that in your workflow? Yeah, so the project came about during a pandemic. Method Man wanted to create a comic book series, so we started off creating a comic book, and then, you know, Fortnite extended the creator series that everybody could create immersive experiences, and so we're bringing a comic book to life inside of Fortnite, and of course, we're running everything on Puget. When I'm on the road, I'm doing a lot of touring and whatnot, so when I'm working in a hotel room, I don't have to stop my creative process. I could just keep it going on the move. That's 
amazing because I will say that I also have a Puget Systems desktop. I believe that I have the RTX 3090, but you have the RTX. I got the 4090, the top of the top right now. There so you go. even on my Puget home system, running the same exact specs. So I'm not seeing any delays or anything when I'm working on the road or at home. That's incredible. So that, yeah. I mean, that's a huge point, right? Being able to go from a powerful desktop PC at home, but being able to travel on the go, because you're on the go as a creator, right? Yeah, I'm actually traveling the whole world. I've been doing world tours, doing stuff like this, you know, speaking to the public, showing them exactly how to create experiences, how I make it. So having these type of systems on the go and being able to show them in real time exactly how to do it, it's a godsend, right? You don't have no delays, no lags or anything of that sort. Yeah, I didn't know, I didn't want to put you on the spot, but do we have like a little demo up right here or? Yeah, we can check it out. Really? I can bring in the, the camera over here. Yeah, so I have my Xbox controller right here. Funny enough, as we pull in, just to show you how it is, I actually put myself inside the video game. So what? if you hit X to talk to Wimbush, that's me photo scan there. You can see Snoop Dogg there in the background and everything. And yeah, this is just crazy. Like it's one of those flavor of love type things where Method Man gave me the car blanche to just go ahead and be creative. He's like, just go wild, be creative, create what you want. And yeah, it's just been fun to work on. How important yeah. is that when you say, this person's giving me creative freedom? Like, is that just the, the news to the ears that you want to hear as a creator? Absolutely, because I've worked with artists in the past and they're so hands-on that it's not even like a collaborative process. Like, they're telling you what they want and you're just delivering it at that point. So it's not a collaboration. It is actually just a work for hire. But with this project right here, as you can see, like, you know, we're mixing comic books, we're mixing immersive experiences, and, you know, they're interested in me to deliver something really dope. So that's exactly what we're doing. And they came to the right person. I so all of these graphics and everything, you designed? Absolutely. And yes. you designed it and you created it all on the Puget Systems? Yes, yes. So my desktop at home, on the um, work machine here as well, everything on Puget, yeah. Amazing. Well, I'll come back here to the audience because, you know, you got a little sneak peek. I want to make sure we talk about you too, sir. Absolutely. How many times have you been coming to uh, NAB show now? Oh, well, I've been coming since around 2016, so it's been a good minute, coming up on a decade now. Yeah, and yeah. like, what do you look forward to the most every time you come back? Just seeing the community at large, like we have a lot of, you know, we know the same people and it's because of events like this, right? Yeah. Like we're seeing everybody from around the world coming here at NAB, so it's a good chance to, you know, catch up with people that you normally don't get to catch up with. So just that community building and meeting new people and old friends, like that's what it's all about. All right, and my last thing, because I asked all my veterans, what is your game plan for first time attendees? Any advice of how you approach and tackle NAB show? Drink lots of water, hydrate, <laughs> definitely. Because <laughs> we're out here in the desert, you'll feel it on the first day. Like you definitely want to hydrate if it's your first time out here because that desert heat and that dryness, that will get to you. And then pace yourself for the after parties? Yeah, I'm a veteran, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that rule doesn't apply yeah, to me. Yeah, that's what we do, but yeah, definitely pace yourself if it's your first time coming out. But I would say water, most important thing. Amazing, well thank you so much, Jonathan. Thank you for giving us a sneak Speak into the work that you're doing on Puget Systems, and um, I'm going to toss it back to Ryan. Thanks so much, Nikki. We've got Richard Weiser, and I'm sorry, Bernard Weiser and Richard from EATMA, the entertainment... Thanks, Nikki. Sorry about that. We have Richard, uh, Bernard Weiser and Richard from EATMA, the Entertainment Industry Professional Mentoring Alliance. Let's talk about what you guys do. Sure. Well, we're a mentoring alliance that is a, uh, a combo of a lot of organ member organizations uh, across mostly post-production, but we represent pretty much every aspect of entertainment uh, to help mentor new people coming into our industry, which is almost like a black hole now with the loss of a lot of apprenticeship programs sure. in the last decade. So we try to give advice and help them find a path into this industry, uh, stressing how they need to know themselves, present themselves honestly to be in a better spot to show off their talents. Now we don't find them jobs, we just give them advice on how to present themselves and such. Well that's great and you come from the industry so it's, you know, there's a, so when I, when I was, when I got into the industry, I'm all self-taught by the way, so I had mentors like yourselves that kind of coached me into the business since I was about 12 years old. So it's awesome to see this program that you guys are doing. Yeah, it's vital because networking and getting known is the most important part. Nobody's going to recommend you if you don't, they don't know you. Right. So how do you present yourself to network to meet these people and then build the relationship so they know your work and could actually then take the next step forward? 
Got it. And, and Richard, what's your uh, role in this? Uh, well, I'm vice president. Uh, vice president, along with Bernard, is the president. And for me, it's just giving back what I've acquired through the years, and just giving back to you know to the industry. It's it's been incredibly fulfilling. Yeah. So what I always have said. So I consider myself. Like I called, I wrote an article years ago called the the new IT director versus the old broadcast engineer. Right. There has to be a respect for where our technology was and where it is today. And there's still a crossover that you have to understand right. to to actually be able to really efficiently do what you do in a career of our business today, correct? Well, yeah, things are changing so fast. In fact, adaptability is a major thing that we try to explain to people. Yep. Also, workflows, it's hugely <laughs> important today. And it changes, literally project to project, it's different. Mm -hmm. So adaptability, uh, and then learning what's changing, because within months, there's new programs, there's new uh, ways to work, and of course, the 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 terrifying word right now is AI, and how is that going to affect that flow? And it's sure. going to change things, yep. not necessarily for, for the worse. In fact, mostly for the better. Right. But people are still afraid of the potential. Because they don't understand. They don't understand right. it. So I think right now, education of what AI brings is really, really important. And we've been living with it and using it for a long time now. People don't understand that. They're just, from a marketing side, they're talking about AI and what it can do for the business. But for editors, they, they, they're afraid of it. It's like, oh, it's going to take away our jobs. Well, right. no, not really. It's, it's going to help. It's probably going to organize you more. But yeah, in, in organizing it means the crews might get yet even smaller. That's a possibility, but sure, that's the changing industry too. Uh, it'll probably open the door for people who get really good at it to have new jobs also. So it's interesting. It's, 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 it's an open discussion. Right, so let's talk about your partnerships with, say, Avid, with ACE, with uh, AES, those organizations, HPA. Well, that's the thing, is that we're a makeup of veteran professionals. Mm -hmm. And what I've noticed in the industry is as people get into the second part of their careers, they're not as uh, possessive of their position in the industry. They're comfortable with it, and they have this feeling of, like Richard was saying, of wanting to give back. Right, it doesn't feel like a threat kind of thing. Right, well, right? we've all learned a lot of things. Of, of the, the new ones coming in right. versus the, you exactly. know, you get it. Yeah. And, and uh, we want to make sure that the things that we've learned, the little tricks and ways to do things are passed along to the new generation because we care about the future of our industry. Um, and we don't want that to be lost. You know, there's an idea of to, to move forward, you have to destroy everything that's, that's been learned. And it's an interesting business concept, certainly, but you don't want to throw away the, the great ideas. You don't want to throw out the baby with the bathwater. So yeah. what's important to be, to be kept, and that comes through education towards the new people coming into our industry, and mentorship is the best way to do that. Got it, so what's the recruitment process like? The recruitment, uh, well, so how, do, how do you, how do they find you? Is there a certain process you take them through to get them on board and that kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, they, they, uh, a lot of them come to us. Yep. I mean, we have, a oh, we, we, have, we have a website that actually, we do a lot of podcasts. Um, we've done different um, theme type of, uh, uh, would educate like educast yeah. like, webinars, you know, webinars. Yeah. Web webinars and stuff like that with different subjects. Right. So I assume maybe maybe you reach out to these organizations. You have yeah. partnerships Within from and younger folks they want to or new, younger to the industry they they right. get connected. You can connect with that. We way. reach right. out to a lot of universities, okay, high schools as well. We have a high school problem. I have a problem. We have a high school <laughs> uh, program. Yep. And uh, the university program, and we want to reach out to individuals as well. What we'd like to do is to hook up, but it's been a little bit difficult to hook up with uh, military, with huh. veterans, people coming out of the do. military. Yeah. Uh, one of my earlier jobs in my career was working with the military, yeah. and they have a whole division of great filmmakers. Well, when they come out, they're lost just like everybody else, and how do they get a foothold and show off their talent? We'd love to help with that, too. Wow, so let's talk about some of the stuff you've been working on, too, just a quick show off a little bit. Oh, myself? Well, <laughs> well recently, last year, I worked with Michael Mann and uh, supervised uh, Ferrari. Okay. And uh, co-supervised on uh, Ted Lasso before that. Wow, that's, that's so cool. So it was on all three, three years, and it was great. It's an example that we tell the students as well, is when you have good chemistry, and both those crews, amazing chemistry, everybody got along, and becomes a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, Michael's not always the easiest, because he's, he's so into his creativity and story that he puts pressure on people, but it's a good thing. Those are the type of people you want to work with. He's it a perfectionist. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And it pushes everybody to meet up to his standards and do the best they can. We're very proud of Ferrari. Yeah. And uh, on, on Ted Lasso, it was the same type of thing from top down, this collaboration that everybody had. And we talk about that with our mentorship is collaboration. 
you can't do everything yourself. Right. So that's what's so cool about NAB show. I get to meet people like you guys. You guys get to meet other folks. It's just it's just amazing the networking. I, this is year 14 for me. What is it for wow. you? Uh, actually, six years, I think. Okay, that's great. How about you? Well, it's over 15. Yeah, it's right. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting old. I've been here 14 years now. I can't believe it. And I thought this was year one. It felt like yesterday. So thank you so much. Yeah, it's a family event, right? We're all getting together as a as a industry family and, and doing our thing. Like and exactly. Said, it perfect. actually fits in to the larger scale of this. Even in business, the collaboration and the yep. networking, it all starts with places like this, like NAB. Exactly. Well, that's why NAB shows so great. IPMA, Entertainment Industry Professional Professionals Mentoring Alliance. Uh, go to eipma.org, E-I-P-M-A.org. Thank you so much, Bernard and Richard. Have a great so NAB much. show. Thank, Thank you. you. We're going to toss it back to you guys. Hi, I'm Michael Kim of 120 Sports. You're watching NAB Show Live. Hi, I'm Mike Cabasi, and I shoot for NCIS. You're watching NAB Show Live, produced by Broadcast Beat. And welcome back to to NAB Show Live. My name is Sharif and I'm still streaming over here in Central Hall with my good friend Christine. Christine, how are you? I'm amazing. Thank you. How are you? Doing fabulous. Thanks for asking. Now, Christine, can you tell me a little bit about where you work and what you do for NAB Show? Sure. So I work for MDG. That is NAB's marketing agency. And I mainly work with the media partner program. So that's working with all of the partners that we have at the show today. Um, and I also help with paid media and design. Awesome. Now, have you gotten to meet any of those partners that you typically work with? Not yet. I plan on meeting all of them tomorrow. I'm really excited to finally meet them in person. It's always really exciting kind of putting a face, uh, a face to a name finally, kind of going back and forth through email all year, not really knowing what anybody looks like, and then you come to the show and meet people. It's really exciting. Now, how many NAB shows have you been to? This is my very first one. We are just getting all the first timers <laughs> this year. Now, can you tell me what you're, most, uh, what you're looking forward to the most while you're here? So apart from meeting all the media partners, again, just seeing everything come to life for the first time, it is way bigger than I could have imagined. So are your feet hurting yet? Yes. And we're just getting started. From the Cheddar set on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, I'm Rob Baynard with LiveX, and you're watching NAB Show Live. Good morning, NAB. This is Robin Roberts of ABC's Good Morning America. You're watching NAB Show Live, produced by Broadcast Beat. <laughs> Hey, this is Rob Rush from 94.3 The Shark here on Long Island, and you are watching NAB Show Live, produced by Broadcast Beat. Welcome back to NAB Show Live. I'm Tess Protesta with the Stream Geeks here at one of the most highly anticipated booths at the NAB Show Live, Black Magic Design. I'm here with Bob. He's the director of sales for the Americas at, at uh, Black Magic Design. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing good. It's been a great show. A lot of energy so far, right? Oh, totally. Yeah, it's great to see all the people back. Yep. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about Black Magic Design. I know you have a wide array of products. We do. Um, we added a lot of different products uh, in our ATEM area. We added a couple of new ATEM constellation, 1ME and 2ME, and all, also a micro panel in Resolve. DaVinci Resolve 19 went out in beta the other day, uh, in, including we have some new hardware for that. We have a new micro color panel for people that are using iPads or whatever. And uh, we also added uh, some new Simply 2110 products, so you can actually do remote monitoring, monitoring by you know using 10 gig Ethernet and moving uh, signals around, turning them back into SDI or HDMI, depending on what you're monitoring in. Uh, we also have a new router there. We have a new big router, 120 by 120 inputs. Uh, we also added two new cameras, though. Uh, yeah, new Pixis 6K camera. That's a new box camera that we uh, introduced in three different mounts, uh, L mount, uh, EF mount, and PL mount. And then we have the new uh, Blackmagic Ursa Cine 12K camera. That is a completely new design. It has Wi-Fi built in, 10 gig Ethernet port. It's, uh, it, it records up to 12K on, on our new um, media module that goes into a new media dock, and you can record on uh, eight terabytes or 16 terabyte uh, modules. And uh, it all, they all record uh, both Blackmagic RAW as well as proxies at the same time. And you connect them through our cloud service so they can move the files directly to the editor while you're still shooting. So you have a cloud service now. Tell me a little bit more about that. So the Blackmagic cloud service has been out. And we, what we do is we're able to allow people to move files through the cloud service down to wherever they need it to go. right? And uh, you can also share DaVinci Resolve projects $5 a project 
a month and people can uh, share those globally. So it's a great way to move the media, but also to move the projects along. And now it doesn't matter if your editor is in Zimbabwe or wherever. And uh, so people have been using that. And then we have our Blackmagic camera app that's on the iPhone, but we also are showing a version of Android here at the show. Excellent. Do you think that people are most excited to see the cameras, the switchers, DaVinci? I think it goes on and on and on. Like they go, oh, that's cool. Oh, no, that's cool. Oh, no, that's cool. So, yeah, we've had a lot of excitement across all the product lines, and it's always great to see that. Do you, would you say there's one thing that's a standout innovation this year for you guys, or is it just everything you listed, all those great products? Yeah, I think we. Uh, there's one other thing that we introduced is a replay system that uses DaVinci Resolve as the heart of the replay system for our live stuff, and that's also getting a lot of cool attention. But the cameras always draw lots of attention. Resolve draws attention. There's a lot of things that draw attention but they all work together, which I think is awesome. Now, I've seen you here a few times, a time or two. How many years have you been attending NAB? Well, let's see. I, I did two in the 1980s, and then since 1993, I have been on the floor. If it's open, I've been here. Wow. So that's a lot, yeah. What is the coolest, most interesting, or uh, impactful thing about NAB? The people. Uh, it's amazing. I still see people that I saw at those first couple of shows. And uh, the, the people, the customers, the different guys, the different manufacturers, whatever, is a collection of the heart is, is really the people and, and all of the relationships that I've built over the last 35 years or whatever it is. So it is kind of cool to see people and like, oh, I haven't seen you in a while or that kind of thing. And especially during the pandemic, we had that. But we've been back the last couple of years and now it's really full like it used to be. Yeah, it's exciting to see the growth back in here again. It's the first day, and we've got a couple more days left. Are you excited for the rest of the show? Uh, totally. I mean, this is great. I get to talk to people all week long, and uh, by Wednesday, I'll, my voice will be shot, but that's okay. Yeah. So where can people learn more about Blackmagic Design and find out more about your products? Sure. Go to our website, blackmagicdesign.com. Excellent. That has been live from South Hall Lower at the Blackmagic Design booth. Thank you so much, Bob. Thank you. Hey, this is Sarah Evans, and you're watching the NAB Show Live, produced by Broadcast Beat. We're Buena Vista Records recording artist Temecula Road. And you're watching NAB Show Live, produced by Broadcast Beat. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, what's up? It's Tony and Chris from 1077 WIVK in Knoxville. You're watching and loving We're Sure NAB Show Live, produced by Broadcast Beat. Have a great time and enjoy a wish or two for us. What's everyone watching online right now? NAB Show Live! Hi, we're from the Adobe Video Team. And you're watching NAB Show Live! I'm Ryan Salazar with NAB Show Live. We've got Caleb Christopher from New Blue. How you doing, sir? Great, how you doing? Doing great. You know, New Blue, I love you guys. You guys have amazing software. Todor, the CEO, founder, uh, is so willing to work through issues and create new technology. Um, you guys are super innovative, and, and, and thank you for doing all you do for us as Broadcast Beat, Broadcast Beat Studios. But tell us about New Blue, what you do, and how you got started. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks for saying that. We, we do envision ourselves as a really uh, collaborative uh, company with a focus on customer needs so we, yep. we definitely try to solve real world, world solutions um, our whole background is in post-production and we built a really powerful uh, graphics titling engine and then um, that naturally evolved into a live um, graphics titling engine and hi there we are back and i am here with charlotte from rdm charlotte thank you so much for being here thank you for having me very excited to have the conversation and this is what I am actually very excited about with Charlotte, is that this is Charlotte's first NAB. So, congratulations Charlotte, this is your first NAB. What are you finding, how are you finding the show? So I'm amazed by just like how big and exhaustive it is and how welcoming and friendly everybody is. Um, definitely a lot of different sentiment as it comes to some of the talks that I've been attending like around Gen AI and things like that. But overall, really impressed and happy with the experience I've had so far. Okay, and so can you talk a little bit about what, what does RDM do? What are you, why are you here at the show with RDM? So we're a software consultancy. We build custom software. It could be mobile apps, web, app, uh, web apps, and now more specifically we're diving into stuff with Gen AI. So as I look to where, you know, which industries are having a lot of interest in Gen AI, I saw that media entertainment is one of those areas, albeit mixed feelings towards it. So that's why I decided to come. I wanted to get a better understanding of 
you know, what people's thoughts are and where the opportunities lie and how we can maybe help um, address some of the concerns and reservations people have around this new technology. Yeah, that's so great. And so are you looking at other verticals as well besides media entertainment when you're looking at your software, or utilizing your software and putting that together with Gen AI? Because I think one of the things that I have always thought is really interesting about our industry is like how much we actually will take things from other verticals. And I mean, I think it's, you know, all across the board, other verticals will take things from us. It's just like all over the place. So what are what trends are you seeing in other spaces that you're finding might be helpful in this space? Yeah, so definitely I'd say healthcare, retail and e-commerce, they're definitely looking to, to uh, leverage generative AI. And in terms of the most common use case that I'm seeing, it's actually how do we make the search um, for consumers or people within a company a much more um, effective, faster, more fun experience, yeah. right? So. Keyword search is kind of rudimentary compared to what Gen AI can offer, right? Yep. People can find it much more quickly and they can, you know, use natural language to get more insights from the technology. And so that's a, the most common use case I'm seeing is like, how do we make search more effective, more fun, and more consumable for people inside and um, outside the organization? Yeah, and I think that's such a great point because, you know, there's this talk about media entertainment and that we're in flux. And the thing that I just always think about is that media is everywhere. So it doesn't matter if it's television or film, media is everywhere, right? So it's in retail, it's in healthcare, it's everywhere that you go. And as we kind of step into more of like this immersive world that we're stepping into, you're going to see media in all sectors. So I think it's so great that you're able to take that knowledge from those other verticals and kind of apply it here too and see like what resonates with you. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's true. I hadn't really thought about it like that, but you're right. Media is absolutely everywhere around us. We all have things that we can learn across industries and in general as a company where we like to say that we're sort of like industry agnostic because we yeah. focus on the technology and then we partner with our clients to understand like what are the specific things that you're trying to call for. Um, one of the things I've been interesting from my talks here is that you know all the speakers tend to be very um, optimistic when it comes to this new technology that's coming in but people on the ground are still very fearful and so yeah. one of the things I'd like to see happen more is this more empathetic approach to the types of conversations we're having with people that are a little bit more resistance and afraid when it comes to how they're going to be impacted by this new technology because I think that's where we'll see much better adoption and uh, people adapting to the technology if they feel like they're really being heard versus just being told like, well, pro progress and change is inevitable and you gotta adapt or you're gonna <laughs> die. Or, you know, it's like, how can we have better, more effective conversations with people on the ground to make a lasting, more positive transition to this new technology? Yeah, I think that was so well said. And I think it is, it's like, how can we all be a little bit more curious about the technology that's around us um, and not be as afraid of it. But, you know, I think a lot about uh, when films were shot on film and it went to digital and people were so worried about it going on to digital. And then guess what? Here we are and it's being shot on digital and we're all okay and we all survived. And, you know, obviously there's still stuff that is being shot on film and you can, there's room for both. And so I think that's where it's so exciting right now in this world that we're in. So, yeah. So I love what you're doing basically Thank that you're you. looking and exploring and piecing things together. I think that's very cool. It's so important to be curious because there's always more to learn and what I've observed as well is that people's perspective tends to be relative to what their experience has been, right? Yeah. So if you've been in the industry for like 10 years or, or less, then you're going to be probably more prone to changing and adapting because you came in when things were less uh, well, already like pretty mature. But if you've been in the industry for much longer like the transitions and changes are much larger. So yeah, people tend to sort of compare what their experience is relative to like what they've lived through yes. without necessarily having the broader perspective of like, well, how are things looking, you know, 50 years ago to right. your point, right? So yeah. I yeah. think if people can also look at it from that perspective, it will help um, ease yeah. them through this transition. Yeah. That's so cool. Well, Charlotte, thank you so much for being game to talk with me and Absolutely. talk about this because I think it's so fun. We could talk all day, I think, about Gen AI and where it's going and Absolutely. media and the world. Um, and so we are actually going to go to a quick break. Thank you so much. Welcome back to NAB Show Live. I'm Tess Protesto bringing you content from South Hall. Lower. We are at one of the most exciting booths at NAB, the Adobe booth. I'm here with Kyle, the Senior Director of Product Marketing. How's your first day of the show been? It's been awesome. Thanks for coming to visit the Adobe booth today. We have a lot of exciting things to talk about. Yeah, what are some of the latest innovations that Adobe is bringing to the show this year? So we have a ton of innovation going on for professional video editors across Adobe Premiere Pro, After Effects, and Frame.io. In, in, 
more specific terms, Adobe Premiere Pro, we're adding AI-enabled audio workflows. Those are in beta right now, helping editors do uh, get easier access to the audio tools that they need uh, based on the clips that they have in their timeline. We have After Effects supporting 3D uh, directly inside of After Effects, so you can make it a lot easier to work with your 3D models coming out of uh, 3D tools directly in After Effects. And then Frame.io, Frame.io you might have known as a video review and approval tool. We've just launched the V4 beta. And with Frame.io V4, we're actually transforming Frame.io into the creative management platform. What that really means is we're bringing, together, we're bringing a new metadata-driven collection system to help you create smart shares and dynamic workflows based off of the metadata on the files you're bringing into the product. That's very interesting. I, so you guys are getting on the AI train. How has that experience been for your company? It's been very exciting for Adobe overall. As you know, uh, as you might know, Adobe released Firefly just over a year ago. And so our first iteration of the Firefly models have been for images. We've had over six billion uh, generations of images out of Photoshop in the Firefly image model. And we've had a lot of great reception to that. And as you can imagine, we're thinking about what, what are the creative disciplines we're going to serve next. Obviously, there's a lot of interest in video. We're thinking and working hard at that. More news to come there. Uh, but, you know, if you take a step back and look at Premiere Pro today, there are a lot of AI-enabled workflows in Premiere Pro, things like enhanced speech to clean up dialogue. So you and I are doing an interview right now. And we are back. And I am back here with Terry Davis. Terry, thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. Um, can you talk a little bit about where what company you're with and what you're doing? Because you're doing some really big things right now. We are. So uh, I am the president of Trusted Partner Network, which is wholly owned by Motion Picture Association, which, of course, the members of MPA represent studios. Um, and we're a content security group. So we work hard with all of the vendors that those content owners work with. Um, to get their security status in one one space, TPN Plus platform, uh, so it reduces the assessment fatigue and the repetition that occurs in the industry. Oh, wow. So this must be a very exciting time for you, um, uh, just with all of the AI that's out there that is creating deep fakes, that's creating different content, the voice clones, all of that. And so how are you, what are you seeing in terms of trends in that security space to make sure that that content is secure? Here. So we work with, I mean, we're, can I cut just for a sec? Do we need to keep going? Yeah, <laughs> we, are, we are live. Can't talk about AI. Okay, you can't talk about AI. Okay. About AI. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes, I can't talk about okay, AI. Okay, no problem. Okay, all right. Can you talk about security trends? Yes. Okay, yes, right. of course. Yes. So, I mean, the really, the really big thing that we're focused on is security preparedness, yeah. right? Incident response. If the worst were to happen and the numbers are creeping up, um, and we're seeing the worst is happening quite frequently. Are you ready? Yeah. What are you going to be doing? If, if the worst were to happen, are you ready? Do you have your team in place? Do you have your strategy in place, your policy? Have you done your risk management awareness? What are your risks? Right. Are you ready for them? Yeah. And then do you have business continuity planning and disaster recovery in place? Yeah. Right. All of those things, they're terribly hard tabletop exercises and very, very difficult for companies to um, really work through those things, but they have to if they're going to be ready you yeah. know, with the security preparedness. It's really required now by the content owners in order to give work yes. to their vendor base. Yes, yes, yes. And besides security, um, you have a, a lot of different types of partners in your network, right? Um, I just met with someone in London who had just come on Eden, uh, right, yeah, right, yes. uh, who's so wonderful yes. with her uh, software. And so can you talk about some of the other partners that you have and what trends you're seeing in terms of what is needed and what is coming? Yeah. yeah. So we have um, nearly a thousand, thousand members. A thousand? Yes. Oh my gosh. Which is crazy because we launched two, no, we launched last year. So I was here a year ago, uh, two months into the launch, talking about 100 members that signed up. So today we're celebrating 1,000. Congratulations. That is huge. And what a ride. Yes. Well, I mean, it speaks to the need in the industry, really, yeah. right? Yeah. But our, our members vary from 75% of our members are companies with less than $3 million annual gross revenue. They're the really small companies who don't have the dedicated CISO, don't have the dedicated content security departments, um, and they need our help. 
all the way up to the big companies like Adobe and Signiant yeah. and so on. Um, and, you know, they, they need our help across multiple different sites or multiple different applications. Yeah. Um, and the other, the other really interesting statistic that I, I track regularly is probably about 65% of our members are international. Oh. So everybody thinks of TPN because we're the MPA and the studio members as we're very Hollywoodized, yeah. but we're not. Yeah. We're very, very, very global. global. Yeah. In yeah. fact, we're off to um, India soon to, to speak at a conference out there just because we're growing our Asia pack base. Oh my gosh, that's so exciting. Yeah. But that's such a great point in terms of like that global presence. And I was talking to someone earlier today and they were talking about one of the things that they were excited about even with NAB is that they're getting to see their global community, yes. right? Yes. And how, you know, usually you'll go to London, you'll go somewhere and you'll have those meetings. But now when you're at NAB, you actually have your whole global community yeah. with you. Yeah, you it's know? fabulous. We bumped into so many people that we don't normally see. I mean, people are traveling again, right, after yeah. COVID. I feel yeah. like three years ago, NAB wasn't quite back yet. Last yeah. year, it was, it was much better. It's it's great yeah. to be here this year. No, I agree. I was just saying that, too, where I thought, okay, last year felt like most people were back, yes. right? Yes. But then this year, it's like everybody's back. Yes. We're ready. So we've got people traveling, <laughs> yes. which is wonderful. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Terry, for being here with us. Of course. Thank and you. It's been a pleasure. You. Okay, thank you so much, and we are going to cut to break. Thanks so much, Ryan, and welcome back to NAB Show Live. My name is Sharif, streaming right here from Central Hall with my good friend Katie. How are you, Katie? Great. How are you? Doing very well, thank you. Now, Katie, can you tell me a little bit about where you work and what you do for NAB Show? Sure. So I work at MDG. We are their marketing agency to help with getting the show up and running and marketing to get all the attendees here. And I work in marketing, so Katie and I work very closely together. Katie, what does your day-to-day -day look like while you're helping us set up our NAB show? So I do project management, so I'm making sure that all the projects stay on track, and we're getting them done, meeting timelines, all that fun stuff, and working with my favorite team. <laughs> Katie definitely does a great job making sure that we meet all of our deadlines and making sure that all of our projects are done right on time. Now, Katie, how many NAB shows have you been to? This is my first one. Your very first one. Well, welcome. Can you tell me what you're looking forward to most while you're here? I'm excited to see everything come to life because I've never seen it in the flesh. So I'm really excited to see everything in person. Because you've touched basically every part of the marketing process because you're part of the project planning. So how does it feel seeing all the things that you have planned actually be put into fruition and actually seeing it live? It's really exciting and it's a little relieving as well to see everything went well, everything's going well. Two, one. And we are back, and I am here with Marcy Lefkowitz. And thank you so much for being here. You're a media executive, and you've been at Disney. You've been at a lot of different great companies. And so you've been to NAB before. This is probably my 25th <laughs> NAB, so. Can't believe it. Can't believe it. I believe it. I don't know if that's a good thing. It is. It's, I actually secretly love NAB. I know. It's kind of great, right? Yeah, it's I not, just, it's, it's not cool to admit it. I know, no, but it is because I think, you know, we all get to see people that we know. And, um, I, you know, I'll see people that I haven't seen in like 15, 20 years. And it's just so great to see so many different faces. Um, so since you are a veteran of NAB, what are you excited about for this year's NAB? Well, I have been going to some of the some more conferences um, as well as wandering the booths. Now that I'm not working for Disney anymore, yeah. I have the freedom to actually see who's innovating in yeah. different spaces. What I'm looking at now is cloud native cloud production, yeah. um, production tools that have worked on premise for decades and decades reliably, and now we're kind of rebuilding this entire ecosystem in the cloud. Yeah. Um, so editing tools, production tools, getting signals in and out, and getting the signals out to all of the various distribution endpoints yeah. that have changed over time because I'm a broadcast kid. Yes. And it used to be that we used to just need to get our signals out to television stations. Yeah. And now you need to get them to television stations and MVPDs and all of the streaming services. And it's yeah. uh, it's complicated, actually. Yeah. Well, it's like media is everywhere. It is. It is everywhere. Uh, but it's not... Uh, 
it's not an ecosystem where you can just plug one thing in and no. expect that it's just going to come out the other side yeah. in a predictable way. Yeah. We're, we're really starting all over again in many ways, rebuilding our industry, and it's exciting. Yeah, that's so cool, and I, and I think that's such an interesting way to look at it, of like that rebuild, because I do think we're rebuilding, and I also think we're rebuilding in different verticals as well. So it's not just media and entertainment that we're rebuilding in, because we do have media all over, right? So We do. You know, I heard an interesting fact toyed about NAB yes. that this year there are more first-time NAB participants than there have been in a very very long time oh. and a huge percentage of them are individual creators wow. and this is the demographic that used to go to CES yep. and yep. they are realizing that the grown-up production tools are what they want to look at for TikTok and for yep. um, their platforms and they're sort of their space is maturing, that they're coming right. from the consumer space into the professional space. That's so cool to think about because, I mean, they do have, like, VidCon, but I think you're right, is that, like, what are those influencers and what are those creators, um, you know, they're they're looking at how do they expand their tool portfolio. Indeed, indeed, yeah. and it's I think it's exciting to see them here. Yeah. I don't really, I yeah, think that's it's great. True. Yeah. It's true. It's got some, like, new energy into it and also Absolutely. just some new tool sets. It, indeed. I think that they will propel the um, vendors who are here at NAB to think about what they do differently. It'll, yeah. it'll be good for the evolution of the technology. Yes, very true. I mean, it was funny because I was just talking to Terry and she was talking about Entrusted Partner Network that so many of um, their partners are under 3 million in terms of companies. So to your point, right, we are seeing this young blood kind of come up. We're seeing like these new companies. We're seeing these new tools um, and it's very exciting to have that kind of innovation happening. It is, yeah. but I'm doing, I'm still working for traditional large media organizations so we're coexisting here and all uh, demanding maybe some different things of the vendors. But it's different. Time, but, but it is. But it it, it's all good. It's yeah. all good. Yeah. But even if it's traditional, right, you are still putting content on social media. You are still putting content on streaming devices and not yeah. just one, you know, all these different platforms. And so I think we are kind of seeing this, um, I don't know, this grouping of just different tech that we're using in order to put out that content. So it doesn't matter if you're at a traditional or you're not because everybody is doing the same thing where they're trying to capture the audiences in every place that they're at. Exactly. It's yeah. true. I'm doing a lot of work right now for Televisa Univision, yeah. and they are a gigantic broadcaster yes. and content creator and content distributor. They've got a, most of the Spanish-speaking world yeah. watches their content, and they have entertainment, and they have live sports, and they have a streaming platform called VIX that is one of the fastest growing in the world. Yep. And we have to produce yeah. for all of these different endpoints. We have to make sure that, you know, they trust us with their content yep. to make sure that we can get it where it needs to go. And that is a lot of different places. Yes. Um, we yes. have to find the consumers where they are. So true. Yeah. And then VIX also, I mean, I'll just say, has such a, you know, ha is doing so well is doing so well. It is right. Racing to profitability. <laughs> <laughs> like, zoom. <laughs> you know. Having come from Disney yeah. and, you know, yeah. I know how hard that is. Yeah. Uh, when you, you know. look at those apps that are out there, all of those streaming apps, um, VIX is just like head you know, heads over everything. So yeah, yeah so exactly. congratulations on that. Thank you, that's me, but yes, it's great. They're, they're doing a wonderful job, that's yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, very good. Well, thank you so much, Marcy, for being here and speaking with me. Uh, that was so fun. It's to my pleasure, <laughs> it's my pleasure. I love uh, I love what Rise is doing, and I wish you every success. Oh, thank you so much, Marcy. And we're gonna go back to Ryan. Ryan, I hope you're over there in the booth, and uh, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Aaron Rose. All right, so we have Ed Lazinski and Michael Wahlberg of Backlight. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing great today. How you doing? Great. It's great. It's great to have you. So let's talk about Backlight and the initiatives you guys are doing right now. Yeah, we are super uh, psyched to be here. Backlight is a media content technology platform, mm -hmm. and we sell a suite of cloud services for media companies to help really improve every cycle of their supply chain, from creative to management, distribution, and monetization. Got it. Okay, so you guys you guys own Iconic. 
Yes, that's right. Uh, Iconic is our media asset management platform, and uh, we are utilizing uh, all sorts of cloud technology, including AI and machine learning, to enhance the content for being easier to find for anyone using our products. Got it. So is Iconic the focus at the show for you guys, or is there another part of your system? Yeah, Iconic's uh, you know, our fastest growing product. Mm -hmm. It's a product that really connects across all sorts of different uh, use cases and users in the media supply chain. So at a show like NAB, Iconic is really one of our showcase products we're talking about. Um, one of the things that we're really excited to uh, launch here at NAB is our uh, the deployment of Iconic on AWS. And as Amazon Web Services, it's you know uh, a leading cloud platform, and you know Iconic as a media asset management system has always connected to storage mm -hmm. in the cloud, including Amazon's. But now you can run the brains of Iconic on AWS, which is a real benefit to AWS customers. Right. And so, any special announcements you guys are doing at the show? <clears throat> yeah, that that is uh, one of the big things. Another thing that we are doing is uh, we uh, have launched new integrations between our own product lines. Mm -hmm. So for example, we have a new integration between Iconic and our SIP platform for streaming. So basically you can use all of your content that you have in Iconic, put them into a collection, and they are automatically transcoded and adapted for streaming purposes or for monetization. So that's something that will help some of our customers to do things much faster and much more efficient. And of course, also everything that has to do with AI and machine learning. That's sort of the hot topic here at the, this show. Yeah, I was just saying in a previous interview, it seems like everybody's talking AI this year for sure. It's got to be the theme for sure. Yeah, and what, what's cool about um, Backlight's products, whether it's Iconic on the asset management side or Zype on streaming or F-Track in production, that we, we are, we're storing tons of metadata, we're making it accessible through APIs, and mm -hmm. our customers are using it as the platform for data for their AI powered initiatives. Um, we plug into AI platforms like AWS Recognition, and Mikhail can talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so with the recognition and also the transcription services that are available on Amazon, we can basically get a lot of information from the content that make it searchable mm -hmm. so that you can reuse your content and find everything that you produced in a much simpler and faster way. Got it. So uh, do you mind talking about F-Track? I'm just, I'm personally curious. Yeah, F-Track is our uh, production management and tracking solution. Um, it's used by major uh, scripted content producers, studios, film studios, TV studios, and it gives them a, a sort of unified workflow and workspace to manage the complexity of a, of a project at the scale of a film or, or a TV season. Yeah, and we, we also announced at this show a new integration between Iconic and F-Track. So again, when you're doing your pre-production and your production planning in F-Track, it can automatically populate Iconic and create placeholders for the media that you need to create in the asset management platform. Excellent. Well, it's all about managing assets these days. You know, there's everybody has so much content, and they need to find a way to manage it uh, quickly, efficiently, easily, uh, without humans having to do too much work. You know, because <laughs> I was talking earlier today. I used to have Final Cut Server many years ago. It was only around for a few years, and we had a quarter of a million assets in the system. It was great at that time, but the problem was that people weren't inputting the data that they needed to find those assets later on. So in the end, we ended up wasting a lot of money on a lot of storage yeah. for stuff to sit there and never get found ever again. You know? Yeah, and what's cool about um, you know, a modern media asset management platform like Iconic is that with AI-powered services for transcription, mm -hmm. for recognition of objects, we're, we're helping to decorate the content and metadata so that right. it can become useful, so it's not stale. Like right. Obviously, customers are going to want to have cold storage, move things to archive. Even We even help them kind of make those decisions on what makes sense. Oh, you mean like a nearline kind of environment? Yeah, we yeah. have customers that have multiple storage tiers. Yeah. They might have stuff on-prem. Mm -hmm. Iconic can connect on-prem. It's not just cloud-based, also connects on-prem. Uh, in the cloud and help you figure out like wh what assets do you want to have close to you or not? Right. Yeah, exactly. And and also having additional tools, we uh, we can use uh, some of our other products like Wild Mocha for uh, publishing things to social media and uh, OTT platforms. So the whole life cycle of uh, um, sort of the media chain can be done with the very integrated services nowadays. And that makes things go much faster and easier to reuse your content. Got it, all right, so if anyone wants to learn more about Backlight and Iconic and all your other solutions, where would they go? So, uh, NAB South uh, SL4114, come visit us, please, we'll be here. And also backlight.co, come right. check us out. Awesome, all right, Ed Lazinski, Michael Wahlberg of Backlight, I really appreciate your time, wishing you an awesome NAB show. Back to you guys. 
Good afternoon. This is Nikki Sun with NAV Show Live. We are still in Central Hall. I am ending today's segment getting the tea at Telos Alliance with the CEO of Telos. Scott, how are you? Fabulous. It's been a great show already. Just the first day. Yeah, it's opening day. Like what? What, ha what is there a ritual that you do before getting to a big show like NAV? Yeah, well, I mean, after we get the booth set up, we always gather the team together, kind of get the hype going, the passion. I mean, NAB for decades has been Telos' Super Bowl. My first NAB with Telos was 1995 as an entry-level engineer. <laughs> <laughs> I see you have yeah, fun here. There, there's, the guy, there's the guy who hired me. <laughs> so he's allowed to do yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's Frank. He owns the company. And, uh, yeah, it's been an amazing journey for years. But this is our Super Bowl. This is where we come to show off the latest gear. You know, this year has been no less exciting than any other year that I've been to. And it's just been fabulous. Amazing. I love that reference there because other people who may not be familiar with this industry knows how massive it is for those of us in tech world. Now, before you became bigwig CEO, I know you were probably enthusiastic of technology before that. Can you describe the feeling of attending those years ago to now being a representative, representing Telos here? Yeah, I got to say that first NAB was unbelievable. So I had just joined the company. I was right out of college. It was great to get a job in the area of my passion, which was audio, and I was an electrical engineer. And I was told, okay, you're going to be going to NAB. Back then, we didn't even have a sales force, so the booth was manned by the engineers, the guys wow. like me who designed the products. And when I heard booth, I had never been to a trade show before. I'm picturing something like that thing that Lucy has and Charlie Brown. You know, you got the tabletop and you got your gear sitting there and people come up and put a nickel in a cup or something. And when I saw what NAB was, it really blew my mind. And every year, you know, it seems to get bigger and more exciting. The technology is, you know, continuing at an amazing pace. It's great to see how technology from around the world makes its way into media and entertainment. And we're no exception here, how we incorporate and just sort of absorb everything that's happening from AI and IP and cloud and networking. So, yeah. So what keeps you coming back, Telos coming back, in terms of why you come back at here? And are there any success stories that you wouldn't mind sharing? Yeah, there are dozens of success stories. I mean, I can't even count how many new products we launched at NAB to great fanfare, getting the awards, getting customers to come by. The first question every customer comes into the booth is, hey, what do you guys have that's new that year? And that's kind of our reputation, you know, in terms of innovating, always pushing the limits. So, you know, we've got our virtual cloud-based intercom system that's actually being part used as part of the uh, NAB Live production system. Uh, this year, brand new, we're demonstrating our Deja Vu upmixer. So this is something that in real time, you put stereo audio in of any kind, it upmixes it live to 5.1. So we're uh, showing that we've got a lot of interest in that one here. Virtual mixing consoles for remote production. I mean, the, the list just goes on and on. So. Oh, well, thank you for being here, and I would say for, for, for us veterans, right, yeah. what is your game plan of having a show like this? Like, is there, like, the day before, are you looking at every, where you need to be, all your meetings, or what is your game plan? No, it starts months. Basically, our planning for NAB starts the day after NAB ends. So it takes wow. all year. And, you know, Lindsay, our trade show and event coordinator here, is unbelievable. And that's really the secret. It's not so much what we do it's the people that we have that actually understand the flow they can work they can organize a team full of crazy engineers and salespeople and executives me keep us in line and like i said her year starts the day after the show closes and she works all year to get us ready so we've already got our booth lined up for next year already talking about what products we're going to be launching next year because you know in the world of technology it can take a year to create a new product so yep we're already thinking about next year Amazing. My last thing then is, what are you most excited about NAB Show this year? Well, honestly, this first year that I got to go see the Devoncroft presentation. So bringing the information from the customers who present at Devoncroft back into our company. That was So live, we are live right now, and I'm here at the Chiron booth with the Gals and Gear team today. Good. Good. Yeah. I know. It's like the students. I love always interviewing students. So tell me, we're going to go down the line really quickly. Your name, what year of NAV show this is for you, and what you do on the team. Okay, perfect. My name is Brianna Chappie. Um, I'm currently a senior at ASU. Uh, this is my first uh, NAV showing, so very excited. Um, I've mostly been doing reporting, so that's been really cool. Okay. 
Well, welcome, welcome. Hi, my name is Ripley Simone Kennebrew. I'm also a junior at ASU, and I'm a field reporter with NAB, Chiron, and Gals and Gear. You had that on lock, girl. Yeah. I was like, what are you, boom, here's my elevator pitch. That's good. That's so useful at a Thank show you. like this. Yeah, okay, now you're up. No pressure. Okay. Uh, <laughs> my name is Rebecca Guidry. Um, I'm in my third year. I'm a junior, and I'm here at the Gals and Gears at the NAB show. Yeah, awesome. Hi, my name is Emily Olson, and I've been technical directing uh, for the Gals and Gear with Chiron. Hi, my name is Nick Parks. I'm a senior at Walter Cronkite. Uh, this is my first NAB show, and I've been doing camera and helping with the floor here. Amazing. Well, what has been the experience like so far, just getting hands-on? Like, as I understand it, you have been also traveling the entire floor shooting your own packages. Am I right? Yes. Yeah, we were out yesterday on the floor in the West Hall filming, interviewing with a bunch of different companies. It's been amazing. I think we're all kind of shocked about how big this entire convention is and how the different halls are operating. So we're really excited to, to be a part of it. Amazing. So what has been the most exciting thing that you've seen so far on the show floor? I think the technology. I think the technology is really, really cutting edge and innovative, and I've never seen anything like it. How about you? Um, I think probably just looking around and seeing like the different like weather screens or like green screens that you can teleport different reporters to. I think those are really, really cool. And then in terms of technology, I know you say you've been operating the camera. Um, what has been the most joyful part about working with such an incredible crew? Um, they're all amazing. Uh, the technology that we get to use is amazing. Um, it's really a great experience and it's a treat to be able to use all of this um, black magic camera, Chiron Live. Um, and the team at Gals and Deer is great, so it's all just fantastic. And I did not forget about you, but you have the last question of the day. But I mean, how can students just like yourself? get involved in a production so you can be here at any show as well oh my god networking for sure I mean it just uh, it's a crazy like opportunity that we got to come here and I think just taking advantage of every opportunity that you get and kind of putting your hands in all the cookie jars and trying everything out and meeting people I think that really opens a lot of doors for you well, amazing. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you for letting me crash your set so you can be on NABshow.com, the official enemy show live as well. Um, and I hope you have a rest, a great rest of the NAB show. And um, back to you, Ryan. Thanks so much, Nikki. We have somebody I've known for a long time, probably 10 to 15 years, the amazing, the one and only Paul Briscoe uh, and, and Golan Samani, who's new to me from Tag Video Systems. How you guys doing? Great. All right. It's great to have you. It's it's all about uh, seeing old friends and meeting uh, new people here at NAB Show. Love it. Love this show. It's great. Big family reunion. Let's talk about what you guys are up to at the show, Paul. Well, you know, most people think of tag in terms of multi-viewing and multi-viewing visualization. Uh, but what we do is actually far more than that, and that's actually pretty much the least of what we do nowadays. We, uh, of course, probe and monitor very deeply of any kind of content. Uh, we receive pretty much any kind of content you can send us. But most importantly is we now aggregate all of that data from any number of nodes at scale into a very large database and hand it to the customer and say, here's your data. Do with it what you want. And we have customers now using it for automation, using it for intelligence gathering. We have customers putting AI on top of this data. So bringing this live data up out of the system after we're finished using it for alarming and probing, we hand it off. Wow. And, and so TAG does so much more than I even realized, and that's, that's, that's usually the case. These organizations, like you yourselves, have all sorts of different lines of products and whatnot. And you, you work in the, with the cloud division, right? Yes, I'm a cloud uh, director for TAG. Basically, I'm running all the cloud operation, integration, partnership with other, other cloud providers or um, partners that use in cloud uh, deployments, such as uh, Live view, uh, using the live view camera at the moment. Uh, what we did in this the, the, this uh, demo, we use live view from uh, live view feed from live view booth, and we use live view camera feed from our booth. We gathered them all in the cloud uh, in AWS, uh, created a multi viewer and monitoring the streams to see uh, their behavior and also distribute the, the streams uh, to a different uh, end location. Um, so yeah, so this is what I do. Got it. So Paul, so it's my understanding, if I remember right, I've known TAG quite some time, probably almost 10 years, the, the initial 
organ it was created for multi viewing over IP, right? Multi viewing of IP streams, yeah. compressed streams initially, yeah. Okay, got it. And so it's amazing how you evolved. And what, what's cool about what you guys can do is you can handle so many signals. Oh, the beauty is we're software, so yeah. we're not committed with hardware. Um, if somebody wants a new format, a new standard, we write code and we support it, it's that simple. Got and it. on top of that, we build a large number of advanced features as well. We don't just give the data away, we do other things with it ourselves as well. It's give a massive benefit that you can, if you have a, in, uh, if you have a environment in the ground that uh, for, for live production and then you have play out and distribution, we give a solution that you can give a holistic overview of all the flow so you can have you have all the formats and you have all the data you know you have all the signals coming in from different environment managed by with a holistic um, uh, system controlled AWS or on-prem and you can have uh, you can optimize your workflow if you can, if you can see. got it all right guys well thank you so much pleasure. Paul Briscoe Golan Samani an thank honor so to much. see you guys at the like show that. wishing you a great NAB we're gonna, we're, thank you, and we're going to toss it to Nikki. Thank you so much, Ryan. We're here. It's an honor to be back in touch with the founder of Gals and Gear, Amy Day Louise. How are you? I'm great, Nikki. It's so great to see you at the show. I know. It's always a pleasure. Like, honestly, I have to just say for the record, if it weren't for you, back in 2018, when I was introducing a certain level of speakers, um, if it wasn't for that moment, I don't think I'd be here today. Aww. So thank you for creating such an amazing community, the Gals and Gear, because if you didn't do that, I wouldn't feel like there's more of a space for me. Well, you know, it's so important, and I mean, I've been a producer in this industry for a long time, and I think it's really important to make room for new faces, new voices, new ideas, and so that's why I founded Gals and Gear to make it a little bit more of a welcoming space for every kind of person who's in the content business, in the manufacturing side, in the distribution side. It's a big wide world out there and there's plenty of room for everybody. Absolutely. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing outside of the show as well? I heard that you have a Tequity talk. Oh yeah, so Gals and Gear um, launched our Tequity talk this year. Oh, there's a trumpeter in the background, too. It's very lively over it's here. It's very lively. Um, <laughs> we also have a Tequity Hub that's a virtual space where women can meet in between all of our live events. And so um, you can sign up for that on our galsandgear.tv website. So we've got a lot going on in the upskilling area and all kinds of, of projects going on with, uh, with also beta testing because only 23% of beta testers are women, and we want to make that 50%. So. Absolutely. Well, I mean, I was in the Techwity Hub as well, and there was really so many cool things that they're doing, and we are at the right time because, you know, it's like it's playing your music to go on. This is not like the Oscar speech, though, <laughs> but I would love to say, like, as a veteran of NAB show, and I say that proudly, I think I'm on my sixth year. How many years have you been? This is about NAB my show? 13th year. All right, so 13 years. Any advice for those who are coming here for the first time, especially oh, yeah. that you tell our student mentees here, what, what do you tell your student mentees to tackle a show like NAB Show? So I think, first of all, pace yourself, hydrate, very important, <laughs> wear comfortable shoes. But also, you know, be open to things. I think people kind of fill up their schedule a lot and with stuff that, like name brands that they know or products they're already using. And then you can kind of miss some of the smaller vendors or something completely new and different you never would have thought about. So, you know, be open to the possibilities. Uh, it's a great show. I love it every year. I get energized by it. I come back with new ideas, new workflows, and new tools. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. You're doing incredible work. You have a lot of visibility. Thank you for giving visibility to a lot more people like myself. And I can't wait to see you at a very, very cool like cocktail party to mix and mingle with the other women in yes, post. Yes, we will see you tonight. And for anybody who still hasn't registered and is here at the show, we have a Women's Leadership Summit tomorrow morning. And there'll be lots of people there, too. Wait, I know you said it's sold out. By the way, quick I plug. It's pretty tight. So uh, SRO, but we'll get you in. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Amy. Thank you. Welcome back to the NAB Show live stream. I'm Paul Richards with the Stream Geeks, and I'm joined with Dan Pizarski, one of my good friends. Absolutely. With LiveView. LiveView is an incredible company that's providing cellular bonding technologies for live streaming. Just chatting with Dan, he was telling me we've got updates to LiveView Studio, your cloud-based product, the field units, and some of the ingress stuff. But let's start with the LiveView Studio. Tell me about this new product. Sure. So Studio is our full production system in the cloud. 
It's true cloud software, cloud first, and uh, cloud native software. The new features in it is the ability to inject Scuddy 35 markers, so now you can trigger advertising from right in the studio as you're doing your live production, and the ability to synchronize multiple feeds frame accurately so that you can do true frame accurate switching in the cloud with studio and with live view units as a source. Wow, I'm such a big fan of that. What has the cloud really done for your customers? I mean, the cloud is a elastic enabler, right? It's the ability to take on capacity that you don't have to capital purchase hardware for, rack it up in a van, rack it up in the studio. You can take on 10 productions one day, one, one production the next, and have that elastic capability to deal with that. That's really what the cloud offers. And the cloud works seamlessly with all of your field units. You've got your LU300, you've got the new LU800. What are the new features for these products? So new features on the field units include that ability to send the time code information, NTP timestamps in the stream, let you synchronize it in studio or in other software if that's what you happen to be using. So that's now available on the units, plus a new transmission mode that's meant specifically for cases where you're taking a live unit, plugging it into dedicated bandwidth. You're not always using bonded cellular. Sometimes you do have access to fiber drop and you just need an encoder to do that. You can now put it in a special transmission mode that does 0.3 seconds delay and maximum bandwidth for that kind of dedicated bandwidth mode. Dedicated wow. drop. So that's like uh, 300 milliseconds or less. Yes, that's correct. That's incredible. That's like real time practically. Yeah. So you're doing all this, plus you've got all of your, you got a few new products for the storage? That's right. So Live View Ingest, which is the ability to take every one of your Live View feeds and have that recorded in the cloud in a cyclical recording format so that you have seven days or whatever time period you pick of all of the content coming in. You can choose which of that content and then move on to your MAM system, your uh, NRCS system, wherever else you're, you're bringing that content to and use that seven day buffer as a window to look into it and say, well, this is the content we want to keep and this is the content that we don't really need. So we don't want to burden our MAM with that, you know, that storage and, and just get rid of it. Uh, and we now have direct integration with Mimir and Dina on that. Um, integration with BitCentral on, on Ingest as well. It's really We really call it Live View Ingest 2.0, even though it's a very new product for us, because there's so many additional features all packed into one release that we thought it was a, a major new release for that product. Wow. I, it's really impressive what you're doing. Let me ask you about the NAB show in general. Do you have a special memory at NAB, or tell us about like kind of what it's meant to you to be here at the show. I mean, we always, every year we come, we always compare, like, how, all, everybody at the company, how, how many NABs is this for you? We relive some of the old stories. It's just such a great show to reconnect with this whole industry. It's like seeing all your old friends. Plus, you're here doing business and showing off the new products and talking to all your customers. But you're running into those friends that are customers and friends that are partners. And it's just the place to be. It's the centerpiece of the industry, really. It's like a big family here. We hope you're enjoying it. Uh, if you have, have, are not able to make it here at the showroom floor, at least they can watch the live stream. But definitely come check it out here in Las Vegas. This is the biggest video production and live streaming broadcast show in the world. And we are just having a blast here. Like I always say, it's all about meeting new people uh, and seeing old friends at the 2024 NAB show. A new guy to me, Brian Compton of Compton & Company. How you doing, sir? Great, thank you. It's great to have you here. Uh, it's, a, it's an interesting, uh, different type of it, what you do. Yeah but it makes sense in, for lots of us in this industry. Let's talk about what you do and how you got started. Great. Um, we help companies in navigating pivotal moments. Uh, they may be in cash crisis, navigating regulatory threats. They may be scaling. Uh, all of those things share pretty much the same thing in common. They don't have enough cash to help the company function or to accelerate growth. Got it. And so you are you literally kind of take over or you help them manage it and get it to a state where they can function, they continue to function? We help them get it to a state where they can function without us. Got it. And you bring in investors and whatnot? Yeah. Frequently, we have to bring investors. Got it. So is that, are those usually like Hollywood-based investors or is it just financial firms, that kind of thing? Um, it, it, it could take a number of different forms. So if it's, if it's um, truly a startup, uh, if you're looking for family and friends and angel investors, uh, you may be looking for seed money. Uh, if we're looking for larger, then we're looking for a series A, B, C rounds. And that a lot of times may mean I'm bringing in large investment firms mm -hmm. uh, that are, are willing to invest. They want Compton Company, though, to de-risk the execution of their investment. Mm -hmm. So we, we kind of uh, straddle both sides of the line to help 
the client get to where they want to go. Well, that's cool. It's, it's not what I would expect for an interview, but it makes a lot of sense, right? Yeah, there's a, there are companies in this industry that, that are struggling and need need somebody like you to, to help them grow. Yeah. Uh, lots. There's so much um, so much growth and so much innovation in the M&E tech space. Mm -hmm. um, possibly seven out of ten, eight out of ten companies need some type of help. Interesting, that's wild. So you are going to be at a, a, the Media and Entertainment Financial Town Hall at NAB show. Yes, right, this afternoon at 3.30. Okay, let's talk about what that what the discussion's going to be. Okay, so the, the topic, uh, it's for an hour, and we're going to talk about um, accelerating growth, we're going to talk about scaling, and we're, we're going to talk about funding. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay, so that's funding, scaling, and growth acceleration at the m and &E Financial Town Hall at NAB Show. Uh, you learn how your business can secure funding, scale operations, and accelerate growth from a top management consultant, which is you, Brian Compton, at W2149. That's West Hall, 2149. Uh, Capitalize Conversation Corner is the name of the uh, discussion. That's cool. Uh, Monday, April. Oh, it's not today. Is it Monday? It, it oh, is my today. gosh. I don't know my days. I'm getting old. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Me, too. Again, thank you so much, Brian Compton, founder at Compton & Company. Wishing you an awesome NAB show. Thank you so much, and, is, and you as well. Is there anyone anywhere someone can go to learn about you? Uh, yes. Um, CompsonAndCo.com. Um, we have a website, and there's a, a URL. If you can drop by at 3.30, you get the URL. Uh, Got it. Well. So is it ComptonAndCo.com? That's correct. Perfect. So ComptonAndCo.com. Brian Compton, thank you so much. We're going to toss it to a break, and we'll be back in a few minutes. Good morning, and welcome to the first day of NAB Show. It's opening day, and I could not think of a better booth to highlight than Nikon with everything that's going on. I'm here with Mark Cruz. How are you today? Awesome. I'm excited to be here. How many NAB shows have you been at, by the way? A few, a few, but this is the most exciting in recent memory. Oh my goodness. So I'm just going to say it because it's been the elephant in the room. I just, you know, I'm new with Nikon as well. I also, you know, talk to my friends over at Red and then MRMC, but we see Nikon in the past as primarily, I've seen at least, as a photography still images. So the acquisition now with RED and MRMC into the video game, like, can you tell us a little bit more? What can you share about that? Well, usually I'd come in a, in a Nikon shirt, but today I'm wearing Nikon, MRMC, and RED. These are all companies that are part of now of the Nikon family. As of a few days ago, uh, we've uh, completed a uh, whole uh, complete an acquisition that made Red a wholly owned subsidiary of Nikon and what that means is that uh, they are now part of the Nikon family. They're here today um, at NAB. NAB is really uh, talking about broadcasting but we're also uh, here talking about the cinema solutions that uh, we're now offering through the Nikon group of families. Um, MRMC is, it doesn't stand for Mr. Mark Cruz or uh, Mr. MC. I know, I've this been calling Mark, it Mr. MC. This is Mark Robertson, Mark Mark Roberts Motion Control, and um, they have uh, several products for broadcast. They also have some Cine uh, Bolt products at the, t at the front of the hall here that we can get afterwards, and we've been working with them for a while on their broadcast solutions. Very innovative, very high-end, and it's something that it's a core competency that we at Nikon didn't have. As you said, our uh, reputation has been more with the steels industry, and that's fair, but we've come a long way of recent in creating mirrorless cameras for the creators, photographers, and videographers. Now with our NRAW format, with the Z8 and Z9, and that XSpeed 7 platform that we're showcasing here, it's been a really great uh, format in the last couple of years to reach out to the creator community and with a smaller, agile, but powerful platform of the of the era in these cameras. But now speaking of the elephant in the room, as you mentioned, with the acquisition of RED, we can really expand the core competencies of RED and their sensor development technology, namely their global sensor technology that they've just introduced. Uh, now into the V-Raptor and the V-Raptor XL and uh, further have synergies between the core competencies of Nikon, their processor development, their user interface as well as their optics expertise and really make a, a strong market 
um, with these two companies. Gotcha. And I love that you said that. It's a synergy. I think a lot of the filmmaking and the content creator community that I'm looking at, they're like, what's going to happen? I think we are all able to let every company do what they do, and it's a synergy, as you say. Yeah, you know, uh, for those people looking out there, uh, Red is going to continue to be Red. Um, uh, they're not going to change. They're gonna, we're going to continue to support their service and distribution, and even the name is going to remain the same. Their products are going to remain the same. So um, I want everybody to know that um, that Red's going to be Red, but going forward, um, it's going to be a stronger relationship because Nikon has things uh, in the their expertise that can be leveraged in the cinema community in the future. So we're looking forward, can't tell too much of what's going to happen in the future. It's going to take a few years to really develop something unique, but um, this is the start of that, something special. I love that. And like, I will say that I am finally utilizing Nikon My as video and it's stunning I'm talking the Z8 ZF what can you tell us about this this is the ZF yeah, this is it right here it's incredible and from what my understanding was is beyond the flip screen option it still has the same powerful processing engine as the Z8 and the Z9 yeah that's really the the breakthrough for our last three cameras I would say the Z9 the Z8 as well as the ZF having that new X Speed 7 processor it's about 10 times faster than the previous generation so it gives us better autofocusing, um, more faster frame rates. Uh, as far as video goes, we can do much more things with video now, um, you know, longer record times and so on and so forth. So um, as you said, uh, with the Z8, it's really the Z9 in a smaller body and the, the break through with those two formats, uh, those two cameras rather, is that it has internal RAW. Um, the great thing about the ZF, um, in addition to its sort of heritage styling and its build, is that it can also, with the XP7 in it, can do internal 10 bit um, and log. You know, uh, it doesn't do RAW in this, um, it's not the same sensor technology uh, as the Z8 and Z9, but that new processor, we can do so much more things internally. As you were saying, you're sort of a, a one person band when it comes to uh, shooting. That's the great thing about uh, these formats is you don't need an external recorder going out just to capture things like 10-bit yes. or, or RAW. Um, in the case of the Z8 and Z9, you can do RAW internally. Here you can do 10-bit internally. You have a flip-out screen so you can monitor yourself right from this camera. So yeah, really exciting stuff coming out of this um, and it works a lot. Uh, we have a lot of great partnerships with Small Rig and creating just, you know, just the, the supports for it. Um, so a lot of interesting stuff just from the Nikon mirrorless platform in this booth. Oh, I, thank you for giving us an overview. But I'm just saying, in you and your role, what is the role that you play at Nikon? And what makes you so excited about what Nikon is doing? Yeah, so I'm a um, senior manager at uh, Nikon USA. I generally look after the marketing portion and the launching of the new products, bringing them to market uh, whenever we have new products. What's exciting for me is the breadth of new products that we're delivering. Since I started with Nikon USA, um, we've had almost on average a product launch every month uh, on average. Um, that's because of the rapid expansion that they're building with the Z system. The Z system basically started from scratch in 2018. And since then we have, I think over 40 lenses now um, that are in production and many more on the way. And so that's really exciting because the powerful format of the Z mount system means that we can have lenses and optics that are way better resolution than um, things in the past. So I'm really excited about that. I'm really excited about the direction that they're taking with their processor and sensor development. And oh, couple that with the traditional Nikon ergonomics. I think that's why people like Nikon in general, it has a soul to it. I think whether you're capturing stills, whether you're capturing a video, just the interaction between Nikon and their products, we're really delivering on tech, but really delivering on an experience as well. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Mark, for giving us all the insight and even speaking as much as you did about the acquisition. Congratulations on everything. I'm so excited to see what's going forth. And my last thing before tossing it over to my co-host, Sharif, in another hall, um, any ritual that you do personally to get ready for a big show like this? Ritual? Uh, coffee, that's one. Uh, <laughs> Good night rest and uh, a lot of push-ups the day before. Get the blood flowing. There you go. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Mark, thank you. for your time. This has been Nikki Sun with NAB Show Live. Welcome back to NAB Show Live. My name is Tess Protesto. I'm with the Stream Geeks. And here I am today in the South Hall Lower at PTZ Optics booth 
with Paul Richards, the Chief Revenue Officer of PTC Optics. Hi, Paul. Hi, Des. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, no problem. Always happy to be with you. How's the show going? <laughs> it's great. We are here um, showing off a, a variety of new products. Our brand new PTC Optics Move SE, which is our entry level 1080p PTC camera with built-in auto tracking. We've won several awards for this camera because it has everything that PTC Optics customers love but built into a modern interface where we have auto tracking, we have auto framing, we have group tracking, a lot of great features and with a five-year warranty and we've just been listening to our customers and building all of the things that they've asked for. With the Move 4K cameras, our kind of higher-end 4K models, we are doing some really interesting things. While some cameras require like a software to do auto tracking, we've built auto tracking directly into the cameras. And the 4K cameras can track up to 300 feet away. Wow. These cameras we're building in directly to the joystick controllers. So the joysticks here can control the PTZ cameras. And uh, I want to show quickly how easy it is to uh, launch an auto track. So what I'm going to do, Tess, I'm going to try to auto track you. Um, so here we go. I'm going to click one button on the joystick to start auto tracking. And essentially, it's got you right there. You can see on the screen, we've got a box around Tess. And what this is telling us is that the camera itself is ready to track Tess. So I'll go ahead and select you. And you can go ahead and just do a little walkabout. You're going to have to walk with me. Oh, because you know, I'll let you out. You take it then. Okay, so this is going to auto track me, supposedly. So, oh, there we go. I'm moving around and the camera is following me and that's pretty darn seamless. All right, that's so cool. So auto tracking is a big deal, but the biggest thing that we're offering this year is the PTZ Optics Hive. So I wanna take you guys over here really quickly and show you our brand new cloud-based video production software. This is PTZ Optics Hive. We've taken a video production system and a PTZ control system and made it so that you can share access with anyone in the world just by clicking a button. It's as easy as sharing a Google Doc. Whether you're on the local area network or whether you're anywhere in the world, you can just type the person's email address in and determine whether they want to be a camera operator, a producer, or just a viewer of all your cameras. The other thing we've done is we've really changed what it means to have pan tilt zoom control. I really think this is the next level of PTZ control. What I'm gonna show you here is called fast frame. And what you can do, if you can, can you see this on the screen here? What you can do is you can just select an area of the screen, click it, and the camera will go exactly there. With a pan tilt zoom joystick, you gotta pan, you gotta tilt, you gotta zoom, you kinda gotta steer it to a specific location. With this, you can literally look at an entire baseball field, pick a specific spot, click a button and the camera is going to go there. So this is the PTZ Optics Hive. It's currently launched here at NAB. We'll be doing a beta for about a month and a half and any of our customers can try it for free. There will always be a free option. Great. So it will always be free for one camera. It will be $50 a month for three cameras and $145 a month for unlimited cameras. So we're really interested to get everyone signed up for the beta so you guys can get access to it. So if you're using PTZ cameras, this is not just for PTZ optics. This will work with Sony, Panasonic, Canon. It works with 400 different cameras, and we support direct camera drivers. So this is not just basic pan, tilt, zoom. We support all of the iris, the shutter speed, the color correction, and all of these tools to give you a seamless experience that you can share throughout the world and really just revolutionize what it means to be a PTZ camera operator. Now tell me, you've been at NAB for, how, NAB for how many years? So this would be, our company is celebrating our 10 year anniversary. And I'm gonna say this is probably about eight years of NAB for me. What's your favorite memory from NAB? So my favorite memory from NAB is when you start to have people coming back to the booth and giving you recognition for saying, wow, you got a bigger booth this year. Wow, you're legitimate. And so by being here at NAB, customers really can see that we're a serious company. We've been in business for 10 years. We're here to stay. And NAB is, a, is kind of a testament to that, where our customers can come here and shake our hands 
and realize that we're here to do real business. We are not just an online company. We're real people solving real problems for real customers. And where can people learn more about PTZ Optics? So you can go to ptzoptics.com. All right, thank you so much. This has been Paul Richards from PTZ Optics, live from the NAB Show. Welcome back to NAB Show Live. I'm Tess Protester with the Stream Geeks here at one of the most highly anticipated booths at the NAB Show Live, Black Magic Design. I'm here with Bob. He's the Director of Sales for the Americas at, at uh, Black Magic Design. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing good. It's been a great show, a lot of energy so far, right? Oh, totally, yeah. It's great to see all the people back. Yep. Yeah, so tell me a little bit about Black Magic Design. I know you have a wide array of products. We do. Um, we added a lot of different products. Uh, in our ATEM area, we added a couple of new ATEM Constellation, 1ME and 2ME, and all, also a micro panel. In Resolve, DaVinci Resolve 19 went out in beta the other day, uh, in, including we have some new hardware for that. We have a new micro color panel for people that are using iPads or whatever. And uh, we also added uh, some new Simply 2110 products, so you can actually do remote monitoring, monitoring by you know using 10 gig Ethernet and moving uh, signals around, turning them back into SDI or HDMI, depending on what you're monitoring in. Uh, we also have a new router there. We have a new big router, 120 by 120 inputs. Uh, we also added two new cameras, though. Uh, yeah, a new Pixis 6K camera. That's a new box camera that we uh, introduced in three different mounts, uh, L mount, uh, EF mount, and PL mount. And then we have the new uh, Blackmagic Ursa Cine 12K camera. That is a completely new design. It has Wi-Fi built in, 10 gig Ethernet port. It's uh, it it records up to 12K on uh, on our new um, media module that goes into a new media dock, and you can record on uh, eight terabytes or 16 terabyte uh, modules, and uh, it all they all record uh, both Blackmagic RAW as well as proxies at the same time, and you connect them through our cloud service so they can move the files. To directly to the editor while you're still shooting. So you have a cloud service now. Tell me a little bit more about that. So the Blackmagic cloud service has been out, and we what we do is we're able to allow people to move files through the cloud service down to wherever they need it to go, right? And uh, you can also share DaVinci Resolve projects, $5 a project a month, and people can uh, share those globally. So it's a great way to move the media, but also to move the projects along. And now it doesn't matter if your editor is in Zimbabwe or wherever. And uh, yeah, so people have been using that. And then we have our Blackmagic camera app that's on the iPhone, but we also are showing a version of Android here at the show. Excellent. Do you think that people are most excited to see the cameras, the switchers, DaVinci? I think it goes on and on and on. Like they go, oh, that's cool. Oh, no, that's cool. Oh, no, that's cool. So, yeah, we've had a lot of excitement across all the product lines, and it's always great to see that. Do you, would you say there's one thing that's a standout innovation this year for you guys, or is it just everything you listed, all those great products? Yeah, I think we. Uh, there's one other thing that we introduced is a replay system that uses DaVinci Resolve as the heart of the replay system for our live stuff, and that's also getting a lot of cool attention. But the cameras always draw lots of attention. Resolve draws attention. There's a lot of things that draw attention, but they all work together, which I think is awesome. Now, I've seen you here a few times, a time or two. How many years have you been attending NAB? Well, let's see. I, I did two in the 1980s, and then since 1993, I have been on the floor. If it's open, I've been here. Wow. So that's a lot, yeah. What is the coolest, most interesting, or uh, impactful thing about NAB? The people. Uh, it's amazing. I still see people that I saw at those first couple of shows. And uh, the, the people, the customers, the different guys, the different manufacturers, or whatever, is a collection of the heart is, is really the people and, and all of the relationships that I've built over the last 35 years or whatever it is. So it is kind of cool to see people and like, oh, I haven't seen you in a while or that kind of thing. And especially during the pandemic, we had that. But we've been back the last couple of years and now it's really full like it used to be. Yeah, it's exciting to see the growth back in here again. It's the first day, and we've got a couple more days left. Are you excited for the rest of the show? Uh, totally. I mean, this is great. I get to talk to people all week long, and uh, by Wednesday, I'll, my voice will be shot, but that's okay. Yeah. So where can people learn more about Blackmagic Design and find out more about your products? Sure. Go to our website, blackmagicdesign.com. Excellent. That has been live from South Hall Lower at the Blackmagic Design booth. Thank you so much, Bob. Thank you. Welcome back to NAB Show Live. I'm Tess Protesto here live from South Hall Lower. I'm at Edit Share's booth 
And I'm here with Lee, who's the VP of Business Development. Lee, how are you today? Yeah, great. Thanks Thanks for coming by. Yeah, thanks for letting us stop by and interviewing you. Can you tell us a little bit about who EditShare is? Yeah, sure. So EditShare is a kind of smart workflow company. Um, the back-end infrastructure is our, our, is our storage architecture. And we do media management, uh, collaboration tools. And we essentially provide creative freedom to creatives ar around the globe enable them to choose which creative applications that they want and seamlessly provide uh, integration with all of those applications. What are some of those applications that you're referring yeah, to? So the, the first one is our kind of our, our storage architecture, which is EFS. And you can see in the background here, we've got all our storage nodes. And this is enables people to work collaboratively, whether you're on Adobe or Avid or Final Cut and all these applications. And it enables people to work collaboratively together. On top of that, we've got um, asset management on top, which enables you to index all of your media, find your media, retrieve your media. And then uh, taking that another step further, um, we've merged with a company called Shift Media, which means uh, we can send people all the content on their iPhones, on their Android phones, um, onto their Apple TVs. So essentially, a, a facility, is, which is internal stakeholders, delivering that to external stakeholders outside of the building securely on their iPhone um, and making that a seamless uh, collaboration process. Okay, that sounds really interesting. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about some of the latest innovations you're bringing to NAB this year? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, the first one that I would mention is in our background, which is uh, EFS NVMe. This one here at the top here is, a, is, our, is our basically a premium chassis. Um, and this is providing ultimate throughput and performance. And we're all talking about, you know, we, we went from HD to 2K and 4K. We've even got uh, manufacturers here releasing 12K cameras and full frame. So what, what's happening is that people are shooting higher quality bits, um, more, more throughput, more bandwidth, and this NVMe will give you the ultimate throughput and performance. What does that really mean? Well, editors can work natively with higher quality files all in real time collaboratively. And if we just look at this one here, this one here that we see here, Tess, that's the equivalent of 18 of these together. Oh, wow. Bonded together. So we're really pushing the boundaries on, on, on technology at the show. Um, some of the other things we're, we're launching is a partnership with Atomos here, um, taking our camera to cloud technology. So uh, anyone who has a, a camera who's shooting on set, they can put an Atomos on top of their, their, their camera, uh, shoot uh, stuff out in the field, and it automatically comes into our application media silo. And anyone can, in any geo can open up their phone again, review content, add annotations, give markers, saying, hey, can you guys shoot that again? It's not set up or, you know, turn it a little bit left or right or, or, or frame it better. So real-time interaction with people on set for dailies, um, and that's all new as well at, at, at the show. How important is that real-time interaction to your customers? Yeah, look, everyone's looking for everything faster, quicker, cheaper, right? So uh, the times that people used to have on spending on in post, and you guys know that from being here, right? The, uh, the, the, the insatiable appetite to deliver media constantly uh, uh, and, and quicker and faster to, to the end users is really important. Um, and we see that uh, being able to geographically disperse that content. My producer may happen to be in New York, but I happen to be shooting in, in Budapest in Hungary. Wow. The ability for them to give real-time interaction and feedback without actually going to that uh, facility, uh, going to uh, and flying to Budapest and paying for the hotels and the flights and the accommodations, right. that all disappears, but, and they can still provide that real-time interaction. Very interesting. Have you been to NAB before? I assume you probably have. Yeah, I've, I've, I've been around a few times. Um, um, this is my probably around 25th uh, NAB. 25th? Yeah, 25th NAB. I have five under my belt, and I okay. thought I was racking them up. Yeah, and, uh, you know, this NAB actually feels slightly different. Uh, we went through the entire kind of COVID thing, and, um, and then we started back last year. But this feels like NAB has its energy back. Um, you know, or you're, you're meeting people, people are friendly, people are happy to be back together. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a small community, the media and entertainment industry, and everyone really knows each other. Uh, but I, it definitely feels like, you know, NAB is back as a, as, a, as a major show again. Can, uh, where can people learn more about EditShare? Yeah, well, um, EditShare.com is, uh, is our main website. 
the information about our workflow tools, our collaboration, everything's up there on editshare.com. Okay, thank you so much, Lee, for joining us today. This has been Edit Share from South Hall Lower. Back to you guys. Welcome back to NAB Show Live. This is Nikki Sen, and this time we are going from the inside of Central Hall at Sydney Central all the way outdoors with Ariel DP Caden from Lightcraft. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So tell us what we got going out here because last year these were all food trucks. Now it's replaced with drones, gimbals, all the cool stuff. Yes, of course. At Lightcraft, we offer a bunch of different remote camera operations. Uh, we can put a stabilized head on just about anything and drones are our bread and butter. So we brought a few of our tools out here. Uh, you can see them moving behind us. We have an RC car. We have various uh, drones on display and we even have a couple up in the air. And some of our workshop attendees are getting a chance to operate cameras on drones for the first time. I mean, isn't that cool? Can we just like pause to say how cool I that think is it's awesome. to have hands-on experience here at NAB Show? Yes, as I've been told, and I, I think this is accurate, this is the first time NAB has allowed exhibitors to fly with, uh, with talent and with uh, the permission of the convention center and the FAA. So this is awesome that we got the chance to do this first. This is amazing because I don't know if you all recall, we did a cool pre-NAB Show yeah, promo and at that time, I didn't think this was cleared yet. No, so it wasn't official. To see it out here, you were like, there's outside stuff too. I'm like, wait, can we do this? Can yes. we see? Yes, honestly, we brought uh, three different drones that are all flying today. Mm -hmm. And so Lightcraft's lead pilot, Jordan, has been doing some FPV demonstrations. We've also used the DJI Inspire 3, which was uh, launched here last year. And given a chance for some operators who may not have used a drone in a professional setting before to get some hands-on experience. And honestly, I think this is awesome. I hope we get to do it again in the future. Absolutely. And what has been the demographic here? Are people getting hands-on for the first time FPV? to be able to take it into the cinematic world. Yes, we've worked with some, uh, some of our attendees are from their own production companies mm -hmm. and they may have used a uh, different style of drones and this is our first time using this style. Okay. We've also had some people who work in marketing and are curious about when and how they should use a drone in their own footage. So a really big range of people. Wow, incredible. So I would say, how many times have you been to NAB show? Personally? This is my fourth or fifth year. First time as a, a proper instructor, though. Yeah. Well, how does it feel to come back as an instructor after being an attendee uh, all these past years? It's cool. I'm not sure I've earned it yet, but I'm certainly <laughs> happy to participate, that's for sure. You're like, you know what? It's kind of hard to catch a break here. You just feel like things just fly by the seat of your pants. Yeah, sometimes. absolutely. But I'm also making some friends and seeing some familiar faces, and that's been a little bit refreshing. Um, somebody I may not have crossed paths with since last NAB, I go ahead and I see them. They recognize me. I recognize them. It's it's really cool. Amazing. And just about you for a little bit. You are a aerial DP, right? So being able to come back here from an attendee being an operator to a teacher, like, how, yeah. like, is that a moment for you? <laughs> it certainly is. I've only been doing this about uh, 10 years. And this is about the time of career in my life where I feel like I'm reaping the rewards a little bit. And to be able to pass that on to somebody who may have been in a position I was in a few years ago is rewarding. It, yeah. It's a special moment for sure. So do you have any tips for success for those who are like want to go in the same path that Mr. Caden has sure. gone? Like what are, what are some tips? Get out there and fly anything you can. And also, come say hey to Lightcraft. We can we can give you some tips in person or show you some things that I would have liked to have known when I was first starting out. Um, but really, just get hands-on, fly anything you can. You'll just get better quickly. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Caden. Thank you for introducing us to the first time, first ever drone. And it's kind of cool to of say Lightcraft was behind that. Thank you for having us. Perfect. Well, enjoy the rest of your NAB show. You too, Nikki. We're in Cine Central, Central Hall, checking out all the cinematic innovation. And I'm here with Photo Joseph. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me on. You know, I'm geeking out because I see you always on YouTube <laughs> as my highly recommended suggested videos how to do the things you are the person that the, so you're telling me that the algorithm actually works the algorithm has wow. worked in your favor my friend how are you doing here though I mean like you have been going from teaching classes go 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 all day it's opening day how has your morning been uh, a little chaotic yeah so yeah. I'm teaching a bunch of classes actually eight different sessions this week two of them today but I'm also doing this news project that's sponsored by Atomos okay. and a couple other companies Frame.io and Condor Blue are a big part of this as well and so Essentially what we're doing is we're shooting newsreels, vertical shorts for Instagram, but we're shooting it on a professional rig using camera to cloud. We're pushing our footage real time up to a cloud server where our editor in Ohio, I think, is pulling the footage down, editing reels and pushing them back to us, usually within 30 to 40 minutes of, of ending the shot. Wow, that's incredible. Like I was just saying, we were 
actually just talking to my friend Derek over at Scenery, which is like an editing base as well. He's also a content creator, but we're talking about like how there's a lot more content creators on the scene now. You're filmmakers, you're being forced to shoot vertical a lot more, I'm assuming. <laughs> so, I mean, what what say you? How's, how's that process or the transition been? No, it's great. I, I actually really enjoy vertical for that delivery, right? For that format of being on your phone, it really works. And what's cool about this setup is, so I'm shooting with the S52X, the Lumix S52X, which is shooting open gate 6K internal. Okay. We're rotated vertically, so we're getting a internal clip for use later that even though it's vertical, is actually more than 4K wide, more than Ultra HD wide. It's a massive file, but simultaneously creating the 1080p proxies that are going up to the cloud. But that's what the editor's working with, but then later on after the show, we want to make something longer form for YouTube. We've got 6K source to work from. Oh my gosh, you're just like... I like my nerd, like, doo -doo 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 -doo. it's like, this is amazing. So you get the both wide and the vertical and you'll right. be able to do this in post. Exactly, exactly. Talk about making the process so much easier. I see you have a YC Onion uh, monopod as well. Yeah, great monopod here, <laughs> really nice. So nice and easy to single latch to get it up or down. Love that part of it. And part of this process too, so since we are going camera to cloud, but as you know, your cell phone barely works here in NAB. So what we're tethered to here, you can get that in the shop, but this is a Scalera, a bonded modem cellular backpack. So we've got, it's kind of crazy inside of here, but essentially this is giving us a high bandwidth signal, even with all the madness that's around here. We can see we are plugged in directly into the ethernet port on the deck so that we can just push these straight to the cloud with minimal fuss. I was really literally good. about to say, how are you going live, my friend? <laughs> all yeah. these new innovations, all the technologies. I also know that you're a veteran of NAB shows. Oh, so yeah. what keeps you coming back? Do you have any success stories that you can share with our audience? You know, NAB has always been an absolute blast for me. There's always so much to see and learn. For, as a professional, I always make clients here. So it's good for business and it's a lot of fun and I get to see a lot of my industry friends. Okay, so what's the game plan for those who are here for the first time? How do you like organize this entire show so that you can like tackle everything? Yeah, seriously, if you've never been to the show before, you really just got to take the time to walk the aisles up and down, up and down. If you try to say, oh, I got to go to this booth, that booth, you're going to miss everything as you're running in between. So just take the time to go up and down. You need a few days. This is not a one day show for sure. Gotcha. But a, a little tip for you, you could actually go to my Instagram, a little plug here, there you go. to watch the reels that we're shooting because that's why we're doing these so that people can see what is happening here at NAB. They can find out what they're missing, what they might want to go check out. And for those who can't be at NAB, it's just a way to see what's going on. So on Photo Joseph on my Instagram, you can check out the reels there. And if we, uh, outside of seeing the amazing content that you're capturing, uh, you are also teaching some other workshops. So can you plug yourself of what you're doing here at NAB Show? Yeah, so I see I've already done a workshop on script writing and on uh, 4K live streaming. I've got one on ATEM production. I've got one on uh, cloud editing with Resolve. Um, I can't remember what the others are. I got six more to do. I, I know I've, I've prepped for all of them. I just can't remember what they are right now. I don't even know how you retain all that information. Well, I clearly I don't, so. <laughs> well, that's incredible. What is the uh, plans for after the show, though? Like, do you have plans for how do you tackle the after parties? Because do you feel like you have to be everywhere nowadays? You know, you want to be places. There's, yeah. a, there's a few good parties to go to, so. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, you take it easy. You got to have an end time. You got to get your sleep. Amazing. So anything that you want to end off on in terms of plugging yourself, your channel, do you have any cool projects that you have about to launch on your YouTube channel? Just always a influx of videos. It's, I've been so busy with some other stuff lately. I haven't had much on my YouTube channel, but it's, it's coming. Don't worry. It'll be there. But Photo Joseph absolutely everywhere. Appreciate the follows. Amazing. Well, thank you, Photo Joseph. Amazing to see you in the flesh. And I can't wait to see all of your reels on Photo Joseph. This is Nikki Sun. We're over here in Central Hall. We just talked to Nikon, and now, of course, what's a camera without something to protect that precious gear? So I'm here with the VP of Marketing, James of Nomadic. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I'm fantastic as well. It's opening day. I mean, how many NAB shows have you been here? This is only our second one. And when we came last year, we're like, oh, we'll just try it. I don't know how big it is. And like on opening day, our booth was slammed the whole time. We were like questioning, we're like, is it gonna be good? Yeah. And then the whole time we're like, whoa. So we signed up pretty immediately for next year. Amazing, so yeah. that's a huge testimony. So yeah. why is it important to come to a show like NAB Show? And what are some success stories of being here at NAB Show? Yeah, yeah. Last year, we actually signed up some new distributors, international distributors, because when we came, we again, we didn't really have a lot of knowledge what NAB was. We made camera bags that could be used for videography and, and photography, obviously, but still, it was 
not really on our radar. People kept bringing it up, but we didn't realize how big this show was and how much opportunity there is here. Yeah. So, I mean, last year was really fantastic. Yeah. I mean, so it's opening day right now, so we're just in here for like I an know. hour, but so far it's been really good. I mean, just walking over here before we went live, yeah. I mean, your whole booth was just swarming with filmmakers yeah, and creators. Yeah, we pushed them out so we could film this, by I the know. way. We are that important. <laughs> but we were like, can we please have a little bit of your time to tell us about the new yeah. products that you have or just kind of the line that you have and what you offer for yeah, yeah. filmmakers? Yeah, for sure. For, so Nomadic, for those that you don't know who Nomadic is, we make highly functional and innovative products for travel, everyday, and photography. Um, and so we really believe that, like, Functional and innovative products help you live your life more intentionally with confidence, right? So you're not like always worried about, is this bag gonna break or do I have pockets for stuff? You know, like we've all had the rat's nest of bags before where you're like trying to find something, yeah. right? We have lots of pockets to keep everything super organized so you can focus on living more intentionally, basically. Absolutely, well, you said functional and practical, but I have to say also stunning. Yes. The minimalism design, yes. I am living for it. So <laughs> can you tell us like what goes into the design of your bags because yeah. I feel like it's so popular within the community you partner with yeah. filmmakers like Peter McKinnon yeah. you talk about that yeah I mean honestly we're a crowdfunded brand so ever since we started we've been on Kickstarter and so wow. what that means is that you're really engaging with people that are potentially your customer and interested in the product so you're asking for feedback you're doing surveys you're calling people and obviously working with someone like Peter McKinnon who's a professional photographer helping design the product with him yeah. got all those kind of intricacies intricacies that you kind of need as you go into like the thoughtful design yeah. you know what I mean? First and foremost, all of our bags and luggage have lifetime warranty because that's a testament about how we design and build a product. We use like the best materials. You know, in some of these bags right here, we have waterproof zippers, water resistant, waterproof like material. Not necessarily ready to go scuba diving in, but you can take it in the shower, you yeah. know? See, but I like that transparency, that openness. Yeah, yeah. So in working yeah. with filmmakers and photographers like Peter McKinnon, what has been what has been the thing, oh, this is what the bag industry needs to get right in yeah. order to work with filmmakers? Because yeah. I imagine walking the show floor, there's so many bags out there, totally. right? Yeah. But in addressing an actual need of yeah. a photographer and filmmaker, what is the most surprising thing that yeah. you found that you need? Well, I mean, it's, it's kind of different between what you're trying to create. So for the first bag we made, what tri what Peter really wanted is like, dude, I got to go on photo shoots okay. and they're like two days long and I don't really like taking two bags with me. Okay. So we made this product right here. It's big, but it's for traveling every day. Yeah. So that front part expands out and you can put clothes in it. Okay. Or if you're a videographer, you can just fill it up with gear. You know what I mean? But it's really about the modularity of like, I could use it for a ton of gear or I could put clothes and gear in it. And it has like a literally an expansion piece for, for travel. And that was like, we made that for traveling photographers that are on like two, three day shoots. Amazing. You know, I think we're okay. We're, I think we're a show not tell. And yeah. if you're okay with me, I'll hold the mic. Do you mind opening it up and showing our to. viewers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Well, this is the one I was talking about. And we'll go into some other bags. Let me go on this side of you. You can see it's a big boy. This does count as a carry-on, right? So you have multiple pockets here. You have your Molly attachments for other things. It's kind of, maybe you can see it, but you can tell the material is, is very water-resistant, waterproof zippers. So you have a side access here, right? Yeah. Big old water bottle here. And we like to use magnets, not just because they're fun to, you know, yeah. click on and off yeah. from an ASMR standpoint, yeah. but they're very functional. You have a big open pocket up here, and this is where you'd put clothes. So you see the tie down here, and then some organization here. This whole section right there expands out. Okay. So that's where you could then put your clothes in two, three days, you're good to go, right? Okay. And then you have, I'm gonna just flop around here for a second. You got a laptop sleeve here, external. You have luggage passengers, so if you do put it on a roller, Absolutely necessary. And the other thing about our camera bags, I would say, is that we it's not just about the function of like having pockets and things like that. It's got to be comfortable. Yeah. So when you feel this bag, it feels like a 70 liter hiking bag, right? It's super padded. It's super comfy. has a lot of structure to it, so it fits really good on your back. And it's not like dragging you down. It actually fits up on top, right? So you have that lumbar support. So you already saw the laptop sleeve here, and then you open it up. Oh, this has wow. all of our accessories in it, so it's yes. hard to see, but you have a secondary laptop sleeve here or tablet, multiple pockets, and then all this stuff inside. Again, these are accessories. This is all customizable to however you want it. So Amazing. you can fit this up with the camera gear and throw shoes in there and clothes in the front. Well, and also besides the bags, you also make those accessories. Yeah, right? we make accessories. Everything from battery case holders that come with stickers to tell you which side is dead <laughs> so you don't get lost there. We got memory card holder. 
This is for filters, so to keep your filters nice and clean. But everything's just like, it's, it's very modular, it's very functional, it's nice design, and again, it's lifetime warranty, so we kind of have a saying is you buy it nice or you buy it twice, right? Because on backpacks, zippers are the thing that goes. It's very a low percent for us, but if your zipper does break, call us, send it in, we'll refurb it, we'll send you a new one. I love that. And you do have another McKinnon collaboration, right? Yes. The Luma collection? Yeah, yeah, we just came out with this new one. So as you can tell, it's got like kind of a more modern look but this line of this is the backpack this is the nine liter sling we also have a 10 liter sling or a nine liter or a 12 liter sling they're designed primarily for mirrorless you could tell because they're a little bit thinner but the cool thing about this is like especially for camera slings we have we didn't see this a lot so we added magnets so when it's unzipped it just closes tight so because if you're kind of on a shoe and you're changing out a lens you're just flapping over here you got stuff falling out might be raining you can just flip it up and it locks in from the magnets wow. so let's just give the audience like yeah little magnet thank you for that magnet, magnet asmr, ASMR. <laughs> it's amazing it is amazing well i'm gonna pop back over here because i gave you a lot of i know exactly well the last thing here is i mean in preparing for a show like NAV show, like yeah. what what are you most excited for about this year? You were a newbie last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your return this year. What yeah. are you looking forward to most? Two things. Well, we have two new product categories or launches here. Is that the new Peter McKinnon Luma collection? We have four colors in those. Primarily, but in you know in the past we had all black bags. So coming out with a Russ and a Sage is like really exciting for us to add some life into the brand with colors. Um, and we're also showing our apparel line. So we have a new apparel line that's designed for travel, built for every day. Jacket, pants, you know, you could do like splits in these pants right here. <laughs> T-shirts, it's premium everyday apparel. Um, and then overall, just because it is only our second show here, is to talk to new friends and like introduce the brand to people and just like create relationships. Yeah. So. Well, thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank you for giving us a huge hands-on show. I'm so excited to have my hands on the McKinnon 8-liter sling as well as uh, Hello, Tess Protesto here in South Hall Lower. We are at Lucid Links booth, and I'm here with the CEO, Peter. It's nice to meet you, Peter. It's nice to meet you. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you for joining us today. Can you tell us a little bit of an introduction of who Lucid Link is and what services you offer? Absolutely. Lucid Link started in 2016. Uh, we uh, harness the power of cloud storage. We allow people to mount it like a local drive. And the problem we're solving is to enable collaboration for users uh, regardless of where they are. So we, we dramatically improve workflows and productivity and just take the, uh, all the guesswork out of using the cloud. Interesting. Now, is that collaboration in real time or is there a delay with getting that, you know, storage files to and from? That's exactly right. What we are, what the specific problem that we solve is around latency when using cloud files and when you're using it across multiple users. So we prevent this as a single source of truth and the magic of LucidLink is allowing you to have real-time access to it where we do all kinds of technology to stream it on demand, giving you the performance of a local drive but the simplicity of having it as a, as, uh, the sim yeah, and the simplicity of having it as a local drive. So it's a local drive, are you referring to a hardware solution and this is being brought into the cloud instead? Everybody is used to working with uh, either on-prem uh, with, a, with, a, with a server or the internal disk drive. What we are preserving is that muscle magic in, from that workflow. You can look at LucidLink, even though it's in the cloud and you get all the benefits of using the cloud from, uh, from, uh, from the uh, uh, material benefits and the economic benefits, but it looks and feels like you plugged in a US drive, a USB drive. And uh, you're, not only does it look and feel that way, but then you can collaborate with your team members. So we handle all of the, um, all of the uh, people using it at the same time and giving you that same experience. That's really cool. Interesting. Can you tell me a little bit about the latest innovations that you brought here to NAB this year? So we've been here for, uh, well, since uh, 2018 was our first time. 
Uh, and one of the greatest things we, we experience when we're here at the show is hearing the customer voice, all of our users telling us what will make the product better, how we can improve it. And this year, uh, we've taken a, a whole bunch of that information uh, and we're, we've unveiled our, our new beta 3.0 release. Uh, will be coming out later on in the year, and the community preview has been released here. Um, in addition to that, we've been releasing some of the uh, other, um, uh, well, for example, our, our Adobe After Effects panel, uh, which will allow users to be able to use that in a much more uh, coherent way uh, and, and just um, make, make that a much more efficient for them as well. So everything that we're doing right now is, is directly our customers saying, hey, you know, if you had this, this would just improve our workflow a little bit better, make the performance better, improve our productivity better. Uh, and that's exactly what we're focused on. Very interesting. So do you collaborate with a lot of different applications and integrate into those applications? Yeah, so almost all of the different uh, workflow tools have some kind of collaboration aspect to them these days. Uh, and, and they do a great job at that level. What they have in common is they, they must have access to the underlying data sets. Today, the uh, state of the industry is that your data has to be moved from person to person or from process to process. What we do is we allow the collaboration in the infrastructure side, your data side or your storage side, to match that with the tools that you're using. So LucidLink can be a common set of, of, your, of your collaboration for the data, which all of these other tools work with. Now remember, we plug in as a drive. Every single one of those work tools out there that you're running locally can view a USB drive and, and, and just treat it like storage. So they are able to do the same thing with LucidLink. It will look like a mount point or an L drive, and so the applications have no idea that they're they're actually accessing the cloud to do this. So that's absolutely one of the benefits that we bring is just make it um, seamless and an immediate um, ability to implement the cloud without disrupting any of your workflows, any of your business, any of your other uh, infrastructure. I'm sure that's really a benefit to your customers. It saves them in some cases uh, 10x, 100x even, some of the stories we hear in terms of going from uh, weeks to days to hours in terms of what they used to have to do in their workflow is, is it's, it's really gratifying to hear. It's really exciting. Can you tell us where we can learn more about LucidLink? Well, you can stop by the booth. We've got uh, some of our best uh, workflow specialists manning live demos, uh, so that's a great place to do it. You can also go to our, our website. We've just uh, released uh, a refreshed up say, up web, uh, website, uh, great new branding, um, some fabulous videos, and a lot more content to kind of walk you through it. All right, well, Peter, thank you so much for joining me today and answering our questions. It was a pleasure. Thank you for having us. All right, that's it from LucidLink. In Central Hall, this time I'm here with Joyce, who is the CEO of Riedel Communications. How are you? I'm doing good, thank you. I just have to say, first of all, yes to female CEOs. <laughs> um, it's a rarity sometimes at a big show, a convention like this, but it's, it's really inspiring personally, just to feel like we are here, we belong here, we deserve to be here, and here you are. Thank you very much. It's um, you know I've been in this industry a long time, longer than I care to really say, but yeah, being a woman in a industry that's very dominated by men has had its challenges, <laughs> to say the least. But it's it's been fun. It's been a great ride. Um, Riedel is a great company, very diverse. Uh, you know they, they they prop women up on a pedestal. So I really appreciate working for them. You know, Thomas Riedel is an amazing entrepreneur and, and just very inclusive. And so it's a very inclusive, diverse company overall. So I feel really proud to, to hold this position as president and CEO of the Americas. Absolutely. Can you give us a little bit of uh, information about what your company does? So Riedel is, uh, is basically known for an intercom company, um, but we do so, so, so much more. Uh, we do video infrastructure, distributed routing. Uh, we have a line called MeteorNet, which is an IP-based line as well as a, a baseband line, and we have bridges that take you into the future. Um, we have our, obviously, we have comms, so we have our Emmy Award-winning Bolero Wireless, which is just 
catapulted us in the Americas and then artist intercom system. And then about two years ago, we purchased a small company called Simply Live, and they, uh, with them we have uh, Replay and uh, Capture and um, Ingest and Live Live, uh, live production suite, basically, where you can do it in the cloud or on-prem or have your own, uh, you know, data center. So we've really expanded um, just in the last eight years that I've been with the company. So it's very exciting, and to see our booth, it's it's much bigger than it's been in the past, and we we keep growing in population. We have over a thousand people now worldwide, and I'm just real proud to be a part of of Riedel. Absolutely, and we were talking before, and as I understand it, you mentioned that Riedel has been here at the NAB show for maybe 35 plus years now? The company is 35 years old. Um, I think they probably have a presence at NAB of probably in the mid-20s, oh, wow. like 24, 25 years, something like that. I've been coming to more NABs once again that I want to mention. <laughs> <No> <laughs> With a little bit of a break in there, very, very small break. Um, and uh, it's great. I mean, I just love coming to the show because it's like a big reunion. Yes. So I've been in the industry for a long time, and I and I see all my old friends, and I make new friends, and uh, it's just fun. It's a lot of work. It's tiring. It takes about two weeks to get over it once I get home, <laughs> but it's fantastic. You need to plan a vacation after this whole area. Yeah, right? I really need to. I know a lot of people who do, and I just I don't. But I have to. I got to change that a little bit. Gotcha. Being a woman in this industry, you do have to work a wee bit harder yeah, yeah. <laughs> to be taken real seriously, unfortunately. Um, I wanted to get I, your opinion on that as well. Like, is there any uh, tips for those who are aspiring to make it to a CEO level such as yourself? Well, I guess it's just, uh, uh, you know, don't limit yourself. Um, don't put yourself in a corner. <laughs> no one puts baby no, in the no corner. No one puts baby in the corner. <laughs> don't do that. And, um, uh, it's not easy. I can, I can just say that right now. It's not. It's still, even in this day, day and age, it's not easy. Sometimes it almost seems like it's getting worse and maybe before it gets better. So I would just like to see women, more women in tech. Um, I'd like to see more powerful women. I'd like to have more, you know, like-minded women that, to, that we could meet with and talk. And I think it'll get there. Yeah. Um, but the young ones really need to to work it. Yeah. They really need to, to, to step up and we need to help them. Amazing. And then what is, a, could you share a success story of being at a show like NAB show? Oh, a success story as far as uh, like business or something we've... Yeah, I mean like sometimes when you come here you meet new people and new partners or new exhibitors and realize this is the way that technology is going and we are adapting. Um, hmm, let's see. A success story. I could be bring. I could talk about a customer success story. Um, just you know, ran. We usually have meetings established when you come to a show, and your your calendar's booked. But every once in a while, just a random customer comes in, and they'll they look around the booth. They're like, "What do you guys do?" And it's like, "Oh no, another student or another you know, somebody who's just here." hanging out, doesn't know anything about the industry, and then you start talking to them and then they become interested and the next thing you know, it turns into a you know five million dollar sale, which has happened. Wow. So it's like, it's a customer we had no awareness of. No, it was in the house of worship, this particular one, it was in the house of worship vertical. And um, those things happen more frequently than you realize. But those really big ones, that, that's, that's a rare, wow. that's a rarity. Very cool. Well, you heard it here. If you want a $5 million acquisition, you might want to come here. But thank you so much, Joyce, for giving us your time, sharing, you. uh, sharing what uh, Riedel does, and for just inspiring additional women, women in tech, women CEOs. Thank you for your time today. Thank you very much. We're back in City Central, Central Hall. I'm Nikki Sud for NAB Show Live, and I have a dear friend who's also a three-time Emmy-winning creator, producer. How are you, Mr. Bernie? I am doing great. Happy to be here, and thank you for having me on. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to come and spend some time with us. So how many times have you been to NAB Show already? Uh, this is my third. I have not been since the pandemic, but um, I'm happy to be back, and it's just as grand and amazing as I remember. It. There's some new things this year. Have you been able to take a chance to tour all the show floors, or this is literally like day one? You're hitting the ground running. Uh, well, it's day like one half. So I was here. I was on a panel last uh, yesterday. Got a got a preview of say the uh, the West Hall. 
And then, uh, so this is my first time in the Central Hall, so thank you for bringing me over. Well, welcome, as you <laughs> see behind us. So just to give you a rundown, because we were here all day yesterday, so I can actually give you a rundown. We're right in front of Chapman Leonard uh, Studio Equipment. They have the Scorpio 45. I only know that because they graced me and hosted me into their <laughs> studio. And we have so much hands-on camera workshops here. Is this something that you're usually excited to check out, especially when you're show running and producing? I mean, I'm always curious about it because it's always fun to use uh, new new tools in the in the uh, the canvas. I like to say, um, but it's like it's like everything from like hard tech, the hardware to the software to the uh, the methods to the art. It's like I, I kind of like to see everything, a little bit of everything. I'm not I'm never like hands on with the camera, so I'm always kind of like, oh yeah, that's super cool. But I have worked with of course people who are would be completely geeking out about this stuff. All right, did you geek out at any booth yet that you would like to tell the viewers like what 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 should we be looking at? Well, I'm here specifically to like. Look, I'm on two panels, but I, what I'm interested in to see here is like where AI and Gen AI is doing with the with the tool sets. So, from my stance, I know we are in a very uh, a disruptive area of time right now with the Gen AI tools and everything. I know a lot of those influencers and creators and so forth are here talking about uh, various things on their panels and so forth. And as a creator and a producer myself, I think it's we're in, we're in a very very unique time where as a single creator you have access to so many tools to accelerate your creativity and your art. And I think that's really powerful. That, that's what I'm curious about. Amazing. Well, plug your panels a little bit. Um, do, do they already happen? What are you talking about? Can Folks yeah, who are sure. watching this live right now, join a panel. Um, well, I think I don't know if it's recorded or live stream. They are here. Okay. <laughs> so uh, one was yesterday. It was the Television Academy panel for the TV Academy, which is what uh, handles the Emmys, the Prime Emmys. Uh, so I spoke on their panel about um, kind of this topic, new technology, not an AI conversation, but a new technologies and and how you use that as a filmmaker, or as a TV show, uh, TV producer, or TV creator. And then my panel this afternoon is about gaming influ gaming methods influencing entertainment. Uh, so one of the thing, one of the shows I'm, uh, we won an Emmy for was a show called Artificial. It was on Twitch, which you know is a kind of a gaming streaming platform. It was it was one of their first originals. Uh, it was their only original scripted from what I scripted series from what I know. It won their first Emmy. It won the first Peabody, uh, in, and uh, probably the most decorated series on the platform. And that that show is a scripted show, so it's traditional entertainment, but it's on Twitch, and it feels like a Twitch show because gaming methods and gaming mechanisms are in the series to allow the audience to play. And so that's what I'm going to talk about this afternoon. I love that because at the forefront this year, we have the Creator Lab. It's the first time focused on the creator economy yes. at a traditional broadcast show, right, where we handle all the gear, all the technology. So what has it been like to be at the intersection of both sides? Um, it's been uh, it's been chaotic. <laughs> I'll say that. I mean, it's 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 very inspiring. I'm not. I'm not I, this is exactly where I want to be. I like being at the creator uh, the the intersection of the creator economy and the traditional media with pushing technology forward. I like being there. I'm I'm comfortable there. But at the same time, you know, when you're when you're in the forefront, the tip of the spear is the one that gets bloody, right? And and so that's okay. I've I've embraced it. That's fine. And as we uh, go forward, I I love to see that you're seeing both. The creative economy, like people like us, who are just like who can kind of do all the pieces, and then be the traditional side where they can come in too and like merge together and create something more beautiful than the originals. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. Please check out his panel tomorrow, and thank you for sharing your knowledge with us. But this has been Nikki Sun, NAB Show Live in City Central. Back to you. Welcome back to NAB Show Live. I'm Tess Protesto, bringing you content from South Hall Lower. We are at one of the most exciting booths at NAB, the Adobe booth. I'm here with Kyle, the Senior Director of Product Marketing. How's your first day of the show been? It's been awesome. Thanks for coming to visit the Adobe booth today. We have a lot of exciting things to talk about. Yeah, what are some of the latest innovations that Adobe's bringing to the show this year? So we have a ton of innovation going on for professional video editors across Adobe Premiere Pro, After Effects, and Frame.io. In, in more specific terms, Adobe Premiere Pro, we're adding AI-enabled audio workflows. Those are in beta right now, helping editors do, uh, get easier access to the audio tools that they need uh, based on the clips that they have in their timeline. We have After Effects supporting 3D uh, directly inside of After Effects, so you can make it a lot easier to work with your 3D models coming out of uh, 3D tools directly in After Effects. And then Frame.io. Frame.io you might have known as a video review and approval tool. We've just launched the V4 beta. And with Frame.io V4, we're actually transforming Frame.io into the creative management platform. What that really means is we're bringing, to get, we're bringing a new metadata-driven 
collection system to help you create smart shares and dynamic workflows based off of the metadata on the files you're bringing into the product. That's very interesting. I, so you guys are getting on the AI train. How has that experience been for your company? It's been very exciting for Adobe overall. As you know, uh, as you might know, Adobe released Firefly just over a year ago. And so our first iteration of the Firefly models have been for images. We've had over six billion uh, generations of images out of Photoshop in the Firefly image model. And we've had a lot of great reception to that. As you can imagine, we're thinking about what, what are the creative disciplines we're going to serve next. Obviously, there's a lot of interest in video. We're thinking and working hard at that. More news to come there. Uh, but, you know, if you take a step back and look at Premiere Pro today, there are a lot of AI-enabled workflows in Premiere Pro, things like enhanced speech to clean up dialogue. So you and I are doing an interview right now, but we've got some folks over there making some noise. If we were to play this back and edit it in Premiere, we could actually enhance our dialogue to make it stand out. We have things like um, auto-ducking to, to update music and sound levels. There's a lot of AI that's in Premiere already, uh, text-based editing, and, you know, we're only looking to, to innovate further and really help professionals accelerate their workflows inside of Premiere Pro. Okay. If you could pick one feature or one product that Adobe is showcasing at NAB this year that you think is either most exciting to attendees or most exciting to you, could you pick just one? I, I will, and it's, it's personal to me. So I, I was have been on the Frame.io team for seven years. Wow. Yeah, so early employee uh, back in 2016. And today with V4, it's been, it's the culmination of three years of hard work completely reimagining the platform. And it just, it feels so intuitive. I, I'd, I'd ask you to go over and take a look. The design aesthetics, the fluidity of the platform, the, the doors that we're going to open for people in terms of their workflows, from ideation to handoff, it's really, truly compelling. And I'd hope everybody comes uh, and check it out. Um, one more, just a plug. Yeah. If you really, you really have to try enhanced speech. It's one of those things that um, once you use it, you're like, oh my god, I'm going to use this on all of my videos. Uh, so I'd really uh, ask you to check out the Premiere Pro booth inside of uh, the, Adobe, the, the Adobe section here today. And where can people learn more about Adobe? Uh, go to adobe.com uh, and we have pages. You can easily navigate to one of our video pages. We have what's new. You'll see all the updates to Premiere Pro, to Frame IO, and more. Thank you so much, Kyle. I appreciate the interview with you today. Well, I'm back in Cine Central, Central Hall. I'm in the presence of reality TV show star royalty. Derek Shaw, how are you? you? I'm doing great, Nikki. Thank you for having me. <laughs> now tell me, why are you here at NAV Show? Uh, I'm here with actually my company, Scenery. Uh, it's a new video editor. They do AI to cut down videos to short clips, and it's fully collaborative. So, you know, most times you have to, like, edit a video and export it. This one, edit a video, share a link, and it goes wherever you need it to. I love it. So you're heading up growth at Scenery, correct? I am. I am. They just brought me on to lead on growth. Um, We'll see how long that goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully it keeps growing. But speaking of which, coming from a reality show, okay. being the winner of Amazing Race, Thank what you. was it, season 35? Season 34, actually. Season 34. But I'll win 35, too. <laughs> yes, so, bring them know, back. Bring them both back. could be true. Yeah. But I'm just talking in a sense where, in a way, when you're a public figure, you're now okay. right you yeah, like a super big you kind of start becoming like an influencer and then you kind of mm -hmm. start needing to make content all of a sudden it's, so it's can tough. you tell me that you know I just like I can't even walk outside my house without someone recognizing me <laughs> wanting my autograph <laughs> uh, yeah so you know I I used to work in tech um, and I was like a software engineer and I do this reality show and it completely changed the direction of my life. I quit my job, I became a content creator. So I was a content creator for two years, editing videos, shooting, traveling, you know, you know the lifestyle. I think. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it was great. Uh, and I Hi there, Tess Protesto here reporting live from South Hall Lower. I'm here at Store J's booth, 2023 NAB Show Product of the Year Award winners, and I'm with Trisha, the newly appointed Chief Marketing Officer. It's nice to meet you. Great to meet you too, Tess. Thank you for joining me today. Absolutely. So tell me a little bit about first Store J and then your role and the new executive dynamics here. Sure. So Store J is... A lot like uh, Wasabi and Backblazes, people think about them offering cloud object storage, except for we do it completely different. So we have a an approach that we've architected that allows us to distribute data all over the world 
and bring it back in much faster for much less cost uh, than what the uh, current traditional cloud storage providers can do. And the really exciting thing about this is we're utilizing unused or underutilized capacity in existing uh, storage facilities all over the world, and that makes us 83% less carbon for what, what's being put out there by data storage. So that's really exciting for me personally, and a big reason why I joined on as CMO, because data can do so much good for this world, and we, we really want to see that continue. Let's, you know, solve cancer, let's do all those great things. We need to do it responsibly and having a more efficient and effective way to distribute data and take advantage of the resources that are already out there, that's really exciting. So we're excited to be back here again. Last year we won NAB product of the year. We're up for it again this year with some new features on our product to allow for SOC 2 compliance and some other great things like that. We also have made huge gains in really bringing our sustainability message up front. So we're releasing um, the capability in our product to actually see in the user interface exactly how much carbon is admitted and how much is avoided by using StoreJ. And that's really important for Europeans who uh, a lot of Europe companies now have to report on that. It's only a matter of time before that comes to the U.S. as well. So we were really honored. We got an honorable mention from NAB here for a sustainability award. Congratulations. Thank you. And so we're just really excited to be back and bringing this to the media workflows areas. And we've got lots of partners here who were really excited to strengthen those relationships. Yeah, tell me a little bit about those partnerships. Are there any particular that stand out or that are new that you'd like to release? Uh, we have a lot, actually. Um, we have multiple partners, really, in all of these different areas, working from camera to cloud, working with uh, collaboration in uh, editing, working with media asset management vendors. Um, are there any that you want to call out, John? Sure, so we have a number of um, our partners who are actually presenting in our booth with us this week. Yeah. So we have a partner that does live streaming and transcoding, that's LivePeer. They were in the booth earlier today, they'll be back for another demo. We have GB Labs. Uh, GB Labs is a longstanding partner in the uh, media collaboration workspace. So any companies that are doing global teams where editing is done in London, Ontario, Los Angeles, lots of different places, a globally distributed platform like ours gives them uniform performance at extremely low cost to support those workflows. And so a lot of the partners you're seeing, like Shadow Magic, for example, doing large video transfers for editing, these are partners who are really um, reaping the benefits of the distributed nature of our platform and how we actually achieve that global high performance. Okay, I just want to introduce John really quick as the Chief Operating Officer at StoreJ. Thank you for joining us, John. I think you're going to help us dive a little bit more into the technical details of StoreJ and exactly how this system is working. Yeah, absolutely. So the traditional cloud approach is to build buildings, stuff them full of servers, stuff those servers full of hard drive, connect the internet, and call it cloud. And what we do is we actually find uh, data centers all around the world who have excess storage capacity. We aggregate all of that capacity that we allow them to share with us, and we create a single object storage layer. And so we have 25,000 points of presence in over 107 different countries today. And that gives us the ability to have fantastic performance. And so if you upload an, a file in LA, it's going to be about the same performance when you download it in Frankfurt or London or New York. So the traditional approach is you make replications of your data across multiple data centers when you're using something like a Wasabi or an Amazon. And you pay every time you do that and you pay to move the data around. When you have just one copy, you have a single point of truth and you have extremely high performance, but at a very low price point. And so for today's globally distributed workloads, we're a fantastic fit, and that's really where we're seeing a ton of growth. How are you guys able to compete at such a low price point? So we're not building buildings, and so we don't have a huge CapEx outlay out front. We're finding people who have already put their hardware into service, but they haven't fully utilized it. So they share that with us, we aggregate it, and then we resell it. Now that also has a huge impact on carbon because 
we did a research paper together, and the uh, output was that about 80% of the carbon impact of a hard drive isn't from its operation, it's from its manufacture. And so if you can take advantage of a lot of hard drives that are already manufactured, already in service, and already being spun, powered, and cooled, a drive that's 25% full doesn't use any more energy than a drive that's 75% full. So we're filling up drives that are partially empty and deferring the need to create new drives, and so it's an extremely carbon-friendly solution. Explain to me this, someone who's new to Storage and the sustainability aspect of it, what is the negative impact of carbon on data usage and the like? Well, so I think it's fundamentally whenever we're storing data, their carbon is emitted to, you know, run from an energy standpoint to run a uh, data center. There is carbon emitted um, to manufacture the hard drives. And that's really where we want to turn the narrative more. We are so in support of data centers using alternative renewable energy sources. That's wonderful. That's good. That helps if we can get those data centers carbon neutral. But the real carbon savings, the opportunity that we have that StoreJ provides is to reduce the mining of these, you know, precious materials okay. and all of the manufacturing, like when you send a truck on the road to ship that material to another manufacturing facility and then another manufacturing facility to add all the components you need to build a hard drive. Mm -hmm. If we can minimize that and we can use more efficiently what we have today, that's the real carbon savings um, that that Store Day brings to the table. Thanks for helping me understand that. Yeah. Yeah. In addition to that, the way we're distributing data, we're getting the same durability and performance with one copy of data that many other cloud providers are getting from six, eight, ten copies of data, right? And so when you think about that, we we call that the expansion factor. So you upload one gig, how many gigs of data are actually represented to make that workload useful? And so if we're getting a buy with just a 2x replication factor, so 200% more data than you have, what you find is that you're getting the same performance, the same durability, and a much lower price point, but also you're using less physical infrastructure to store your data for those workloads, right? And so not only are you you sort of reusing something that's already in service, but you're actually occupying less hard drives with your workload. And then ultimately, because we do a lot of really smart things around data repair and um, data distribution, we find that hard drives can actually be used a lot longer and put in service a lot longer. So normally people run them for three or four years and they pull them off service before they fail. But with our solution, you can actually run those hard drives till they drop. And so you get a lot more service life out of them and you get a lot more efficient distribution and usage of the actual number of hard drives in the world today. Okay, where can people learn more about StoreJ? Absolutely on our website, store, it's S-T-O-R-J dot I-O um, is a great place to start. We've got lots of information there. Uh, we've even got a uh, page that helps you um, see if it's a fit for you, right? Ask some questions, it's interactive. So that's a great place to start. But of course, if you're here at NAB right now, come on over to the South Lower Hall uh, to the Store J booth and uh, we'd love to talk to you guys. Yeah, is there anything else that I need to know? I know you had a major release at NAB, so is there anything else you'd like to share? Um, I think we've covered the big stuff. I mean, right. we're really excited to see if we win another um, Product of the Year award. Um, we're really excited to be here talking about sustainability. We also are um, co-founders of the Digital Sustainability Alliance. Uh, so there's a lot of activity here with that as well. Um, so we're just really excited to be a part of NAB and see how we can help out, um, not just bring value to the companies here, but also the more people that are using StoreJ, the more that we're doing to help save our planet. Wonderful. Thank you both so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Over to you, Nikki. Thank you, Tess. So good to hear your voice on the other end of these intercoms. But I'm back at Cindy Central reuniting with my dear friend, Ponch, representing Chapman Leonard. How are you today? I am wonderful today, Nikki. Good to see you. Uh, reuniting, as we said. We yeah. had an opportunity to work together.
back in Hollywood before the NAB show here in Vegas. I'm very happy and honored, and I feel very lucky and fortunate to be representing Chapman Studio Equipment. Uh, Chapman Leonard is in Hollywood. We have cranes, dollies, we have all kinds of equipment to rent. Uh, I want to throw a little shout out to my marketing director, Chris DeFranco. He's a sweetheart. He's the one that brought me out here. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, oh, look, he came in. Thank you, me. Yeah, that's my buddy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I've been in the union for 30 years. I'm a local 80 grip, IOPSI. Uh, I've been a grip for 34 years. It took me four years to get in the union. I do mostly crane work and dolly work, but I'm also a key grip, a dolly grip, a sewing grip, a rigging grip, a diving grip, a whatever kind of grip you want. All the grips? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, welcome to NAB, Las Vegas. Yeah, well, with your background and all this equipment here, can you tell us what's going on here? I hear you were leading some uh, workshops. As I know, I got to play around. You introduced me to the pickle that operates this Scorpio 45 on a Chapman Leonard ECS base. Did I get that right? You did. ECS base, electric base. This is a base on this crane here. It's designed that you can drive it. It's electric, so you don't have to push the crane base anymore. Now you can drive it. It's very, very, very unique in the sense that it has special features, self-leveling posts, telescoping posts, an amazing arm, an amazing braking system. It's one of my favorite tools to use in the entire industry. This machine, Chapman's ECS base with the Scorpio crane. Amazing. And what are you specifically doing here? Are you teaching workshops? I am teaching workshops. I'm teaching. We had a large workshop for female camera operators yesterday with the SOC. A great collaboration. Two unions coming together, Local 600 and Local 80. And we had the ladies outside working a camera crane. Why is that important? Because your camera operator has to know the limitations of the crane, what it can and can't do. When you ask your crane operator to do something that's out of this world, the crane like, I can't do that. Well, now as a camera operator, because you have the opportunity to experience what a crane is, as you did, now you know what the limitations are. And it, it makes the team all that much better. Absolutely. I love that you say about a team. I did see you working very hard yesterday. I think every workshop was sold out. You know, and just coming here, how important is it to have hands-on experience, and how cool is it to have that hands-on experience right here at NAB Show, City Central? Uh, the... the very exciting part for me is the fact that there's so many people that have never been able to touch the equipment. And here at this show and with Cine Central that we're at now, we're having these interviews in these clinics where everybody gets to touch the equipment and hands-on is something you never forget. You know, you may hear a lot of talking, 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 but once you experience it hands-on, you're never going to forget that. And when you get there, get out in the field doing what we do, you're going to remember, oh yeah, that guy Ponch taught me this little trick, or he told me to use this particular crane. Another one of the nice things here is not only are there people here that are new or that are learning, I'm running into so many of my friends, I'm going to cry because they're all everywhere. And then we're so lucky to work in this industry and to have all my friends at this show. It's like Disneyland for me, really. i got all these toys and all my friends are here. I mean, wow, you know, how amazing. Oh, my God, you're getting me worked up, Ponch, but you're, you're, it's incredible, you know, and even though it's like friends of the industry, this is, you said this is your first year at NAB show. Yeah. How wild is that to see and reunite with all your friends in the industry, but first time at NAB show? Well, I, I work a lot, you know, I've been in this business a lot of years and I, I do a lot of different things, TV, movie, videos, commercials, everything. And so for me not to be able to come to NAB is because I've been busy, not because I didn't want to attend. But this year, with again, my friend Chris inviting me from Leonard Chapman Thank Studio, you, Chris. Chapman Leonard Studio, uh, <laughs> I get my first opportunity to come here and Nikki invited me to have an interview with you folks and tell you a little bit about me and what we do here at NAB. Yeah, well, I guess outside of this, what are you most looking forward to? I mean, even outside of the Friends, what are you most looking forward to to make that special memories for NAB show this year just really stick it? The memory for me? Well, the memory for me really is when I teach the clinics, and when I have people work the equipment, and you see the light bulb go off, and you go, they go, ah, but they go, cool, and they learn something. That's really is what's exciting for me. Uh, I started teaching last year in May. The union invited me to teach dolly classes and crane classes, and it's just kind of snowballed. I taught classes at Chapman and other 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 locations. Uh, I, I'm teaching for LAUSD, LAUSD, USC Film, uh, AFI. All these people have come and asked me to teach classes, and it's a real thrill for me at the end of the night when either a kid or a young lady or a young man comes in. I got it. That was a great tip. Thank you very much. Now that's so fulfilling, and that's what I'm going to get out of this. 
Well, thank you so much, Ponch. Also, thank you for making so many memories for all the young folks who have never been able to touch or be able to work hands-on with your gear. It truly means a lot. I know you got worked up and teared up there. I think you're going to make a lot of other people feel that much special. So thank you so much, and I hope that you enjoy the rest of your NAB show for the first time. Well, thank you. Thank you. I hope that you enjoy your show, too. And thank you for inviting me for an interview. And all you folks out there, if you didn't make it this year, come next year. NAB, it's a fun show. We got a lot of stuff to play with. And we're here to help and answer questions and help everybody grow in their filmmaking process. Even if you're a TikToker, an Instagrammer, whatever platform you're on, this is the place to learn and to feel out all the equipment. It's a great show. Amazing. Well, thank you, Ponch. And I'm going to toss it over to Paul. <laughs> and welcome back to the 2024 NAB show live stream. I'm Paul with the Stream Geeks, and we are here at the PTZ Optics booth to talk to Roberto Musso, who is the NDI doctor. How are you doing today, Roberto? I'm good, fantastic, and so happy to be with you. I have been such a big fan of NDI. In yeah. fact, I even wrote a book about it called The Unofficial Guide to NDI because right. I was just so excited about what IP video can do. Just give us a, a high level. What is NDI and why is it so important? So NDI is a connectivity technology. And uh, what we do with NDI, we allow device to interconnect. And uh, then with, within this interconnection, we transport, video, audio, data, you know, we cannot consider NDI, I would not consider NDI only video over IP, it's much more than that, yeah. That, that's a really good point, and it's a good segue. Let's take a look at some of the PTZ cameras that have NDI. Come, come on over here, we'll come in the back here. So, what does it mean to have NDI on a PTZ camera? So, first of all, you have uh, the camera is transmitting video, but then there are bidirectional metadata, so from the receiver side you can control the camera. You can zoom, you can fine tune the iris, you have all the camera control needed. And this is very important because uh, it is happening with the NDI connection. And clearly NDI is bidirectional. So, we, uh, the receiver receive video and audio, but send back data. This is very important. So here at the PTZ Optics booth, I know we're showing the Move SE cameras. These start at just $9.99, and the big announcement is that NDI will be built in to all of the PTZ Optics Move cameras. So it's pretty exciting, but we also have joystick controllers, and this has an NDI built in as well. So let's talk about NDI controllers and what does that allow and unlock? Well, this is again very interesting. This is showing, what, this is confirming what I said before, that NDI is not only video over IP. NDI is, an, is a connectivity technology. So there is no video coming into this box, but this box is using the NDI connection to send and receive control with the camera and so with NDI today we, because we have NDI bridge this can remote a remote camera over internet for example and this is unbelievable Roberto is from Italy right I uh, what part of Italy oh where uh, I'm between Milano and Torino, Milano and Torino. Yeah. I'm in Philadelphia on the East Coast so across the Atlantic Ocean I remember I was controlling your cameras you were controlling my cameras, and I just, I just couldn't believe it. And, and I remember how it was easy. Was, I remember we had this call and say, oh, let's try to do it. And it works. I mean, super easy. And this is one of the big investments we have done in NDI since from the beginning, is to make this technology easy to use and freely available for users. So everybody can learn using NDI, just downloading the free tools. And then we have manufacturers like PTZ Optic that offer, you know, then physical device. But because of the technology and the free NDI tools, the user knows they can use it immediately. This is something, I mean, again, it's been a big investment for us. But, you know, at the end of the day, if we look around how many companies, how many people use NDI, 
we did a good job. Oh, you've done an amazing job. In fact, NDI 6 is... We have to take a quick break, actually, but we, okay. can, we can take a moment and come back and talk about NDI 6 and all the great things you're doing. But let's cut to a commercial break, and we'll see, we'll see you soon. Keep going? Okay, so let me ask you about NDI 6. Okay. So NDI 6 just came out, and what does that, what does that have all to do with? So in NDI 6, um, well, to be honest, we just added two more bits. Oh, two more bits. <laughs> so I used this joke. It's been a big development. So we moved from 8-bit to 10-bit, okay? And this is adding big quality to NDI. You know, is NDI is moving to from, you know, a good quality to an amazing quality. And this was a big request from broadcast market from ProIV and we did it. It took a little bit of time because as you can imagine, every time we change the technology, there is an impact in the ecosystem. So we need to be careful how to do it. The second big news is uh, HDR support. Uh, so we support 10-bit HDR. Uh, the, the HDR format supported are PQ and HLG. But the other big, big feature, and uh, I personally believe that is bigger than 10-bit HDR, is bridge for embedded device. This is unbelievable because, so with NDI bridge, we can interconnect NDI infrastructure over internet, and now you can run NDI bridge inside the device. So your device, a camera, a controller, can have embedded bridge and can be interconnected over the internet with my infrastructure, with your infrastructure. This is amazing because, I mean, if you think how difficult, you know, and there are several other technology, but the other technology are connecting device to device. With NDI, you interconnect infrastructure. Completely different story. You know? And so the opportunity then is big because today's camera today it can be encoder but it can be a digital audio mixer it can be any kind of device maybe sending and receiving only data and even not video audio so we can have a PTZ camera with NDI bridge embedded and just send them out to the world and then just control them anywhere yes correct wow yeah. that is incredible so tell me what's next for NDI so we have different space where we are working today I would say that the next step forward is more in the broadcast market we want to support more uh, metadata for broadcast like closed caption, SCATI this kind of uh, technology this is a big request from uh, the broadcast market then audio uh, so there are many, many use cases where NDI audio is a big opportunity. We see in the audio market an empty space where NDI audio can be really successful and can be a very good solution for millions of users. We have millions of users and we heard since from years users asking us more in the audio space. Then, of course, I mean, there is, uh, if, I, if I look at the future, we need to add more control on NDI. I mean, this is, but I would say the next step is really uh, broadcast on one side and, and audio on the other side. So, I always think of video with NDI. Tell me about the audio side, because you have some new audio features. Well, n not really audio feature. We just realize, and, and the user realized that with NDI, audio there are workflow opportunities that are very interesting for example one one is the fact that we you can build a, a single NDI stream with multi-channel audio on it okay so with with some codec like opus we can create an NDI audio stream with 255 audio channel with uncompressed audio is unlimited we don't have limitation and so this is very interesting because if you think that, you know, now you can send an NDI stream over internet, it means that you can share 
25 compressed audio channel over internet bi-directional and and we did all the job we you use in the i bridge you use a device and it's done okay the other aspect and the other area for example is ndi in wireless so there are no other as far as i know there are no other audio over ap technology that can run on wireless because all the other audio over ap technology are locked to a, a strong synchronization like PTP that doesn't, doesn't work on wireless and with, with NDI we can do wireless. I mean, so everything, every audio workflow that not, don't need strong synchronization, extremely low latency can be done with NDI and this is a big space. I mean, this is I mean, if you consider the amount of use cases that are compatible with this uh, feature, I believe that this is huge. Well, let's thank you so much for spending some time with us, Roberto. Let's send it back to you, Ryan, at the studio. <laughs> All right, how you guys doing? Th nice to have uh, everybody watching the show and, and attending the show. It's, it's an amazing family reunion for everybody. Gordon Brooks, CEO of Zixi, how you doing? I'm doing well, Ryan, how are you? Doing great. Well, you're certainly no stranger to NAB show, that's for sure, especially Zixi as well. I am not, and, and this is coming to you live on Zixi, so we love that as well. Exactly, so the feed comes from our, our live view packs, goes back to the uh, control room in Fort Lauderdale, and then literally goes out with two different Zixi broadcasters. I'd love to see it. Yeah, Zen Master too. Yes, yes, we are. We love Zen Master. Zen Master is right. awesome. So, so Gordon, for someone that doesn't know who Zixi is, and everybody knows, but go ahead and just share what what your technology is all about. Yeah, so we're a, a software company, and we've got uh, what we call a software-defined video platform, and for doing live broadcast. So, if you're thinking low linear, uh, uh, linear live. Uh, Low, um, low latency, latency yep. uh, high reliability. Sure. So that's that's what we do, and we do it for major broadcasters. You know the the Paramount Globals and the Foxes and the Skies. We do it for the OTT platforms, uh, Amazon Prime, Hulu, Apple TV, Roku, sports leagues, MLB, NHL, people like that, and they use us to bring content in live content, securely transport that content, uh, protect that content, transform that content, monitor and alert, and then deliver it perfectly. Yeah, I mean, in my eyes, I see, you know, like my understanding of your technology is just, it's a it's a better way to, it's a, it's a more affordable way to transport it than traditional methods. Like back in the day, there, it was, you know, a, a, they were transporting everything over satellite, for example. Right. Well, the world was hardware defined, right? Yeah. Fixed locations, fixed feeds, uh, and you know people had to go to wherever it was. And now everything's being done remotely, and you want that versatility to be able to do anything anywhere. Right now, we're doing uh, some things with uh, AWS Wavelink Zone, Verizon, and the NHL, and we're doing a complete Remy production in the Wavelink Zone. So we're doing transcoding, we're doing NDI, we're doing Zixi Transport, we're doing uh, all the replay of a live NHL game on the show floor at four o'clock today. So that's interesting. So, okay, so you're basically saying that a physical production is going into a Zixi broadcaster, Zixi broadcaster is bringing in a bunch of cameras yes. and then hitting a control room on the other side. Yeah, and it's going into the cloud and then into the wavelength zone and then the, the actual editing and everything is being done at the booth here at NAB, nowhere near the, the stadium. That's crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's a world. You're not rolling trucks. You're not bringing people in. All the announcers are, are uh, off-site and remote. So just a completely different way to think about it. Fantastic. So you literally, it's just just wild. You know, I, I used to think of Zixi as just as a way to get out a, a physical channel, but the thought of having multiple cameras and I'm sure everything's synchronized and whatnot, it's just it's just wild. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's and it, it's great to see the industry prog progress and, mm -hmm. and, and do things just uh, in completely different ways. It's a, it's about time. We've yep. needed to do it, but it's it's really uh, coming around and people like, like Grant at the NHL who are just, they're playing uh, multi-dimensional chess and everybody else is playing checkers, right? So right. some of these guys, and it's fun to work with them. Yeah, I had a chance to chat with, with him yesterday, and he said he had over a 1,000 channels of, of video going back and forth. It's just And all on Zixi. Yeah. yeah, just wild. All right, Gordon Brooks at Zixi. you got to check him out at the NAB show uh, or visit them online. What's your website? Uh, www.zixi.com. All right, we'll toss it back to uh, Nikki. Thank you so much, Ryan.
Hi, and good to see you over there. Well, we're back at Cine Centro, as always. All the cool hands-on gear, hands-on demonstrations are happening here, and it's so good to reunite with James Lucarelli of Red. How are you? Doing good, doing good, Nikki. Yeah, so just tell me what just happened here. I believe you had a craft clinic, correct? Yeah, we had our uh, Cine Central craft workshop. This was with uh, director AJ Blyer. We had all of our cameras here, and it was really nice. Everyone got to come in, get hands-on, uh, try the new V-Raptor X, the Komodo X. We also had the XLX here, and uh, all the newest and latest from Red here. Amazing. And what has been the most exciting part about kind of seeing Red fans come and finally get to connect and speak with a person, you? I, I, I think that's always been something that's very exciting for Red. We got our first start here at NAB, and I think every year everyone tells us that this is where they get the chance to come and see the products. So, um, yeah, it's just nice to get back to being here and interacting with the customer. Yeah, so I know this is a very new area. This is the first time they're doing, like, hands-on anything, yeah. and so it's really, really cool. How many years have you been here at an NAB show? Oh, gosh, I've been with Red for 13, and other than the two years we took off, this is my 11th year. <laughs> 11th year. So from all those years before to now, like, I guess just describe like how having stuff like this makes you feel. Uh, it, 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 it's really incredible, right? I think when Reds first came out, it was a camera that was maybe for cinema only. And right now with the Komodo X and some of our great camera options, we really have a camera for everyone. And with NAB having such a big you know, focus on broadcast, we're really excited to showcase our broadcast module. So we do have literally a Red cinema camera for everyone now. Yeah, I know that we talked about specs a little earlier, but I always like to call this section, go off, James. So go off, what are the cool specs or anything about what you showed me when we were at Red Headquarters? a couple weeks ago actually yeah we we got to showcase our completely global shutter lineup right with red's new komodo x v raptor x and xlx all of our cameras have a global shutter i just pulled out an ipad pro and connected all three of those cameras and really if you're an editor or if you're someone creative and your team is not there uh, all of the cameras work with camera to cloud as well so we really can complete the whole loop from shooting to delivery to client to everything we need all from our camera so it's really great and you, I imagine that you're also at several other booths here, right? Do you oh. know any uh, information of to tell our viewers watching on NABShow.com right now where to go to catch red? Yeah, you can see us. Uh, we are going to be at the Nikon booth, the Nikon and the MRMC booth. You can also see us at uh, some of our other partner booths. Like uh, I'm looking right now at Able Cine or Film Tools or Digital Glue. Those are our red authorized partners. And you'll also see us in any of the other camera support groups. Or, uh, like I see a lot of reds even just in eyesight right around here. Yeah. Well, obviously, elephant uh, in the room. Um, we talked at... Our friends over at Nikon, which just announced that Nikon acquired Red and MRMC. Anything that you can share that you're open to? I, I, I'm just really excited. Like I said, I've been here for uh, 13 years, and when you have a company that's got 100 years of experience doing optics, I think that only benefits us, and uh, really excited to see what's got coming up next for us. All right, and then as a veteran to now, any advice for first-timers at NAB Show? How do you navigate a show like this to make it the most successful for you? Ooh, uh... Get in early and uh, drink lots of water and uh, be strategic on what hall you start at, right? Yeah. Where the good pickup and drop off spots are. Yeah, where do you normally start off? Uh, we're thrown for a little bit of a loop with the construction, but uh, <laughs> I used to start at the central and that way I kind of was right in the middle, but the West Hall is pretty nice now. So yeah, the, the West Hall is like With new. the loop and everything, that's really nice. Go underground and everything. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Well, my last thing is what are you most excited to see in regards to NAB show? I, I think it's most exciting to see all our customers, all of our partners, all of the people that shoot on Red, and then it's also good, good to see uh, what's new from everyone else as well. And and from someone when we used to have to have a Red camera with a Red workflow and a Red everything, it's nice to see how everything here now accepts Red, and it's more of a collaborative stuff. So you can see us in every booth. I love that. Well, thank you for sharing your story about how Red really started here. Thank you for speaking with us after your craft clinic, and um, I can't wait to see what else is in store for Red in the future. So thank you so much, James. Thanks, Nikki. Back to you. Thanks so much, Ryan, and welcome back to NAB Show Live. My name is Sharif, streaming right here from Central Hall with my good friend Katie. How are you, Katie? Great. How are you? Doing very well, thank you. Now, Katie, can you tell me a little bit about where you work and what you do for NAB Show? Sure. I work at MDG. We are their marketing agency to help with getting the show up and running and marketing to get all the attendees here. And I work in marketing, so Katie and I work very closely together. Katie, what does your day-to-day -day look like while you're helping us set up for NAB Show? So I do project management, so I'm making sure that all the projects stay on track and we're getting them done, meeting timelines, all that fun stuff, and working with my favorite team. Katie definitely does a great job making sure that we meet all of our deadlines and making sure that all of our projects are done right on time. Now, Katie, how many NAB shows have you been to? 
This is my first one. Your very first one. Well, welcome. Can you tell me what you're looking forward to most while you're here? I'm excited to see everything come to life because I've never seen it in the flesh. So I'm really excited to see everything in person. Because you touch basically every part of the marketing process because you're part of the project planning. So how does it feel seeing all the things that you have planned actually be put into fruition and actually seeing it live? It's really exciting and it's a little relieving as well to see everything went well, everything's going well. Awesome. Good afternoon. This is Nikki Sun with NAV Show Live. We are still in Central Hall. I am ending today's segment getting the tea at Telos Alliance with the CEO of Telos. Scott, how are you? Fabulous. It's been a great show already. Just the first day. Yeah, it's opening day. Like, what? What? Ha what is there a ritual that you do before getting to a big show like NAV? Yeah, well, I mean, after we get the booth set up, we always gather the team together, kind of get the hype going, the passion. I mean, NAB for decades has been Telos' Super Bowl. My first NAB with Telos was 1995 as an entry-level engineer. <laughs> I see you have yeah, fun here. There, there's, the guy, there's the guy who hired me. <laughs> so he's allowed to do yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's Frank. He owns the company. And, uh, yeah, it's been an amazing journey for years. But this is our Super Bowl. This is where we come to show off the latest gear. You know, this year has been no less exciting than any other year that I've been to. And it's just been fabulous. Amazing. I love that reference there because other people who may not be familiar with this industry knows how massive it is for those of us yep. in this tech world. Now before you became bigwig, CEO, I know you were probably an enthusiast of technology before that. Can you describe the feeling of attending those years ago to now being a representative, representing Telos here? Yeah, I got to say that first NAB was unbelievable. So I had just joined the company. I was right out of college. It was great to get a job in the area of my passion, which was audio, and I was an electrical engineer. And I was told, okay, you're gonna be going to NAB. Back then, we didn't even have a sales force, so the booth was manned by the engineers, the guys wow. like me who designed the products. And when I heard booth, I had never been to a trade show before. I'm picturing something like that thing that Lucy has and Charlie Brown, you know, you got the tabletop and you got your gear sitting there and people come up and put a nickel in a cup or something. And when I saw what NAB was, it really blew my mind. And every year, you know, it seems to get bigger and more exciting. The technology is, you know, continuing at an amazing pace. It's great to see how technology from around the world makes its way into media and entertainment. And we're no exception here, how we incorporate and just sort of absorb everything that's happening from AI and IP and cloud and networking so yeah it's so what keeps you coming back Telos coming back in terms of why you come back at here and are there any success stories that you wouldn't mind sharing yeah there are dozens of success stories I mean I can't even count how many new products we launched at NAB to great fanfare getting the awards getting customers come by the first question every customer comes into the booth is hey what do you guys have that's new that year and that's kind of our reputation you know in terms of innovating always pushing the limits so you know we've got our virtual cloud-based intercom system that's actually being part used as part of the uh, NAB live production system uh, this year, brand new, we're demonstrating our Deja Vu upmixer. So this is something that in real time, you put stereo audio in of any kind, it upmixes it live to 5.1. So we're uh, showing that we've got a lot of interest in that one here. Virtual mixing consoles for remote production. I mean, the, the list just goes on and on. So. Oh, well, thank you for being here, and I would say for, for, for us veterans, right, yeah. what is your game plan of tackling a show like this? Like, is there, like, the day before, are you looking at everything, where you need to be, all your meetings, or what is your game plan? No, it starts months. Basically, our planning for NAB starts the day after NAB ends. So it takes wow. all year, and you know, Lindsay, our trade show and event coordinator here is unbelievable, and that's really the secret. It's not so much what we do it's the people that we have that actually understand the flow they can work they can organize a team full of crazy engineers and salespeople and executives like me keep us in line and like i said her year starts the day after the show closes and she works all year to get us ready so we've already got our booth lined up for next year already talking about what products we're going to be launching next year because you know in the world of technology it can take a year to create a new product so yep we're already thinking about next year. Amazing. Well, my last thing then is what are you most excited about NAB show this year? Well, honestly, this is the first year that I got to go see the Devoncroft presentation. So bringing the information from the customers who present 
at Devoncroft back into our company. That was eye-opening for me, and that's I've not been in a position in the past to go absorb that. So between that and then just the excitement that the customers get when they come into our booth and they listen to the 5.1 demo or they watch a demonstration of virtual intercom, I mean, those are probably the highlights this year. So. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Scott. Thank you for your time. Thank you right. for rushing all the way from West Hall yeah, back no here to be on NAV Show Live. Thank you, Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, enjoy the rest of your NAV show. All right, thank you very much. Thank it was a you. pleasure. Thank Thanks so much. We now we're at Agile TV with Johan. How you doing, sir? Good, thanks. Great to be here. Uh, it's great to be here. Uh, talk about your technology, how you got started, and what you do. All right, so Agile Content, Spanish company, uh, headquartered in Bilbao, but offices across the globe. So we have offices in, in, the, in the, uh, Stockholm, in Hong Kong, in Sao Paulo, in Mexico City, and so on. And it's essentially started up as two different operations or even companies, one being Agile Content in Spain, who started up as doing services for the broadcast and TV industry, but eventually launched their own TV service. So in Spain, you can step into a store and buy an Agile TV subscription as a consumer and take it home and plug in your Agile TV service. And we have roughly 800,000 subscribers on that. Wow. Uh, but in order to do that efficiently and to control the innovation cycles, Agile Content acquired a few companies, including Edgeware, a couple of years ago. And Edgeware is a Swedish technology company delivering technology to the broadcast space and the pay TV space mm -hmm. and so due to that we have essentially glass to glass uh, own products to do that and those products we offer to the market either as a pre-integrated platform that customers can use uh, and we manage it on their behalf or they can buy the individual products in the best of breed fashion and integrate in their own solutions. So to take a couple of examples, the platform includes a CDN mm -hmm. and we have more than 60 CDN customers in Europe that includes big tier ones like Vodafone, Orange, uh, KPN and a few others. Mm -hmm. um, we have subtyping products that is being used by some of the leading broadcasters across the globe including Sky, HBO Asia, and so on uses our subtitling solution. Wow, it's pretty impressive what you've got going on. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. I think it's, yeah. it's also what makes us unique is that we don't only have these individual technology products, we offer it as an integrated platform, and we can also do the entire, if you will, business management of that. We can take care of the even content negotiations since we operate our own TV service, we have those skill sets. And yeah. we also have the skill sets to sell ads because as part of our platform mm -hmm. we do have an ad business God. so if customers want to spin up let's say a fast channel on our platform but they don't have the know-how or the capacity to sell the inventories we can do that on their behalf uh, yeah. and so on so from that perspective we offer a very complete portfolio of applications and services mm -hmm. and we can also run this either as technology products or as a fully managed service Got it. Well, I think what's really cool, we were talking about this a little earlier, if you wanted to deploy your own CDN, you'll license your platform and somebody could put it, say, in their AWS environment. Correct, correct. So it's a good example, is, is as you mentioned, that the CDN that we use for our own service is built on the same software that is being used of multiple or tier one customers across the globe. And that's because the software that we use, we also license it. Uh, so others can use it. So on one hand, this is good for us because we get better, more money to finance innovation, right? And it's good for our customers because they know when they try our products, we have actually used our products ourselves. Got it. Really cool stuff. Agile TV here at the 2024 NAB Show. Johan, thank you so much. You. It was great chatting with you. We're going to toss it off to Paul Richards. Oh, we're getting our countdown. Yep. Hello and welcome back to the 2024 NAB Show live stream. I am here with Sean from Open Drives. He's the Chief Strategy Officer. Tell us about what you're showing here at NAB. Hey, Paul. Thanks for having us. Um, here at NAB, uh, we're Open Drives, and what we're showing is our data storage platform that we've always shown at this show. Um, but what we're introducing this year is a more flexible consum consumption-based modeling 
uh, around the feature sets so that customers can tightly tailor uh, our products to their needs. Um, we've also always taken a very consultative approach with our products, um, and this really allows uh, customers to pick and choose because everybody has a unique workflow with a unique infrastructure, so now our, uh, our software can be composable to fit that need. Wow, I've been looking around, it's incredible. You've got 24-7 support, you've got really, you're working with CNN. What is it that makes you guys different? Yeah, so we take a very customer first approach and we're very flexible and modular. So as a consumer of these products in the past, I always felt like I had to work and flex to what the technology was having me do. And I just wanted a workflow that my my clients needed, which is the creatives that I was supporting. Mm -hmm. And so what we did was we built a company that would then flex the creative workflow rather than the creative workflow flex to us. Wow, and I can just tell with the excitement here, everyone's checking out all of your latest things. Is there one feature in particular that you're proud of that you guys created? Yeah, so what we're introducing this year is um, we're a storage platform, and I think what's really, really novel is non-capacity-based consumption models. So we don't charge for capacity. You pay one license for the software, and you can add as much capacity as you want underneath it. Wow. That is a game changer. So tell me about what NAB means to you and your business. Do you have a special memory from NAB that, that is special to you? Yeah, so great question. I uh, have been coming to NAB for a very long time, both as a end user and then now as a manufacturer of these products. Um, we started coming here in 2015, and I remember we were in a tiny little kiosk corner in the top of the, the North Hall, and people would come to us and be like, who are you and what can you do? And that's impossible what you say you're doing. And we built a reputation. And we built it here at NAB every year. This is what we call our Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, like nine years later, when customers come see us, they know us. They, they know us as that, um, that performance storage leader in this industry. And uh, we couldn't have done it without NAB. Oh, well, that's incredible. Where can customers learn more about you? Uh, they can find us at uh, www.opendrives.com uh, and check us out. That's amazing. Well, back to you all in the studio. Stream Geeks, and I'm joined with Dan Pizarski, one of my good friends. Absolutely. With LiveView. LiveView is an incredible company that's providing cellular bonding technologies for live streaming. Just chatting with Dan, he was telling me we've got updates to LiveView Studio, your cloud-based product, the field units, and some of the ingress stuff. But let's start with the LiveView Studio. Tell me about this new product. Sure. So Studio is our full production system in the cloud. It's true cloud software, cloud first, and uh, cloud native software. The new features in it is the ability to inject SCUDI 35 markers. So now you can trigger advertising from right in the studio as you're doing your live production and the ability to synchronize multiple feeds frame accurately so that you can do true frame accurate switching in the cloud with Studio and with LiveView units as a source. Wow, I'm such a big fan of that. What has the cloud really done for your customers? I mean, the cloud is a elastic enabler, right? It's the ability to take on capacity that you don't have to capital purchase hardware for, rack it up in a van, rack it up in the studio, you can take on 10 productions one day, one, one production the next, and have that elastic capability to deal with that. That's really what the cloud offers. And the cloud works seamlessly with all of your field units. You've got your LU300, you've got the new LU800. What are the new features for these products? So new features on the field units include that ability to send the time code information, NTP timestamps in the stream, let you synchronize it in studio or in other software if that's what you happen to be using. So that's now available on the units, plus a new transmission mode that's meant specifically for cases where you're taking a live unit and plugging it into dedicated bandwidth. You're not always using bonded cellular. Sometimes you do have access to fiber drop and you just need an encoder to do that. You can now put it in a special transmission mode that does 0.3 seconds delay and maximum bandwidth for that kind of dedicated bandwidth mode. Dedicated wow. Drop. So that's like uh, 300 milliseconds or less. Yes, that's correct. That's incredible. That's like real time practically. Yeah. So you're doing all this, plus you've got all of your, you got a few new products for the storage? That's right, so LiveView Ingest, which is the ability to take every one of your LiveView feeds and have that recorded in the cloud in a cyclical recording format so that you have seven days or whatever time period you pick of all of the content coming in. You can choose which of that content and then move on to your MAM system, your uh, NRCS system, wherever else you're, you're bringing that content to. 
and use that seven day buffer as a window to look into it and say, well, this is the content we want to keep and this is the content that we don't really need. So we don't want to burden our MAM with that, you know, that storage and, and just get rid of it. Uh, and we now have direct integration with Mimir and Dina on that. Um, integration with BitCentral on, on Ingest as well. It's really, we really call it Live View Ingest 2.0, even though it's a very new product for us because there's so many additional features all packed into one release that we thought it was a, a major new release for that product. Wow. I, it's really impressive what you're doing. Let me ask you about the NAB show in general. Do you have a special memory at NAB or tell us about like kind of what it's meant to you to be here at the show? I mean, we always, every year we come, we always compare like how, all, everybody at the company, how, how many NABs is this for you? We relive some of the old stories. It's just such a great show to reconnect with this whole industry. It's like seeing all your old friends. Plus, you're here doing business and showing off the new products and talking to all your customers. But you're running into those friends that are customers and friends that are partners. And it's just the place to be. It's the centerpiece of the industry, really. It's like a big family here. We hope you're enjoying it. Uh, if you have, have, are not able to make it here at the showroom floor, at least they can watch the live stream. But definitely come check it out here in Las Vegas. This is the biggest video production and live streaming broadcast show in the world. And we are just having a blast here. Good afternoon. We're back in Cine Central at Central Hall, but we're at the center of cinematic innovation, and this is no exception. I'm here with the owner and CEO, Adamus Jeremy Young. How are you? I'm fantastic. It's great to be back in Vegas. Back in Vegas and back in your title position. Yeah, correct. correct. I was away for a couple of years, had a bit of a break, but um, was developing some amazing products, and I was thinking about a new startup or come back, and then I didn't know I've got to come back. Yeah, you got this is your baby, right? It is, it is, it is. Yeah, so it is. Talking about new products, new releases, what do what you got here? What's, what do you got going so, on? So, obviously, there's a huge kind of groundswell of the creator economy, they call it. You know, all these people filming and and doing it for themselves, doing it for social media, doing it for lots of different reasons that aren't connected to kind of this NAB world mm -hmm. and haven't traditionally been so. So, there's been this, kind of this gap between. So, we've built a bridge between the two worlds of professional video cinema broadcast and that social media area with our new product called the ninja phone and at the same time we've been really focused on hdr production because we just love the images but when you go when the sun's out hdr is great at night time you know the candle in the corner always looks fantastic but once the clouds come over in, in daytime or you're in a studio the lighting doesn't really match hdr and we've released something that will solve that problem oh really okay yes. i think we can get right into it because you never know when it's live what if i never tussle i want to make sure we get this on camera. okay so let's get it let's get it going yes. so so the first thing i'll just take the ninja phone it's right here so what it does is it takes hdmi in like our normal ninjas and it encodes to prores while taking the microphone wireless input locking them video and audio out hdmi into the iphone so you stick it on the back of your iPhone, there's an Atomus case that comes with it, and then you come into the phone and it then unlocks the OLED panel on, on your iPhone, 15 Pro, 15 Pro Max, 1600 nits, P3 color, 441 PPI, and it's just like an amazing solution. But at the same time, we've done ProRes in, because we're the ProRes kings, right? We propagated ProRes on Japanese cameras when they never did ProRes before. And still, 99% of them don't do ProRes. So your ninjas and your shoguns are fantastic. But there's this creative people coming up that I just mentioned. And so what this does is, no matter whether they're using like the Fuji X100 Mark VI, which is a huge camera at the moment, or they're using a, a Nikon Z8, or right up to a RED camera and a Venice, they can stick this on top and record ProRes on the phone while it decodes to the screen, as well as, it, because of the A17 processor in the iPhone, it re-encodes it to H.265 10-bit HDR and s stores it on the phone as well and sends it to any social media platform. This is incredible. And I have to speak and shout out to the content creators th themselves because it's for the first time as well. They're spotlighting creators at the Creator Lab. So yeah. you're talking about that bridge and what a wonderful solution that you have. Yeah, so you pull out your phone in your pocket. Mm -hmm. We've got locking connectors that go in to make sure it's always nice and stable. Um, and it's only 399 So any of those kind of people so I, I call them the that that those new creators that are coming in they go to a camera they look at they look at other people's work they go what are you using oh it's a sony with a big lens so they go and do it and then they have to become a camera operator which we all know yeah. is a whole thing mm -hmm. so this keeps them in the phone it controls the camera from the screen 
So you never have to really touch your camera, you stay in your phone, and I think that can bridge them into our awesome pro video cinema world. Oh my gosh. And by the way, thank you for the excitement as well. That's how oh, it should it. be. It's yeah, like yeah. so awesome. I have to ask, what is this for okay, now? Okay, so this <laughs> is called the Sun Dragon. I'll swap this? you. Yeah, so we actually, in our monitors, we have all these really accurate LEDs, and I noticed that they weren't being used in lighting. And then lots of companies are racing to the bottom on lighting because they're all making the same stuff, right? Panel lights, panel lights, panel lights. But as I said, in HDR, panel light floods the scene with light, which limits the brightness range, which is dynamic range. People say HDR, it means brightness range. Our eyes can see a lot of brightness, but the screens never showed it. And the lighting, when you get inside to a studio or in the outside when the sun goes away, when you flood it, there's no HDR. So what these do, they're a strip panel light, that's perfect color representation, 99% of the sun spectrum. We call them the sun dragon. I love that name. Because it's year of the dragon. Yeah, and your name and my is last sun. name is sun. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a great combination. Yes. And what, what it does is you can put it anywhere. You don't flood the scene. It's 2,000 lumens end to end. It's 99% sun spectrum. And it's a TLCI for television of 98%. So you can trust these lights. They're waterproof, dustproof. And, you, I mean, it's a revolution waiting to happen. You can see in the bike behind me that they're all put in any shape. Plus, you can curl it up and it becomes a panel light if you do want to use one. Oh, my gosh. So how do we plug this in, though? So this just goes um, to the AC. Okay. And all of this is wireless receiving, controlled from either a Ninja, an iPad, or any other panel that a DMX control for the professional light. So it's great for our core Ninja customer, which are the workhorses of video, event videography, weddings, funerals all this kind of stuff and with those you just place them control them from the ninja brightness a bit of color but for the gaffers in cinema they need finite control any hue on the wheel and they're rgb aw which means amber and white put together so it's like the latest and greatest a lot of atomist tech inside and they've been very popular to search. so go to atomist.com and check it out Amazing. Well, Jeremy, my last question for you then is, what does it mean to be back at NAV show? What, why, why, why come to a show like NAV? Well, first of all, it's called a show. Yes. So I like putting on a show. So that's the and first you thing. always at your booth, by thank the Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think it just is that there's not many people at home in your friend circle that you can talk about nits and screens and, and recording and all this stuff. But when you get here... Everybody knows what you're talking about. So it's a real community. Um, you know, people think it's dying. I don't think it's dying. I think it's getting stronger, especially if we can bring those young ones up into this arena, then NAB becomes super important. We, we, we're an Australian company, so traveling to America is, you know, a big effort. So when we come here, we want to make sure that we make, make hay, as they say. Um, so we always go large at NAB. And look, it always comes off in sales for us because we get to educate, and Americans love new innovation. So we love coming here. Oh, well, thank you. We love you for coming here. Thank, thank you, you for the time. Thank you for being on NAB Show Live. And I'm tossing it back to you, Ryan. Thanks, Nikki. We're with Ryan Steelberg here over at Veritone. How are you doing, sir? I'm great. Thank you. So you're a co-founder and CEO of Veritone, a very respectable company. Tell us what you do and how you got started. We, you know, we do a lot of things in AI, but we've been around for over a decade now and building enterprise AI solutions for a few different market verticals. Media and entertainment is a big one. This is kind of how we started this company. And the vision very simply was, could we build a platform that could ingest hundreds of thousands of hours a day of audio and video content and, and leveraging advanced AI to index, organize, and now create and monetize? And so the industry has grown, and, but we've been here for kind of a while and we have a lot of the same customers, so it's great. Interesting. So you work in government sectors as well. Same core stack, but you're right. Just like we process audio and video for ESPN and movie studios, we are now applying that same technology to the public sector, like body cameras, dash cams, closed circuit television systems and the like. Got it. Okay, so let's talk about your focus at NAB show. I assume it's media asset management and, and processing of media? That's correct. So we, we help companies like an ESPN or an iHeart or studios first ingest all their content, right? Whether it's digital native content like podcast or it's linear streaming content. Ingest it all, leverage um, disparate AI models to index it all, 
and then prepare it for advanced workflows downstream. It could be preparing it for redistribution on social media, hyper-personalization, or even like CBS News is a big partner, actually monetizing and selling their content on the secondary market. So again, it's just trying to, once you sort of build that archive, it's just continuing to layer on intelligent AI-based workflows to solve different problems. So hyper-personalization, just give me an example of that. Just well, I mean, today, I mean, short-form video is, I mean, we can sit on TikTok forever, right? Mm -hmm. But, but now, let's say certain, certain of our customers are in the are in the advertising side, and they want to have literally a different ad for every single individual based upon what time of day it is, where you are, and what you're looking at, right? There's no way you can build enough creative manually to do that. So now, partners of ours are creating, leveraging generative AI to create really infinite number or an array of different ad objects to coincide with a personalized TikTok video that they're watching. So it just keeps getting, so you start with these big archives, and they and you think of it as just micro-cutting it down into hyper-personalized versions. And oh, and by the way, we can convert it into 25 different languages as well. Amazing, yeah. anything else you'd like to share? Uh, no, it's great. It's, you know, I think this is my 10th NAB. You were saying it's your 14th. 14, yeah. So it's, it's great. It keeps getting bigger and more exciting. So it's great to be here. Excellent. All right, thank you so much. Ryan Steelberg, we're going to toss to Paul Richards. Off to you, Paul. Welcome back to the 2024 NAB Show live stream. I am here with Joey DeMax in the flesh. He, this guy's a legend. He created Central Control. Tell the audience what Central Control is, Joe. Central Control is a show control automation integration tool. Basically connect anything to anything. So take your X keys, control a Blackmagic ATEM, vMix, TriCaster, Freeplay. The list goes on and on. Pretty much, you know, for that one-man band scenario, we often find ourselves in control the whole production from one or multiple surfaces. This is cool. Let's take a look at the product. This is a brand new product. I think we should take a peek at this first and then we'll look at the software. Yeah. So tell me what I'm looking at here, Joe. This, this is a new product from XKeys, PI Engineering XKeys and us, and it's basically a all-in-one system. You get the keys, you get central control built into the unit. So there's a small embedded computer in here running central control that's included with the bundle. Uh, and you also get two USB ports on the back. So if you want to expand the system, you run out of buttons, you need more X keys, a stream deck, MIDI controller, you can just keep expanding cool. the system. Now, is this system network based? Is it USB based? What's going on? Sure. So it has a network port on the back, and that is how you're going to connect it to the switcher, to vMix, everything else, and to NDI and the rest of the world. Yeah. Now, is this purpose built for Blackmagic, for, for vMix, or is it, is it dynamic? None of the above, and well, yes and no to all of them. And because it's an X keys, you, it's completely customizable. So what keys do you actually need? Well, you just lay this out however you, you know. Really? Yeah. So these keys over here could be for vMix, these could be for ATEM. It's an X keys, just, you know, modify it, customize it to your heart's content. Okay, so this is not a static configuration? No, no. You can remove the keys, you can put blockers in, lay it out however you choose. Wow. Now let's take a look at the software, because this is central control core tell me what's going on here sure. this is the web interface for that so the only time you need the PC or the, the computer to configure it is so you do all your configuration in here set up all your modules link all your controls map it however you want and once you're done with that you don't need the computer it's a standalone unit take it to your show and you're off to the races Wow now tell me about what I'm looking at here because I'm seeing ATEM core I'm seeing a 16 by 16 XBK, yep. a T-bar. So are each of these a unique device that you're controlling? Yes, so when you start the project, it's a blank canvas. You don't have anything in here. And you build out your show by adding more and more modules. And a module could be anything from you know, the control surface itself to switcher, PTZ optics camera, all of that. They're all modules, and then they all just get linked together in the software. Look at all those you have. There's plenty. How many modules do you have? I think it's about now. Wow. And uh, by the time this gets posted to our channel, it'll be 110, I'm sure. Um, and once you've done that, so Paul, if you press a button here. OK. You'll see that light blinks to indicate that's where the source. Oh. I can see all my controls in the system. If I press a button, it will jump to that one for me, and this is where I assign my commands. I can stack commands so one button can do multiple things, on and on and on. Wow. I love how the, this device here starts at just $1,200, yep. and it's embedded everything you need. 
I mean, I'm kind of I'm kind of blown away. One of the questions I've been asking everybody is, tell me about your experience at NAME. How long have you been coming? Is there a special moment that you remember? Uh, I think this is my third NAB. Okay. Um, this one, I think, you know, we're back in South Lower. You're back in South Lower as well. And I think the, you know, amazing traffic through here. So many great conversations with customers. It's been, it's been a fantastic show so far. So where can people learn more about you? Uh, centralcontrol.io is our website. Wow. Centralcontrol.io. Back to you, Nikki, at the show floor. I don't know. Okay. All right. We're on standby. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. To, welcome back to NAB Show Live. How cool is it that I'm here sitting at the Condor Blue booth with um, one of the creators of one of their cables, uh, Matt Johnson. How are you? I'm doing so great. So glad to be here. Yeah. I mean, I was just walking around just five steps away from the Atomus booth, and literally you got recognized by so many people giving you daps, saying, I love your stuff, man. So, by the way, you're a really, really awesome YouTuber, creator for the community. Thank you for all you that you do. It's so fun because I just sit in a, my room and I talk to a camera, so it's nice to get out and, like, see people and, like, oh, you are watching. Okay, good. <laughs> Great. So fun. Yeah. What has been the most joyful part about coming back to a show, like, enemy show, like, year after year? Oh, my goodness. The... I'm, I'm like pure extrovert, so I love this, and I'm like, this is great. I'm gonna meet people, I'm gonna see really cool camera stuff. I'm getting a lot of free swag. I, got, I brought my backpack empty yesterday, full by the end. If okay. you just want free stuff, you gotta come. Okay. It's so great. Well, even just plug that, like, cause uh, hook your girl up, because I need to go travel on the show floor. Who do I need to go get free swag at? Okay, well, it was like a DJ influencer thing, so I don't know if you're gonna be able to get it or not. Okay. But they have like a Lego set that they're giving out and I was like Legos I got a sleep mask I got an airline pillow I am I'm comfy yeah. I'm doing great this is beyond just bags at this point no you know? no like oh yeah there's so many bags I have so many extra bags I'm like, <laughs> but I got two free check bags on Southwest so I'm just gonna like ship a lot of it back it's gonna be great I love it so tell me what you do for the viewers at on nabshow.com and how being at a show at NAB show has been able to help you in your career definitely so I film weddings and I help other people film weddings and um, create films, create videos, etc. And so coming here has been so great because there are so many technology companies that are making camera gear and I'm like, hey, have you thought about people using this for weddings? And they're like, oh my gosh, that's a great idea. And so it's really great to be able to make a connection and find common things that a lot of wedding filmmakers can use here. And there's so much gear to look at, it's overwhelming. Yeah, so much that you even went to Condor Blue to create something that, here's what I think you can do to help the industry. Can we partner on this? Can you tell us a little bit about how that happened and about your cables? Yeah, exactly. So every filmmaker out there is going to need three cables. They're going to need an XLR to XLR, a quarter inch to XLR, and an RCA to XLR. You can have these three cables, you're going to be able to plug into any soundboard anywhere and be able to record good high quality audio, which is important. But nobody's put them all together into a customizable package. Everybody sounds like a Pelican case they're throwing cables into. And I said, well, hey, what if we make a customizable pouch that you can put everything into? You always know where it is. You're always organized. Because I'm not an organized person, so I need this. This is for me. Okay, I made this for me, and if other people want to buy it too, great. So, it's really cool. Amazing, but how cool is it also, because I'm looking here, the camera can't see, but it's behind our camera operator. But you are listed up here with I Justine as well. Like, how does it feel to see your face up there with a product? It is so surreal. My mom is very proud of me. She's like, that's great, honey. What is it? And I'm like, it's audio. It's audio cables, mom. It's great. So, But you always need one, mom. Okay? Yeah, you can have some, mom. Okay? It's great. So great. Okay. Well, as a veteran, how many times, first of all, have you been to NAB show? Only only once before. I'm sorry, Kay. We have small children, and I had to like beg my wife this time, like, please. She's like, you're just gonna go to Vegas and have fun. I'm like, I'm working. This is working, kind working of. Working and also marketing research. Yes, market research. We'll call it that. Yeah, and it's been so fun. All right. Well, uh, my last thing is, I always advice from veterans. How do you tackle NAB show to be the most successful? Okay, so find the booths that are giving out free water and drinks and don't spend ten dollars for a water bottle at, at the vending machine <laughs> save some money <laughs> gotcha well thank you so much make sure you follow your channel where who is matt anywhere that's where i am perfect well thank you so much i'm tossing it back to you ryan 
Thanks so much, Nikki. I hope things are going great over there. We have Marcus Scholler at High Vision. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Thank you very much. Nice to be here with you guys. Yeah, great to be here with you. We chatted last year. We were talking about Makitos. We actually happen to have Makitos at our facility now. And uh, we've got like five transmit boxes or receive boxes and a couple uh, transmit boxes. Love them. It's um, the amazing power of SRT, right? Yeah, absolutely. The Makito X4 encoders are marvels of technology. Low latency, secure, high quality, reliable. They're amazing. So that's a pretty big flagship product for you, I would assume, right? Oh, yeah. The Makitos are a big part of our, our broadcast story. They're a big part of our story here at the show this year. Uh, in fact, we're very excited to be here this year because it's our 20th anniversary. We're always excited to be here, but it's yeah. our 20th anniversary, well, congratulations. so that's special. Yeah, that's and we're talking about a, a, a complete broadcast end-to-end -end ecosystem of products that are meant to help get your content from your camera to your production. Oh, and so okay. really, I mean, that's where like we a play. Remy environment then? Well, Remy certainly fits into that. The production can be on premise, mm -hmm. it can be in the cloud. But ultimately, what we're really uh, excited about here is the fact that we have workflows that leverage the Makito. So these would be typically wired encoders that are connected to your camera, send content over the internet as SRT, for instance. Or the other side of our contribution ecosystem products are the bonded cellular transmitters that leverage multiple cellular networks mm -hmm. uh, to send content. For instance, if you're in an event that's in a very congested environment and you want to leverage cell phone technology in order to transmit your video, we have a series of products. The High Vision Pro is the high-end 4K or 4HD version, similar to the Makito, but it's for bonded cellular workflows. Wow. We have another uh, tool that's very cool that's part of that contribution ecosystem called the Mojo Pro camera application. Okay. It's just a mobile phone, uh, but we're showcasing here with a partner who's used, doing remote control of the camera from the central facility. Um, and basically what this ecosystem allows you to do is send your content from the camera to your receivers. You talked about the Makito decoder, that's certainly sure. one option. We have another re, uh, decoder receiver called the uh, Stream Hub, which is what's used to re receive the feeds. Uh, with a, It was kind of like, I, I guess I would call it a grid view where you get live thumbnails of all the content that's coming in oh. and you get live thumbnails wow. of, of all the content that's going out, whether right. it's going out to SDI, to NDI, to 2110, to an IP output. It can be in the cloud. It can be on-premise. So are you saying, like for example, our Makitos, right? So yep. we, we SDI's transmitted to a Makito, uh, through a yep. Makito, yep. over the internet. We yep. receive it. We, out, we output SDI. Do you have devices that output NDI then? Yeah, the StreamHub receiver, for instance, could be used to output NDI or 2110. Fantastic. And then the last part of it, and what's new for us at the show, I mean, this, this total ecosystem is really new for us, and it's a culmination of an acquisition that happened a couple of years ago. But the big new thing is the introduction of a product called High Vision Hub 360, which is a cloud-based master control solution that gives you visibility to all of your devices, all of your encoders, all of your transmitters, all of your receivers, and lets you control them. You can control them, you can stop them and start them, you can upgrade the firmware, you can create groups with permissions. So literally a centralized hub where you could control all your Makitos yeah. in one place. So your camera of. guys don't have to worry about starting right. and stopping the encoders. The central facility is going to manage that kind of thing. You can worry about getting your content and not having to worry about where it's going to go. And given that, that uh, you know, typically people will be working on multiple events simultaneously, they might need to move things from one location to another, just tell them where to go, connect it to the right project, and it gets managed centrally. So that's a big new addition to our workflow. That's part of the story here at NAB. Very cool. Well, you guys are certainly uh, industry leading, that's for sure. You've been around a long time. Congratulations on 20 years. Yeah, thank you. We're very excited about that. We're all celebrating with some cocktails later this <laughs> afternoon. Not that everybody should come, but uh, why not? It's a big party. We'd like to have people come and celebrate with us. Awesome. Again, Marcus Scholler at High Vision. It's an honor chatting with you. Wishing you a great rest of your show. Uh, we're going to toss it off to Paul. Hello and welcome back to the NAB Show live stream. I am here with Maggie from X Keys and she's going to show us some of the latest new products they have. Absolutely. So we are excited here at NAB 2024 to finally announce our XBE series product line. Ooh. So these are fully RGB support keyboards now, um, all different shapes and sizes. They are designed, manufactured, and supported made right in Michigan, United States. We're proud of that. Um, so these all have the aluminum extrusion. They're all angled. You can swap out the keys like the rest of our X keys devices and customize it. Fully supported in software such as Central Control, but we also do have our Windows software, X keys for Mac. We have free SDK, so you can write us right in. So we're really excited to launch these. 
I'm loving these. This one here it looks like picking a vault lock here. <laughs> this is exciting. Yep, that's our hand wheel. Um, a lot of replay operators like the, the multiple options on this one. Um, we also are also in CNC industry, so it's not really broadcasty, but it's brand new. So we decided we'd bring it to show it off. Never know in this world what it could be used for. So we want to show you, you could do just about everything. So. I, I love it. So we've got the trackball. Yep, yep. XK12 trackball. We have the XK12 jog and shuttle. We have the XK24, um, XBE24. Sorry, the all new name. This is a new product line, and I keep saying that incorrectly. We've got the T bar with 14 keys, the XK, XBE18. Um, so yeah, so we're really excited to launch these. We've been asked for RGB for a long time, so it's exciting to have the the full flavor of the rainbow now. So it, it, we really have the rainbow going on over we really here. Really do. So. Tell us about your company. So BI Engineering has been around since 1997. So we have just about every flavor you can think of as far as keyboards. We have switch interfaces, we have foot pedals, we have smaller jogs, we have bigger jogs, we have T-bars, for we have XKE64 for replay control, for software such as vMix. Um, we are going to start doing the modular system, which I think you may have seen on the floor, maybe with central control. We do have a couple devices here, so you'll be able to build your own keyboard. So you want multiple jogs, you want multiple T-bars, you want a QWERTY, we can cut the metal. So we're going to basically design your own custom panel right in Michigan. So you can do one-offs, you could do a big production run, you can do a big truck. So wow. it's going to be really exciting. The flexibility of your USA manufacturing is quite powerful. Yes, I am very proud of that. Uh, we are based right in Michigan. We have a full support team, Monday through Friday, tech support. Any problems, you can always give us a call. We just like to ship the same day, especially things that are in stock. So yeah, I'm pretty proud of that. You should be. Yeah. So tell me about your experience at NAB. Is there a special moment, anything that you want to reflect special on? Moment. I mean, just getting to see people face to face. I mean, we shipped over 95 countries worldwide. Wow. And obviously NAB is one of the biggest shows in North America, which brings people from all over the world. So I always love coming here to meet people, especially people like you. I get to do these great interviews. I get to go see what's coming next in the products. We get to see our X keys out on the floor. Like I said, we have an SDK, so a lot of the bigger companies write us right in. So we can be a custom controller for all of these big software companies that need buttons so wow yeah. is there anything else you want to cover i just i don't know I, I haven't gotten out of the booth yet so i don't know what to see yet but i really appreciate you guys coming it was really nice to talk to you so. well thank you so much we'll cut back to you guys in the studio this has been x keys you can, where can they find you we are in south lower booth sl8118 and your website xkeys.com that's a good website name <laughs> that's a good one. all right we'll see you guys soon Good morning and welcome to the first day of NAB show. It's opening day and I could not think of a better booth to highlight than Nikon with everything that's going on. I'm here with Mark Cruz. How are you today? Awesome. I'm excited to be here. How many NAB shows have you been at, by the way? A few, a few, but this is the most exciting in recent memory. Oh my goodness. So I'm just going to say it because it's been the elephant in the room. I just, you know, I'm new with Nikon as well. I also, you know, talk to my friends over at Red and then MR. MC, but we see Nikon in the past as primarily, I've seen at least, as a photography still images. So the acquisition now with RED and MRMC into the video game, like, can you tell us a little bit more? What can you share about that? Well, usually I'd come in a, in a Nikon shirt, but today I'm wearing Nikon, MRMC, and RED. These are all companies part of now of the Nikon family. As of a few days ago, uh, we've uh, completed uh, wholly, uh, completed an acquisition that made Red a wholly owned subsidiary of Nikon. And what that means is that uh, they're now part of the Nikon family. They're here today um, at NAB. NAB is really uh, talking about broadcasting, but we're also uh, here talking about the cinema solutions that uh, we're now offering through the Nikon group of families. Um, MRMC is, it doesn't stand for Mr. Mark Cruz or uh, M <laughs> Mr. MC. I know, I've this been calling Mark it Mr. MC. This is Mark Robertson, Mark Roberts Motion Control, and um, they have uh, several products for broadcast. They also have some Cine uh, Bolt products at the t at the front of the hall here that we can see afterwards. And we've been working with them for a while on their broadcast solutions. Very innovative, very high. And it's something that it's a core competency that we at Nikon didn't have. As you said, our uh, reputation has been more with the steels industry, and that's fair, but we've come a long way of recent in creating mirrorless cameras for the creators, photographers, and videographers. Now with our NRAW format, with the Z8 and Z9, and that XP7 platform that we're showcasing here, it's been a really 
great uh, format in the last couple of years to reach out to the creator community and with a smaller, agile, but powerful platform of the, of the NRAW in these cameras. But now speaking of the elephant in the room, as you mentioned, with the acquisition of RED, we can really expand the core competencies of RED and their sensor development technology, namely their global sensor technology that they've just introduced uh, now into the VRAP and the V-Raptor XL and uh, further have synergies between the core competencies of Nikon, their processor development, their user interface as well as their optics expertise and really make a, a strong market um, with these two companies. Gotcha, and I love that you said that. It's a synergy. I think a lot of the filmmaking and the content creator community that I'm looking at, they're like, what's going to happen? I think we are all able to let every company do what they do and it's a synergy as you say. Yeah, you know, uh, for those people looking out there, uh, RED is going to continue to be RED. Um, uh, they're not going to change. They're gonna, we're going to continue to support their service and distribution and even the name is going to remain the same. Their products are going to remain the same. So um, I want everybody to know that, um, that RED's going to be RED, but going forward, um, it's going to be a stronger relationship because Nikon has things uh, in their expertise that can be leveraged in the cinema community in the future. So we're looking forward, can't tell too much of what's going to happen in the future. It's going to take a few years to really develop something unique, but um, this is the start of that, something special. I love that. And like, I will say that I am finally utilizing Nikon myself as video and it's stunning. I'm talking the Z8, ZF. What can you tell us about the so this is the ZF. Yeah, this is it right here. It's incredible, and from what my understanding was, is beyond the flip screen option, it still has the same powerful processing engine as the Z8 and the Z9. Yeah, that's really the the breakthrough for our last cameras. I would say the Z9, the Z8, as well as the ZF, having that new X Speed 7 processor, it's about 10 times faster than the previous generation. So it gives us better autofocusing, um, more faster frame rates. Uh, as far as video goes, we can do much more things with video now. Um, you know, longer record times and so on and so forth. So um, as you said. Uh, with the Z8, it's really the Z9 in a smaller body, and the, the breakthrough with those two formats, uh, those two cameras rather, is that it has internal RAW. Um, the great thing about the ZF, um, in addition to its sort of heritage styling and its build, is that it can also, with the XP7 and it can do internal 10-bit um, and log, you know, uh, it doesn't do raw in this, um, it's not the same sensor technology uh, as the Z8 and Z9, but that new processor, we can do so much more things internally. As you were saying, you're sort of a, a one-person band when it comes to uh, shooting. That's a great thing about uh, these formats is you don't need an external recorder going out just to capture things like 10-bit yes. or, or raw. Um, in the case of the Z8 and Z9, you can do raw internally. Here you can do 10-bit internally. You have a flip-out screen so you can monitor yourself right from this camera. So yeah, really exciting stuff coming out of this. Um, and it works, a, uh, we have a lot of great partnerships with Small Rig and creating just, you know, just the, the supports for it. Um, so a lot of interesting stuff just from the Nikon mirrorless platform in this booth. Oh, I love it. Thank you for giving us an overview. But I'm just saying in you and your role, what is the role that you play at Nikon and what makes you so excited about what Nikon is doing? Yeah, so I'm a um, senior manager at uh, Nikon USA. I generally look after the marketing portion and the launching of the new products, bringing them to market uh, whenever we have new products. What's exciting for me is the breadth of new products that we're delivering. Since I started with Nikon USA, um, we've had almost on average a product launch every month uh, on average. Um, that's because of the rapid expansion that they're building with the Z system. The Z system basically started from scratch in 2018 and since then we have I think over 40 lenses now um, that are in production and many more on the way and so that's really exciting because the powerful format of the Z mount system means that we can have lenses and optics that are way better resolution than um, things in the past. So I'm really excited about that. I'm really excited about the direction that they're taking with their processor and sensor development. And oh, couple that with the traditional Nikon ergonomics. I think that's why people like Nikon in general, it has a soul to it. I think whether you're capturing stills, whether you're capturing a video, just the interaction between 
Nikon and their products. We're really delivering on tech, but really delivering on an experience as well. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Mark, for giving us all the insight and even speaking as much as you did about the acquisition. Congratulations on everything. I'm so excited to see what's going forth. And my last thing before tossing it over to my co-host, Sharif, in another hall, um, any ritual that you do personally to get ready for a big show like this? Ritual? Uh, coffee, that's one. Uh, <laughs> Good night rest and uh, a lot of push-ups the day before I get the blood flowing. There you go. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Mark, thank you. for your time. This has been Nikki Sun with NAB Show Live. Welcome back to NAB Show Live. My name is Tess Protesto. I'm with the Stream Geeks, and here I am today in the South Hall Lower at PTZ Optics booth with Paul Richards, the Chief Revenue Officer of PTZ Optics. Hi, Paul. Hi, Tess. Thanks for stopping by. And no problem. Always happy to be with you. How's the show going? Is great. We are here um, showing off a, a variety of new products. Our brand new PTZ Optics Move SE, which is our entry level 1080p PTZ camera with built in auto tracking. We've won several awards for this camera because it has everything that PTZ Optics customers love, but built into a modern interface where we have auto tracking, we have auto frame. We have group tracking, a lot of great features and with a five-year warranty. And we've just been listening to our customers and building all of the things that they've asked for. With the Move 4K cameras, our kind of higher-end 4K models, we are doing some really interesting things. While some cameras require like a software to do auto tracking, we've built auto tracking directly into the cameras. And the 4K cameras can track up to 300 feet away. Wow. These cameras were building in directly to the joystick controllers. So the joysticks here can control the PTZ cameras. And uh, I want to show quickly how easy it is to uh, launch an auto track. So what I'm going to do, Tess, I'm going to try to auto track you. Um, so here we go. I'm going to click one button on the joystick to start auto tracking. And essentially, it's got you right there. You can see on the screen, we've got a box around Tess. And what this is telling us is that the camera itself is ready to track Tess. So I'll go ahead and select you. And you can go ahead and just do a little walkabout. You're going to have to walk with me. Oh, because you know, I'll let you out. You take it then. Okay, so this is going to auto track me, supposedly. So, oh, there we go. I'm moving around, and the camera is following me. And that's pretty darn seamless. All right, that's so cool. So auto tracking is a big deal, but the biggest thing that we're offering this year is the PTZ Optics Hive. So I wanna take you guys over here really quickly and show you our brand new cloud-based video production software. This is PTZ Optics Hive. We've taken a video production system and a PTZ control system and made it so that you can share access with anyone in the world just by clicking a button. It's as easy as sharing a Google Doc. Whether you're on the local area network or whether you're anywhere in the world, you can just type the person's email address in and determine whether they want to be a camera operator, a producer, or just a viewer of all your cameras. The other thing we've done is we've really changed what it means to have pan, tilt, zoom control. I really think this is the next level of PTZ control. What I'm gonna show you here is called fast frame. And what you can do, if you can, can you see this on the screen here? What you can do is you can just select an area of the screen, click it, and the camera will go exactly there. With a pan, tilt, zoom joystick, you gotta pan, you gotta tilt, you gotta zoom, you kinda gotta steer it to a specific location. With this, you can literally look at an entire baseball field, pick a specific spot, click a button, and the camera's gonna go there. So this is the PTZ Optics Hive. It's currently launched here at NAB. We'll be doing a beta for about a month and a half, and any of our customers can try it for free. There will always be a free option. Great. So it will always be free for one camera. It will be $50 a month for three cameras and $145 a month for unlimited cameras. So we're really interested to get everyone signed up for the beta so you guys can get access to it. So if you're using PTZ cameras, this is not just for PTZ optics. This will work with Sony, Panasonic, Canon. It works with 400 different cameras and we support direct camera drivers. So this is not just basic pan, tilt, zoom. We support all of the iris, the shutter speed, the color correction in all of these tools to give you a seamless experience that you can share throughout the world and really just 
revolutionize what it means to be a PTZ camera operator. Now tell me, you've been at NAB for how, NAB for how many years? So this would be, our company is celebrating our 10 year anniversary. And I'm gonna say this is probably about eight years of NAB for me. What's your favorite memory from NAB? So my favorite memory from NAB is when you start to have people coming back to the booth and giving you recognition for saying, wow, you got a bigger booth this year. Wow, you're legitimate. And so by being here at NAB, customers really can see that we're a serious company. We've been in business for 10 years. We're here to stay. And NAB is, a, is kind of a testament to that, where our customers can come here and shake our hands and realize that we're here to do real business. We are not just an online company. We're real people solving real problems, real customers. And where can people learn more about PTZ Optics? So you can go to ptzoptics.com. All right, thank you so much. This has been Paul Richards from PTZ Optics, live from the NAB Show. Welcome back to NAB Show Live. I'm Tess Protesta with the Stream Geeks here at one of the most highly anticipated booths at the NAB Show Live, Black Magic Design. I'm here with Bob. He's the Director of Sales for the Americas at, at uh, Black Magic Design. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing good. It's been a great show, a lot of energy so far, right? Oh, totally. Yeah, it's great to see all the people back. Yep. Yeah, so tell me a little bit about Black Magic Design. I know you have a wide array of products. We do. Um, we added a lot of different products. Uh, in our ATEM area, we added a couple of new ATEM constellation, 1ME and 2ME, and all, also a micro panel. In Resolve, DaVinci Resolve 19 went out in beta the other day, uh, in, including we have some new hardware for that. We have a new micro color panel for people that are using iPads or whatever. And uh, we also added uh, some new Simply 2110 products, so you can actually do remote monitoring, monitoring by you know using 10 gig Ethernet and moving uh, signals around, turning them back into SDI or HDMI, depending on what you're monitoring in. Uh, we also have a new router there. We have a new big router, 120 by 120 inputs. Uh, we also added two new cameras, though. Uh, yeah, a new Pixis 6K camera. That's a new box camera that we uh, introduced in three different mounts, uh, L mount, uh, EF mount, and PL mount. And then we have the new uh, Blackmagic Ursa Cine 12K camera. That is a completely new design. It has Wi-Fi built in, 10 gig Ethernet port. It's uh, it, it records up to 12K on on our new um, media module that goes into a new media dock, and you can record on uh, eight terabytes or 16 terabyte uh, modules, and uh, it all they all record uh, both Blackmagic RAW as well as proxies at the same time, and you connect them through our cloud service so they can move the files directly to the editor while you're still shooting. So you have a cloud service now. Tell me a little bit more about that. So the Blackmagic cloud service has been out, and we what we do is we're able to allow people to move files through the cloud service down to wherever they need it to go, right? And uh, you can also share DaVinci Resolve projects, $5 a project a month, and people can uh, share those globally. So it's a great way to move the media, but also to move the projects along. And now it doesn't matter if your editor is in Zimbabwe or wherever. And uh, yeah, so people have been using that. And then we have our Blackmagic camera app that's on the iPhone, but we also are showing a version of Android here at the show. Excellent. Do you think that people are most excited to see the cameras, the switchers, DaVinci? I think it goes on and on and on. Like they go, oh, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. Oh, no, that's cool. So, yeah, we've had a lot of excitement across all the product lines, and it's always great to see that. Do you, would you say there's one thing that's a standout innovation this year for you guys, or is it just everything you listed, all those great products? Yeah, I think we. Uh, there's one other thing that we introduced is a replay system that uses DaVinci Resolve as the heart of the replay system for our live stuff, and that's also getting a lot of cool attention. But the cameras always draw lots of attention. Resolve draws attention. There's a lot of things that draw attention, but they all work together, which I think is awesome. Now, I've seen you here a few times, a time or two. How many years have you been attending NAB? Well, let's see. I, I did two in the 1980s, and then since 1993, I have been on the floor. If it's open, I've been here. Wow. So that's a lot, yeah. What is the coolest, most interesting, or uh, impactful thing about NAB? The people. Uh, it's amazing. I still see people that I saw at those first couple of shows. And uh, the, the people, the customers, the different guys, the different manufacturers, whatever, is a collection of the heart is, is really the people and, and all of the relationships that I've built over the last 35 years or whatever it is. So it is kind of cool to see people and like, oh, I haven't seen you in a while or that kind of thing. And especially during the pandemic, we had that. But we've been back the last couple of years and now it's really full like it used to be.
Yeah, it's exciting to see the growth back in here again. It's the first day, and we've got a couple more days left. Are you excited for the rest of the show? Oh, uh, totally. I mean, this is great. I get to talk to people all week long, and uh, by Wednesday, I'll, my voice will be shot, but that's okay. Yeah. So where can people learn more about Black Magic Design and find out more about your products? Sure. Go to our website, blackmagicdesign.com. Excellent. That has been live from South Hall Lower at the Black, Ma Black Magic Design booth. Thank you so much, Bob. Thank you. Welcome back to NAB Show Live. This is Nikki Sun, and this time we are going from the inside of Central Hall at Cine Central all the way outdoors with Ariel DP Caden from Lightcraft. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So tell us what we got going out here because last year these were all food trucks. Now it's replaced with drones, gimbals, all the cool stuff. Yes, of course. At Lightcraft, we offer a bunch of different remote camera operations. Uh, we can put a stabilized head on just about anything and drones are our bread and butter. So we brought a few of our tools out here. Uh, you can see them moving behind us. We have an RC car. We have various uh, drones on display and we even have a couple up in the air. And some of our workshop attendees are getting a chance to operate cameras on drones first time. I mean, isn't that cool? Can we just like pause to say how cool I that think is it's awesome. to have hands-on experience here at NAB show? Yes, as I've been told, and I, I think this is accurate, this is the first time NAB has allowed exhibitors to fly with, uh, with talent and with uh, the permission of the convention center and the FAA. So this is awesome that we got the chance to do this first. This is amazing because I don't know if you all recall we did a cool pre nav show yeah, promo and at that time i didn't think this was cleared yet no so it wasn't official. to see it out here you were like there's outside stuff too i'm like wait can we do this can yes. we see yes honestly we brought uh three different drones that are all flying today mm -hmm. and so lightcraft's lead pilot jordan has been doing some fpv demonstrations we've also used the dji inspire 3 which was uh launched here last year and given a chance for some operators who may not have used a drone in a professional setting before to get some hands-on experience and honestly i think this is awesome i hope we get to do it again in the future absolutely and what has been the demographic here are people getting hands-on for the first time fpvs to be able to take it into the cinematic world yes we've worked with some uh some of our attendees are from their own production companies and they may have used a uh, different style of drones and this is our first time using this style we've also had some people who work in marketing and are curious about when and how they should use a drone in their own footage so a really big range of people wow incredible so i would say how many times have you been to nab show personally? this is my fourth or fifth year First time as a, a proper instructor, though. Yeah. Well, how does it feel to come back as an instructor after being an attendee oh. all these past years? It's cool. I'm not sure I've earned it yet, but I'm certainly <laughs> happy to participate, that's for sure. You're like, you know what? It's kind of hard to catch a break here. You just feel like things just fly by the seat of your pants. Yeah, absolutely. Times. But I'm also making some friends and seeing some familiar faces, and that's been a little bit refreshing. Um, somebody I may not have crossed paths with since last NAB, I go ahead and I see them. They recognize me. I recognize them. It's it's really cool. Amazing. And just about you for a little bit. You are an aerial DP, right? I am. So being able to come back here from an attendee being an operator to a teacher, like, how, yeah. like is that a moment for you? <laughs> It certainly is. I've only been doing this about uh, 10 years, and this is about the time of my career and my life where I feel like I'm reaping the rewards a little bit. And to be able to pass that on to somebody who may have been in a position I was in a few years ago, it's rewarding. It, yeah. It's a special moment, for sure. So do you have any tips for success for those who are like want to go in the same path that Mr. Caden has sure. gone? Like, what are, what are some tips? Get out there and fly anything you can. And also, come say hey to Lightcraft. We can we can give you some tips in person or show you some things that I would have liked to have known when I was first starting out. Um, but really, just get hands-on, fly anything you can. You'll just get better quickly. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Kate. Thank you for introducing us to the first time, first ever drone. And it's kind of cool to of say Lightcraft was behind that. Thank you for having us. Perfect. Well, enjoy the rest of your energy show. You too, Nick. We're in Cine Central, Central Hall, checking out all the cinematic innovation and I'm here with photo Joseph how are you I'm great thanks for having me on you know I'm geeking out because I see you always on YouTube <laughs> as my highly recommended suggested videos how to do the things you are the person that so, the, so you're telling me that the algorithm actually works? The algorithm has wow. worked in your favor, my friend. <laughs> How are you doing here, though? I mean, like, you have been going from teaching classes, go, go, go all day. It's opening day. How has your morning been? Uh, a little chaotic, yeah. So yeah. I'm teaching a bunch of classes, actually eight different sessions this week, two of them today. But I'm also doing this news project that's sponsored by Atomos okay. and a couple other companies, Frame.io and Condor Blue are a big part of this as well. And essentially what we're doing is we're shooting newsreels, vertical shorts for Instagram, but we're shooting it on a 
professional rig using camera to cloud. We're pushing our footage real time up to a cloud server where our editor in Ohio, I think, is pulling the footage down, editing reels and pushing them back to us, usually within 30 to 40 minutes of, of ending the shot. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. Like I was just saying, we were actually just talking to my friend Derek over at Scenery, which is like an editing base as well. He's also a content creator, but we're talking about like how there's a lot more content creators on the scene now. You're filmmakers, you're being forced to shoot vertical a lot more, I'm assuming. <laughs> so, I mean, what what say you? How's how's that process or the transition been? No, it's great. I, I actually really enjoy vertical for that delivery, right? for that format of being on your phone. It really works. And what's cool about this setup is, so I'm shooting with the S5-2X, the Lumix S5-2X, which is shooting open gate 6K internal. Okay. We're rotated vertically, so we're getting a internal clip for use later that even though it's vertical, is actually more than 4K wide, more than Ultra HD wide. It's a massive file but simultaneously creating the 1080p proxies that are going up to the cloud. So that's what the editor's working with, but then later on after the show, we want to make something longer form for YouTube. We've got 6K source to work from. Oh my gosh, you're just like, I like my nerd, like, doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> it's like, this is amazing. So you get the both wide and the vertical and you'll right. be able to do this in post. Exactly, exactly. Talk about making the process so much easier. I see you have a YC onion uh, monopod as well. Yeah, great monopod here, <laughs> really nice, so nice and easy to, single latch to get it up or down, love that part of it. And part of this process too, so since we are going camera to cloud, but as you know, your cell phone barely works here in NAB. So what we're tethered to here, you can get that in the shop, but this is a Scalera a bonded modem cellular backpack. So we've got, it's kind of crazy inside of here, but essentially this is giving us a high bandwidth signal, even with all the madness that's around here. We can see we are, we are plugged in directly into the Ethernet port on the deck so that we can just push these straight to the cloud with minimal fuss. I was really literally good. about to say, how are you going live, my friend? <laughs> yeah. All these new innovations, all the technologies. I also know that you are a veteran of NAB shows. Oh, so yeah. what keeps you coming back? Do you have any success stories that you can share with our audience? You know, NAB has always been an absolute blast for me. There's always so much to see and learn. For, as a professional, I always make clients here, so it's good for business, and it's a lot of fun, and I get to see a lot of my industry friends. Okay, so what's the game plan for those who are here for the first time? How do you like organize this entire show so that you can like tackle everything? Yeah, seriously, if you've never been to the show before, you really just got to take the time to walk the aisles up and down, up and down. If you try to say, oh, I got to go to this booth, that booth, you're going to miss everything as you're running in between, so just take the time to go up and down. You need a few days. This is not a one-day show, for sure. Gotcha. But a, a little tip for you, you could actually go to my Instagram. Yeah, little plug here. There you go. To watch the reels that we're shooting, because that's why we're doing these, so that people can see what is happening here at NAB. They can find out what they're missing, what they might want to go check out. And for those who can't be at NAB, it's just a way to see what's going on. So on Photo Joseph on my Instagram, you can check out the reels there. And if we, uh, outside of seeing the amazing content that you're capturing, uh, you are also teaching some other workshops. So can you plug yourself of what you're doing here at NAB Show? Yeah, so I see, I've already done a workshop on script writing and on uh, 4K live streaming. I've got one on ATEM production, I've got one on uh, cloud editing with Resolve. Um, I can't remember what the others are. I got six to do. I, I know I've, I've prepped for all of them, I just can't remember what they are right now. I don't even know how you retain all that information. Well, I, clearly I don't, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's incredible. What is the uh, plans for after the show, though? Like, do you have plans for how do you tackle the after parties? Because do you feel like you have to be everywhere nowadays? You know, you want to be places. There's yeah. a there's a few good parties to go to. So, yeah. yeah, but, you know, you take it easy. You got to have an end time. You got to get your sleep. Amazing. So anything that you want to end off on in terms of plugging yourself, your channel? Do you have any cool projects that you have about to launch on your YouTube channel? Just always an influx of videos. It, I've been so busy with some other stuff lately. I haven't had much on my YouTube channel, but it, it's coming. Don't worry. It, it'll be there. But Photo Joseph, absolutely everywhere. Appreciate the follows. Amazing. Well, thank you, Photo Joseph. Amazing to see you in the flesh. And I can't wait to see all of your reels on Photo Joseph. This is Nikki Sun. We're over here in Central Hall. We just talked to Nikon. And now, of course, of course, what's a camera without something to protect that precious gear? So I'm here with the VP of Marketing, James of Nomadic. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I'm fantastic as awesome. well. It's opening day. I mean, how many NAB shows have you been here? This is only our second one. And when we came last year, we're like, oh, we'll just try it. I don't know how big it is. And like on opening day, our booth was slammed the whole time. We were like questioning, we're like, is it going to be good? Yeah. And then the whole time we're like, 
whoa, so we signed up pretty immediately for next year. Amazing, so yeah. that's a huge testimony. So yeah. why is it important to come to a show like NAB Show, and what are some success stories of being here at NAB Show? Yeah, yeah, last year we actually signed up some new distributors, international distributors, because when we came, we again, we didn't really have a lot of knowledge what NAB was. We make camera bags that could be used for videography and, and photography, obviously, but still, it was not really on our radar. People kept bringing it up, but we didn't realize how big this show was and how much opportunity there is here. Yeah. So, I mean, last year was really fantastic. Yeah. I so mean, it's opening day right now, so we're just in here for like I an know. hour, but so far it's been really good. I mean, just walking over here before we went live, yeah. I mean, your whole booth was just swarming with filmmakers yeah, and creators. Yeah, we pushed them out so we could film this, by I the know. way. I know, we are that <laughs> important. But we were like, can we please have a little bit of your time to tell us about the new yeah. products that you have or just kind of the line that you have and what you offer? Yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure. For, so Nomadic, for those that you don't know who Nomadic is, we make highly functional and innovative products for travel, everyday, and photography. Um, and so we really believe that like functional and innovative products help you live your life more intentionally with confidence, right? So you're not like always worried about, is this bag going to break or do I have pockets for stuff? You know, like we've all had the rat's nest of bags before where you're like trying to find something, yeah. right? We have lots of pockets to keep everything super organized so you can focus on living more intentionally, basically. Absolutely. Well, yeah. you said functional and practical, but I have to say also stunning. Yes. The minimalism design, yes. I am living for it. So <laughs> can you tell us like what goes into the design of your bags? Because yeah. I feel like it's so popular within the community you partner with filmmakers yeah. like Peter McKinnon. Can yeah, yeah, you talk yeah. about that? Yeah, I mean, honestly, we're a crowdfunded brand. So ever since we started, we've been on Kickstarter. And so wow. what that means is that you're really engaging with people that are potentially your customer and interested in the product. So you're asking for feedback, you're doing surveys, you're calling people. And obviously working with someone like Peter McKinnon, who's a professional photographer, helping design the product with him, got all those kind of intricacies, intricacies that you kind of need as you go like a thoughtful design, yeah. you know what I mean? First and foremost, all of our bags and luggage have lifetime warranty, because that's a testament about how we design and build a product. We use like the best materials, you know, in some of these bags right here, we have waterproof zippers, water resistant, waterproof like material. Not necessarily ready to go scuba diving in, but you can take it in the shower, you know? See, but I like that transparency, that openness. Yeah, yeah. So in working yeah. with filmmakers and photographers like Peter McKinnon, what has been what has been the thing that, oh, this is what the bag industry needs to get right in yeah. order to work with filmmakers? Because yeah. I imagine walking the show floor, there's so many bags out there, totally. right? Yeah. But in addressing an actual need of yeah. a photographer and filmmaker, what is the most surprising thing that yeah. you found that you need? Well, I mean, it's it's kind of different between what you're trying to create. So for the first bag we made, what, tri what Peter really wanted. He's like, dude, I got to go on photo shoots. Okay. And they're like two days long. And I don't really like taking two bags with me. Okay. So we made this product right here. It's big, but it's for traveling every day. Yeah. So that front part expands out and you can put clothes in it. Okay. Or if you're a videographer, you can just fill it up with gear. You know what I mean? But it's really about the modularity of like, I could use it for a ton of gear or I could put clothes and gear in it. And it has like a literally an expansion piece for, for travel. And that was like, we made that for traveling photographers that are on like two, three day shoots. Amazing. You know, I think we're okay. We're, I think we're a show not tell. And yeah. if you're okay with me, I'll hold the mic. Do you mind opening it up and showing our to. viewers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Well, this is the one I was talking about. And we'll go into some other bags. Yeah, let me but go on this side of you. You can see it's a big boy. This does count as a carry-on, right? So you have multiple pockets here. You have your Molly attachments for other things. It's kind of, you can see it, but you can tell the material is, is very water resistant, waterproof zippers. So you have a side access here, right? Yeah. Big old water bottle here. And we like to use magnets, not just because they're fun to, you know, yeah. click on and off yeah. from an ASMR standpoint, yeah. but they're very functional. You have a big open pocket up here, and this is where you'd put clothes. So you see the tie down here, and then some organization here. This whole section right there expands out. Okay. So that's where you could then put your clothes in two, three days, you're good to go, right? Okay. Now, I'm gonna just flop around here for a second. You got a laptop sleeve here, external. You have luggage passengers, so if you do put it on a roller. Absolutely necessary. And the other thing about our camera bags, I would say, is that we it's not just about the function of like having pockets and things like that it's got to be comfortable yeah. so when you feel this bag it feels like a 70 liter hiking bag right it's super padded it's super comfy has a lot of structure to it so it fits really good on your back and it's not like dragging you down it actually fits up on top right so you have that lumbar support so you already saw the laptop sleeve here and then you open it up oh, this has wow. all of our accessories in it so it's yes. hard to see but you have a secondary laptop sleeve here or tablet multiple pockets and then all this stuff inside again these are accessories 
This is all customizable to however you want it. So Amazing. you can fit this up with the camera gear and throw shoes in there and clothes in the front. Well, and also besides the bags, you also make those accessories. Yeah, correct? we make accessories, everything from battery case holders that come with stickers to tell you which side is dead <laughs> so you don't get lost there. We got memory card holder. This is for filters, so to keep your filters nice and clean. But everything's just like, it's, it's very modular, it's very functional, it's nice design, and again, it's lifetime warranty, so we kind of have a saying is you buy it nice or you buy it twice, mm -hmm. right? Because on backpacks, zippers are the thing that goes. It's very a low percent for us, but if your zipper does break, call us, send it in, we'll refurb it, we'll send you a new one. I love that. And you do have another McKinnon collaboration, right? Yes. The Luma collection? Yeah, yeah, we just came out with this new one. So as you can tell, it's got like kind of a more modern look, but this line of... This is the backpack. This is the nine liter sling. We also have a 10 liter sling, or a nine liter, or a 12 liter sling. They're designed primarily for mirrorless, you could tell, because they're a little bit thinner. But the cool thing about this is like, especially for camera slings, we have it, we didn't see this a lot. So we added magnets. So when it's unzipped, it just closes tight. So, because if you're kind of on a shoot and you're changing out a lens and you're just flapping over here, you got stuff falling out, might be raining. You can just flip it up and it locks in from the magnets. Wow. So let's just give the audience like, yeah little magnet. Thank you for that magnet, magnet ASMR. ASMR. <laughs> it's amazing. It is amazing. Well, I'm going to pop back over here because I gave you a lot of, I know, exactly. Well, the last thing here is, I mean, in preparing for a show like an AV show, like yeah. what, what are you most excited for this year? You were a newbie last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're returning this year. What yeah. are you looking forward to most? Two things. We have two new product categories or launches here is that the new Peter McKinnon Luma collection. We have four colors in those. Primarily in, you know, in the past we've had all black bag so coming out with a rust and a sage is like really exciting for us to add some life into the brand with colors um, and then we're also showing our apparel line so we have a new apparel line designed for travel built for every day jacket pants you know you could do like splits in these pants right here <laughs> t-shirts it's premium everyday apparel um, and then overall just because it, it is only our second show here is to talk to new friends and like introduce the brand to people and just like create relationships yeah so well thank you so much for your time uh thank you for giving us a huge hands-on show i'm so excited to have my hands on the mckinnon eight liter sling as well as in Central Hall. This time I'm here with Joyce, who is the CEO of Riedel Communications. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you. I have to say, first of all, yes to female CEOs. <laughs> um, it's a rarity sometimes at a big show, a convention like this, but it's it's really inspiring personally just to feel like we are here, we belong here, we deserve to be here, and here you are. Thank you very much. It's um, You know, I've been in this industry a long time, longer than I care to really say but yeah being a woman in a industry that's very dominated by men has had its challenges <laughs> to say the least but it's it's been fun it's been a great ride um, Riedel is a great company very diverse uh, you know they, they, they prop women up on a pedestal so I really appreciate working for them you know Thomas Riedel is an amazing entrepreneur and and just very inclusive and so it's a very inclusive diverse company overall. So I feel really proud to to hold this position as President and CEO of the Americas. Absolutely. Can you give us a little bit of uh, information about what your company does? So Riedel is, uh, is basically known for an intercom company, um, but we do so, so, so much more. Uh, we do video infrastructure, distributed routing. Uh, we have a line called MeteorNet, which is an IP-based line as well as a, a baseband line, and we have bridges that take you into the future. Um, we have our, obviously, we have comms, so we have our Emmy Award-winning Bolero Wireless, which has just catapulted us in the Americas, and then Artist Intercom System. And then about two years ago, we purchased a small company called Simply Live, and they, uh, with them we have uh, Replay and uh, Capture and um, Ingest and Live live, uh, live Production Suite, basically, where you can do it in the cloud or on-prem or have your own uh, you know, data center. So we've really expanded um, just in the last eight years that I've been with the company, so it's very exciting. And to see our booth, it's... It's much bigger than it's been in the past, and we we keep growing in population. We have over a thousand people now worldwide, and I'm just real proud to be a part of of Riedel. 
Absolutely. And we were talking before, and as I understand it, you mentioned that Riedel has been here at the NAB show for maybe 35 plus years now? The company is 35 years old. Um, I think they probably have a presence at NAB of probably in the mid-20s, oh, wow. like 24, 25 years, something like that. I've been coming to more NABs once again that I want to mention. <laughs> no <laughs> a little bit of a break in there, very, very small break. Um, and uh, it's great. I mean, I just love coming to the show because it's like a big reunion. Yes. So I've been in the industry for a long time, and I and I see all my old friends, and I make new friends, and uh, it's just fun. It's a lot of work. It's tiring. It takes about two weeks to get over it once I get home, <laughs> but it's fantastic. You need to plan a vacation after this whole area. Yeah, right? I really need to. I know a lot of people who do, and I just I don't. But I have to. I got to change that a little bit. Gotcha. Being a woman in this industry, you do have to work a wee bit harder yep, yep. <laughs> to be taken real seriously unfortunately um, I wanted to get I, your opinion on that as well like is there any uh, tips for those who are aspiring to make it to a CEO level such as yourself well I guess it's just uh, uh, you know don't limit yourself um, don't put yourself in a corner <laughs> no one puts baby no, in the no corner no one puts baby in the corner <laughs> don't do that and um, uh, it's not easy. I can, I can just say that right now. It's not. It's still, even in this day, day and age, it's not easy. Sometimes it almost seems like it's getting worse again, maybe before it gets better. So I would just like to see women, more women in tech. Um, I'd like to see more powerful women. I'd like to have more, you know, like-minded women that, to, that we could meet with and talk. And I think it'll get there. Yeah. Um, but the young ones really need to to work it. Yeah. They're really to, to, to step up and we need to help them. Amazing. And then what is, a, could you share a success story of being at a show like NAB show? Oh, a success story as far as uh, like business or something we've... Yeah, I mean like sometimes when you come here you meet new people and new partners or new exhibitors and realize this is the way that technology is going and we are adapting. Um, hmm, let's see. A success story. I could be bring. I could talk about a customer success story. Um, just you know, ran, we usually have meetings established when you come to a show, and your your calendar's booked. But every once in a while, just a random customer comes in, and they'll they look around the booth. They're like, "What do you guys do?" And it's like, "Oh no, another student or another you know, somebody who's just here yeah, hanging out, doesn't know anything." about the industry and then you start talking to them and then they become interested and the next thing you know it turns into a you know five million dollar sale which happened wow. so it's like it's a customer we had no awareness of no it was in the house of worship this particular one it was in the house of worship vertical and um, those things happen more frequently than you realize but those really big ones that that's that's a rare wow. that's a rarity very cool. Well, you heard it here. If you want a $5 million acquisition, you might want to come here. But thank you so much, Joyce, for giving us your time, sharing, you. uh, sharing what uh, Riedel does, and for just inspiring additional women, women in tech, women CEOs. Thank you for your time today. Thank you very much. Welcome back to NAB Show Live. I'm Tess Protesto, bringing you content from South Hall Lower. We are at one of the most exciting booths at NAB, the Adobe booth. I'm here with Kyle, the Senior Director of Product Marketing. How's your first day of the show been? It's been awesome. Thanks for coming to visit the Adobe booth today. We have a lot of exciting things to talk about. Yeah, what are some of the latest innovations that Adobe's bringing to the show this year? So we have a ton of innovation going on for professional video editors across Adobe Premiere Pro, After Effects, and Frame.io. In, in more specific terms, Adobe Premiere Pro, we're adding AI-enabled audio workflows. Those are in beta right now, helping editors do uh, get easier access to the audio tools that they need uh, based on the clips that they have in their timeline. We have After Effects supporting 3D uh, directly inside of After Effects, so you can make it a lot easier to work with your 3D models coming out of uh, 3D tools directly in After Effects. And then Frame.io, Frame.io you might have known as a video review and approval tool. We've just launched the V4 beta. And with Frame.io V4, we're actually transforming Frame.io into the creative management platform. What that really means is we're bringing, to get, we're bringing a new metadata-driven collection system to help you create smart shares and dynamic workflows based off of the metadata on the files you're bringing into the product. That's very interesting. I, so you guys are getting on the AI train. How has that experience been for your company? 
It's been very exciting for Adobe overall. As you know, uh, as you might know, Adobe released Firefly just over a year ago. And so our first iteration of the Firefly models have been for images. We've had over six billion uh, generations of images out of Photoshop in the Firefly image model. And we've had a lot of great reception to that. And as you can imagine, we're thinking about what, what are the creative disciplines we're going to serve next. Obviously, there's a lot of interest in video. We're thinking and working hard at that. More news to come there. Uh, but, you know, if you take a step back and look at Premiere Pro today, there are a lot of AI-enabled workflows in Premiere Pro, things like enhanced speech to clean up dialogue. So you and I are doing an interview right now, but we've got some folks over there making some noise. If we were to play this back and edit it in Premiere, we could actually enhance our dialogue to make it stand out. We have things like um, auto-ducking to, to update music and sound levels. There's a lot of AI that's in Premiere already, uh, text-based editing, and you know we're only looking to, to innovate further and really help professionals accelerate their workflows inside of Premiere Pro. Okay. If you could pick one feature or one product that Adobe is showcasing at NAB this year that you think is either most exciting to attendees or most exciting to you, could you pick just one? I, I will, and it's, it's personal to me, so I, I was have been on the Frame.io team for seven years. Wow. Yeah, so early employee uh, back in 2016. And today with V4, it's been, it's the culmination of three years of hard work completely reimagining the platform. And it just, it feels so intuitive. I, I'd, I'd ask you to go over and take a look. The design aesthetics, the fluidity of the platform, the, the doors that we're going to open for people in terms of their workflows, from ideation to handoff, it's really, truly compelling. And I'd hope everybody comes uh, and check it out. Um, one more, just a plug. Yeah. If you really, you really have to try enhanced speech. It's one of those things that um, once you use it, you're like, oh my god, I'm going to use this on all of my videos. Uh, so I'd really uh, ask you to check out the Premiere Pro booth inside of uh, the, Adobe, the, the Adobe section here today. And where can people learn more about Adobe? Uh, go to Adobe.com uh, and. We have pages, you can easily navigate to one of our video pages. We have What's New. You'll see all the updates to Premiere Pro, to Frame.io, and more. Thank you so much, Kyle. I appreciate the interview with you today. Well, I'm back in Cine Central, Central Hall. I'm in the presence of reality TV show star royalty, Derek Shaw. How are you? Thank you? I'm doing great, Nikki. Thank you for having me. <laughs> now, tell me, why are you here at NAV Show? Uh, I'm here with actually my company, Scenery. Uh, it's a new video editor. They do AI to cut down videos to short clips and it's fully collaborative. So, you know, most times you have to like edit a video and export it. This one, edit a video, share a link, and it goes wherever you need it to. I love it. So you're heading up growth at Scenery, correct? I am. I am. They just brought me on to lead on growth. Um, we'll see how long that goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully keeps growing but speaking of which coming from a reality show okay. being the winner of amazing race Thank what you. was it season 35 season 34 actually. season 34 but i'll win 35 too <laughs> yes so, bring them know, back possibly bring them both back. could be true yeah. but i'm just talking in a sense where in a way when you're a public figure now okay. right you yeah like a super big you kind of start becoming like an influencer and then you kind of mm. start needing to make content all of a sudden it's, so it's can you tough. tell me that you know i just like i can't walk outside my house without someone recognizing me <laughs> wanting my autograph <laughs> uh, yeah so you know I I used to work in tech um, and I was like a software engineer and I do this reality show and it completely changed the direction of my life I quit my job I became a content creator so I was a content creator for two years editing videos shooting traveling you know you know the lifestyle I think <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, and it was great uh, and I feel like now I'm in AB and I'm seeing so many new things I'm like wow I wish I had that two years ago absolutely so yeah. coming to a show like this you're seeing all the tech all the technology the software the hardware what are you most excited to see here um, definitely some of the software. Look, I'll say my background, I'm not really like a videographer, so it's, I'm shooting on like my iPhone, I have like a little Sony camera. Don't, don't say little, okay? Because at the yeah, end of the day... iPhone 14, put some respect, put okay? Some respect yeah, this, on is a, the... this is a good iPhone. <laughs> But, you know, like, there's some really cool, I mean, if you just look behind us, like, yeah. look at these amazing cameras, and I just would not know at all how to operate that. So I'm here, like, the software is really awesome. Like, there's so many things that can just speed up your workflow, and, like, you can get from raw footage all the way to an edit in, like, 30 seconds, and that's what I, that's what I love. Yeah, and from a first-time attendee at NAB show, what was your first thought walking into the show floor doors today? 
I was exhausted. I think I walked in. I immediately started gasping for air. I was like, I want water. I want food. This place is huge. Like, what? How many people? Like, how many exhibits? Usually between sixty to one hundred thousand people come to this show. That's, so yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I think I just wanted to share. I hope that I don't put you on blast here. But I was just visiting Derek at the scenery booth back at uh, West, West Hall. Hall yeah. We did an impromptu interview at the AWS uh, news desk. Thank you very much. Yes. And he was like, Oh, I thought it was gonna be easy because right after our interview here, we're just gonna go right there. I'm like, it's nope. Not. We we yeah. shared a moment in the Vegas um, loop, right? We should tell like we had to take a Tesla, we had to go underground, like it was it's a process. Like that's how big this place is. Wow. Yeah. Well, okay, so what is your plan afterwards? How are you navigating NAB show and what do you wanna I guess see Look, the most outside? Here, this is my NAB show show survival plan. All okay. right. You need to download the NAB show app and you need to mark down the places you want to go to and you need to freaking plan that out because it will not happen yeah. and you will get lost so that's my plan i have like 10 places i'm like oh that looks cool this looks cool yeah. one of them is scenery yes. um and then you, you just mark it down put it in the map and then you just do your route yeah and then plug scenery a little bit more like, like is there anything else happening at your booth that folks need to make sure that they get on their map and their calendar? Yeah, so right now, actually with Scenery, everyone who stops by our booth, we're giving away like one free month of our pro plan. With that, you get unlimited projects, you get upgraded storage space, so we give you like 100 gigabytes of like cloud storage. And then also you get to use our AI editor completely for free. So if you have like a podcast, if you have long form YouTube videos, you upload that footage, you take the one hour long footage, and we can cut it down immediately to like 30 seconds for you to upload to social media. So well, speaking of which, I think we're going to do something really special with this interview, right? Ex yes, exactly. So. Well, speaking of cutting these to social media, part of what we're doing here, I'm going to put this interview into edit our editor and we're going to cut this and I'll say, "Give me every moment that Derek was hilarious and made Nikki laugh." And <laughs> It'll just give me two hours of footage back because, yes. you know, that happens so many times. And the AI is that good as well. It's that, it's that good. It really is. Yeah. So stop by our booth. Uh, you can get the one month free, um, and we'll love to say hi. Yep. And make sure if you want to see what Derek is doing on Scenery, check out our Instagram. Plug your Instagram really quick. You can follow me at D-E-R-E-K-X-I-A-O underscore. Amazing. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, awesome. enjoy the rest of the bye show. Bye. bye. Thanks so much, Ryan. And welcome back to NAB Show Live. My name is Sharif, streaming right here from Central Hall with my good friend Katie. How are you, Katie? Great. How are you? Doing very well, thank you. Now, Katie, can you tell me a little bit about where you work and what you do at NAB Show? Sure. So I work at MDG. We are their marketing agency to help with getting the show up and running and marketing to get all the attendees here. And I work in marketing, so Katie and I work very closely together. Katie, what does your day-to-day -day look like while you're helping us set up our NAB Show? So I do project management, so I'm making sure that all the projects stay on track and we're getting them done, meeting timelines, all that fun stuff and working with my favorite team. <laughs> Katie definitely does a great job making sure that we meet all of our deadlines and making sure that all of our projects are done right on time. Now Katie, how many NAB shows have you been to? This is my first one. Your very first one? Well, welcome. Can you tell me what you're looking forward to most while you're here? I'm excited to see everything come to life because I've never seen it in the flesh. So I'm really excited to see everything in person. Because you touch basically every part of the marketing process because you're part of the project planning. So how does it feel seeing all the things that you have planned actually be put into fruition and actually seeing it live? It's really exciting and it's a little relieving as well to see everything went well, everything's going well. Awesome. Good afternoon. This is Nikki Sun with NAB Show Live. We are still in Central Hall. I am I'm ending today's segment getting the tea at Telos Alliance with the CEO of Telos. Scott, how are you? Fabulous. It's been a great show already. Just the first day. Yeah, it's opening day. Like, what, what, ha what is there a ritual that you do before getting to a big show like NAB? Yeah, well, I mean, after we get the booth set up, we always gather the team together, kind of get the hype going, the passion. I mean, NAB for decades has been Telos' Super Bowl. My first NAB with Telos was 1995 as an entry-level engineer. <laughs> <laughs> I see you have yep, fun here. <laughs> there's, the guy, there's the guy who hired me. <laughs> so he's allowed to do yeah, that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So that's Frank. He owns the company. And, uh, yeah, it's been an amazing journey for years. But this is our Super Bowl. This is where we can show off the latest gear. You know, this year has been no less exciting than any other year that I've been to. And it's just been fabulous. Amazing. I love that reference there because... 
people who may not be familiar with this industry knows how massive it is for those of us yep. in this tech world. Now, before you became big wig CEO, I know you were probably an enthusiast of technology before that. Can you describe the feeling of attending those years ago to now being a representative, representing Telos here? Yeah, I got to say that first NAB was unbelievable. So I had just joined the company. I was right out of college. It was great to get a job in the area of my passion, which was audio, and I was an electrical engineer. And I was told, okay, you're gonna be going to NAB. Back then, we didn't even have a sales force, so the booth was manned by the engineers, the guys wow. like me who designed the products. And when I heard booth, I had never been to a trade show before. I'm picturing something like that thing that Lucy has and Charlie Brown, you know, you got the tabletop and you got your gear sitting there and people come up and put a nickel in a cup or something. And when I saw what NAB was, it really blew my mind. And every year, you know, it seems to get bigger and more exciting. The technology is, you know, continuing at an amazing pace. It's great to see how technology from around the world makes its way into media and entertainment and we're no exception here how we incorporate and just sort of absorb everything that's happening from AI and IP and cloud and networking. So, yeah. It's so what keeps you coming back, Telos coming back, in terms of why you come back at here? And are there any success stories that you wouldn't mind sharing? Yeah, there are dozens of success stories. I mean, I can't even count how many new products we launched at NAB to great fanfare, getting the awards, getting customers to come by. The first question every customer comes into the booth is, hey, what do you guys have that's new that year? And that's kind of our reputation, you know, in terms of innovating, always pushing the limits. So, you know, we've got our virtual cloud-based intercom system that's actually being part used as part of the uh, NAB Live production system. Uh, this year, brand new, we're demonstrating our Deja Vu upmixer. So this is something that in real time, you put stereo audio in of any kind, it upmixes it live to 5.1. So we're uh, showing that we've got a lot of interest in that one here. Virtual mixing consoles for remote production. I mean, the, the list just goes on and on. So. Well, thank you for being here. And I would say for, for, for us veterans, right? Yeah. What is your game plan of tackling a show like this? Like, is there like the day before, are you looking at every, where you need to be, all your meetings, or what is your game plan? No, it starts months. Basically, our planning for NAB starts the day after NAB ends. So it takes wow. all year. And, you know, Lindsay, our trade show and event coordinator here is unbelievable. And that's really the secret. It's not so much what we do, it's the people that we have that actually understand the flow. They can work, they can organize a team full of crazy engineers and salespeople and executives like me, keep us in line. And like I said, her year starts the day after the show closes and she works all year to get us ready. So we've already got booth lined up for next year, already talking about what products we're gonna be launching next year because you know, in the world of technology, it can take a year to create a new product. So, yep, we're already thinking about next year. Amazing. My last thing then is, what are you most excited about NAB Show this year? Well, honestly, this is the first year that I got to go see the Devoncroft presentation. So bringing the information from the customers who present at Devoncroft back to our company, that was eye-opening for me. And that's I've not been in a position in the past to go absorb that. So that, and then just the excitement that the customers get when they come into our booth and they listen to the 5.1 demo or they watch a demonstration of virtual intercom. I mean, those are probably the highlights this year. So. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Scott. Thank you for your time. Thank you all for right. rushing all the way from West Hall yeah, back no here to be on NAB Show Live. Thank you, Elon Musk. <laughs> 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 and um, yeah, enjoy the rest of your NAB Show. All right. Thank you very much. Thank it was you. a pleasure. Thank you, Scott. All right, we have Mike Nan, Strategic Marketing at Madgewell. We know this guy for a long time. Hey, Ryan, how you doing? Great to see you again. Great, great seeing you, sir. So let's talk about what you're showing off at the show. That's fantastic. So first new product here. One of the things is Madgewell's really known for a lot of these, you know, little gizmos, the bricks like this. You know, simple converters, throw them down, they just work. Yep. But as IP networking and IP production has become, you know, more and more popular, there's a lot more large-scale productions going on, a lot more large-scale deployments. Yep. People want higher density, and they want you know in a rack mount form factor and so forth. So first thing we announced for the show is this platform. It's called Monitor, and it takes exactly this functionality of all these bricks, but into a blade-based form factor. So it's a 2RU server. You can put it right into a rack, redundant power supplies, everything you would expect. Populate it with exactly the modules you need, HDMI to NDI, and so forth. Wow, so it's basically 10 of those in this rack space, which exactly. Tim are had engineer is probably freaking out right now. Probably. Yeah, well, he can come on down and see one when you let him out of the, out of the studio, right? Yeah. right? But the whole idea is, too, I mean, these are this is designed for 24-7 operation. So, you know, we have people who are running, you know, 20 channels of SRT and need to decode it or that sort of thing, or 10 channels of NDI encoded. Yep. 
Hot 2RU touchscreen interface for monitoring the status of the device. You can control it through a web-based interface, or we have our control hub management software. All the same functionality people love, low latency performance, reliability, new form factor for it. So, so you, I, li I literally see little graphics of cards. They light up different colors or something? Those are the cards that are active in the system. I mean, you hope it's not going to light up red, obviously, because right. that could mean a problem, which we don't like to have, obviously. Right. But that's the whole idea behind it, is it will give you the status of the cards as you're going, which are live, which ones are doing. Fantastic. Okay, great. So one other thing I really want to show you, though, I think this is pretty exciting over here, is our director yep. mini production system. Sure, we'll get to go over there right now. There we go. Yeah, this is pretty impressive. So this has been one of the stars of the show for us, and we announced it back in September, actually, at IBC. Since then, we've done two major firmware updates to it. Director Mini, you know, it's the size of a really fat cell phone. You know, it needs to lose some weight. But it's a full all-in-one production system. So switching up to 10 inputs, you can take in HDMI, USB, NDI, SRT, all those uh, mobile phone inputs. You it said does. 10, so is there like a breakout cable or something? Not at all. So there's two HDMI inputs on it, two USB inputs. Then it takes three IP inputs, which can be any combination of NDI, SRT, or RTMP. And you can connect three phones to it and use their cameras as sources as well. Amazing. So on top of all of that, you know, obviously switching right from within the touchscreen interface. It has built-in graphics and CGs, so you can do scoreboards, and you can control the scoreboard from your cell phone. You can be having one guy increment the scoreboard, another guy controlling the graphics on his phone. You literally have a video switcher and a, and a cell phone. It, exactly. Basically. And can stream all the popular platforms, YouTube, Facebook Live, etc. NDI outputs, SRT outputs as a contribution feed, everything all in one box. Excellent. Monitoring, um, we got control surfaces for it. This is one from XKeys. Uh, we just did a major software up firmware upgrade to it, uh, added instant replay. So dual channel instant replay for sports. It can take HTML graphics from Scoreboard Live and so forth, um, integration with various cameras, you name it. It's in this box. So I'm real curious because we might have a use for instant replay back at Broadcast Beat Studios. Yep. Can you just elaborate on the on the instant replay a little bit? Like, is there, a, is it can it continue to record and you can roll back and how many seconds can you roll back? So you can configure it exactly how long you want to be able to buffer to roll back to. So you can have two channels recording all the time, but you know we normally set it to about 10 seconds for a replay. You can set that longer if you want to be able to. You can also set increments and speeds as a default so that when you do the replay, it can be playing back in slow-mo instead or at high speed. Wow. And you can be doing two playing back both replays side by side at the same time if you want to. So if you have two camera angles of a goal or a, foot, a touchdown or that sort of thing, it can yeah. be playing them both back simultaneously with the stinger transition that then cuts back to the live feed. Fantastic, Mike. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. All right. Well, Mike Nan, Strategic Marketing here at uh, Madwell in uh, Central Hall. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ryan. Always great to see you. Thanks very much. You too. Off to you guys. All right. Well, I am here right now with Donna, and Donna is the Managing Director of RISE. And I am just so thrilled that we're getting a chance to talk to you because RISE is doing so much important work uh, with women in media and technology. So can you talk a little bit about RISE and what the program is all about? So RISE is a not-for-profit and we support women in broadcast, media and entertainment. Um, we have an award-winning mentorship program that we host globally um, starting in June of this year. Um, and that's in all of our territories, North America, Europe, APAC and India and hopefully the Middle East. Wow. And South America, I'm hoping. That will probably be next year, but they're the chapters that we want to launch this year. That is so fantastic. And I have spoken to so many women who are here at NAB saying, one, they were either part of the mentoring program, or two, they just like will stop me and be like, can you please make sure that I can be part of the mentoring yeah. program? Because I think they just realize how valuable that is. Um, but we, you also have a booth. This is, I think, one of the first years that yeah. you have a booth at NAB. So yeah. can you talk a little bit about the booth that we have? So we were really fortunate that NAB gave us the floor space and then our amazing partners, DCE Agency and Think Logistics, were happy to provide us the booth and all the logistics that go with it. So we have a 300 square foot booth um, in the West Hall, 4500. It's amazing. It captures um, the spirit of RISE and our community. So there's lots of our smiling faces on the walls of the booth. We've got amazing footage of all the events that we've been running in the last six to 12 months. Um, good giveaways. Can, yeah, I was going to say, can you please talk about 
this is what I think is really fun about one of the things that you're doing at the booth are the emergency kits. Oh, yeah. Because I think we can all relate to these emergency kits and use them. So please tell us what is in the emergency kits that anybody can go access whatever they want. So in our emergency kits, we have uh, sanitary towels, we have safety pins, blister plasters, regular band-aids, hair brushes, um, sewing kits, um, hair bubbles, uh, just so many things. Oh, uh, a Kate's um, energy bar that we donated by Kate's um, food this year, uh, just so that people can keep their blood sugars balanced this year while they're running around and maybe can't grab anything to eat. Um, and so, yeah, when you've got a blister or we've had so many people come, oh, I've got a blister. And I'm like, we've got just a thing for you. Uh, last year, someone was about to go on stage and do a presentation and their skirt button had popped open. So we came to the rescue with one of our pins. So, yeah, they're just fabulous. They're really good. And people like really use them. So I think we made up 200 um, for this show and already we're down to like less than half. So they're oh definitely God. used and needed. Oh, that's so great. Yeah, it's so funny because I think you gave them out at IBC as well. And I brought my kit home, of course, and uh, my daughter loves the hairbrush with the little mirror inside of it, and she refuses to use any other hairbrush except for that one. So that is my little shout out to how amazing. I should probably give a big shout out to Iron Mountain because they sponsored us this year. So uh, they paid for the emergency kits for this show. So that was really sweet of them. Yeah. And then you're also doing a lot in terms of wellness programs. And so you did something today, this morning, I believe, right? Which was too early for me. Um, but I, I admire the people who actually showed up and we saw some of the pictures. So talk a little bit about the wellness program that you're doing. So we've got a women's health program that we launched in January. Um, and one of the things that we're looking at is um, holistic view for women um, in the workplace. And so what that looks like, mind, body, and soul. So to be productive at work, you obviously have to have you know good energy, good health, good mental health, um, and so we run um, an online group once a month for women. We talk about menopause, pregnancies, fertility, um, just general health, um, how you can look after yourself mentally and physically. And one of the things that we thought about for this show was obviously a lot of people travel internationally to NAB, jet lag, you know, always constantly on the go. How can we support women? And we were very fortunate to have Wellness and Care agree to fly in and host this event for us. So Laurie and Claudia came in this morning and hosted a beautiful session. There was stretching, there was resistance bands, there was lots of herbal teas, and it was just a really lovely session. Everybody said that they really appreciated it, got lots of hints and tips about how to stay well and stretch and work out, you know, even if it's just five, 10 minutes before a show or, you know, a big conference or meeting. So it was just really lovely, and we're hoping to grow that side of Rise more and more this year. Yeah. And I think, you know, I know you started at Rise last year, right? I believe last year. Was it last year? Yeah. Has it been a full year yet? No. (laughs) But I have to say, you know, I've been involved in it for about two years now. And I am so grateful for you, Donna. And I am so grateful for all of the people that you bring together. And... um, um, I've met so many great friends, you and I, <laughs> I was in the Zoo Suite, <laughs> but I just, I, I just, those women that you have brought together are just so special, and you have just been so committed to that global vision, and I'm so grateful for that, so thank you for everything that you do. <laughs> so sweet no I mean it's an honor and a privilege I say to everybody it's a huge responsibility I feel you know the weight of it on me you know day in and day out to deliver for women in the industry and make sure that they're heard they're seen they're supported and one of the amazing pieces of feedback that we've had this year is that Rise is their safe space and it's it it is an incredible privilege to be able to be that for such a large group of women and you know we just want more and more women to join our community and feel supported by us well so how can people join rise how can they become members so they can come to our booth and scan our qr code and sign up for our free membership um they can go to our website and sign up there um but we need sponsors i'm going to just put that out there we really need sponsors we're completely sponsor funded um we don't have rise if we don't have sponsors i know it's been a really tough time for the industry this year you know and there's you know, there's been a lot of budgetary cuts, but, you know, if you're passionate about women in the industry and getting more women into the industry and, 
you know, you want diversity in your organisation to add to the richness of it. Please consider supporting Rise, you know, it just it means so much. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's great. And also Rise has a job board, too, um, that I want to plug because I think that's important also is just, you know, making sure that people understand that there's a place that they can go that is supporting women and supporting women in tech. So, um, but yes, yeah, sirs, we need sponsors for Rise <laughs> to keep it going and to keep your global expansion vision exactly. going um, because it's so beneficial for so many people. So anyway, thank you so much, Donna. Thank you for everything that you're doing and thank you. And I am going to, uh, we're going to go to a break. Welcome back to the NAB Show live stream. I'm Paul Richards with the Stream Geeks, and I'm joined with Dan Pizarski, one of my good friends. Absolutely. With LiveView. LiveView is an incredible company that's providing cellular buying technologies for live streaming. Just chatting with Dan, he was telling me we've got updates to LiveView Studio, your cloud-based product, the field units, and some of the ingress stuff. But let's start with the LiveView Studio. Tell me about this new product. Sure. So Studio is our full production system in the cloud. It's true cloud software, cloud first, and uh, cloud native software. The new features in it is the ability to inject SCUDI 35 markers. So now you can trigger advertising from right in the studio as you're doing your live production. And the ability to synchronize multiple feeds frame accurately so that you can do true frame accurate switching in the cloud with Studio and with LiveView units as a source. Wow, I'm such a big fan of that. What has the cloud really done for your customers? I mean, the cloud is a elastic enabler, right? It's the ability to take on capacity that you don't have to capital purchase hardware for, rack it up in a van, rack it up in the studio. You can take on 10 productions one day, one, one production the next, and have that elastic capability to deal with that. That's really what the cloud offers. And the cloud works seamlessly with all of your field units. You've got your LU300, you've got the new LU800. What are the new features for these products? So new features on the field units include that ability to send the time code information, NTP timestamps in the stream, let you synchronize it in studio or in other software if that's what you happen to be using. So that's now available on the units, plus a new transmission mode that's meant specifically for cases where you're taking a live unit, plugging it into dedicated bandwidth. You're not always using bonded cellular. Sometimes you do have access to fiber drop and you just need an encoder to do that. You can now put it in a special transmission mode that does 0.3 seconds delay and maximum bandwidth for that kind of dedicated bandwidth mode. Dedicated wow. drop. So that's like uh, 300 milliseconds or less. Yes, that's correct. That's incredible. That's like real time practically. Yeah. So you're doing all this, plus you've got all of your, you got a few new products for the storage? That's right. So LiveView ingest, which is the ability to take every one of your LiveView feeds and have that recorded in the cloud in a cyclical recording format so that you have seven days or whatever time period you pick of all of the content coming in. You can choose which of that content and then move on to your MAM system, your uh, NRCS system, wherever else you're, you're bringing that content to, and use that seven-day buffer as a window to look into it and say, well, this is the content we want to keep. It's the content that we don't really need, so we don't want to burden our MAM with you know, that storage and, and just get rid of it. Uh, and we now have direct integration with Mimir and Dina on that. Um, integration with BitCentral on, on Ingest as well. It's really, we really call it LiveView Ingest 2.0, even though it's a very new product for us, because there's so many additional features all packed into one release that we thought it was a, a major new release for that product. Wow. I, it's really impressive what you're doing. Let me ask you about the NAB show in general. Do you have a special memory at NAB, or tell us about like, what it's meant to you to be here at the show. I mean, we always, every year we come, we always compare like how, all, everybody at the company. How, how many NABs is this for you? We relive some of the old stories. It's just such a great show to reconnect with this whole industry. It's like seeing all your old friends. Plus, you're here doing business and showing off the new products and talking to all your customers. But you're running into those friends that are customers and friends that are partners and just the place to be. It's the centerpiece of the industry, bro. Really. It's like a big family here. We hope you're enjoying it. Uh, if you have, have, are not able to make it here at the showroom floor, at least they can watch the live stream. But definitely come check it out here in Las Vegas. This is the biggest video production and live streaming broadcast show in the world. And we are just having a blast here. Oh, all right. So we are back. We are live. <laughs> 
And I am here with Carla, who is another person from Rise. And Carla, can you please tell us what you do with Rise? I am, it's a bit of a mouthful, the Global Program Mentor and Manager for Rise. Oh, that's so great. <laughs> and so Donna just spoke to us about all of the different territories that you're covering. And so do you have mentoring programs in all of those territories? We do. We have a, we have a mentoring program, an active mentoring program in each of those. So it's absolutely amazing, yeah. That's so fantastic. And I'm a little bit biased because I also uh, <laughs> coordinate the uh, mentoring program for North America. So this is also a subject that's very near and dear to my heart. But I'm so grateful for all of your work because you just really are this glue with all of these different territories. And I know it's a lot of people to manage and a lot of people to encourage. Um, but how did you come to RISE and what was important to you in terms of joining RISE? I had a 25-year industry career in film, TV, and music. Um, love that. Had a bit of a values change, had a family, things changed for me. And I retrained as a life coach and a NLP practitioner. Um, and having a look at what was important to me, it was about people, my clients, my teams. Um, and I love bringing people together. I was invited to go along to a Rise Networking event um, to be a mentor. That's what that sounds great. Um, I do a lot of advocate work with women. And a couple of weeks later, I was the Rise um, Program Mentoring Manager. So I still do my coaching work. I still have my own business. But I couldn't say no. I came away knowing that I was going to be involved. I didn't quite know how big I was going to be involved. Um, but I just couldn't say no. I love Rise. It's been a year and it's the best decision I made. I love that. Oh, that's so fantastic. And so you're based out of London or where are you based? I'm based out of London as well, yeah. Okay, yeah. great. And we were talking earlier, and this is not your first NAB. Um, you've been here before. There were, it's actually interesting because I spoke to, I've spoken to a lot of people today, and they've said that this is their first NAB. And so it's been kind of cool just to hear that take, but it's also been cool to hear like the different takes, uh, you know, from people who've been before. And so, what are you finding different or new or cool or same of NAB this year? I think people are curious. They're curious to find out about each other. Um, they're definitely curious to find out about buys. And we're not selling. We're not here with the products and pushing it. And people want to get involved. And we've had a lot of men on the stand. And they've heard about buys. They want to know how they can be involved. And I think that curiosity. Um, there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of sort of bleeding out into different parts of the industry, so not just for Rise. So that curiosity and that friendliness and just walking along, people checking out your badges and asking what you do. So I think that's been a massively positive thing for me. I love that. I love that because I think that curiosity, whether or not we're looking at it from like a tech perspective, or if we're looking at it from how do you make a stronger workplace, all of that, how do you be more inclusive? I think it does start with curiosity. And so I just love that. I love that. That is something that you mentioned. Um, and so you go back to London tomorrow? <laughs> tomorrow. It's been a long time. Someone said to me, um, one day in Vegas equates to a week. So that means I've been here for seven weeks. <laughs> I love that. I've never heard that before, but I love it. But I think that's so true. It's so true, right? So I'm like on week one, I think, right now, which does, yeah, it feels kind of like it. Um, but thank you so much, Carla. Thank you for everything that you do for Rise. And it was so wonderful talking with you. And we are going to go back to a break. All right. Ryan Salazar here in Central with Stephen Manos at Manos Digital. How you doing, sir? Hi, I'm doing great, thanks. We're actually now Cartoni USA. Oh, um, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I've known him for about 10 years, and that's yeah, how I yeah. know you. We've known each other a while, but Elizabeth the Cartoni and the Cartoni factory bought me out last year. Excellent. It was a fantastic deal for both of us. It great. expands, um, gives better service out here of the Cartoni brand. Fantastic. So let's talk about what Cartoni's showing off this year. Okay. So new this year is an extension of our Lifto that we introduced last year. Mm -hmm. It's a PTZ-controlled system that you can now work riser through your Panasonic mount with adjustable speeds. I see we're rising there. Come over. It's incredibly smooth. Yeah, yeah you can basically shoot on stroke with, whoops, let's go there, live TV. You can basically shoot on stroke and you can see up there as we're pointing up that there's no real jitter in that whatsoever. Oh, no. the, the Lifto 25 twin works with Panasonic protocol and Sony protocol. So you can actually operate both pan, tilt, and 
the PTZ through your Panasonic, Panasonic controller. Fantastic. And the next thing you're, you're going to show off here. For the digital cinematographer out there, the Cartoni Focus 22 head, which has been extremely popular in the broadcast field and some of the independent content creation, mm -hmm. has now branched out into what we call the film style. It's a larger plate that is based similar to what Aeroflex okay. and all the other companies use. So you can basically just pop it off of our system. Live TV again. There we go. Gotcha. And mount it directly to a, a sled, like oh, a, right. like a um, some kind of a over-the-shoulder rig or whatever. Yeah, or yeah. like Steadicam right. onto a larger head. Right. The Focus 22 holds up to six, 56 pounds. It has infinite counterbalance, infinite fluid drag. The Cartoni heads all carry a five-year warranty. So this head includes a five-year warranty. Excellent. And you've got this other one over here. So now this came out of the um, sports inquiry, inquired. A lot of the NFL teams, a lot of the sport teams train indoors, and they have the catwalks up on top. And what was happening was they are getting tired of carrying their tripods up and down these narrow walks. So the Cartoni came out what we call the rail clamp system. It clamps on anywhere, 100 millimeter, 75 millimeter ball base. And now you just have to take your camera up with you. They leave it. Oh, well, that's super slick how it's all put together. Very nice. So we had a wildlife photographer see this. He went gaga over it. And next thing you know, he's out in the tundra and he's mounting it to his car. He's mounting it to tree posts. To yeah, trees. you could literally mount this to a physical tree. It's yeah. like these two teeth are, are yeah. clamps, basically. So you're able to mount it to anything out there. And um, we're just seeing that now the skaters saw it at the show. And they're loving it because they can, they can get really creative with it. You can also mount it upside down if you're using PTZs off, off of a um, post. And then we also have extension rods if needed. These are kind of like the three new products that we've done at NAB. And then we've also now ventured in encoded heads, which we're doing over here. Yeah, let's take a look yeah. at that real quick. Okay. That's a pretty awesome setup. So this is what we call the e-jibbo. It's a jib arm with encoders built in. So now you can get with encoded heads here, all six axis with up to 4 million. Um... My brain just froze, sorry about that. No problem, yeah. it's super impressive. Yeah, so anyway, yeah, you get 4 million readings per turn. So it's extremely accurate for panels and for green screens. Sam Nicholson up at Stargate, who's the videos up there, has been testing this and our um, encoded um, e-head and has been very, very happy with the results and actually been using it in his features. Yeah. We're seeing this encoded market exploding over the next couple of years. I think we're still in our infancy of using panels and um, encoded products. Fantastic. I know Sam Nicholson from a couple of years back. Uh, he, this guy does some serious stuff. Yes, he does. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Stephen Manos uh, at Artoni. Uh, great to have you. It's always a pleasure, and you've always got something cool to show off. Okay. Thank you very much. Great seeing you guys. All have right. Show. Tossing it back to the show. Good morning, and welcome to the first day of NAB show. It's opening day, and I could not think of a better booth to highlight than Nikon with everything that's going on. I'm here with Mark Cruz. How are you today? Awesome. I'm excited to be here. How many NAB shows have you been at, by the way? A few, a few, but this is the most exciting in recent memory. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So I'm just gonna say it because it's been the elephant in the room. I just, you know, I'm new with Nikon as well. I also, you know, talk to my friends over at Red and then MRMC, but we see Nikon in the past as primarily, I've seen at least, as a photography still images. So the acquisition now with Red and MRMC into the video game, like, can you tell us a little bit more what can you share about that well usually I'd come in a, in a Nikon shirt but today I'm wearing Nikon MRMC and red these are all companies that are part of now of the Nikon family as of a few days ago uh, we've uh, completed uh, a wholly uh, a
completed an acquisition that made Red a wholly owned subsidiary of Nikon. And what that means is that uh, they're now part of the Nikon family. They're here today um, at NAB. NAB is really uh, talking about broadcasting, but we're also uh, here talking about the cinema solutions that uh, we're now offering through the Nikon group of families. Um, MRMC is, it doesn't stand for Mr. Mark Cruz or uh, M <laughs> Mr. MC. I know, I've this been calling Mark, it Mr. MC. This is Mark Robertson, Mark Roberts Motion Control. And um, they have uh, several products for broadcast. They also have some Cine uh, Bolt products at the, t at the front of the hall here that we can see afterwards. And we've been working with them for a while on their broadcast solutions. Very innovative, very high end. And it's something that it's a core competency that we at Nikon didn't have. As you said, our uh, reputation has been more with the steels industry, and that's fair, but we've come a long way of recent in creating mirrorless cameras for the creators, photographers, and videographers. Now with our NRAW format, with the Z8 and Z9, and that X Speed 7 platform that we're showcasing here, it's been a really great uh, format in the last couple of years to reach out to the creator community, and with a smaller agile but powerful platform of the of the NRA in these cameras. But now speaking of the elephant in the room, as you mentioned, with the acquisition of RED, we can really expand the core competencies of RED and their sensor development technology, namely their global sensor technology that they've just introduced uh, now into the V-Raptor and the V-Raptor XL and uh, further have synergies between the core competencies of Nikon, their processor development, their user interface, as well as their optics expertise, and really make a, a strong market um, with these two companies. Gotcha, and I love that you said that. It's a synergy. I think a lot of the filmmaking and the content creator community that I'm looking at, they're like, what's going to happen? I think we are all able to let everyone Every company do what they do, and it's a synergy, as you say. Yeah, you know, uh, for those people looking out there, uh, Red is going to continue to be Red. Um, uh, they're not going to change. They're gonna, we're going to continue to support their service and distribution, and even the name is going to remain the same. Their products are going to remain the same. So um, I want everybody to know that um, that Red's going to be Red, but going forward, um, it's going to be. A stronger relationship because Nikon has things uh, in their expertise that can be leveraged in the cinema community in the future. So we're looking forward. Can't tell too much of what's going to happen in the future. It's going to take a few years to really develop something unique. But um, this is the start of that something special. I love that. And like I will say that I am finally utilizing Nikon myself as video, and it's stunning. I'm talking the Z8, ZF. What can you tell us about this? This is the ZF. This is it right here. It's incredible. And from what my understanding was, is beyond the flip screen option, it still has the same powerful processing engine as the Z8 and the Z9. Yeah, that's really the, the breakthrough for our last three cameras, I would say, the Z9, the Z8, as well as the ZF, having that new X-Speed 7 processor. It's about 10 times faster than the previous generation, so it gives us better autofocusing, um, more faster frame rates uh, as far as video goes we can do much more things with video now um, you know longer record times and so on and so forth so um, as you said uh, with the Z8 it's really the Z9 in a smaller body and the, the breakthrough with those two formats uh, those two cameras rather is that it has internal raw um, the great thing about the ZF um, in addition to its sort of heritage styling and its build is that it can also with the XP7 and it can do internal 10-bit um, and log, you know. Uh, it doesn't do raw in this. Um, it's not the same sensor technology uh, as the Z8 and Z9, but that new processor, we can do so much more things internally. As you were saying, you're sort of a, a one-person band when it comes to uh, shooting. That's a great thing about uh, these formats is you don't need an external recorder going out just to capture things like 10-bit yes. or, or raw. Um, in the case of the Z8 and Z9, you can do raw internally. Here you can do 10-bit internally. You have a flip-out screen so you can monitor yourself right from this camera. So, yeah, really exciting stuff coming out of this. Um, and it works. A, uh, we have a lot of great partnerships with Small Rig and creating just, you know, just the, the supports for it. Um, so a lot of interesting stuff just from the Nikon mirrorless platform in this booth. Oh, I love it. Thank you for giving us an overview. But I'm just saying in you and your role, what is the role that you play at Nikon and what makes you so excited about what Nikon is doing? 
So I'm a um, senior manager at uh, Nikon USA. I generally look after the marketing portion and the launching of the new products, bringing them to market uh, whenever we have new products. What's exciting for me is the breadth of new products that we're delivering. Since I started with Nikon USA, um, we've had almost on average a product launch every month uh, on average. Um, that's because of the rapid expansion that they're building with the Z system. The Z system basically started from scratch in 2018 and since then we have I think over 40 lenses now um, that are in production and many more on the way and so that's really exciting because the powerful format of the Z mount system means that we can have lenses and optics that are way better resolution than um, things in the past. So I'm really excited about that. I'm really excited about the direction that they're taking with their processor and sensor development and oh, couple that with the traditional Nikon ergonomics. I think that's why people like Nikon in general, it has a soul to it. I think whether you're capturing stills, whether you're capturing a video, just the interaction between Nikon and their products, we're really delivering on tech, but really delivering on an experience as well. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Mark, for giving us all the insight and even speaking as much as you did about the acquisition. Congratulations on everything. I'm so excited to see what's going forth. And my last thing before tossing it over to my co-host, Sharif, in another hall, um, any ritual that you do personally to get ready for a big show like this? Ritual? Uh, coffee, that's one. Uh, <laughs> good night rest and uh, a lot of push-ups the day before. Get the blood flowing. There you go. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Mark, thank you. for your time. This has been Nikki Sun with NAB Show Live. And we are back, and I am at the Ross booth, and I am so excited to be here today with Karen and Christine. And uh, what's cool is that we are actually standing on their stage that they have constructed for NAB booth. Um, and so can you talk a little bit about what you're showing off here today? Yeah, definitely. So today we um, we spent the last few years working on this little robot behind me. Um, so oh, a robot. Oh, it's yeah, it's so cool. So, well, when I say we, I mean more my team have been working on this. I'm just taking all the credit for it. Uh, but my team have been amazing. They've developed this robot, so completely ready and ready for the market. Uh, it answers a lot of the customer problems. So, yeah, and we've had some really positive and good feedback from customers. And did the robot have a name? Was that what you were about to say? Well, it's called Artimo, so, okay. uh, which is kind of after my dad but I haven't told him that because I'll never be able to speak to him again so <laughs> so yeah so it, his name's Artimo it's all about art in motion and how it moves and it's smooth and things like that very cool very cool and Christine you're with Ross as well you both are with Ross and what are you excited about is it the robot as well or we have so many products that we're showing today. Robot, for sure, is exciting. Um, we are launching Dante support in our Ultrix router, which has been a huge ask for customers. Um, and now we have it. Um, we're launching our NDI switcher, which has, again, been a huge ask for customers, as well as other NDI integrations. So, yeah, it's pretty exciting to be able to talk to customers and offer them what they've been asking for this whole time. Well, I mean, Based on this turnout here, which you can't see behind you, but there are so many people on your booth, so I think you're doing pretty well with the products that you're showing off and the demand. So this is not your first NAB, right? Neither of you. Karen Karen and I actually did an NAB, a couple NABs together uh, once upon a time. And, uh, but, and Christine, it's not your first NAB either. So what are you finding is different or the same of this year's NAB? Um, I found so I've had a little wander around, and I found some of, the, well, particularly you know, some people that I know. Um, there's not that many revolutionary new things. There's still a lot of talk about AI um, and, and where that's going to go and what people want to do with that. And I think people are more comfortable with AI, so they're kind of coming out with more ideas and things. Um, so I've been talking to people about AI and cloud. Uh, that's kind of probably the two main things that have come to me, and yeah. obviously my robot. <laughs> obviously a robot. Obviously. Yeah, I, I don't know that, like, like uh, Karen said, that there's anything that I've seen that's been, you know, I think is going to be a game changer. But again, like a lot of feature updates and things that just make the products that are out there more usable for, you know, existing workflows for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, I do think that AI is obviously part of the conversation, but in terms of like the workflows and cloud, I think that's where we're starting to see some of that, right? Is how is that being integrated um, and really making that more efficient workflow? Is there any AI in the robot at all? 
There's not any AI in the robot, but we do have, a, a, so initially it was facial tracking, but we now we're launching here body tracking as well. So, um, so yes, we do have AI that works with all our robots, so yeah. Can you talk about the body tracking? Yeah, we can. So, uh, so we, we teach our AI on faces, so it's not recognition as such. Um, so what we've done now is, is toss it on bodies, and the idea there is that we have a virtual head. So the scenario, somebody's walking across the stage and their head is obscured or their face is obscured for some reason, so therefore they lose the tracking. That's kind of what happens. So, But in this new uh, 2.0 release, we now do the tracking, so it has, places a virtual head there. So even if your head is obscured, it, will, it assumes your head is still connected, so it will still go in the same direction. So when your head comes back into the shot, it'll automatically find it and it still continues to track you in the frame that you wanted it to be in. Wow, that's fantastic. That's actually really cool, right? I mean, that's fun. Unless and it's... you find a headless person, obviously <laughs> that's not so much fun. <laughs> that would not be fun. <laughs> But I think that tracking, you know, and just kind of as we see what new media platforms are coming out and the way that you're consuming content, I think tracking is going to become so integral into that workflow. And so even though, you know, you're looking at it from like that production standpoint, I think when we look at it in post and what is actually going to be consumed by the customer, um, you know, the user at home, we are going to see more tracking kind of applied to it to kind of create more of an experience for, you know, people. So Christine, so what are you, what are you liking about the show this year? I mean, everybody who's coming in has been super excited. We, we were kind of laughing yesterday, first day of the show, just to see the, the number of people, you know, running to be on the show floor and be first and see those new products. So it's really nice to see everybody, you know, really coming back to the show and, and, and getting really engaged with, you know, the industry in general. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's true. And I think one of the things, too, that I've noticed is that it does feel to be more global again this year, which is exciting. I think last year, you know, there was more of that return to NAB, but now we're even seeing even more of that from all parts. All right. No, definitely. Uh, and I would definitely say, you know, like from a European contingent, we've, we've seen a significant, I had to do an interview in German, but that was entertaining because I can't speak German. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so you're right. We are seeing a lot of, you know, more of a global audience coming in. So yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for speaking with us today. Uh, we're just so excited to be able to see a robot in person and on the floor and see some of that tracking. Really looking forward to seeing that in action. So we're going to go to a quick break. Here I am today in the South Hall Lower at PTZ Optics booth with Paul Richards, the Chief Revenue Officer of PTZ Optics. Hi, Paul. Hi, Des. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, no problem. Always happy to be with you. How's the show going? <laughs> it's great. We are here um, showing off a, a variety of new products. Our brand new PTZ Optics Move SE, which is our entry level 1080p PTC camera with built-in auto tracking. We've won several awards for this camera because it has everything that PTZ Optics customers love but built into a modern interface where we have auto tracking, we have auto framing, we have group tracking, a lot of great features and with a five-year warranty and we've just been listening to our customers and building all of the things that they've asked for. With the Move 4K cameras, our kind of higher-end 4K models, we are doing some really interesting things. While some cameras require like a software to do auto tracking, we've built auto tracking directly into the cameras. And the 4K cameras can track up to 300 feet away. Wow. These cameras we're building in directly to the joystick controllers. So the joysticks here can control the PTZ cameras. And uh, I want to show quickly how easy it is to uh, launch an auto track. So what I'm going to do, Tess, I'm going to try to auto track you. Um, so here we go. I'm going to click one button on the joystick to start auto tracking. And essentially, it's got you right there. You can see on the screen, we've got a box around Tess. And what this is telling us is that the camera itself is ready to track Tess. So I'll go ahead and select you. And you can go ahead and just do a little walkabout. You're going to have to walk with me. Oh, because you know, I'll let you out. You take it then. OK, so this is going to auto track me, supposedly. So up oh, there we go. I'm moving around and the camera is following me and that's pretty darn seamless. All right, that's so cool. 
So auto tracking is a big deal, but the biggest thing that we're offering this year is the PTC Optics Hive. So I want to take you guys over here really quickly and show you our brand new cloud-based video production software. This is PTZ Optics Hive. We've taken a video production system and a PTZ system and made it so that you can share access with anyone in the world just by clicking a button. It's as easy as sharing a Google Doc. Whether you're on the local area network or whether you're anywhere in the world, you can just type the person's email address in and determine whether they want to be a camera operator, a producer, or just a viewer of all your cameras. The other thing we've done is we've really changed what it means to have pan, tilt, zoom control. I really think this is the next level of PTZ control. What I'm going to show you here is called fast frame. And what you can do, if you can, can you see this on the screen here? What you can do is you can just select an area of the screen, click it, and the camera will go exactly there. With a pan, tilt, zoom joystick, you got to pan, you got to tilt, you got to zoom, you kind of got to steer it to a specific location. With this, you can literally look at an entire baseball field, pick a specific spot, click a button, and the camera's gonna go there. So this is the PTZ Optics Hive. It's currently launched here at NAB. We'll be doing a beta for about a month and a half, and any of our customers can try it for free. There will always be a free option. Great. So it will always be free for one camera. It will be $50 a month for three cameras and $145 a month for unlimited cameras. So we're really interested to get everyone signed up for the beta so you guys can get access to it. So if you're using PTZ cameras, this is not just for PTZ optics. This will work with Sony, Panasonic, Canon. It works with 400 different cameras and we support direct camera drivers. So this is not just basic pan, tilt, zoom. We support all of the iris, the shutter speed, the color correction in all of these tools to give you a seamless experience that you can share throughout the world and really just revolutionize what it means to be a PTZ camera operator. Now tell me, you've been at NAB for how, NAB for how many years? So this would be, our company is celebrating our 10 year anniversary. And I'm gonna say this is probably about eight years of NAB for me. What's your favorite memory from NAB? So my favorite memory from NAB is when you start to have people coming back to the booth and giving you recognition for saying, wow, you got a bigger booth this year. Wow, you're legitimate. And so by being here at NAB, customers really can see that we're a serious company. We've been in business for 10 years. We're here to stay. And NAB is, a, is kind of a testament to that, where our customers can come here and shake our hands and realize that we're here to do real business. We are not just an online company. We're real people solving real problems for real customers. And where can people learn more about PTZ Optics? So you can go to ptzoptics.com. All right, thank you so much. This has been Paul Richards from PTZ Optics, live from the NAB Show. Welcome back to NAB Show Live. I'm Tess Protesta with the Stream Geeks here at one of the most highly anticipated booths at the NAB Show Live, Black Magic Design. I'm here with Bob. He's the Director of Sales for the Americas at, at uh, Black Magic Design. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing good. It's been a great show. A lot of energy so far, right? Oh, totally. Yeah, it's great to see all the people back. Yep. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about Black Magic Design. I know you have a wide array of products. We do. Um, we added a lot of different products uh, in our ATEM area. We added a couple of new ATEM constellation, 1ME and 2ME, and all, also a micro panel in Resolve. DaVinci Resolve 19 went out in beta the other day, uh, in, including we have some new hardware for that. We have a new micro color panel for people that are using iPads or whatever. And uh, we also added uh, some new Simply 2110 products, so you can actually do remote monitoring, monitoring by you know using 10 gig Ethernet and moving uh, signals around, turning them back into SDI or HDMI depending on what you're monitoring in. Uh, we also have a new router there. We have a new big router, 120 by 120 inputs. Uh, we also added two new cameras though. Uh, yeah, a new Pixis 6K camera. That's a new box camera that we uh, introduced in three different mounts, uh, L mount, uh, EF mount, and PL mount. And then we have the new uh, Blackmagic Ursa Cine 12K camera. That is a completely new design. It has Wi-Fi built in, 10 gig Ethernet port. It's, uh, it, it records up to 12K on, uh, on our new um, media module that goes into a new media dock, and you can record on uh, 
eight terabytes or 16 terabyte uh, modules. And uh, it all, they all record uh, both Blackmagic RAW as well as proxies at the same time. And you connect them through our cloud service so they can move the files directly to the editor while you're still shooting. So you have a cloud service now. Tell me a little bit more about that. So the Blackmagic cloud service has been out. And we, what we do is we're able to allow people to move files through the cloud service down to wherever they need it to go. right? And uh, you can also share DaVinci Resolve projects, $5 a project, a month and people can uh, share those globally. So it's a great way to move the media, but also to move the projects along. And now it doesn't matter if your editor is in Zimbabwe or wherever. And uh, yeah, so people have been using that. And then we have our Blackmagic camera app that's on the iPhone, but we also are showing a version of Android here at the show. Excellent. Do you think that people are most excited to see the cameras, the switchers, DaVinci? I think it goes on and on and on. Like they go, oh, that's cool. Oh, no, that's cool. Oh, no, that's cool. So, yeah, we've had a lot of excitement across all the product lines, and it's always great to see that. Do you, would you say there's one thing that's a standout innovation this year for you guys, or is it just everything you listed, all those great products? Yeah, I think we. Uh, there's one other thing that we introduced is a replay system that uses DaVinci Resolve as the heart of the replay system for our live stuff, and that's also getting a lot of cool attention. But the cameras always draw lots of attention. Resolve draws attention. There's a lot of things that draw attention but they all work together, which I think is awesome. Now, I've seen you here a few times, a time or two. How many years have you been attending NAB? Well, let's see. I, I did two in the 1980s, and then since 1993, I have been on the floor. If it's open, I've been here. Wow. So it's a lot, yeah. What is the coolest, most interesting, or uh, impactful thing about NAB? The people. Uh, it's amazing. I still see people that I saw at those first couple of shows. And uh, the, the people, the customers, the different guys, the different manufacturers, or whatever, is a collection of the heart is, is really the people and, and all of the relationships that I've built over the last 35 years or whatever it is. So it is kind of cool to see people and like, oh, I haven't seen you in a while or that kind of thing. And especially during the pandemic, we had that. But we've been back the last couple of years and now it's really full like it used to be. Yeah, it's exciting to see the growth back in here again. It's the first day, and we've got a couple more days left. Are you excited for the rest of the show? Uh, totally. I mean, this is great. I get to talk to people all week long, and uh, by Wednesday, I'll, my voice will be shot, but that's okay. Yeah. So where can people learn more about Blackmagic Design and find out more about your products? Sure. Go to our website, blackmagicdesign.com. Excellent. That has been live from South Hall Lower at the Blackmagic Design booth. Thank you so much, Bob. Welcome back to NAB Show Live. This is Nikki Sen, and this time we're going from the inside of Central Hall at Cine Central all the way outdoors with Ariel DP Caden from Lightcraft. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So tell us what we got going out here because last year these were all food trucks. Now it's replaced with drones, gimbals, all the cool stuff. Yes, of course. At Lightcraft, we offer a bunch of different remote camera operations. Uh, we can put a stabilized head on just about anything and drones are our bread and butter. So we brought a few of our tools out here. Uh, you can see them moving behind us. We have an RC car. We have various uh, drones on display. We have a couple up in the air and some of our workshop attendees are getting a chance to operate cameras on drones for the first time. I mean, isn't that cool? Can we just like pause to say how cool I that think is it's awesome. to have hands-on experience here at NAB yes, show? Yes, as I've been told, and I, I think this is accurate, this is the first time NAB has allowed exhibitors to fly with, uh, with talent and with uh, the permission of the convention center and the FAA. So this is awesome that we got the chance to do this first. This is amazing because I don't know if you all recall, we did a cool pre-NAB show yeah, promo and at that time, Time. I didn't think this was cleared yet. No, so it wasn't official. To see it out here, you were like, there's outside stuff too. I'm like, wait, can we do this? Can yes. we see? Yes, honestly, we brought uh, three different drones that are all flying today. Mm -hmm. And so Lightcraft's lead pilot, Jordan, has been doing some FPV demonstrations. We've also used the DJI Inspire 3, which was uh, launched here last year. And given a chance for some operators who may not have used a drone in a professional setting before to get some hands-on experience. And honestly, I think this is awesome. I hope we get to do it again in the future. Absolutely. And what has been the demographic here? Are people getting hands-on for the first time FPVs to be able to take it into the cinematic world? Yes, we've worked with some, uh, some of our attendees are from their own production companies mm -hmm. and they may have used a uh, different style of drones and this is our first time using this style. Okay. We've also had some people who work in marketing and are curious about when and how they should use a drone in their own footage. So a really big range of people. Wow, incredible. So I would say, how many times have you been to NAB show? Personally? This is my fourth or fifth year. 
First time as a, a proper instructor, though. Yeah. Well, how does it feel to come back as an instructor after being an attendee oh. all these past years? It's cool. I'm not sure I've earned it yet, but I'm certainly happy to participate, that's for sure. You're like, you know what? It's kind of hard to catch a break here. You just feel like things just fly by the seat of your pants. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm also making some friends and seeing some familiar faces, and that's been a little bit refreshing. Um, somebody I may not have crossed paths with since last NAB. I go and I see them. They recognize me. I recognize them. It's it's really cool. Amazing. And just about you for a little bit. You are an aerial DP, right? So being able to come back here from an attendee being an operator to a teacher, like, how, yeah. like is that a moment for you? <laughs> It certainly is. I've only been doing this about uh, 10 years, and this is about the time of my career and my life where I feel like I'm reaping the rewards a little bit. And to be able to pass that on to somebody who may have been in a position I was in a few years ago is rewarding. It, yeah. It's a special moment for sure. So do you have any tips for success for those who are like want to go in the same path that Mr. Caden has sure. gone? Like, what are, what are some tips? Get out there and fly anything you can. And also, come say hey to Lightcraft. We can we can give you some tips in person or show you some things that I would have liked to have known when I was first starting out. Um, but really, just get hands on, fly anything you can. You'll just get better quickly. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Caden. Thank you for introducing us to the first time, first ever drone. And it's kind of cool to of say Lightcraft was behind that. Thank you for having us. Perfect. Well, enjoy the rest of your energy show. You too, Nikki. And we are back, and I am back with Vicky from PRG. Vicky, it's so nice to be here with you. Thank you, Erin Rose. It's nice to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Of course, of course. Vicky, can you tell me a little bit, tell us a little bit about what you do with PRG? Yes, actually, I'm a training and development manager for our division called Crew Services. So with PRG, we not only send out all of the equipment for all the shows, uh, we also send out uh, trained staff uh, as well. So uh, we will upskill those train those technicians into the positions for you know LED techs to video engineers to lighting to audio, and then deploy them out onto the shows that we actually uh, uh, provide gear for. Oh my gosh, I feel like that is such an invaluable service because I feel like, you know, a couple years ago when uh, LED workflows were coming up, one of the biggest things that we would hear is that people, it was understaffed. People did not know this business. And I think that's still the case of there aren't enough people all the time for virtual production, but the fact that you're doing it and you're finding those people and you're training those people properly is just so fantastic. It's definitely, you're absolutely correct. I mean, COVID did a big number on our industries and in all markets. And uh, so a lot of people that had skills of a certain level, you know, maybe pivoted and went a different direction, or a lot of them just didn't return to the industry. So after COVID, as things have picked up and, and virtual production is really geared, you know, ramped up, um, there are, there's a real need for people that understand technology, how technology integrates together. It's it's not just one piece of equipment that works, you know, on its own. It's like, how does it work with this? So you've got camera tracking, you've got networking uh, equipment, you've got, you know, uh, LED walls and, and processors and all of that it, with lighting and audio. You have to, It all has to integrate together. So there's, you know, a more advanced level, skill level that's required to do all that. So we're trying really hard to help technicians and not just with virtual production but also live events corporate events um, really gain those skills that give them the opportunities to go in multiple directions so it's it's one of the things that PRG is really committed to and it's why I, I came back to PRG last year. oh my gosh that's so great so how are you finding these people well, PRG already has had a show uh, uh, show services, crew, crew services, sorry, uh, division. Uh, so for for a long time, PRG has been staffing folks. So we do regular recruiting events. Uh, we try to you know make sure that when we're uh, in you know going to schools, reaching out to uh, universities, and just making that the 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 program known. We have internships as well. So. To Trying to develop, you know, uh, plant seeds, if you will, you know, future talent that are maybe graduating in a year or so. Hey, these are some opportunities that you might want to explore when you get out. And, you know, PRG is a great place to do that, a safe place to do that. You can come and ask your questions and really explore.
explore what direction is best suited for me. So we, we try a lot of different ways to reach people uh, and, and work with the talent that is in our labor pool already and identify their skills, doing skills assessments and trainings and things like that to really understand who they are, what suits them, and help them kind of move on up in, uh, into the higher level positions. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about the internship program? Because I think that's so cool that you're doing that and you're going to be able to reach out to like this next generation of talent. Internships are a fantastic way. And I'm, it's one of the things I just love about PRG, always have, it, is that we constantly are looking at what kind of internships that we can provide. It's not just, oh, our internships are not go make me a cup of coffee kind of interns. Uh, we actually have our interns working side by side with people that are doing the work on a daily basis. So those skills that, that are getting transferred basically to this, you know, the younger generation that are coming up learning those skills directly from the people that have the knowledge. And so that's what our internships really do is put people that are doing the work with uh, you know young people that are wanting to learn how to do the work with side by side doing the same jobs out there on shows doing uh, you know anything from a, a Formula One that was here in town to uh, you know to a, a concert tour that's out on the road right now so it's our internships really immerse the student or the the trainee the intern into uh, the actual real world applications. Wow! And are you finding that? Because I was talking to a friend recently who transitioned into VP, and he, he was kind of probably mid-career, but he said, you know, I it's not too late. You can always kind of transition, and it's fun, and it's easy, and you learn. Not easy, but you do learn, you know, and so you're able to kind of change that career path. And so with these internships or the people that you're finding that you're training, are you finding that they're all over in terms of generation, and are you, you know? What does that look like? Absolutely, a lot, it's very common for an intern to come in the in the program and and think, though I my goal is to get out on the road, and then by the end of the 12 week program, realize that maybe there's something different that they want to do. Maybe it's not go on the road. Maybe it's to become the best LED engineer uh, in Las Vegas, right? Yeah. So there's there's we give them a lot of uh, latitude to explore within the program, um, and a lot of ways to learn. Uh, that so yeah it's it's interesting to see how their their vision sort of uh, unfolds as they start to understand and get a, a at least a glimpse of what our industry is really about yeah but and I also think that you know when you talk about the industry it's also live events it's mm -hmm. not just film TV it's right, right? It's, so it's all it's all encompassing and I think that's the thing that I just keep saying, I do keep saying this today, is that, you know, media is not just film TV. It's everywhere, that's right? Exactly. And so I think that's just what you're talking about as well. That's absolutely right. Um, there's several companies here at this show that are also have just as strong a presence in the live events markets as well. Uh, and this show, you know, predominantly does work in, you know, broadcasting, but a lot of this same gear is used on film and television sets. So the skill sets that, you know, that people are learning, that we want to help people learn are, are really not, they're sort of agnostic, I guess, in a way. They're really not specific to just one market. Uh, at a certain point, yes, you have to specialize. You have to specialize in a piece of equipment. You have to really know it inside and out. So there'll, there will be a time where you have to kind of, you know, dial into something specific but you know when you're start when you're starting out in your career it's in your best interest to really explore a wide range of opportunities and equipment and job title or roles of you know things that you can learn until you really find that one thing that that you know grabs you and that that for me was live events when I got started I I started out in school and as uh, in theater but theater wasn't really my my uh, favorite passion. I, passion thank you is a good word live music was my passion and yeah. so my transition into working with media has been through media servers and working you know on big big shows with lots of screens and lots of pixels and you know and just just managing all of that content and delivering it is it's super exciting and it's not specific to any particular market because every booth in here is about content management yep. and and distributing that content getting it up on the display screen so yeah. it's it's a lot of the skills are they overlap with a lot of markets
That is so cool. Well, thank you so much, Vicki, for, I feel like I could talk to you for hours about this. I think it's like so interesting. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, so we're gonna go to a short break and we'll be back in a second in Cine Central, Central Hall, checking out all the cinematic innovation. And I'm here with Photo Joseph, how are you? I'm great, thanks for having me on. You know, I'm geeking out because I see you always on YouTube <laughs> as my highly recommended, suggested videos, how to do the things, you are the person that- So, the, so you're telling me that the algorithm actually works? The algorithm has wow. worked in your favor, my friend. <laughs> how are you doing here though? I mean, like you have been going from teaching classes, go, go, go all day, it's opening day how has your morning been uh, a little chaotic yeah so yeah. I'm teaching a bunch of classes actually eight different sessions this week two of them today but I'm also doing this news project that's sponsored by Atomos okay. and a couple other companies Frame.io and Condor Blue are a big part of this as well and essentially what we're doing is we're shooting newsreels vertical shorts for Instagram but we're shooting it on a professional rig using camera to cloud we're pushing our footage real time up to a cloud server where our editor in Ohio I think is pulling the footage down editing reels and pushing them back to us usually within 30 to 40 minutes of, of ending the shot. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. Like I was just saying, we were actually just talking to my friend Derek over at Scenery, which is like an editing base as well. He's also a content creator, but we're talking about like how there's a lot more content creators on the scene now. You're filmmakers, you're being forced to shoot vertical a lot more, I'm assuming. <laughs> so, I mean, what what say you? How's, how's that process or the transition been? No, it's great. I, I actually really enjoy vertical for that delivery, right? for that format of being on your phone. It really works. And what's cool about this setup is, so I'm shooting with the S5 2x, the Lumix S52x, which is shooting open gate 6K internal. Okay. We're rotated vertically, so we're getting a internal clip for use later that even though it's vertical, is actually more than 4K wide, more than Ultra HD wide. It's a massive file, but simultaneously creating the 1080p proxies that are going up to the cloud. So that's what the editor's working with, but then later on after the show, we want to make something longer form for YouTube. We've got 6K source to work from. Oh my gosh, you're just like... I like my nerd, like, doo -doo 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 -doo. it's like, this is amazing. So you get the both wide and the vertical and you'll right. be able to do this in post. Exactly, exactly. Talk about making the process so much easier. I see you have a YC onion uh, monopod as well. Yeah, great monopod here, really nice. So nice and easy to single latch to get it up or down. Love that part of it. And part of this process too, so since we are going camera to cloud, but as you know, your cell phone barely works here in NAB. So what we're tethered to here, you can get that in the shop, but this is a Scalera, uh, bonded modem cellular backpack. So we've got, it's kind of crazy inside of here, but essentially this is giving us a high bandwidth signal, even with all the madness that's around here. We can see we are, we are plugged in directly to the ethernet port on the deck so that we can just push these straight to the cloud with minimal fuss. I was really literally good. about to say, how are you going live, my friend? <laughs> yeah. All these new innovations, all the technologies. I also know that you're a veteran of NAB shows. Oh, so yeah. what keeps you coming back? Do you have any success stories that you can share with our audience? You know, NAB has always been an absolute blast for me. There's always so much to see and learn. For As a professional, I always make clients here. So it's good for business and it's a lot of fun and I get to see a lot of my industry friends. Okay, so what's the game plan for those who are here for the first time? How do you like organize this entire show so that you can like tackle everything? Yeah, seriously, if you've never been to the show before, you really just gotta take the time to walk the aisles up and down, up and down. If you try to say, oh, I gotta go to this booth, that booth, you're gonna miss everything as you're running in between. So just take the time to go up and down. You need a few days. This is not a one day show for sure. Gotcha. But a, a little tip for you, you could actually go to my Instagram, a little plug here. There you go. To watch the reels that we're shooting because that's why we're doing these so that people can see what is happening here at NAB. They can find out what they're missing, what they might wanna go check out. And for those who can't be at NAB, it's just a way to see what's going on. So on Photo Joseph on my Instagram, you can check out the reels there. And if we, uh, outside of seeing the amazing content that you're capturing, uh, you are also teaching some of the workshops so can you plug yourself of what you're doing here at an TV show? Yeah, so I see I've already done a workshop on script writing and on uh, 4K live streaming. I've got one on ATEM production. I've got on uh, cloud editing with Resolve. Um, I can't remember what the others are. I got six more to do. I, I know I've, I've prepped for all of them. I just can't remember what they are right now. I don't even know how you retain all that information. Well, I clearly I don't, so. <laughs> well, that's incredible. What is the uh, plans for after the show, though? Like, do you have plans for how do you tackle the after parties? Because do you feel like you have to be everywhere nowadays? You know, you want to be places. There's yeah. a there's a few good parties to go to, so. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, you take it easy. You have an end time. You got to get your sleep. Amazing. So anything that you want to end off on in terms of plugging yourself, your channel, do you have any cool projects that you have about to launch on your YouTube channel? Just always an influx of videos. I've been so busy with some other stuff lately, I haven't had much.
from my YouTube channel, but it's, it's coming. Don't worry. It'll be there. But Photo Joseph, absolutely everywhere. Appreciate the follows. Amazing. Well, thank you, Photo Joseph. Amazing to see you in the flesh, and I can't wait to see all of your reels on Photo Joseph. This is Nikki Sun. We're over here in Central Hall. We just talked to Nikon, and now, of course, what's a camera without something to protect that precious gear? So I'm here with the VP of Marketing, James of Nomadic. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I'm fantastic. As awesome. well, it's opening day. I mean, how many NMB shows have you been here? This is only our second one. And when we came last year, we're like, oh, we'll just try it. I don't know how big it is. And like on opening day, our booth was slammed the whole time. We were like questioning, we're like, is it going to be good? Yeah. And then the whole time we're like, whoa. So we signed up pretty immediately for next year. Amazing. So yeah. that's a huge testimony. So yeah. why is it important to come to a show like NAB Show? And what are some success stories of being here at NAB Show? Yeah, yeah. Last year, we actually signed up some new distributors, international distributors. Because when we came, we again, we didn't really have a lot of knowledge of what NAB was. We made camera bags that could be used for videography and, and photography, obviously. But still, it was not really on our radar. People kept bringing it up, but we didn't realize how big this show was and how much opportunity there is here. Yeah. So, I mean, last year was really fantastic. Yeah. Over here before we went live, yeah. I mean, your whole booth was just swarming with filmmakers yeah, and creators. Yeah, we pushed them out so we could film this, by I the know. way. We are that <laughs> important. But we were like, can we please have a little bit of your time to tell us about the new yeah. products that you have or just kind of the line that you have and what you offer for yeah, filmmakers? Yeah, yeah for sure. For, so Nomadic, for those that you don't know who Nomadic is, we make highly functional and innovative products for travel, everyday, and photography. Um, and so we really believe that, like, Functional and innovative products help you live your life more intentionally with confidence, right? So you're not like always worried about, is this bag gonna break or do I have pockets for stuff? You know, like we've all had the rat's nest of bags before where you're like trying to find something, yeah. right? We have lots of pockets to keep everything super organized so you can focus on. And we are back and I am here with Rebecca, the CEO of Source Elements. And I'm so happy to be here with you, Rebecca. Great to be here with you here in Rose. It's great to see you again. Great to see you. Can you tell us a little bit about what is Source Elements? Sure, so uh, we've been in business 20 years. So if you go back 20 years ago, uh, using the internet to do remote collaboration, collaboration for media industry was a very, very hard thing. We started with audio and we made one really, really perfect, sending a high quality audio stream from one location to another so it could be recorded perfectly because the internet it's just a little bit niggly, it doesn't always want to send things perfectly, it doesn't want to send things in a you know, short amount of time and uh, we became known for uh, remote recording, for working with studios, uh, voice actors, Actors, uh, orchestras, um, musicians, mixed studios, uh, uh, many, many uh, audio uh, applications, radio, TV broadcast, all of these things. When they needed uh, two people, at least two people were not in the same city or country as each other, we've been their support. And uh, so after we were working really well with the audio, we move, of course, into video. Video is very important, um, although we're all audio people at heart. Um, video is also a very important way of um, uh, um, being able to send that yeah. also and yeah, make cool. sure that it's yeah. it's keeping yeah. its original form. Yeah, exactly. So what we found that we became experts and was synchronizing timelines. So we think, I'm here, you're there, we're experiencing time a bit differently. Yeah. And so what we do is we keep track of every sample, of every frame, um, we cache it, we, we, we store it. So if over the internet something gets lost, we know what got lost and we can heal that for you. And we can upscale or up res it for you as well. If you say, you know what, I haven't got enough bandwidth to do full uh, streaming. So you can do a lower streaming, record that at the other end, and then we're going to upscale just the pieces that you need. Often in like an hour-long session, you might only need 10 minutes of that. And so we're just going to send that 10 minutes that you need. So people are able to work really quick, really fast. And um, yeah, it's been really an honor to support the industry this long. Um, and the new stuff that we have coming out now is an extension of that, saying, you know, what comes next? Dolby Atmos, um, you know, multiple participants, uh, you know, support for iOS, all the other platforms, cloud storage, you know, all the other things that need to go on there. And uh, gosh, it's been such a beautiful, busy couple of days for us with showing people uh, what's, what's coming next here.
And you also got nominated for Best Product of the Year. I saw the little plaque, and so yeah. that's so fantastic. And so is which part of your solution is nominated for Best Product of the Year? Is it the whole solution, or is it one specific part of it? So it's a software called Source Connect, which is our flagship. And what is nominated is our Source Connect 4, which is coming out very soon. It's currently in beta. And uh, this is the feature that's basically exploded, uh, the, the, pla the software that's exploded with a number of features. Features. And we have, we know we have many, many happy people uh, about this coming out. They've been waiting a long time. Uh, it's basically like the very, very, very good thing we're known for, but now easy to use and just easier to access uh, and a new interface. And yeah, it's, it's very, very, very exciting for us. That is so cool. And so again, how long has this business been around? Uh, the napkin, the very first napkin drawing was in August 2003. Oh my gosh. Wow. So the product was released in March 2005. So next year is our 20th anniversary. We've got great stuff coming next year. We're going to have multiple booths and be streaming within NAB and uh, we're really excited about that. And in the meantime, we've been streaming between here in New York and the other hall, hall, central hall, and uh, thanks to uh, Verizon. HP5G, which you is amazing. I cannot recognize, I recommend it highly enough. And um, yeah, so uh, as you can see, you know, we've just been uh, showing all of our new stuff here. That's so cool. I also just think, you know, it's such a testament to you that you have been in business for over 20 years, right? I mean, you, you are the CEO of this company. And I think there are so many companies that you see that, you know, are there for a few years, but you have just evolved with the times. And I think that's one thing that we're really talking about right now mm -hmm. at NAB, right? This evolution of media and this evolution of platforms. Yeah. And so you are a champion of that. Honestly, the problem is like Robert, my co-founder and I, we talk all the time, how can we disrupt ourselves? Because if we don't, someone else will. Yeah. And uh, it's just constantly staying on top of thinking, looking ahead, how is the world changing? Yeah. How can we change with it and be ahead of that? Yeah. I love that. How do you disrupt yourselves? Um, by accepting, you know, maybe we're going to lose a stream of revenue. So let's build another one. And so we can accept the loss of that stream. Wow. Well, Blockbuster should have hired you to be their <laughs> consultant. Um, well, thank you so much, Rebecca. It was such a pleasure talking to you. It's really great to see you again. <laughs> great yeah. to see you. I'd just like to point out our yellow guitar, which is the, oh. the, sh the star of our booth. Um, I think we're the only electric guitar at NAB. We're very proud of that. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. All right. Well, I think that actually wraps up our NAB Live interviews for the day. And so thank you so much for joining us. And is our, <laughs> no, we might have another one. Okay, I'm going to send you to break. <laughs> Here in Central Hall, we just talked to Nikon, and now, of course, what's a camera without something to protect that precious gear? So I'm here with the VP of Marketing, James of Nomadic. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I'm fantastic as awesome. well. It's opening day. I mean, how many enemy shows have you been here? This is only our second one. And when we came last year, we're like, oh, we'll just try it. I don't know how big it is. And like on opening day, our booth was slammed the whole time. We were like questioning. We're like, is it going to be good? Yeah. And then the whole time we're like, whoa. So we signed up pretty immediately for next year. Amazing. So yeah. that's huge testimony. So yeah. why is it important to come to a show like NAB Show? And what are some success stories of being here at NAB Show? Yeah, yeah. Last year we actually signed up some new distributors, international distributors. Because when we came, we, again, we didn't really have a lot of knowledge of what NAB was. We make camera bags that could be used for videography and, and photography, obviously. But still, it was not really on our radar people kept bringing it up but we didn't realize how big this show was and how much opportunity there is here yeah. so i mean last year was really fantastic yeah i mean so it's opening day right now so we're just in here for like I an know. hour but so far it's been really good i mean just walking over here before we went live yeah. i mean your whole booth was just swarming with filmmakers yeah, and we creators. pushed them out so we could film this by I know. the way we are that <laughs> important but we were like can we please have a little bit of your time to tell us about the new yeah. products that you have we're just kind of the line that you have and what you offer for yeah, yeah. filmmakers. Yeah, for sure. For, so Nomadic, for those that you don't know who Nomadic is, we make highly functional and innovative products for travel, every day, and photography. Um, and so we really believe that like functional and innovative products help you live your life more intentionally with confidence, right? So you're not like always worried about, is this bag going to break or do I have pockets for stuff? You know, like we've all had the rat's nest of bags before where you're like trying to find something, yeah. right? We have lots of pockets to keep everything super organized so you can focus on living more intentionally, basically. Absolutely. Well, you said functional and practical, but I 
have to say also stunning. Yes. The minimalism design, yes. I am living for it. So <laughs> can you tell us like what goes into the design of your bags? Because yeah. I feel like it's so popular within the community. You partner with filmmakers yeah. like Peter McKinnon. Can yeah, yeah, you talk yeah. about that? Yeah, I mean, honestly, we're a crowdfunded brand. So ever since we started, we've been on Kickstarter. And so wow. what that means is that you're really engaging with people that are potentially your customer and interested in the product. So you're asking for feedback, you're doing surveys, you're calling people. And obviously working with someone like Peter McKinnon, who's a professional photographer, helping design the product with him, got all those kind of intricacies that you kind of need as you go into like a thoughtful design. You know what I mean? First and foremost, all of our bags and luggage have lifetime warranty because that's a testament about how we design and build a product. We use like the best materials. You know, in some of these bags right here, we have waterproof zippers, water resistant, waterproof like material. Not necessarily ready to go scuba diving in, but you can take it in the shower, you know? See, but I like that transparency, that openness. Yeah, yeah. So in working yeah. with filmmakers and photographers like Peter McKinnon, what has been what has been the thing that, oh, this is what the bag industry needs to get in yeah. order to work with filmmakers? Because yeah. I imagine walking the show floor, there's so many bags out there, totally. right? Yeah. But in addressing an actual need of yeah. a photographer and filmmaker, what is the most surprising thing that yeah. you found? Well, I mean, it's it's kind of different between what you're trying to create. So for the first bag we made, what tri what Peter really wanted is like, dude, I got to go on photo shoots, okay. and they're like two days long, and I don't really like taking two bags with me. Okay. So we made this product right here. It's big, but it's for traveling every day. Yeah. So that front part expands out, and you can put clothes in it. Okay. Or if you're a videographer, you can just fill it up with gear. You know what I mean? But it's really about the modularity of like, I could use it for a ton of gear or I could put clothes and gear in it. And it has like a literally an expansion piece for, for travel. It was like, we made that for traveling photographers that are on like two, three day shoots. Amazing. You know, I think we're okay. We're, I think we're a show not tell. And yeah. if you're okay with me, I'll hold the mic. Do you mind opening it up and showing our to. viewers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Well, this is the one I was talking about. And we'll go into some other bags. Let me go on this side of you. You can see it's a big boy. This does count as a carry on. Right? So you have multiple pockets here. You have your Molly attachments for other things. It's kind of, maybe you can see it, but you can tell the material is, is very water resistant, waterproof zippers. So you have a side access here, right? Yes. Big old water bottle here. And we like to use magnets, not just because they're fun to, you know, yeah. click on and off yeah. from an ASMR standpoint, yeah. but they're very functional. You have a big open pocket up here. And this is where you'd put clothes. So you see the tie down here and then some organization here. This whole section right there expands out. Okay. So that's where you could then put your clothes in two, three days, you're good to go, right? Okay. And then you have, I'm gonna just flop around here for a second. You got a laptop sleeve here, external. You have luggage passengers, so if you do put it on a roller. Absolutely necessary. And the other thing about our camera bags, I would say, is that we, it's not just about the function, like having pockets and things like that. It's gotta be comfortable. Yeah. So when you fill this bag, it feels like a, 70 liter hiking bag, right? It's super padded, it's super comfy, has a lot of structure to it, so it fits really good on your back. And it's not like dragging you down, it actually fits up on top, right? So you have that lumbar support. So you already saw the laptop sleeve here and then you open it up. Oh, this has wow. all of our accessories in it, so it's yes. hard to see, but you have a secondary laptop sleeve here or tablet, multiple pockets, and then all this stuff inside, again, these are accessories. This is all customizable to however you want it. So you can fit this up with camera gear and throw shoes in there and clothes in the front. Well, and also besides the bags, you also make those accessories. Yeah, right? we make accessories, everything from battery case holders that come with us to tell you which side is dead <laughs> so you don't get lost there. We got memory card holder. This is for filters, so to keep your filters nice and clean. But everything's just like, it's it's very modular, it's very functional, it's nice design, and again, it's lifetime warranty, so we kind of have a saying is you buy it nice or you buy it twice, mm -hmm. right? Because on backpack, zippers are the thing that goes. It's very a low percent for us, but if your zipper does break, call us, send it in, we'll refurb it, we'll send you a new one. Oh my gosh. I love that. And you do have another McKinnon collaboration, right? Yes. The Luma collection? Yeah, yeah, we just came out with this new one. So, as you can you know, it's got like kind of a more modern look, but this line of this is the backpack. This is the nine liter sling. We also have 10 liter sling or nine liter, or 12 liter sling. They're designed primarily for mirrorless. You can tell because they're a little bit thinner. But the cool thing about this is like, especially for camera slings, we have it. We didn't see this a lot. So we added magnets. So when it's unzipped, it just closes tight. So because if you're kind of on a shoot and you're changing out a lens and you're just flapping over here, you got stuff falling out, might be raining. You can just flip it up and it locks in from the magnets. So let's just give the audience like. Yeah. 
little magnet. Thank you for that magnet, magnet ASMR. ASMR. <laughs> it's amazing. It is amazing. Well, I'm going to pop back over here because I gave you a lot of, I know, exactly. Well, the last thing here is, I mean, in preparing for a show like an AV show, like yeah. what what are you most excited for this year? You were a newbie last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your return this year. What yeah. are you looking for? Two things. Well, we have two new product categories or launches here. Is that the new Peter McKinnon Luma collection? We have four colors in those. Primarily, but in you know, in the past, we've had all black bags. So coming out with a Russ and a Sage is like really exciting for us to add some life into the brand with colors. Um, and then we're also showing our apparel line. So we have a new apparel line that's designed for travel, built for every day. Jacket, pants. You know, you could do like splits in these pants right here. <laughs> T-shirts, it's premium everyday apparel. Um, and then overall, just because it is only our second show here, is to talk to new friends and like introduce the brand to people and just like create relationships. Yeah. So. Well, thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank you for giving us a huge hands-on show. I'm so excited to have my hands on the McKinnon 8 Leader Sling as well. We're still in Central Hall. This time I'm here with Joyce, who is the CEO of Riedel Communications. How are you? I'm doing good, thank you. I just have to say, first of all, Yes to female CEOs. Um, it's a rarity sometimes at a big show, a convention like this, but it's it's really inspiring personally just to feel like we are here, we belong here, we deserve to be here, and here you are. Thank you very much. It's um, you know I've been in this industry a long time, longer than I care to really say, but yeah, being a woman in a industry that's very dominated by men has had its challenges <laughs> to say the least but it's it's been fun it's been a great ride um, Riedel is a great company very diverse uh, you know they, they, they prop women up on a pedestal so I really appreciate working for them you know Thomas Riedel is an amazing entrepreneur and and just very inclusive and so it's a very inclusive diverse company overall so I feel really proud to to hold this position as president and CEO of the Americas. Absolutely. Could you give us a little bit of uh, information about what your company does? So Riedel is, uh, is basically known for an intercom company, um, but we do so, so, so much more. Uh, we do video infrastructure, distributed routing. Uh, we have a line called MeteorNet, which is an IP-based line as well as a, a baseband line, and we have bridges that take you into the future. Um, we have our, obviously, we have comms, so we have our Emmy Award winning Bolero Wireless, which has just catapulted us in the Americas, and then Artist Intercom System. And then about two years ago, we purchased a small company called Simply Live, and they, uh, with them we have uh, Replay and uh, Capture and um, Ingest and Live, live, uh, live Production Suite, basically, where you can do it in the cloud or on-prem or have your own uh, you know, data center. So we've really expanded. Um, just in the last eight years that I've been with the company. So it's very exciting. And to see our booth, it's it's much bigger than it's been in the past. And we we keep growing in population. We have over a thousand people now worldwide. And I'm just real proud to be a part of, of Riedel. Absolutely. And we were talking before, and as I understand it, you mentioned that Riedel has been here at the NAB show for maybe 35 plus years now? The company is 35 years old. Um, I think they probably have a presence at NAB of probably in the mid-20s, oh, wow. like 24, 25 years, something like that. I've been coming to more NABs once again that I want to mention. <laughs> no <worries. laughs> With a little bit of a break in there, very, very small break. Um, and uh, it's great. I mean, I just love coming to the show because it's like a big reunion. Yes. So I've been in the industry for a long time, and I and I see all my old friends, and I make new friends, and uh, it's just fun. It's a lot of work. It's tiring. It takes about two weeks to get over it once I get home, <laughs> but it's fantastic. You need to plan a vacation after this whole area. Yeah, right? I really need to. I know a lot of people who do, and I just I don't. But I have to. I got to change that a little bit. Gotcha. Being a woman in this industry, you do have to work a wee bit harder yeah, yeah. <laughs> to be taken real seriously, unfortunately. Um, I wanted to get I, your opinion on that as well. Like, is there any uh, tips for those who are aspiring to make it to a CEO level such as yourself? Well, I guess it's just, uh, uh, you know, don't limit yourself. Um, don't put yourself in a corner. <laughs> no one puts baby no, in the no corner. No one puts baby in the corner. <laughs> don't do that. And um, uh, it's not easy. I can, I can just say that right now. It's, not, it's still, even in this day, day and age, 
it's not easy. Sometimes it almost seems like it's getting worse again, maybe before it gets better. So I would just like to see women, more women in tech. Um, I'd like to see more powerful women. I'd like to have more, you know, like-minded women that, to, that we could meet with and talk. And I think it'll get there. Yeah. Um, but the young ones really need to, to work it. Yeah. They really need to, to, to step up and we need to help them. Amazing. And then what is, a, could you share a story of being at a show like NAB show? Oh, a success story as far as uh, like business or something we've... Yeah, I mean like sometimes when you come here you meet new people and new partners or new exhibitors and realize this is the way that technology is going and we are adapting. Um, hmm, let's see. A success story. I could be bring. I could talk about a customer success story. Um, just you know, ran, we usually have meetings established when you come to a show, and your your calendar's booked. But every once in a while, just a random customer comes in, and they'll they look around the booth. They're like, "What do you guys do?" And it's like, "Oh no, another student or another you know, somebody who's just here." hanging out doesn't know anything about the industry and then you start talking to them and then they become interested and the next thing you know it turns into a you know five million dollar sale which has happened wow. so it's like it's a customer we had no awareness of no it was in the house of worship this particular one it was in the house of wor worship vertical and um those things happen more frequently than you realize but those really big ones that that's that's a rare wow. that's a rarity very cool. Well, you heard it here. If you want a $5 million acquisition, you might want to come here. But thank you so much, Joyce, for giving us your time, sharing, you. uh, sharing what uh, Riedel does, and for just inspiring additional women, women in tech, women CEOs. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. Very much. Welcome back to the 2024 NAB Show live stream. I'm Paul with the Stream Geeks, and I'm joined with Andy from AMD, who's going to tell us a little bit about what they're doing in the live streaming and video production industry. So thanks so much for having me, Paul. Today, we're showing off uh, AMD technologies for the data center as well as for workstations. So one of the products we're showing off is a product that we call the MA35D. This is our Emmy-winning technology for video transcode. We're also showing off our Threadripper Pro processors as well as our Radeon Pro graphics processors for workstations. Uh, we're featuring solutions here from some of our key partners like Dell, HP, Lenovo, Supermicro, and others. It's such a cool, you'll, which one do you want to start with? Because you've got so, such a great display here. So one of the things that I think is going to be compelling to start with is right behind us. Uh, this is a, a technology called View One from our partner at View. And so this is a turnkey virtual production solution. So it uses uh, hardware from our partner Puget Systems. And then again, our, our partner View. Uh, takes that Puget Systems hardware and creates the virtual production in a box solution behind us that you see. Very cool. Um, what, what's next? I mean, that, that is a really cool solution. Yeah, so as we walk around the booth and look at some of the technologies around here, uh, you can see the solutions that we've got from Supermicro with our partner Stratus Core. Uh, so they're showing uh, a solution from uh, Devant for... Um, uh, for uh, AI uh, workflows with, um, uh, like I said, taking a, a, a picture and then putting it in, in different uh, backgrounds with stable diffusion. Uh, we're also showing our latest uh, mobile workstation solutions. So you see mobile workstations here from our partners HP and Lenovo with uh, an external GPU enclosure. So again, if you want to have uh, the performance uh, of a desktop workstation and the portability of a mobile workstation, you can put uh, into this docking station and get the full capabilities uh, of a desktop workstation uh, running from a, a mobile workstation. And then on this side of the booth, uh, this is where we got solutions from uh, Dell, HP, and Lenovo. Uh, so these are their latest workstations using AMD Threadripper Pro processors. Uh, again, we're showing the latest uh, Blackmagic design and Adobe workflows uh, on the newest processors from AMD. Wow. This is really cool. Just giving the audience a moment to soak this in. All of this technology coming to you from AMD. So let me ask you, Andy, what was your favorite moment at NAB, whether it was a past NAB or this one to, uh, this year? 
Uh, so where we kicked things off yesterday, we met with our partners, VIEW. Uh, they did a summit that they called the Virtually Everything Summit. And that was a phenomenal experience. We had about 500 customers and partners uh, talking about where virtual production's at now and where it's headed. Uh, we also had the opportunity to, to participate with our partners, Mesa and CDSA, uh, at their summit talking about uh, content uh, delivery and security. So again, it's early in the show, but it's been a phenomenal experience so far. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. All right, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Thanks, I'm Ryan Salazar with NAB Show Live. We've got Caleb Christopher from New Blue. How are you doing, sir? Great. How are you doing? Doing great. You know, New Blue, I love you guys. You guys have amazing software. Todor, the CEO, founder, uh, is so willing to work through issues and create new technology. Um, you guys are super innovative, and, and, and thank you for doing all you do for us as Broadcast Beat, Broadcast Beat Studios. But tell us about New Blue, what you do, and how you got started. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks for saying that. We, we do envision ourselves as a really uh, collaborative uh, company with a focus on customer needs. So we, yeah. we definitely try to solve real world, world solutions. Um, our whole background is in post-production, and we built a really powerful uh, graphics titling engine. And then um, that naturally evolved into a live um, graphics titling engine, and which has grown into a um, basically an all-in-one switching streaming. Uh, but we still have that, that graphics first um, you know, visual polish type of uh, center to our to our product, and um, we integrate really well in a lot of different environments. So whether you're using us for the end-to-end -end or just the graphics component, uh, we can be a, a really good fit for a lot of different types of productions. Cool, and you guys have a, it's not like you have one product, you have a series of products that do different things. Um, you're, you, you utilize NDI, so it makes things very flexible. Um, but yeah, you're developing stuff as, as clients need them too, which is really great. So maybe talk about the, the various products that you have, yeah. whether it's related to like a sports production or, uh, uh, or just broadcast titling, that kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, our software, we, it's a, we have both software and hardware solutions. So the software um, is available on Windows or Mac. And in terms of what you're re uh, referring to with the versions, we have our present and sport versions, which are kind of the entry level versions. Then we have our full broadcast software version. And then we go all, all the way up to our Fusion devices. We, we just at this show are introducing the Fusion M, which is a meetings themed, has Zoom integration and things like that. And then we also have our full Fusion units. So we have both NDI and SDI versions. So again, very versatile in terms of what kind of ecosystems we can we can work with and scalable in terms of the different uh, options that we have available. Wow, super cool. So what does a show like the NAB show mean to a company like you guys? Not only do you, I mean, every, obviously everybody's making friends here, they're networking, yeah. they're getting new clients and whatnot, but what does it mean to you guys? I mean, it's yeah. huge for us, both in terms of being able, having the opportunity and the exposure to showcase the things that we want to talk about that we're really excited to get out into the world. And then also, like I was saying, from that collaborative approach, just the chance to interact with so many people whether it's resellers telling us what they're needing or um, you know attendees and our, our customers coming to talk to us. It's just a huge learning opportunity for us to understand, like kind of have our, our finger to the pulse in terms of like what's the needs are, are, that are emerging. Excellent, all right, and your website? Yeah, absolutely, it's newbluefx.com. Yeah, New Blue Effects, awesome stuff. <laughs> uh, New Blue Effects, you know, when I worked in post-production, I think it was called New Blue Effects, yeah, exactly. the title that we used in Avid Media Composer back in the day. And, uh, yeah, you guys have really revolutionized a lot of things. Thank you so much, Caleb Christopher with New Blue. Uh, we'll uh, see you soon. Uh, wishing you a great rest of your NAB show as well. Welcome back to NAB Show Live. I'm Tess Protesto. I'm here in South Hole Lower at the Backblaze booth. I'm here with Neele, who is the co-founder of Backblaze and the VP of Sales. Neele, it's nice to meet you today. Thank you so much. Yeah, how has the show been for you so far? The show has been fantastic. We've had we've had a lot of customers and partners and everything rolling in. Like it's it's been great. It's been great. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about Backblaze, what Backblaze is and what brings you here today. Yeah, so Backblaze is cloud object storage. Um, it, it allows for customers to take all the footage that they're shooting and put it into a system that's inexpensive that allows them to essentially architect cloud-based workflows for all of the different uh, workflows that they need to execute uh, throughout the entire life cycle of their, of their productions. So we have customers that are, that are capturing footage directly from the cloud, putting it into Backblaze. We have customers that are finishing their footage and archiving it in Backblaze. If you have footage to store, then Backblaze is a great uh, place to store that data. And how long has Backblaze been in business? We started in 20, 2007. 
So we've been in business for quite a long time. Um, and over that time, we actually built out two products, one for a computer backup service and then our B2 cloud storage service, which I, which I just described to you. That B2 cloud storage has been here at NAB since 2016. And we have acquired thousands of customers in the media space. And we have grown our company to have uh, three exabytes of data under management. We have over half a million customers. We went public back in 2021 as well. Oh, wow. Congratulations on that. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah. So what is the latest innovation from Backblaze that you're bringing to NAB Show? So when we, we're really, what's really important to us is making sure we create solutions for customers in the media space. We don't want to just sell them storage. We want to make sure that whatever it is that they need to do with the storage, they're able to do. And one of the things that our customers have been telling us is when I shoot something and I upload it to Backblaze, I want to inform the various tools that I use that that, that, that footage has been shot. And so we added something in our tool that we're announcing tomorrow called event notifications. Uh, event notifications essentially allows you to take any, whenever someone uploads anything to our, to our storage, it'll send a notification out to various uh, tools that are out there in order for them to know, hey, there's some new footage, let's make sure we get that in front of editors or reviewers or previewers or whoever it is that you need. Uh, to see that footage. Uh, in fact, one of the things that we have demoing over in our in our demo corner is uh, a, if you take a brand new footage, piece of footage, and put it into our bucket, it only takes about 30 seconds to a minute to ar arrive within, for example, uh, Asset Manager, like Iconic. Do you want to head over to the demo section or do you want to skip that for today? I would love to show that to you. Okay, let's take that? a quick walk over. Right, We're going to walk over to this way. After you. Okay, here we are at the demo center. We're at, we're, at the demo, we're at the demo station. What I'd like to do is I'd like to create a brand new video clip, right? So you know this is a real demo. So let, let's look over here for a second. We're going we're gonna to start a uh, photo booth here, and we're going to record like, a couple second clip. Oop, that was not what we wanted. We want a video. There we go. Let's do that. Um, and I'm kind of not in the frame. But we're, we're creating a video here, right? Now that that video is recorded, I'm going to literally copy it from photo booth right into Backblaze Cloud Storage. Oh, missed that. Hit the upload button. Let's try that again. Now drag that straight into our Backblaze Cloud Storage. It is now going to get, right now we are literally taking that file that we just recorded, we're uploading it into our cloud storage. As soon as it's done, which we just saw at finish, it's sending a notification out to an asset manager. In this case, we're demoing Iconic. And if you, if you click over here on Iconic, and I refresh this, what you should see is the clip. Wow, that's and really cool. What Fast. Iconic is, what Iconic is, and it shows up literally instantly. Iconic is then creating a proxy for it and making it available. If we were connected to an AI service, it could send that clip out to AI, it could figure out who you are uh, and put your name in there. Like any of the workflows that are that are uh, designed for uh, uh, for Iconic, and the produ post-production, pre-production workflows can all be executed. There you go. You can see it's in there. There I am. It only took, what was it? I don't know, I wasn't timing it. 40 Less than a minute. A minute, right. So that functionality is really, really key to our customers because today, if you want to do something like that, you have to either upload it through the Iconic interface or you have to, you have to um, uh, hit a refresh button. That could take a long time to find the content. This is allowing for productions to move a lot faster because we are notifying all the tools that, this, uh, that a new clip is available. That's really amazing. Thank you for showing that to me today. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. So before we wrap up here, is there anything else that you'd like to share about Backblaze? How can we find out more about your product? Yeah, so you can go to backblaze.com. Uh, we have everything there is to know about our product there. Also, you can come right here to the show floor. Uh, we are in Lower South Hall, as you said earlier and uh, we have a whole team of people here we have we have uh, we have a lot of engineers as well that can give you demos that can walk you through everything there is to know about how you can take your workflows and implement them in the cloud and you mentioned that you have been to NAB before yeah. what is the most influential or impactful part of participating in the NAB show it's a great question and I love coming to NAB show and you know like backplace we we sell cloud storage a lot of different industries so I get to go to a lot of these different shows but this is my favorite and the reason is because this industry feels like a community right you walk into a show that's this large and you just bump into people that you've met before that uh, that that remember who you are that give you big smiles 
that doesn't happen everywhere else. And I, I really, really enjoy the community of, 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 you know, integrators and customers and vendors that all want to do fun things, right? Creating media, media, yeah, creating media is fun. It is. So yeah, that's my favorite part of coming in. Well, I'm back in Cine Central, Central Hall. I'm in the presence of reality TV show star royalty Derek Shaw how are you? you I'm doing great Nikki thank you for having me <laughs> now tell me why are you here at NAV show uh, I'm here with actually my company scenery uh, it's a new video editor they do AI to cut down videos to short clips and it's fully collaborative so you know most times you have to like edit a video and export it this one edit a video share a link and it goes wherever you need it to. I love it. So you're heading up growth at Scenery, correct? I am. I am. They just brought me on to lead on growth. Um, we'll see how long that goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully it keeps growing. But speaking of which, coming from a reality show, okay. being the winner of Amazing Race, Thank what you. was it, season 35? Season 34, actually. Season 34. But I'll win 35, too. <laughs> yes, so, bring them know, back. Possibly bring them both back. could be true. Yeah. But I'm just talking in a sense where, in a way, when you're a public figure now, okay. right? You, yeah, like a super big You kind of start becoming like an influencer, and then you kind of mm. start needing to make content all of a sudden. It's, so it's can you tough. tell me that? You know, I just like, I can't even walk outside my house without someone recognizing me, <laughs> wanting my autograph. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, you know, I, I used to work in tech, um, and I was like a software engineer, and I do this reality show, and it completely changed the direction of my life. I quit my job, I became a content creator, so I was a content creator for two years, editing videos, shooting, traveling, you know, you know the lifestyle. I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and it was great, uh, and I feel like now I'm NAB, and I'm seeing so many new things, I'm like, wow, I wish I had that two years ago. Absolutely. So yeah. coming to a show like this, you're seeing all the tech, all the technology, the software, the hardware. What are you most excited to see here? Um, definitely some of the software. Look, I'll say my background, I'm not really like a videographer. So it's kind of shooting on like my iPhone. I have like a little Sony camera. Don't, don't say little, okay? Because at the yeah, end of the day. iPhone 14. Put some respect, Put okay? Some respect yeah, this, is a, the... this is a good iPhone. <laughs> But, you know, like, there's some really cool, I mean, if you just look behind us, like, yeah. look at these amazing cameras, and I just would not know at all how to operate that. So I'm here, like, the software is really awesome. Like, there's so many things that can just speed up your workflow, and, like, you can get from raw footage all the way to an edit in, like, seconds, and that's what I, that's what I love. Yeah, and from a first-time attendee at NAB show, what was your first thought walking into the show floor doors today? I was exhausted. I think I walked in, I immediately started gasping for air. I was like, I want water, I want food. This place is huge. Like, what, how many people, like, how many exhibits? Usually between 60 to 100,000 people come to this show. That's, so, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I think I just wanted to share, I hope that I don't put you on blast here, but I was just visiting Derek at the scenery booth back at uh, West, West Hall. Hall yeah. We did an impromptu interview at the AWS uh, news desk. Thank you very much. Yes. And he was like, oh, I thought it was going to be easy because right after our interview here, we're just going to go right there. I'm like, it's nope. Not. We, we yeah. shared a moment in the Vegas um, loop, right? We should tell, like, we had to take a Tesla. We had to go underground. Like, it was, it's a process. Like, that's how big this place is. Wow. Yeah. Well, okay, so what is your plan afterwards? How are you navigating NAB show? And what do you want to, I guess, see Look, the most outside? Here, this is my NAB show, show survival plan, all okay. right? You need to download the NAB show app, and you need to mark down the places you want to go to and you need to freaking plan that out because it will not happen yeah. and you will get lost. So that's my plan. I have like 10 places. I'm like, oh, that looks cool. This looks cool. Yeah. One of them is scenery. Yeah. Um, um, and then you, you just mark it down, put it in the map, and then you just do your route. Yeah, and then plug scenery a little bit more. Like, is there anything else happening at your booth that folks need to make sure that they get on their map and their calendar? Yeah, so right now, actually, with scenery, everyone who stops by our booth, we're giving away, like, one free month of our pro plan. With that, you get unlimited projects. You get upgraded storage space, so we give you, like, 100 gigabytes of, like, cloud storage. And then also, you get to use our AI editor completely for free. So if you have, like, a podcast, if you have long-form YouTube videos, you upload that footage, you take the one hour long footage, and we can cut it down immediately to like 30 seconds for you to upload to social media. So, well, speaking of which, I think we're going to do something really special with this interview, right? It, yes, exactly. So, well, speaking of cutting things to social media, part of what we're doing here, I'm going to put this interview into edit, our editor, and we're going to cut this, and I'll say, give me every moment that Derek was hilarious and made Nikki laugh. And, <laughs> 
it'll just give me two hours of footage back because yes. you know that happened so many times. And the AI is that good as well. It's that it's that good. It really is. Yeah. So stop by our booth. Uh, you can get the one month free, um, and we'd we'll love to say hi. Yep. And make sure if you want to see what Derek is doing on Scenery, check out our Instagram. Plug your Instagram really quick. You can follow me at D E R E K X I A O underscore. Amazing. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, awesome. enjoy the rest of the Bye show. Bye. And welcome back to the 2024 NAB Show live stream. I'm Paul with the Stream Geeks, and I'm joined with Andy from AMD. He's going to tell us a little bit about what they're doing in the live streaming and video production industry. So thanks so much for having Paul. Today, we're showing off uh, AMD technologies for the data center as well as for workstations. So one of the products we're showing off is a product that we call the MA35D. This is our Emmy winning technology for video transcode. We're also showing off our Threadripper Pro processors as well as our Radeon Pro graphics processors for workstations. Uh, we're featuring solutions here from some of our key partners like Dell, HP, Lenovo, Supermicro, and others. It's such a cool, you'll, which one do you want to start with? Because you've got so, such a great display here. So one of the things that I think is going to be compelling to start with is right behind us. Uh, this is a, a technology called View One from our partner at View. And so this is a turnkey virtual production solution. So it uses uh, hardware from our partner Puget Systems. And then again, our, our partner View uh, takes that Puget Systems hardware and creates the virtual production in a box solution behind us that you see. Very cool. Um, what, what's next? I mean, that, that is a really cool song. Yeah, so as we walk around the booth and look at some of the technologies around here, uh, you can see the solutions that we've got from Supermicro with our partner Stratus Core. Uh, so they're showing uh, a solution from uh, Devant for, um, uh, for uh, AI uh, workflows with... Um, uh, like I said, taking a, a, a picture and, and putting it in, in different uh, backgrounds with stable diffusion. Uh, we're also showing our latest uh, mobile workstation solutions. So you see mobile workstations here from partners HP and Lenovo with uh, an external GPU enclosure. So again, if you want to have uh, the performance uh, of a desktop workstation and the portability of a mobile workstation, you can put uh, into this docking station and get the full capabilities uh, of a desktop workstation uh, running from a, a mobile workstation. And then on this side of the booth, uh, this is where we've got solutions from uh, Dell, HP, and Lenovo. Uh, so these are their latest workstations using AMD Threadripper Pro processors. Uh, again, we're showing the latest uh, Blackmagic design and Adobe workflows uh, on the newest processors from AMD. Wow. This is really cool. Just giving the audience a moment to soak this in. All of this technology coming to you from AMD. So let me ask you, Andy, what was your favorite moment at NAB, whether it was a past NAB or this one? To, uh... Uh, so where we kicked things off yesterday, we met with our partners, VIEW. Uh, they did a summit called the Virtually Everything Summit. And that was a phenomenal experience. We had about 500 customers and partners uh, talking about where virtual production's at now and where it's headed. Uh, we also had the opportunity to, to participate with our partners Mesa and CDSA uh, at their summit talking about uh, content uh, delivery and security. So again, it's early in the show, but it's been a phenomenal experience so far. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. All right, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Andy. And welcome back to NAB Show Live. My name is Sharif, and I'm still streaming over here in Central Hall with my good friend, Christine. Christine, how are you? I'm amazing. Thank you. How are you? Doing fabulous. Thanks for asking. Now, Christine, can you tell me a little bit about where you work and what you do for NAB Show? Sure. So I work for MDG. That is NAB's marketing agency. And I mainly work with the Media Partner Program. So that's working with all of the partners that we have at the show today. Um, and I also help with paid media and design. Awesome. Now, have you gone to meet any of those partners that you typically work with? Not yet. I plan on meeting all of them tomorrow. I'm really excited to finally meet them in person. It's always really exciting kind of putting a face, uh, a face to a name, finally kind of going back and forth through email all year, not really knowing what anybody looks like, and then you come to the show and meet people. It's really exciting. Now, how many NAB shows have you been to? This is my very first one. We are just getting all the first timers <laughs> this year. Now, can you tell me what you're, most, uh, what you're looking forward to the most while you're here? 
So apart from meeting all the media partners, again, just seeing everything come to life for the first time, it is way bigger than I could have imagined. So are your feet hurting yet? Yes. And we are just getting started. <laughs>